It's just a game that has a variety of characters, different monsters, hidden quests, and cool skills. And like any game, it has cheats and bugs. This guy who's typing on the keyboard now is its creator and he's a programmer, but as it always happens, reality doesn't live up to expectations, and everything he's worked for has simply begun to disappear. After all, one day the boss began to knock paper on the head of our hero and ask if he saw how many bugs there are and when he's going to fix them because all he does is a whole day of dope mahayucha. But our hero every day humbly only keeps silent. And when the secretary complained to her manager that he was staring at her breast and she can't work like that, because of that, the manager started yelling at the hero more and more because he doesn't do anything. And all those arrogant looks and demeaning words depressed him. But things changed in the future when he decided he was going to start playing the game he created. And at one point the game merged with reality and the whole office the hero was in started to coward and collapse. And when he looked out the window, he saw the whole world had just changed before his eyes. He turned around and saw that a system notification A appeared in front of him, stating that he had successfully registered the game, welcomed him to the new world. But the hero realized that no one knows this world better than he does, and that if this is a new world, it means that his cheats are working here. And since that's the case, he decided that he would accept the gift. And when he clicked accept, the game started showing a new notification that he had a new title and that he needs to take care of his status first. Because with cheats, he will get a legendary reward, and when he ran away from monsters and hid in a hidden area, attacks were ineffective and damage was not done in those areas. With the miracle, he ran away and hid from the beastly monsters. It's been a while since our hero realized this game needed a boss, but still he knew he could beat him because he would be the strongest at any cost. And when his hit points were running low and he could die right now, he knew his plan would work this time. And after another wound, the system again gave an error that it could not detect the player. But after that, the process of restoring the role and identity began. That was just the backstory. Now we see the hero continuing to create his game long before it begins. Leda's monitor screen showed that he had decided to locate the secret door that hides the artifact prices. And the fact that even if there's no money there, the benefits are huge. And after clicking to create a room, the download process started and he could relax because he had done a lot of things during the day. And pulling his arms in different directions because he's so tired after the game goes online, he's hoping someone will find it but he couldn't even imagine that now his angry manager is standing behind him. And at the same moment, he began to yell at Song An with all his anger. And as he kept beating him over the head with the paper, he started asking what he was doing here. Not that he's even seen how many bugs his game has and that he hasn't fixed anything for a year all day long. He's just creating useless things. And that if something goes wrong with the game after the release, he can immediately quit. But still, these words did not please Sung An, and he is simply a student and recently finished his studies. And by mistake, he got a job as a programmer in a rotten company. And because his boss is a stingy man, he's the only person in that company who works on bugs and games. Over thousands of bugs that no man boss treats him like a machine to finish the job faster had to turn some bugs into passphrases. Well, his boss couldn't understand what kind of passphrases and what kind of programmer he is, and the fact that he now has to make him a report on all the bugs in the game if he fails. He'll eat only air for a month because he won't pay him a penny. As time went on, Sung An found that everyone treated him like a sucker and didn't do anything useful. But at some point, the secretary who was passing by dropped her papers and started apologizing to the manager and our hero for interrupting him. Well, the girl realized that she couldn't rest in that skirt at all, and Sung An noticed it. And he decided he wouldn't just stand by and help her. Picking up the papers, he began to draw his hand to the secretary with words for her to take them. She thanked him in turn, but she was actually thinking about how Sung An was such a loser. 
Sung Ain, on the other hand, suddenly blushed and told her that he wasn't worth the thanks. The secretary turned around and thought Lesh thought his look was so annoying. And as she was leaving, she started complaining to her boss because the rascal was staring at her breasts and she couldn't bear to work in that environment. But then his manager started insulting him and saying he'd been fooling around all day. But Sung An started to say that there was a misunderstanding. He only wanted to help her pick up the papers because he couldn't pass by. But his supervisor replied in a gruff tone that he turns out to be a slippery tip, and once he didn't do it on purpose, and how can such a social misfit like him, having acted in a nasty and neck-snapping way, refuse to admit it? Sung An kept saying that it was just a misunderstanding, but the manager told him to stop dodging and admit his guilt, because if he didn't, he would cut his salary for the next month. And as soon as the conversation was over, the secretary started hitting on the boss and thanking him for bringing justice, and he replied with a nonchalant look that it was his duty. I mean, that weirdo deserved it. Sung An heard the whole conversation and clenched his fist. He couldn't hold back his anger at being called a weirdo. I mean, if he's different, it's okay. And after six months of hard work on the game that our hero created and fixed all the bugs, he finally fixed everything that huge amount of bugs with this level of quality, the release of the game will now be a success. After all, in this game, of course, there were plenty of mistakes, but Sung An successfully replaced them all with passphrases and otherwise would have had to work until the year of the monkey, and a total of only one. Easter eggs were made. But suddenly our hero's phone rang and he could not understand from whom a message could come at such a time. But at the same time, the boss was walking around the office yelling at his employees to work harder. After all, today is the big day. Today is the game's release and if something goes wrong, they'll all be left without a bonus. And turning his gaze to Sung An, he began to shout more forcefully that this was especially true for him because he was working on the passphrases with no quality. But Sung An realized that even if he didn't get the money, he would still be happy that he wouldn't have to sit here and work on this game anymore. And the fact that a credit notice appeared on his broken phone that he must repay, RMB by July, if there is no money he will be liable, the amount will be RMB to be paid over the following years. Sung An still. After reading the text message, he hoped that he would be able to finish everything in one day. But suddenly the whole office started to shiver and no one could figure out what was going on. Could it have been an earthquake? Because everything started to fall apart. And while everyone started running for cover, Sung An looked out the window and saw the world changing right before his eyes. Because he couldn't figure out what the hell was going on here. And what he saw as a bright light began to illuminate the entire city he was looking at from 20 stories up. But as soon as the flash went away, he began to hold on to his head, realizing that it was simply about to split into several pieces. And all he could see was the splash screen of his own game saying that the world was loading. And the notification he saw that he was invited to the multiplayer game New World, which wishes him a pleasant game. After a few minutes, he began to slowly open his eyes. But on rising, he could not understand what this new world was and why such a notice had popped into his head, because all he remembers is fainting. But when he went to the window, he saw the whole world had simply changed, and he couldn't understand if it was some kind of a joke from the company. The city was unrecognizable. Everything and everywhere had changed. There was destruction everywhere, as if several million years had passed. And that it wasn't just the company. The whole town had changed. And yet he was only interested in one question. What had happened while he was out? But then another notification window popped up that showed that Sung An had been successfully registered. But Sung An looked at the notification that appeared in front of his eyes and couldn't understand who the player was and what kind of new world it was and isn't it the system interface of the new world and is he really in the game? 
and he wondered if there was a holographic Somato sensory mode in the game and why he didn't know about it and if he was the company's lab rat. But why is everything so real now? Because he even feels like it's real. The next notification showed that the system would give him a random role in this game. Sung An didn't want that and started yelling for them to wait a minute, but still the system detected and showed him that he had acquired the status of a merchant. And now he's going to get the gear of an ancient stone knife. For a moment, he couldn't understand where the knife came from in his hands or why the bright light illuminated the entire office. And the fact that this knife was directly real, and he also saw that the sidebar showed that this knife gives a plus to attack. Sung An gathered himself and realized that he had just been given a random job and was now an entrepreneur. In the new world, there are three roles. Healer, Merchant, and Warrior. The warrior has a bonus to abilities and attributes. Easy adaptation. The healer supports the team. The merchant has an advantage in gathering resources and can make equipment, but there are disadvantages to their combat abilities are low. And to average out the number of roles, the system gives out a role at random. And that, by the way, in the new world, there are some rare roles to unlock. Song An began to pay attention to the flickering computer screen in the office he was sitting at. Terrible mayhem in this very same office. And to him, everything here looks like reality. On the next notification window started to distract him. And when he read that he should get his first assignment if he didn't respond in minutes, it would be sent automatically. But he stood there confused and holding a gun, unable to fully believe that the game had seriously become a reality. But then he wondered if this was all happening in a new world, and if it meant that his passphrases were still there that he'd spent so long putting all over his game. And then he can use these passphrases to become the first in the world, and he can get out of debt, and he won't have to look at the faces of these people he's worked with for so long anymore. But still, the smile on his face showed that being a developer is pretty cool. And he uses all the bugs to change his life. And when creating a character, there are pass hacks. If you die before the first mission starts, you can reset your role, and maybe he has a chance to get a special personality he would want. But looking at his knife, he realized that hurting himself was too much. If he wasn't wrong, he wasn't really going to die. But he decided to take the risk. If he gets the special role, he'll have a huge advantage. And yet, hoping that he wouldn't really die, he began to inflict serious wounds on himself. And as soon as he hit himself, once he felt in his body a tremendous pain, Immediately, the notification system started showing that his HP was now running low and he might die. Also, the notification system showed that it had detected an error and could not locate the player and would now start the process of restoring the role and identity. And as soon as Song An was restored, the notification showed that there were minutes to seconds left before resubmission. And at the same moment, Song An came to his senses and realized that he had survived without even being in the other world. And we can say that the plan to use bug in the game is quite good. Well, looking at his notification window, he saw that his system congratulated him on becoming an Allegri, but he decided that even though he will die once, he does not want to be a healer because he wants to get a special role. And the fact that he's only going to try again once. But the notification system again congratulated him for gaining warrior status, but still it was not enough and he continued on. And after a few failed attempts, he saw everything and saw that the notification showed that there were seconds left to send. I opened my eyes. He still saw that the system had congratulated him on becoming a merchant, and he realized that he was still a merchant and died once, but still a merchant. Desperate that even here he's a failure and time will run out and he won't get another chance to change roles. And the fact that this is his last chance. Without a second thought, he sprinted and jumped straight through the window. And while the notification system was showing him that he was seconds away from resending, he was already flying straight down. And yet he didn't understand why fate is so unfair and there are so many opportunities, but he still can't reach and he's bullied all the time, and he works for everyone to pay his debts. 
but still he couldn't understand what he had done wrong. After all, he simply wants to change his destiny and he doesn't want to become a loser again. He will end it and end this fate of being a loser. You're the last chance he's got right now. And as soon as he died and the notification system reappeared and showed that identity and role restoration was underway, but suddenly different errors began to appear and our hero's body began to glow with a bright light. And once the identity was successfully restored, the player's role was randomly selected and the countdown began to end. But then a new task appeared which was called Live. This was followed by many notifications that he had gotten the Ironhead achievement and the system congratulated him on acquiring the role of Gold Merchant and Warrior. As song An finally came to his senses, he realized that he had succeeded. Fate finally smiled on him and he got that last chance he'd been dreaming of. He got his long-awaited role, the hardest dual role in this game. But he was shocked that he got the Iron Head achievement, and he was surprised that he died and got the achievement. I look at the notification window, he saw that the merchants have a bonus to experience, and apparently it is guaranteed not only at the beginning and also exclusive warrior skills, enhancement of all attributes by percent. And the speed of obtaining resources is increased by percent, and he can create equipment and props. He finally got exactly the start the protagonist should have had, and Fortune didn't give up on him. But there was just one problem his glasses were broken, and it seems they broke and when he jumped into the creature, but somehow there was no god to rid him of his nearsightedness. And now he couldn't figure out where he could find another pair of glasses to take them off and realized that it wasn't as bad as it seemed. On the next notification that appeared began to distract him that a mission monster had been detected and danger was now near, he needed to be careful. But he realized what could be scary at the beginning of the game, because with a non-Nash they wouldn't have a problem with it. But raising his head he saw a huge monster that was coming at him, with all the speed and notices kept appearing over and over again that it was too dangerous in that place. The demon leader has appeared and his danger is very high, and the level is unknown. Raising his head, Song An realized that this was no longer funny, and he had to get out of here as soon as possible, and he certainly won't be bragging about it in the future. Turning around, he started to run away at full speed as he realized he had to get away before he was killed again. And while he was running away, the notification system reappeared, showing him that his number one task was to survive until the end of time, and there was one hour left, and he had to be careful if he was killed by the monster he would really die. But Hero couldn't understand why more and more monsters were appearing. But thank God the biggest one can't get into the building or he'd be dead by now. And the fact that he thinks there's some game restriction preventing him from entering and now his problem, it's these devils chasing him. These minions of the devil who had a level. And for our hero, they are very much now. After all, there is no way he can fight them even with a battle level increase and he should get a weapon as soon as possible. But when he turned his attention back to Demon, he realized the devil was looking at him like shit. But suddenly he heard a familiar voice shouting from afar to get away from him. And it didn't take him long to realize it was that bald dick, his former supervisor. And he and the other guys were running away from the monsters. I don't understand where these demons came from. They saw them right in front of their noses as soon as they woke up. And that if they didn't run away, they would have died right away. But at some point, the two saw Song An and they couldn't believe he was alive. Song An was getting angry because they just ran away from the monsters like plucked chickens but still laughing at him. On the other guy and his supervisor began to discuss that they should not run to Song An because there are many monsters behind him. As soon as they all started running away together, one of the guys started telling our hero that it's all his fault he created the monsters and let them in here. But the hero couldn't understand why he was yelling at him so loudly the head of the same continued to reproach our hero that his lord brought him, together with such a scum like him. These humiliations weren't enough, and the executives kept yelling at our hero to do something about it, a or they'd all die here. 
But Song An realized that if his memory serves him correctly, there must be a shelter somewhere around here. And he saw the door that leads to the room, he thought about it, but he realized it wasn't the right one. I mean, the place he hid must be more special, but after looking through the next few rooms, he finally found the right hiding place. And as he continued to run, he unlocked that door they're looking for. They're standing across the street. But the leader and the other guy running away from the monsters could not understand whether he is really stupid because in front of them is just a wall song and continued to insist on his own to finally trust him. And with all speed, they flew straight into the wall and began to move into the secret room. The notification system immediately started showing them that they had gone to the shelter as soon as they appeared on the other side of the wall on the body to rejoice, for they did not believe that they could escape. The monsters that chased them stayed on the other side of the wall and laid out in a bonfire and not still hoped that these guys would come out of the same wall they ran away in. One of the guys saw the monsters through the wall and couldn't believe those monsters couldn't see them. Song An replied that this is the shelter I can't see and can't attack, and that he's a real genius for putting the shelter in this place. Sanctuary is the most used feature of this game, as monsters cannot invade here and hands can safely heal themselves to improve armor or weapons and protect newcomers. But suddenly the girl began to call our hero by name, and he in turn slowly turned his head around because he heard a familiar voice. And the girl jumped on him and said she was glad he actually survived and that it was him. Song An didn't expect to see her here and the girl told him that she was worried about him because there were so many monsters outside. Song An said he was fine but decided to ask how she found this place. Another guy standing near the head started saying towards our hero and the girl that it's a mistake of nature and they are too close to each other. But the girl started to reply to our hero that did he forget because he himself asked to check it out when he created this shelter because she is also a developer because she studied together with Sun Ann at the university and work in the design department of the same company and helps in the design of the game is also the first and only friend of Song On in the company. And on the way she grabbed a couple of co-workers and others who were in danger. So they hid together. And the world has changed so drastically and become so horrible, so everyone feels very scared. And she can't see people like that because it's unbearable for her. They're not to blame for all this, but suddenly the leader starts saying, why are they all snot-nosed? They're the reason this happened. If they have time to deal with this shit, why don't they think about fixing it? I mean, he told them to work harder. And what did they do? And what did they do if they worked properly? This wouldn't have happened. And that his company and his money are all gone. But after hearing him say that, Song An thought he was just a greedy fool. Other employees of the company began to reply to the manager that it was not their fault and they cannot fix it. They need to die into their gender and be reasonable. But the supervisor didn't stop and kept yelling at the guys that they were a useless pile of garbage and they were all fired. After a few minutes, Song An started asking the girl if I'd had any bad luck or if she'd met someone while walking here, someone who looked weird. But the girl started thinking about who she might meet that was weird. And another guy who was behind our hero's back asked him if he's asking about NPCs now. Video this game, they are not very many, and they have information about all levels, checkpoints, and drops, and once they find them, they will have a chance to survive. But still, they couldn't figure out how they could find them and who was doing the NPC development in the first place. But one of the guys replied that he remembered someone named Lee who was on the first level. But a little girl standing in the middle of the room suddenly shrieked the words, Liu Tsuge and how adults can have memories worse than a snail's. And suddenly the guy shouted out that it's that girl with the arrow on her head, she is an NPC. If she likes them, she can expect a reward. So the girl starts yelling back at the guy for pointing his finger at her. Hearing all this, Song An realized that this girl is a little devil, and he doesn't sleep in interaction with this type of character. 
The other girl leaned over to her and started saying that she didn't think she was that NPC. She was still wondering whose baby was lost, and thank heavens she was okay. The NPC began to reply to the girl that she was grateful that she was able to bring her here and that she should thank her for it. And I open my duck backpack and she starts pulling out a present for her. I was given a strange transparent sphere with a piece of paper with a compass on it. But as soon as the NPC handed the gift to the girl, Yes saw a notice on the window that she received a mini cart. And it was unbelievable to her, because she never imagined she could get her hands on such a valuable item. The other developers started screaming for everyone to watch, because he was saying that NPCs had useful gizmos. Our hero suddenly thought about the fact that she now has a map. I, this is a very useful feature in the game, and if he wants to attack the main tower later, he's going to need this card and he needs to find a way to get it. The other girl, however, wasted no time in leaning toward the NPCs and handing her candy and saying, here's some candy, she'll give her a card. Luckily, she had some candy in her pocket, so she decided to bribe the kid with it. But the NPC stuck out her tongue and said she didn't want to and wouldn't, and that she was a hypocrite. After all, she ran faster and now make it look like she was helping, and most of all, she hates people like her old hag. The girl was pissed off by the NPC's words and started calling her names, saying she was an asshole and if she tried to say it again, she'd give her a hard time. But other staff members started to stop her saying that the NPC was their only chance for survival. The NPC in turn told them not to worry because they only saved their skinny asses and now they want the map she won't give it to them. But as soon as the NPC turned around, the other employees started discussing the fact that they can't even talk to her and what's there to a normal attitude. The whole room suddenly heard the voice of a leader who revealed that they were a bunch of idiots. And there's no point in explaining yourself to a child who doesn't even have milk on her lips and you just have to take it all away from her. Why try to placate her? Why try to placate her? He doesn't care if she likes him or not. He's going to take the damn map anyway. But the NPC was scared and started to back away slowly, saying that he's a creep. But the supervisor still jumped on her and started taking her briefcase away from her so she'd give him the card. And even though she was screaming for him to let her go, the leader still insisted that she must have something else useful in her backpack and he'd take everything. But at that moment, our hero intervened in the incident and hit with all his might a fist on the face of the leader, because of which he began to lose his balance and fell on his back. He let go of the NPC who started to fall to the side as well, but the girl picked her up just in time. Song An in turn started shouting at the leader that she was still a small child and that there was no need to use violence like always he was trying to intimidate people. This was no longer the world he was used to living in. The manager couldn't believe that this loser had hit him, and he couldn't believe he was telling him what to do. That kid is just a fictional character from the game, and he still cares about her feelings. He just wants to get her card out of here and back to the normal world. But at that moment, the NPC started crying, and as soon as her scale went down to minus, she started sobbing loudly because of which all players got a notification that the relationship NPC dropped below zero and the launch of the Easter egg. They should not hope that this NPC is suitable for bullying, and the one who bullied him will be punished, and the punishment will be the elimination of the asylum. Turned his head on fat couldn't believe what he'd just read. If it's true, they'll all die here. As Song An continued to look around, he couldn't figure out what was going on and where all these messages were coming from. But still, the situation was irreversible and the shelter began to fall apart little by little and the guys had seconds to do everything. During this time, the shelter will simply disappear. The stupid supervisor was dumb enough to accuse our hero of doing it. Keep yelling about how Song An is a jerk and he needs to fix things. But the hero couldn't understand why he added those eggs because now they're all in danger.
Easter eggs are when an NPC's attitude scale is negative and the closest players are awarded a punishment. And the fact that there are seconds left for everything, but still looking at another notification, the hero realized that he still has minutes and seconds to stay alive. Because the asylum continues to be liquidated, and behind the other wall are monsters who are waiting for everything to disappear so they can destroy all the players. One of the developers of this very game started asking the hero what should they do. This time, they'll really die. Song An also realized that the shelter would soon disappear if they didn't think of something now. Then the road ahead was booked, and they could try to distract the monsters on themselves. After all, if they get out of here, then they will be able to act on their own, and in this building there are things he needs. And as soon as he gets it, he will deal with the monsters at once or twice. But for now, the main problem is that he needs to get through these monsters, and how to do that he doesn't fully understand. But still, the monsters were not the last problem. There was also a stupid leader who started pulling his huge hand behind our hero's back, shouting for him to go and stall for time for them. And as soon as he pushed Song An to the monsters, he kept shouting in the hero's back that he did it all so he should go and fight them. Our hero didn't think that that stupid executive would have it in his head to push him straight into the horrible monsters, who just sat around the whole time waiting for someone to come out and finish her off. And now our hero saw that the terrible monster was swinging his huge paw. Behind the other wall, the girl started yelling at the stupid manager that how could he throw Song An out because he literally sent him to his death. But the stupid leader starts waving his fat hands around and says, if he didn't do it, they'd all die so they should get their asses up and run, while he distracts the monsters if she's so anxious to die, she can go to him. But suddenly their quarrel was interrupted by the voice of our hero who told the girl that he was all right because he had received a bonus for being a warrior and had hung up his fighting skills X and that the shelter was about to disappear and when it did, they should run without looking back. Not that they should remember to take the NPC with them, because she's very important, and he'll do what he can. And as soon as the girl started walking around saying something to our hero, another developer told her not to worry about it because the countdown is almost over, and they need to get out of this place as soon as possible. And as soon as zero seconds appeared on the countdown report, Song An started yelling for them to run away now. After all, the shelters have already been completely destroyed and now they are in extreme danger. And no one was surprised that the fat, stupid leader ran first and yelled at him not to be pushed. But the other guys behind him were yelling at him to move his fat ass. But the NPC that was on the girl's hands told our hero that she was grateful to him, and she hoped that her little gift would help him deal with the monsters. Song An turned his head around and saw the notice that appeared in front of his eyes. Just because the relationship with the NPC was upgraded to, and he got me a card, and such a gift he couldn't even believe it, just to think that he got what he wanted after all. And comparing with real people, game characters are much more pleasant because now he has access to the minicart function, and yet the new world is not as bad as he originally thought it would be. For now he can show the monsters what he can do for real, but for now he needs to look at the gift minicard. And when he opened it, he saw that the place was right next to him. And the fact that it's so close by, if it's in such a prominent place, he'll notice it anyway. Na turned his head. He saw the monsters that ran behind her back and continued to run away from them. He could not understand the fact that there are no doors nearby, although they were shown on the mini-map. Well, at least in the monasteries continued swinging his huge claws, our hero decided he needed to go back and look again. And as soon as he stopped to change direction, he saw that the monsters had completely gotten him and that they could not calm down, continuing to swing their huge paws. But still, our hero couldn't dodge all the monsters' attacks and one of them hit him. Then he realized that now he could simply die just because he ducked wrong. But the worst part was that the blow was so hard that he flew into the nearest wall. Elsewhere, however, 
Many employees continued to run away from the monsters, and some employees began shouting to their director to save them. I mean, they're not ready to die, and at the hands of monsters. But those were the last words of the guy's life, because the monster that was at his back immediately finished him off with a single blow. The stupid supervisor who oversaw the situation said, another one died. The other developer, however, could not understand why this task lasted a full minute and how they could even survive for such a paltry amount of time. And the fact that they were surrounded by monsters on all sides, but the manager kept yelling at his employees to hurry up and come up with something. The girl who was carrying the NPC started telling everyone to run straight down the hallway because the map shows that there is an elevator at the end. And as soon as they heard that, they started running towards the elevator because no one wanted to stay where they were for a second. As she continued to run away, the girl hoped that her comrade Song Ann would definitely survive. Well, our hero sitting near the wall realized that now he may be the end, because looking at the window notification, he saw that he had hit points out and that the notification system showed him that he is critically low on health. Wiping the blood on his chin, he began to mumble his tray that he almost died, and about one more blow and he would have really met his grandmother. But on his feet, the hero said he had to thank the monsters for almost missing this place. After all, right behind his back, the Easter egg was unlocked and he found the lost office, and it is possible that some gray mouse is still working overtime here. Our hero finally, finally remembered where the entrance was hidden. Going inside the portal, the last words he said to the monsters were that he wished them well. But he's memorized every last one of them, and he'll be back soon to destroy them all. Literally seconds later, the notification system began showing our hero that he had entered the lost office, holding his head, song. Anne realized that traveling in space is so exhausting, he felt he was being rocked but raised his head. He didn't expect to see sitting at the table. After all, it was a skeleton NPC, a restless programmer who kept typing and saying one more page, one more page. Smiling, the hero realized that he was pleased to see what he had created himself and approached the skeleton and began to greet him. Because of which the skeleton raised his head, answered our hero that she did not notice him. But suddenly he asked in Song An that, is he like him, working overtime? Because he hasn't seen anyone for a long time. He's sorry, but he has a lot of work, so he can't talk to him. But Song An said not to worry about it. And placing his hand on the skeleton, NPC's shoulders said that he would soon rest. And as his creator, he didn't know what to do. Reaching out her hand to the desktop, she began to tell the skeleton that she would borrow the marker for a few minutes. The boss said he couldn't leave before midnight, but something Strelka can't get to. And from a handsome man, he literally turned into a walking skeleton. And the fact that he's already come to terms with the fact that the only reason he exists is to work overtime and it gives his life meaning, and that it's his cross he's been carrying all this time so he shouldn't be distracted now. But our hero said that, in his place. He would have looked at what he's showing him first. I mean, you memorize it a long time ago, and it just keeps going on and on and on. And the fact that he can quit his job right now. And here is an NPC skeleton and could not have imagined it as soon as he saw the clock his through simply sagged off. Because he couldn't imagine that for over an hour he could really go home. And raising his hands, he began to throw over the desk he was working at, shouting that he didn't need a job now and that he should shove overtime up his supervisor's ass. And whoever put him in here became impotent because he was only here because he couldn't get out. And what kind of psycho would agree to work forever? As he watched the situation, our hero realized that he was the dick who locked him in here. But thank God the NPC doesn't know that. But at that moment, the room began to glow with a bright light, and the notice window seemed to indicate that the task was completed something that An Kun wanted to get out of work as soon as possible. The NPC said before he left that since he no longer had to work overtime, he thought that was the end of his life. And he's very grateful to him, 
So he's going to leave him some of his stuff, and he hopes he can use it. After saying goodbye to the NPC, our hero waved his hand and said that he promises to find a better use for them. If there is another life out there, he wishes him to find a better boss. And once the skeleton completely disappeared and the heroes saw the notice that he had accepted the reward from Ankun and he got the thing Durable Programmer Bone and Invisible Glasses, that's when he realized that after all this time he was finally getting what he wanted and that there were even points here. And you Invisible Glasses, exclusive one of a kind and the effectiveness of them percent to vision. And he sees again and they are, in addition, invisible. And even if they have essentially one function, it's better than nothing. But holding the programmer's prash bone in his hand, he realized that this was the main reason why he had come here. However, this bone looks really strange, and about such an indestructible bone exercised for decades due to the sedentary lifestyle of its owner, and this bone is stronger and stronger than the bones of a normal person. And as soon as our hero opened the skills panel, he saw that there is a gear blade knuckle blade symbolizing the accumulated willpower of the programmer and raw material, strong bone programmer. Slowly, he began to merge them, and as soon as the success rate reached percent, the fabrication was completed and he was able to obtain the legendary weapon, a rare knuckle blade that had percent damage and extra chips of attack penetration going through the percent defense of the enemy, and the fact that it does times the damage on the demon race. Heaven be praised that he's also a merchant, or he wouldn't have gotten a blade that does twice the damage. As he drew his amazing weapon, he decided that he would fight to the death with the monsters that awaited him on the other side of the wall, because now is the time to settle accounts with them. After all, with a knuckle blade, he would be able to straighten them out in a matter of seconds. But still, he should not forget that his main task is to survive and stay alive for the rest of the time and back. Her count showed what was left in minutes of seconds. And while the monsters waited on the other side and looked into the secret passage that led to the hidden office, our hero was already ready to come out of there. And as soon as something flew out of the portal, the monsters didn't hesitate to attack. But still, it was a trap, and they began attacking the skeleton computer that had flown out of the portal. But the computer was followed by our hero, who pointed his weapon at the monsters and told them never to stand with their backs to their enemy. And while they were being tagged by the computer, he began to attack them in the back. The monsters realized he hadn't done any damage to them and started laughing loudly at him. And then they began to respond to him with their attacks on our hero, could not understand if that monster. I had to get a tenth multiple of damage and why the ability did not activate. And pulling out his blade once more, he started yelling at him, not to let him down at such an important moment, and if he gets another hit, you won't let him live. And at that moment, the demon blade began to activate, and the damage he had inflicted on the demon earlier began to manifest itself. Just a few seconds later, the huge monster began to feel pain, and eventually the notification system showed our hero that he had taken damage units. And it turns out that the ability activates immediately after the first strike. Song An still couldn't figure out if it was too easy. After all, he, with the help of two strikes, Simov destroyed two monsters and reached the second level and also followed by a notification that showed that was restored. And he's back to his old self, and he's leveled up too. But the other monsters watching weren't as happy as our hero. He was ready for battle began to tell the monsters to attack, because while she has sorted out his skills, he should now deal with the rest of the monsters. The three of them attacked at the same time and started attacking him. And quickly turning around, our hero realized he was just going to run to fight them head on. And he went into the secret office again. And all the blows were ineffective monsters because the damage can't be done on the special zone. And they're back as stoned as ever at first, standing near the entrance to the secret office. Our hero realized that since they couldn't even lay a finger on him, he had to make his move. And while the monsters thought that the TV was about to fly out again, they completely relaxed. And at that moment, our hero jumped out with his blade in his hands and began to make heavy blows on the legs of the monsters. 
and as soon as the demon blade activated, the monster began taking massive damage. But still, our hero was not happy that he only managed to destroy one, and he has to go back and wait for another chance to open up. But at that moment, another huge bridge appeared and flew at him with his terrible and long claws. And holding back his attack with his blade, our hero realized that he obviously didn't want to let him back into the portal, but he wouldn't be able to hold him off for long because he had wounded him. But the trouble was that they were going to attack him together and there was no way for him to dodge now. And as soon as he inflicted more units of damage to one of the monsters, the other monsters were no longer so eager to attack him because they realized that he was doing badly. But still, one of the monsters accidentally managed to hit our hero and he started to fly off to the side. And as he fell to the ground, he realized that he had taken a lot of damage and now he only had one health remaining. But the demon blade again was activated and that monster who hit it also received units of damage. And following that, the hero realized that he was about to level up again and become even stronger. As it happened, he was able to raise his level and his health was restored again. And then his expression changed. Because if you think about it, he's cool now, even though he's been a loser all his life. At this time, the other guys started to finally get into the elevator that had just opened up. Once inside, they couldn't figure out where they were going now, but the dumbass leader started saying they were going to the first floor now. The girl started to say that the map shows that there are fewer monsters now, and maybe Song An was able to escape after leading the monsters away, and he should wait for her. But the other girl started telling her that even at a time like this, all she thinks about is Song An and that he's been dead for a long time. And does she really want to follow him? but she couldn't understand why they were leaving him for the second time. But at that moment, a huge monster appeared near the elevator entrance and chased them the whole time. The guys realized he was behind them and started pushing the button to close the door. But no one could have imagined that our hero would appear behind his back and start throwing heavy punches. And as soon as the demon's blade began to activate, the monster realized he was about to be killed. Song An, with a serious expression, asked the monster who let him escape his friend. But as soon as the monster fell and the notice appeared before the eyes of our hero showed that he killed the demon on Jara, could not understand whether to rejoice him or not, because he is probably too late and probably his girlfriend has already gone downstairs. The next notification window showed that all monsters had been destroyed and the floor had been cleaned up. Song An couldn't understand if this was it, because he thought he could raise his level a little more. Even though he still has a good level up after leveling up. After all, he is now level 5, health as well as mana is now filled to the max, but he still needs to distribute the remaining experience points. Where it comes out when you level up, all his skills get one point each, plus he gets three more, and with the warrior bonus, he can get points after each such level up. And he remembers that the average of new players was about, and this number varies depending on the role of the player. If he understands this correctly, he originally had intuition and intelligence points, and six for stamina, and nine for agility and strength. Four points, and it turns out he's a total wuss right now. But now he decided that first he needed to add points to his strength, agility, and endurance, he needed to stop thinking he was a lazy homebody. He just didn't have time to slim down at the gym. And once he distributed the experience points, realized that he finally looked like a normal person and maybe even a little better than he could have been. Well, at that moment, something strange started happening and he couldn't figure out why the building was wobbling again. And wasn't everything still cleared out as the notification system showed? Or if there are new monsters and he has to fight them now. Or maybe it's that terrifying boss who attacked him as soon as he appeared in this game. The guys who were outside couldn't understand what was going on and didn't think they would be safe once they got outside. But why are there still more of these things here and that the notification system has started to go crazy showing that there is an extreme situation everywhere now? 
But at that moment, one of the developers started asking the girl to open her map and see if there was a way to get the hell out of here. But when she opened the map, she didn't understand it, because it said everywhere that it was impossible to find a way out. And the fact that they have nowhere to run and all they have to do is just fight this boss. The leader couldn't believe his own eyes that he had seen such a terrifying monster because he wasn't going to die yet. And at one point he started to turn around and run away, screaming that he didn't want to die but the guys were yelling at him for years not to run away alone. But all this shouting was noticed by the boss and started to open his huge pasta to attack the leader. And no sooner had he run away a few dozen meters than the boss attacked him and simply destroyed him. The other guys couldn't stand to see the boss destroying everything around him. But as soon as they turned their heads, they saw that this boss has the ability to freeze everything, and now they need to quickly run away and split in different directions. No, I'm not with the guys who ran off with the girl and the NPCs noticed that the boss was paying attention to them but they still kept running off with all their legs. But the girl suddenly tripped and hurt her leg, so she couldn't keep running, and as soon as she asked the guy to help her, he just stood there silently and watched as she lay on the ground. But the girl went on to say that she seems to have twisted her ankle and thinks she can't run, and whether he can take the NPC to the safe place because she's passed out. But the monster that was at their back was already looking straight at them and ready to attack. And that guy, without a word, started turning around and running away to save his fat, lazy ass. The girl sat in the same place and kept hoping that someone would save her. But at that moment our hero appeared and successfully parried the boss's attack and thus protected the girl and the NPC she was holding in her arms. But as soon as the demon blade was activated, he realized that he could definitely handle this threat now. And by swinging his blade a few more times, our hero ended the boss's attack because his damage was simply canceled out. The girl turned her head and realized that they were finally saved, and thank God that her friend appeared and saved the life of her and the girl NPCs. The hero, with a nonchalant look, started apologizing to the girl for arriving so late. After all, it was not easy for him to come down the stairs here, but now she can rely on him 100%, and he's got a legendary weapon to protect her, and that he will spare no one now, much less anyone who dares to hurt her. Holding the knuckle blade in his hands, he began to activate its power because with it, he can make attacks that will pass through the percent of the enemy's defense, even though soon Anne is not strong enough. He was still determined and serious that he could defeat the boss of this location. But suddenly our hero decided to look at the girl's wound and realized that she had sprained her ankle and now she would not be able to run further. But what was worse was that the NPC was unconscious, although she was fine a few minutes ago. Sunan realized that she was just scared and it won't be for long, and now she should take care of her and let him do the rest. The girl could not understand how he could defeat such a huge and ferocious monster, but Sun An was confident in his abilities and told her not to worry because he will be careful, and moreover he has already matured a plan, and at that moment our hero started yelling to the other guy who was hiding somewhere nearby that if he's here, let him come out, and as long as he hides his ass in the trees, he can't escape the monster. But also soon An started telling him that he has an Easter egg that will help them escape, but now he needs his help. But he needs to hurry because he doesn't know how much longer he can hold off the location boss attacks. But now he has to decide faster because he doesn't know how long he can fight back as each attack becomes more and more serious and dangerous. And the fact that the girl and the baby NPC can't move now and he's the only one who can help them now. But finally, he came out from around the corner and started yelling towards our hero who was resisting the attacks of the location boss about what he needed to do. The hero replied that he should find a wooden stick and draw a huge circle of girls and NPCs, but the guy couldn't figure out what he was talking about and what a circle drawn with a stick. 
Well, once the ten times damage was done and the fireball damage was nullified and the hero cried out to do as he says, the guy took out a stick that was lying in the nearby bushes and told our hero that he will trust him only now, but he still wants to clarify something that he does not do it for him, but for the girl Zai Hui. And as soon as he got to her, he used his stick to draw a circle around her. In the classic Chinese novel Journey to the West, when Sun Wukong the Monkey King needed to go somewhere, he drew a circle on the ground with all his belongings inside so that no monsters could take them away. And the Monkey King had a master who he always told to stay inside the circle and never come out. And as soon as he finished drawing the tiny, the conditions were met. The tiny stick and the player with the last name Sun the Easter egg was launched and the protective circle began to activate. But here the guy couldn't believe his eyes that it actually worked. Pascal that our hero left behind. It was a circle and those inside the circle are not sensitive to external damage have a limit of 10 minutes and can only be used once a day. And as soon as our hero turned his head, he saw that it had finally worked. So this guy suddenly started turning into a human monkey and shouting to our hero that his egg is defective because why he turned into a monkey, but the notification showed that the Easter egg was launched and that the monkey king appeared here and when the protective circle will activate the player turns into a monkey. But at that moment a little monkey on his head started making loud noises and it will continuously apply a tease while the minutes count down. But suddenly the boss of the location began to hear a provocative sound because of which the guy began to get even more nervous because he did not want this huge monster to turn its attention to him. Sun An started grabbing that guy by his clothes and pulling him back, telling him not to stand there like an idiot because he's right in the line of attack and the location boss is about to attack him. That guy couldn't understand if Sun An had planned to kill him from the beginning but the hero replied that he just wanted him to be a decoy. And he'll distract the monster and the monster will take the opportunity to kill him. In front of the defense circle won't be here forever. If they don't kill him, he will kill them. So he has to help him. And besides, even if he's not going to do anything, the monsters will still notice him and attack him. The girl who was in the protective magic circle began to tell our hero that from the blow of the monster can be dodged. He opens his mouth before attacking. If he has time to run away, while he opens his mouth, Fireball will not reach him. Hearing those words, the guy realized that the girl was armored, and he can't believe that he practically left her to die, but even so, it's very difficult for him to do so. The monkey that was sitting on his head was blowing his horn again, which scared the hell out of the guy. But Sun An started to tell him to get ready. He's already starting to act. And the monster changed, and even though that guy started saying he didn't do anything, why is the monster so angry but it was because the Monkey King is known as a prankster and a joker, and that he pranks everyone and everything as soon as he gets the chance. Enraged to the full, he began to open his huge mouth and spew a strange substance that began to envelope the entire area. The guy with the monkey on his head started screaming that he was too hot and was going to die. But the girl began to tell him not to worry because this attack is intended for a wide area and it is strong but not lethal. This was true because his health was decreasing very slowly. Sun An thought about the fact that it was very risky to go for a break, but there might not be another chance, and that this bounce attack would cause him to lose percent of his maximum health every second, and being in the kill zone would last for seconds. And because of that, he has a chance to get close to this monster. And with his low health reserve, our hero continued to strike blow after blow at the huge monster, hoping that he still had a few more blows to go. But at that moment, the monster noticed him and began to turn his angry face around. But at the other end, the guy with the monkey on his head kept provoking the monster and he couldn't understand why that monkey kept swearing. But by doing so, they made the demon leader even angrier and he turned his head again and started spewing flames from his mouth towards the guy with the monkey. But at that moment, 
the blade effect was triggered on the demon leader's leg, and as soon as the units of damage were dealt, the king of leaders began to feel a huge pain in his leg and lost his balance, falling to the ground. Observing the situation, our hero saw that his attack worked, but the damage was still insignificant. But at that moment, the object of the ringleader's anger changed, and he noticed our hero. And as soon as he turned towards him, son, Anne began to apologize to him for distracting him, but now he must present as if he were not here and yelling to his monkey-headed comrade to get him off his back. That guy started running away shouting that Sun An deserved it, and now it's his turn to get his ass handed to him because that monster was only attacking him. But because the monkey kept insulting the demons in the LCD, he got angry again and started attacking the guy. After another attack in the demon's LCD, the guy was able to dodge his attack because he remembered the words the girl said about how to dodge properly and that he didn't think he would be that good at dodging skills. The monkey sitting on his head continued to insult the demon leader, shouting at him that where he ruined his balls, fool, but the guy did not like it because this way he will again fall under the attacks of the demon leader. And once again, he pissed off the demon leader and the anger about the LCD demons reached a maximum. The guy looking at him realized that now he is definitely dead. At this time, our hero continued his attacks on the demon leader's legs, but he didn't expect to have so much health. But guys, it's worth it to hold on for a few more minutes, shouted out son, Anne. But because the respect demons started releasing more fireballs, the guy realized he couldn't last much longer. Sonan continued to attack the demon leader with all his might, and realizing the fact that they were on the verge of life and death, he decided to give it his best shot and threw a few more punches. He still managed to destroy the demon leader and he fell to the ground immobilized. All the early guys started to heal right away after upping their level a few times. Then the notification window began to show that the Monkey King Easter egg time was up, and the effect was removed. The guy was happy that finally this monkey was gone and that he hoped he would never see it again. Sun Ann thought about the fact that the monsters have been defeated. The eggs are activated and the girl should be okay, but it's like he's missing something. After such a difficult battle, he only got a few experience points and feels puffed up and... This demon is supposed to be a boss doc, so why didn't he get any drop-off? But still, Sunan couldn't understand why it was orange or how it was even possible. But then came a notification from the system that the area has been cleared of monsters, and the remaining time for everything is minutes, and a second during this time they must survive at all costs. Also, the restrictions from the area have been removed and Area F is now open. At that moment, another guy started to say that when the restrictions are lifted, they can now get out of this place. But Sun An told him not to run ahead of the train, because they should look around first. A strange character suddenly appeared over their heads and started telling the guys that they had beaten the demon leader and it was a 40th level boss, how could they do it? Our hero, along with the rest of the guys, started to lift their heads up and could not understand what this strange creature was flying above them. Nadpisi replied that her name was Rafaela and she was their guide and it was a pleasure to meet them. From now on, she'll be their fairy godmother. And since they completed the assignment early, so she came to congratulate them all. In fact, they are the first players to complete it at all. But hearing this on the fats made me think that surely there must be other people here besides them. But the other players aren't even close to as strong as they are, and right now they're still running from mobs, and most likely they are the guys too strong. But Rafaela could not understand how the recent arrivals can defeat the boss of the 40th level, and are they cheaters, wondered at the questions. But with a goofy expression on his faces, our hero raised his blade and said they were just lucky to get a good weapon. But Raffaello couldn't believe these words because it sounded too simple, and even though our hero didn't say it was, he couldn't really tell her that he had the information about the Easter eggs. 
Their conversation was immediately interrupted by other players who were coming out of some cave as soon as they saw the bright light at the end of the tunnel. And once outside, the girl started complaining that her legs were going to fall off, and even though the guy wanted to offer her help, she told him to back off because it was all his fault for taking them to the wrong place, so they had to run around for nothing. Another guy who fought alongside our heroes recognized those guys and started asking the girl where they ran off to. Xiao Mei answered the group in a tone so he didn't even have to ask, because they had been circling around all this time and not long ago they had learned that there was an invisible barrier preventing them from getting out of here, but just now an alert came up that the area had been cleared. So they came out to take a look, but they didn't expect to see them alive and well. But what was stranger was that the girl noticed the flying creature and started to ask who she was, but the NPC told her that her name was Raffaella and she was a fairy godmother. And while everyone was gathered, she began to explain that it was time to give out gifts in the form of a survival quest had been completed and they would now be able to get by. Coins. And as soon as the players took a bag in their hands, they realized that each bag contains gold coins, each of which is equal in value to ordinary coins, so-called currency of this world. That was right, Raffaello answered, because these coins are now their one and only currency, and it has several uses. If they want to trade or improve their performance, they will need coins anyway, so the more they don't have, the better. And even if they are a simple bargain with no ability in combat, they can use the money to become an incredible, improved player. After all, money is a great power in this world. And our hero realized that if he's also a merchant, he should take full advantage of it. And after distributing the awards, Xiao Mei started to ask Raffaello what they should do next and where they should go next. But Raffaello inexplicably said they just had to wait. The guys didn't know what she meant or what they were supposed to expect. But soon they all began to see the same notices that many zones began to open and that the demons had retreated. Now they are safe because with the help of their perseverance and endurance they have won. But now they will all get the main mission, which is called the Call of Fate. And although the demons have been driven out, the disaster has attracted other magical beings and they must talk to the commander in each zone to take the expeditionary mission. I today together began to look at the notification window and rejoice that finally the main plot has arrived and that it is an expedition, in a sense, hunting for mobs. Raffaello from then on started saying it would be easy and they should do tasks to pump up their levels. But the players could not understand where to find those who were given them the task. But the answer from Raffaello appeared immediately. She said that those do not worry with them will always be a navigator for the task, and they can even meet other players on the roads. Hearing all this, our fool thought about the fact that the speech is that, from the first to the tenth level, and looks like the rewards of the story, quests will not be great, and why not go a step further? and not go to raise the level himself because he realized that staying here he will not achieve much. But at that moment he remembered that he still owed someone a favor. Turning to the guys he started to ask if there was a healer among them, but the other guy couldn't understand what he was asking. Is he really putting together a squad for himself? But our hero replied that his friend sprained her leg, so she can't walk and he's a warrior so he can't help her. Well, he also decided that for now he'll keep it a secret that he's a merchant. The girl heard it was about her and stood up heavily. She said it wasn't that bad, but our hero saw that she had a serious wound and told her to stop fooling around. Other guys started to answer that they are also warriors and traders, and the third player said that he hoped to be a healer and could cure the girl, but unfortunately he is also a warrior. The girl herself looked at her notification window and realized that she too was a warrior and could not heal herself in any way. What Sun Anne couldn't understand was the fact that how many people are here and none of them are healers. But suddenly the last player who was behind everyone said that he could try because he just saw that he turned out to be a healer 
and he could try to heal her wound. But no sooner had he approached the girl than she began to thank him. But the guy had already started to set about healing the wound and activating his skill. He began to slowly establish her hit points, and at that moment the girl realized that her wound no longer hurt. One of the players saw this and realized that healers are very useful. The girl next to him started tugging on his shirt, saying that why doesn't he convince that guy to join them? Because she would think about it too. Because then they can do the assignments. But, well, our hero seeing that early healed finally calmed down. The girl started to ask the healer if she could ask him something else. The NPC's condition is getting worse and worse and she is sick. And could he cure her as well? Well, as soon as he stretched out his hand and began to apply his healing properties, the notification system threw an error that the treatment of game characters is forbidden by the system. And at that moment, he was thrown aside because the healing process was interrupted. But our hero seeing this couldn't understand what was going on. But on the next notifications, they began to see that in the program, NPC found abnormalities. And our hero began to ask Raffaella what is going on, and is she not the local fairy godmother? But she replied that she also does not know what is going on. After all, healing shouldn't be banned for game characters. But then, why hasn't the system stepped in now? And there is something they don't know about this character. Without thinking long, Raffaello started yelling to her master, asking about what errands they wanted to give her. Soon on, on Raffaello couldn't figure out who she was talking to. But an unknown substance appeared in the air and started telling Raffaella to bring this girl to him and not let anyone know about it. But the life force of Lee Siyuge's character began to fade away. The girl holding her in her arms couldn't understand what to do. She was bleeding. Raffaello flew up to her and began to say that this character is unusual and in her data found with some anomalies provoked by the system, and now it is better not to move her, or it will quickly lead to death. She needs to take her somewhere else because she knows how to help her, and that we need to get her before it's too late. And with the help of Raffaello's move skill, she started to take the girl to her place. Finally, she said that for now, if they were in trouble, they could always call her for help and they could find her on their friends list. But before he left, our hero started yelling at her to wait at least a minute. He still had questions, and that she knows who turned their world into a game and what she knows about the system. But Raffaello started to apologize to our hero, saying that these are not questions she can answer, because it is not her jurisdiction, and she can only answer questions that relate to the content of the game. But what's more important now is that they need to hurry up and get stronger so they don't lose their lives in the future. And as soon as Raffaello flew away, Sunan realized she must know something. The other players couldn't understand why she just picked up and disappeared, and wasn't she going to give them monster hunting equipment? But there is also the fact that they do not know what to do. After all, in addition to completing tasks and leveling up, no matter how you want to think about how to survive in this world. At this point, the girl started approaching our hero, asking what he was going to do next, if he wanted they could do the task together. But the heroes thought that the place he was going to was too dangerous. He couldn't guarantee her safety and he had to go there alone and tell her that he's not planning on going on a mission right now. He has more important things to take care of because the reward for the storyline is too low. It's not profitable for him to go to a more dangerous area to look around. And the fact that he had already made the decision that from now on they needed to separate, but the girl hearing this got a little upset. The hero told her not to worry so much. He had something for her and opened his inventory. He started pulling out an object saying it should protect her if she was in danger. But the girl was too much surprised to see the orange-colored object because it was unique. It's a level A weapon that was recently picked up. The necklace summons demonic power to create a powerful shield or fire attack. The shield is equal to a unit of strength, and it can still be converted into a weapon once the necklace is worn. The player will get a new item to own. Also now you can learn that there is a character type that refers to a healer 
and the special skills of a healer are healing and resilience. Also, if you put everything together, you can get an amazing chain of skills and abilities. The girl raising her hand started telling the hero that she couldn't take it because she almost didn't help him. But Hero couldn't understand what she was talking about because he's just giving it to her for a while and he can use it for now because of her characteristics. She won't take something for nothing, so he has to use trickery. And besides, by giving her this necklace, he can rest assured that she'll be safe because there are plenty of unreliable idiots around. And after all was said and done, the girl still had to accept the gift. Well, our hero told the other player that since he doesn't expect any gifts in the near future, he's giving him coins. That's all he got from the mission. And get rewarded. The guy started telling the hero that he still had a conscience and yet he didn't make a fuss when he handed the weapon to the girl. But lastly, the hero told the guy that he hoped he wouldn't give her any trouble in the future, and he turned and started to leave, saying that this was his farewell to them but they must not forget that she was to treat him to lunch when they met again. After a while, our hero did leave the F-Zone, but he began to notice that there were monster-killed people scattered everywhere on the roads, and at first he thought it was a pretty good world, but now that he sees these disfigured corpses, he can't help but think of the extreme cruelty of the world, but he can't understand who did this to them because then he clearly heard that Raffaello was communicating with someone and there must be some other unknown mastermind behind Raffaello. And who he is and does he really run this world and what he is going to turn it into were so many questions and so few answers. But after a long wander through the ruins, he realized that he would not waste time on idle thoughts because he looked at the minicart and realized that he had come to the right place. And now he has to get stronger and find answers and that it's time to go down to the dungeon. There are two types of monsters in this world. The first is a wild monster wanderers. They are weak and from them falls not so many useful things. And as a rule, they provide raising levels at the initial stage and getting items needed to complete tasks. Well, normal monsters regenerate quickly and they need to be destroyed anew. The second type is monsters and their bosses located in the dungeon. In the dungeon are scattered in different zones. The monsters here give much more rewards and rare items, and moreover many of the ores used to make weapons and armor can only be found here. But naturally it involves a very high risk because there are many different monsters there. The monsters in the dungeon are specially created more dangerous and gloomy whose actions are difficult to predict. One wrong step and you are dead. But our hero was now making his way quickly down to the mall, and he needed to change the shoes he'd been wearing for years and they couldn't take the strain. Uh, luckily, there's a store in the mall or he'd have to look at you for it. Dressed in new clothes, and had he been here before, he wouldn't have even dreamed of buying one, and this jacket is probably very expensive. But after looking at the price tag and the composition of the material, which was cotton, he realized that he was fine in the old shirt. He looked around and realized there must have been a big fight. And when disaster strikes, even gold becomes a worthless piece of metal. Well... He thought it was all the better for him now that he could use this valuable material in the future. And he opened his inventory and began to throw in all the gold that was in the store, because now at this time resources are more important than ever before. And even though the fact that he gave away coins, that should be enough for him. As he approached the portal, he decided that he was now ready and could start hunting strong opponents already. But before entering, the notification system showed that he was about to enter the cave and the difficulty in it rank D, recommended team level, recommended number of participants. But before entering, the notification system suddenly issued an emergency message that he is entering alone because the danger level here is high, but the hero replied that it is not a problem because he is well prepared. And after a few minutes, our hero finally entered the cave of the crystal mole. 
The cave itself was glowing with bright colors because of the fact that there were many different and amazing stones. But our hero's breathing suddenly stopped because it was the first time he had entered a dungeon of this type. As he looked around, he realized that there was ore everywhere in this place. He'll give it to her a little later when he's making himself a new weapon. Our hero had no idea that at that moment a mole started crawling towards him from around the corner. In a swift move, he pounced straight at the player. But as soon as the mole appeared on the light plot, our hero considered it what it really was, a crystal mole at level 11. Now he realized that's what the crystal mole is, which means if he wants to mine the ore, he has to take him out first. But everything was fine because our hero had thought of everything beforehand without opening his inventory. He started pulling out a gold bracelet showing it to the mole. The crystal mole, on the other hand, pulls such placa as its own life and cannot resist treating to gold and shiny objects. The hero realized that if he liked it too much, he could take it by tossing up the golden ring. And as soon as it fell to the ground, Mole was subject to it because he couldn't control his obsession with that gold bracelet. But that was his mistake, for our hero was already behind him in the crystal mole, and with his weapon he began to strike out. And with more and more critical blows, he eventually finished him off. And was able to get experience points. <laughs> well, it is clear the fact that he only got experience. He now knew that it is not worth it in the future to bother and engage them in battle because if they come again, he will just lure them with gold. <laughs> and just as the Taliban said that there shouldn't be too many of them at a time, at the same moment, a multitude of mole silhouettes appeared behind his back. And for some reason, our hero had a chill running down his spine, and hoping he couldn't be such a loser, he began to slowly turn his head around. And turning around completely, he couldn't believe his eyes that a multitude of moles were at his back, and they all started pouncing without any warning. And while the hero began to open his inventory to get out of there, moles have already surrounded him from all sides. Scattering gold all over the place, he couldn't figure out where they all came from. The crystal mole saw the gold and started pouncing on it like they were crazy. But the hero understood the fact that if their leader doesn't come out now, he will waste all the gold and that there is such a movement going on that he can't just sit and watch. And before he could finish speaking, the king of crystal mole moles of the 15th level appeared, and the system immediately issued an emergency message that a danger had appeared. And when he saw the boss of the crystal moles, he immediately started all the fun. And while the Sunday moles were rejoicing in the gold that it all belonged to him alone, our hero was quietly coming up behind him. But before that, he decided to pull out more gold, because he saw how the mole was too satisfied and holding out his hand with a few bars of gold. The hero asked if he wanted some more gold for himself. The boss of the Crystal Moles immediately noticed that it looks like he can't wait to get his hands on all the gold in this cave. It didn't take long for the hero to throw a whole bag of gold at him. And while it was flying all over the cave, the moles started going crazy again and grabbing all the gold flying to the ground. And while they were distracted, the hero began to pull out his blade from his inventory and attack the boss Crystal Moles. Climbing behind his back, he began to launch a few weak attacks, for he was confident in his powers that even the demon leader he could destroy, and he'll be dealt with in no time at all. He's just a regular mole king, but as soon as the hero struck a few blows and removed the crystal mole's hit points, the mole immediately began to detect its opponent, and swinging his huge paw, he tossed the heroes aside who began to realize he was getting excited too soon, but didn't understand why he thought he'd be so easy to beat. But then it came to him that this mole is not a demon but an animal, and a blade of bone cannot inflict him on the city, and fighting him will not be easier than fighting with the leader of demons. And I realize the fact that he's in a very bad situation right now. After all, Everywhere he looked, he began to be surrounded by a multitude of crystal moles, and there was no way out just to fight anymore. I understand the fact that he's in total danger now and that he needs to come up with a new strategy to survive in this dungeon. 
But his musings were interrupted when a multitude of moles began to attack simultaneously from different directions. And the fact that he realized that if he spent all his energy on the small ones, he would have the strength left to defeat the biggest boss of the crystal moles. But when he looked at the boss of the crystal moles, he couldn't understand why he was looking at him like that. And killed countless crystal moles, and the hero realized he couldn't go on like this. And the only chance he has to save himself now is to climb higher. He ducked down and decided he was going to jump up then jam his blade into the wall and climb up. And it's not that hard and it should work. But as soon as he jumped up, I realized that I flew very high and I don't understand the fact how he did it, but succeeded because he had enough agility points and didn't think it could pump up his body. But don't think about it now because there are still some unresolved issues. After all, our hero cannot fight them all alone, and all he can do now is to fight off the king and need to find a way to kill him, or all his plans will go to hell. Wondering how he could do it, because besides gold, what else could he use? And as soon as he looked in his inventory, he immediately thought of the fact that it was a good thing he went into that abandoned mall and picked up all sorts of stuff. But at this time, the boss of the Crystal Moles was very angry and ferocious. Before our hero knew it, the evil boss had already jumped on the rock to him, but realizes the fact that it will save him a lot of trouble because it turns out that the king of the Crystal Moles really wants a lot of gold. And since he wants it so badly, they'll just make a bet. And all the gold he likes so much, he'll give it to him because it's all he has. If, of course, he misses it, then all this good will be his. But asking him again if he'd dare to take it, he's not talking to a wall. But at that moment, the king of the crystal mole suddenly started growling loudly, and he didn't really like it. He just wanted to take all the gold for himself. Without thinking, the crystal king began to pounce on our hero who was standing not far from him. At this point, our hero has a change of heart, and he takes it all at once. And somehow the crystal moles fell to the ground with a goofy look on their face. All because it saw our hero take out a hot bottle and start lighting the fuse. Because a little earlier he had prepared a homemade Molotov cocktail for a reason. And the fact that he poured fuel on the gold in the beginning, and that he predicted he'd go after the gold like a lunatic and now he will get his payback for his greed with all his might, our hero started throwing his homemade Molotov cocktail towards the king of moles, screaming that now they're all going to see a fried mole. And the same as soon as the Molotov cocktail flew to him, he began to catch fire with bright flames and lose a lot of health reserves. And as it continued to burn brightly, the mole couldn't get out of those flames. Smiling, our hero watched the situation and realized that even if they did not die, at least their skin would burn to the ground. But suddenly your crystal moles started bouncing off to the side and skittering across the ground. The hero realized that he couldn't let him call in more moles now and needed to get it over with quickly. And approaching the king of crystal moles, our hero began to shout that his enemy is here and if he has the will, he must fight him alone. But at that moment, the crystal king noticed our hero again and with a very angry expression began to look at her. But our hero noticed that all this time the king of the crystal moles had up his sleeve. For with his ability for crowd control without the aid of it, he blinded our hero which made him realize he couldn't see anything. And the countdown showed that there were seconds left and that this ability passed on by the Crystal King from generation to generation allows him to emit a cloud of black smoke from the King's body, blinding a target within a radius of meters. For seconds, for our hero could still hear the game's prompts. And each time he takes damage inside the Black Veil, the countdown will increase by seconds the hero has realized he can't be allowed to hit him again. And even though he has to hold out until the end of the countdown, he can still win, but he will responsibly not miss this great opportunity to attack him. Because if our hero was the mole all along, he was already at his back. And realize this factor, our hero swung his blade straight behind his back, realizing that his enemy was standing there. 
And once he realized he'd actually ducked and retaliated, the Mole King suddenly launched his indestructible attack directly at our hero, causing him to feel a pain in his stomach. And I realized the fact that if he gets another attack like that, he's going to have to kiss his life goodbye. Jumping aside, he saw that the Mole King had not stopped launching his indestructible attacks. But when he looked at the time counter, the hero realized that he had more and more time and he couldn't wait any longer. And he needs to get out of here before the Mole King finishes him off. Because now it could end at any second because the Mole King has already swung his huge paw. At the same moment, the notification window started showing that his health was too low and that it was too late. After all, he had taken too much damage and couldn't dodge even once right now. And the fact that it's only getting worse by the minute. And not only did the effect not disappear, but it doubled in size and he was too arrogant to allow himself to break into that dungeon alone. And I guess the fact that his Easter eggs and intelligence, he thought he could easily pull it off, but it was over before it even started, and whether he should use his trump card. So early on, he wondered, realizing that it's all in vain because if he can't handle the weight, the outcome is unlikely to change, and if he gets hit under these conditions, he's dead for sure. And after getting a few more hits in a year of Kino to the closest to the rock, and at that moment he saw that he had only percent left. His strength reserves the notification window still did not stop popping up in front of his eyes with the text that he had too little health left. Realizing the fact that he's dying, his health is almost at zero, and soon it will be too late if he doesn't use the Easter egg. But yet his hand still hesitates as if his brain is deliberately setting it up. And while the huge king of moles lifted the stone to finish off the hero, he thought about the fact that maybe there is another way out, and whether there could be any other way out, and maybe he missed some important information. But as he started going through the options, he began to remember that there are Easter egg double classes and the hardest thing to accomplish. Or maybe it's the items, especially at this time when resources are extremely important, and he can't regret giving near demon Zaihui even if it cost him his life. And the fact that his only weapons were the bone blade given to him by An Kun, which were completely useless now, but still he didn't understand what to do to turn this game around. Well, at that moment he remembered that he had recently received the invisible and that he still had another reward from An Kun. After all, he had completely forgotten about them because of his invisibility and all this time he had been wasting away on these beatings. And as soon as a huge stone began to fly in the direction where our hero stood, he shouted for the system to activate invisible glasses. But the stone that came was very close to the hero and he realized that luckily his sight had returned if one more second he would have died. And thanks to An Kun, he is alive now and that he helped him again, because with the invisible black-rimmed glasses he gives the effect of 100% vision plus resistance to blinding. Raising his blade and the hero began to tell the king of the moles that he had gotten rid of the veil and did he surprise him with it. But he needn't worry now for he has another surprise for him. As soon as Sun Anya's health has dropped to one unit of HP, the Easter egg of the last battle has started because the player has reached this phase when he has only one unit of health left. The rest of his stats are doubled for minutes. However, as soon as the time runs out, the player's stats will have back to their original form. And when the King of the Moles saw this, he started squeaking in fear, backing away. For he saw before him a player who could feel his power overflowing his body. And the aura that emanated from Sun An immediately shocked the Mole King. He began to squeak loudly, but that didn't stop Sun An. He was already speeding towards him to finish him off. Swinging a few times, he began to launch attacks with his weapon. And as soon as he reached the target, he realized that he is really strong now and can kill this King of Moles because his stats have doubled, so he can clearly see all the King's movements. But at the same time, he's still weak in one hit, so he needs to be very careful. Even if the King of Cats uses the same techniques, but now he's determined not to lose to him again, 
because he wants to. Become king yourself and destroy every enemy in your path. At the same time, other players watching the girl could not understand whether those people who fight are not cheaters because it is not even a task and not really fierce. And the fact that level 6 fruit monkeys are literally nothing to her. After all, she's taken on all the monsters of the zone and the fact that these guys don't understand why they're even here. I mean, they don't even have to do anything, but still, it's cool for them to sit there and watch someone earn them experience. But the girl destroying the monsters turned around and started telling the players that it's okay she can protect everyone and they can just pick up all the items because... With Sun Anya's weapon, these monsters are like dirt under the fingernail. And the fact that this weapon is truly amazing and it can easily destroy the nearest monster and higher ranked monsters. But as soon as she destroyed all the monsters in the area, her sickle turned back into a necklace and the girl wondered what Sun An was doing now. Other players suddenly began to say that they really cannot understand Sun Anya. He did not join anyone's team and did not leave himself such a useful weapon. And what really decided to do? Did he really intend to search the dungeon alone? Other players who heard this started to say that this is ridiculous because how can someone go to a convenient place alone and he himself has been working on the data all this time so he should know that it takes at least five people to go there. The girl started to reply that she doesn't think he would do something he's not percent sure about. But another player told the girl that she trusts Sun Anu too much, and she should remember how much of a slave he was when he worked at the company and maybe he's already dead. But hearing all this, the girl replied in a serious tone to her companion that Sun Anya, whom she knew, more alive than anyone currently in this territory. But at this time... Sun Anya was finally able to destroy the Mole King, and the notification window started showing him that he had finally raised his next level, and his health had been fully restored. Lying on the ground, he was overjoyed that he had finally won, and was able to reach the tenth level now he has access to the skill acquisition function, and he has unlocked the first skill slot, and now he needs to choose whether he is ready to take the new skill of Crystal King, after all, it's an ability he's barely curbed who wouldn't take it. After all, it's an S-rank skill. And as soon as he confirmed receipt, the notification system showed that he had gotten the first skill, Dark Veil. After receiving it, he wondered how the skills worked in the new world after all. New slots for skills are opened on the 10th, 30th, 60th, and 90th levels due to the skill can only be obtained if the player has a slot unlocked from it. And in addition... Skills can be obtained through battle with monsters alone or in teams, and different monsters have different skills. Players can choose the skill they want, but taking a skill once or replace it will no longer be possible under normal circumstances. And of course, skills also have their early and lessons. And in total, there are three ranks, S, A, and B, from how strong the monster depends on the rank of the skill. Most skills can be distributed in this way. Dungeon Bosses S-rank rare and high-class monsters A-rank monsters from which skills fall B-rank ordinary monsters that do not have special names and descriptions And skills dropped from defeated monsters always have an initial first level to improve the skill and raise their level Players need to use coins But looking at the notification window our player was surprised that in order to hang a level of Dark Veil, he needed a million coins. And even if leveling up will bring him a lot of conclusions, isn't it too expensive? He thought, he is after all to the next levels will cost him millions. And now he understood why Raffaello said about the importance of the coin, even a simple leveling up costs so much money and that most likely all the others will be the same, different. But it's all right now, Sun Anya thought, because he has the special crystal and the king's crown. And that money is what he came here for, and once he had the potions ready, he decided it was time to start. Turning his head, he saw a lot of small moles who also couldn't wait to get to work, and telling them that they don't need to be so aggressive anymore because their king is dead and there's no need to fight him anymore. And by activating a special Krite crystal, 
He told them to live together, and from now on, they are all his servants. And as soon as he activated the crystal, a tremendous energy began to fly throughout his bloodstream. The notification system started showing that he was controlling the crystal moles. But Sun An himself didn't expect that there would be so many of them, and now he doesn't have to worry that he'll be short of manpower, and starts listing the moles he gave out orders that each of them take control of the moles and go to the crystal mines in the east, and the third and fourth they go to the west. The fifth and sixth year takes also on moles and goes south, and the seventh and eighth year to the north. And as of now, Sun An's mining team is officially established and the way he is their father and mentor, he relies on them so they should bring him luck and he can count on them. Raising his hand with the crystal, he finished the story and they all started jumping off in different directions. And as soon as they ran away, Sun Anya thought that everything was going according to his plan. But at that moment, there was another mole who started beeping at him. Because he wanted to help too, but he was too young. Sun Anya couldn't believe that someone would think there'd be a baby like that here. But after stroking his head, he said she was too young to help. And besides, he already has enough workers, so he can do what he wants and there's no need for him to labor. The little mole started to cry because he also wanted to be useful. But soon An started to tell him not to get upset because he would think of something. But he turned around and started pointing out to the other moles that he could be his auditor and help him check how hard the rest of them were working. Total who works hard he should be rewarded with one gold coin, but he can't cover someone or take the coins for himself if the work goes up, he will be rewarded again. Another thing is that from now on, his name will be Little Zero and he'll be his boss. And as soon as the mole got a coin for encouragement, he got up on the dais and began to rush the other moles to work diligently. Seeing this, Sun An realized that he could be relied on, and the number of crystals increased greatly. And he's also got some more crystals, so he can make some weapons. A cool crystal is a magical crystal rock mineral, mined in a dungeon classified as a magical crystal of some order can be used in the crafting of weapon items and two of these cool crystals can be used to create one random item suitable for a player, level. And most likely Sun An improved the item rank D with AR percent error, but there is a small chance of as much as bar percent that he will get rank C, an early B item depends on the type of magic crystals, all simply the more difficult. The level of the dungeon, the better the type of crystal, and therefore a higher chance of obtaining an item of high ranking. Sun An also noticed that he had a crystal armband and a new stone helmet. But as soon as he tried on the new stone helmet, he saw that the features are almost the same. Percent damage reduction makes essentially no difference, and it's probably one of the worst D-rank items ever. But another way to classify items is color rank. S red rank, a purple rank, C blue rank, E green, and rank E white. И также характеристики по рангу предметов отличаются друг от друга. Различаются также характеристики и равных по рангу предметов. Меч из кости Сонь Аня в самом низу ранга, и у него ранг и только потому, что он имеет специальную возможность нанесения большого урона демонической расе. Anyway, there's no rush. This is just the beginning, and eventually he can just keep crushing crystals with the Easter egg. And other players have a limit on how many minerals they can mine, but he doesn't have one right now. He didn't realize how long he needed to be here. If he stayed in the dungeon too long, the other players would overtake his level. And the most important thing is the money now. After all, it takes about a minute for each badass to get one crystal. The efficiency of two such moles is equal to the work of one person. Thinking this way, if he wants to get sets of items he needs, crystals. If each mole will work an average of hours per day, then at the end of the day they will be approximately crystals total. He has working moles. That means he has days to hang on to his level and get enough materials to level up. 
From the alloy, he decided he needed to wait days. This is his first step to power. But at that moment, the little mole appeared and started beeping very loudly. Sun An, eating his food, started to leave the tent, asking him what happened, but little mole started to say that the other moles started fighting. Mole number three and number five, I shared the big crystal they found, and they're fighting over who found it first for him. But hearing all this, Sun An rejoiced for a second that they were fighting over him, and he was a little touched by it. But still he understood their zeal, and began to explain to them that he had gold for each of them, and they were obliged to make up after all, and should not get into a fight over such trifles. And the first person he wanted to thank was the little mole who, through his diligence, reported to him the trouble that had occurred. And right after that, he started yelling to the other cards that if they wanted to get the reward, they had to work especially hard, and he was counting on them. After all, thanks to them, he will be able to harvest such a bountiful crop in such a short period of time. Because of these days, he'll be able to create a whole bunch of magic items. In fact, he created a total of items and nine times he failed. This is because the chance of success is not all percent. And among the whole pile, only the item with rank C, in the case of which he has already managed to put on all the others, is rank D. But still, he can sell them for a good price on the NPS marketplace. However, to meet the NPC merchant, he will need to clean up this dungeon, which means he will need to get rid of all of his moles. But still, he can't do it because over the days he's realized that he's actually not happy with Q. But something inside him told him that he had to be cruel and selfish. If he planned to outdo, all victims could not be avoided, and he had to get to the traffickers. But looking at the little kitten, he realized he didn't have to be so determined. If he makes Baby Czar his pet, then the dungeon rules won't apply to him. You decided to take he started a contract with Crystal Mole, and now Crystal Mole is his personal pet. And the last order for the day he gave to his little pet was that it would be his companion. That shouldn't redeem him much. But at that moment, Raffaello appeared and started shouting, What's going on here? And why are there so many objects here? And with her finger on the objects, she began to ask our hero why he was here again as son, and didn't understand where she had come from. Raffaello started telling him that he was already suspicious when he killed the 40th level boss, and now he's got this pile of items from somewhere, and it doesn't matter how he sees it, because it's not normal, and he'd better make it very clear to her now, and if he's a cheater, she's not going to let him get away with it, and that he controls an army of moles to mine his crystals. Oh, and has a whole bunch of precious objects and things. Sun An must now quickly explain to her that he really is a cheater. Sun An couldn't figure out what she was doing here. And could she really figure out that he was using Easter eggs? But why now? But I explained to her that cheating is impossible in this game. But as he thought about it, he realized that it was unlikely that she had found out the fact that we were asking means that she doesn't know anything about the eggs, and he could still find out the truth and need to somehow sneak the stuff away without her noticing it. And picking up a magical crystal, he began to tell her that if she asked, it's mining cool crystals, it's his own power. It allows him to control the map, and is it cheating? He asked her a question. Well, Raffaello decided to look at it all herself, but our hero couldn't understand if she was going to take it back after he'd worked so hard to get it. But Raffaello said, why would she do that? She just wanted to look at it. And as soon as he gave her the magic crystal, she realized it was definitely a game piece, but it still doesn't explain the fact why so many badasses are acting on Sun An's orders. And after making sure it's okay, she returns it to him as promised, this magical crystal. But still, she kept asking what about that mountain, and he shouldn't even think of dodging the question. But here, Sun An realized that he didn't have time to change the subject. Raffaello went on to say that, under normal circumstances, all dungeon resources are severely limited in quantity, how he managed to obtain so many crystals, and more importantly, how he is going to explain it. 
Sun An didn't fully understand what he had to tell her now for her to believe him, and after a moment's thought, he told her that he didn't really know it either. He originally wanted to get some crystals, but it turned out there was a lot more, so he just sat down and started crafting all these things, and there was no system error notification. If he had seen the premises, then he would know the reason for all this. But in fact, he realized that if he wasn't caught, he wasn't a thief and she wouldn't do anything to him. But still, Rafaela couldn't understand. How is this even possible? And besides him, there are other players here, but Sun Ann replied that no, his little bros can confirm it, and the other moles immediately started saying that their boss is absolutely right. But still, Raffaello started to say that she came here for the complaints of other players that they could not enter this dungeon, but she did not think that the problem would be so serious. Sunin heard this and thought that if he had been here too long, he had prevented other players from entering. But Raffaella continued to ask soon, and if he really didn't know anything or if he was playing dumb, and right now he'd better not lie. But as soon as he started to say that he was telling the truth, he was not lying. A notification about the Easter egg appeared in front of him that it had been activated and the crystals had been restored. Raffaello saw this notice that the mole crystals and crystal cruets are in a symbiotic relationship until the number of mole crystals exceeds the crystals and they will automatically regenerate. And then Raffaello realized that this is not from the game. Sun An immediately started saying that she remembered that she forgot to do something and it was probably time for him to leave now. Well, Raffaello got really angry and started yelling at her that he was cheating on her and percent he was using holes in the game system. He said he didn't know anything, but he kept yelling back at her to calm down and let him explain everything. But she didn't want to listen to him. And with the help of her correction skills, she started saying that she wouldn't let him use all sorts of realized it's pretty bad if she keeps up the Easter egg disappears. But at that point, there was an alert system that said that fixing is not possible. This feature is not against the game rules and there is no need for fixing it. But Raffaello certainly didn't expect that with the surprise of seeing this notice. Sun Ann realized that the system can't get rid of Easter eggs, and moreover, it defines them as something normal. And for him, it was unexpected. She kept saying that it's impossible even with things being normal, but our hero realized that it seems that the biggest bock of this game is exactly that. She sees Easter eggs, but still allows them to be used. And after several failures, Raffaello still put her hands down, not realizing what was going on here. Sun Ann started to explain what he had already said, that he hadn't cheated from the beginning, and even the game system says that things are fine, so there's no need to keep trying to fix it. On Raffaello still began to say what she would not let injustice destroy this world, and what she did not want, but to use the last resort is to destroy all the chosen moles. And right after that, our hero saw that the notification system started showing that there were moles destroyed all over the neighborhood. But still, he didn't want to lose everyone else and started ordering his baby to hide in the blindfold and the quicker he could. Raffaello said that she would destroy his slaves and stop him. It's not clear why the system counts it as a murder and gives him free experience points and he's lucky that it's only like that. Notwithstanding all this, our hero took out his blade and began to attack Raffaella, who was floating in the air. She couldn't believe her eyes that he dared to attack her, but Sun Ann insisted that she stop killing all the moles immediately. But she couldn't stop it because it was too late and the command can't be undone. Once it's activated, it's Raffaello's justice. Justice responded to the hero saying that taking someone else's life is not justice and she's just pathetic. But in the same second, the Easter egg began to activate and the notification system showed that the conditions of killing monsters with your own hands in one action and levels that are equal to his or higher. When meeting an enemy that is times more powerful than him, his stats will be increased. 
Raffaello also saw the notification system and started saying that there is a hole in the system again, and she is very angry now. But Sun Ann's irritated voice started telling her that he was able to get a rare ability because of her justice, and that she should be furious right now. But for general information, she's also going to use Annihilation to get rid of him. Raffaello started yelling at Raffaello that he can't do anything to her because he's just an arrogant cheater. Sun An replied that he was bluffing and Annihilation is not a team like everyone else here and you need a clear number of targets chosen and the total number of targets chosen is all monsters, excluding Raffaello Baby Zero and his. But after looking at her, he realized that judging by her behavior, his lion was quite successful and commands don't apply to players. Raffaello, meanwhile, was hovering in the same place she was realizing the fact that he wouldn't do anything to her. Let's at the same moment through the tunnel began to want to traveling merchant who appears after clearing the dungeon to buy or resell items and sometimes sells goods needed by players. And noticing the fact that he had come to this dungeon at the wrong time, he began to say that he would just go somewhere else and he should not interfere with their conversation. Sun Ann stretched out her hand to stop him from walking because he was just in time and he had been waiting for him forever. He shouldn't worry anymore because Raffaello, she won't interfere with them. She can't do anything to him and now they have to discuss something. But Raffaello still kept fixing Sun An. But the notification system kept showing that it was impossible and the command could not be used on players. Sun Ann, seeing that she wouldn't do anything to him, turned around and started telling the NPC not to take it too hard because she had PMS. Raffaello, on the other hand, couldn't stop yelling at Soon An to turn around and look at her. She was pissed off that she couldn't deal with him and didn't understand the fact where the cheater came from. But at that moment, her notification window showed that there was an emergency and some player of hers had sent her a request for help and she would need to leave Sun Ann, who was really pissing her off. But as she left, she just shouted to him that she'd come back for him. And now she can't do anything to him, but she'll find a way to stop him. Turning around, Sun Ann finally exhaled the fact that she was gone, and even though she helped him earn a difficult achievement, but still he can't be at ease all percent. He still feels the wine because of his little ones, and they are just innocent laborers. Turning back to the merchant, he said for them to avoid the formalities and he could call him simply Sun. And the merchant, on the other hand, replied that he would buy one item for. But Sun An didn't like it because it was too little, and it was vital for him to fool the common players and counted all the material, time and chances of success spent on manufacturing, only the cost of production would be. And now most of the players are leveled up so the demand for items will be very high, even if he resells them one item for, and there will be no questions asked. And besides, he has over 10,000 pieces of equipment here, and does he really think that? That's an appropriate price. The merchant replied that why doesn't he set the price himself? Without a second thought, Sun An raised his finger up and said he wanted but the haggler didn't like it and said that maybe and maybe they wouldn't agree on the thousands. But then our hero offered. But the merchant said that and he'd lose all the money if he went ahead. But the hero didn't stop and said that if he didn't accept, there would be no deal. The merchant gave the last price. He can't really give more than that. But still, the deal was made. But our hero was concerned that he was sorry to give away such items for such a small price. And seeing that all the items started flying into the merchant's backpack, he didn't think that there would be so many of them. But the merchant that if players continue to level up, then all these unranked items will be of no use to them and he will lose a lot of money. Sun An said with a thumbs up that he shouldn't worry so much because he has a plan for such a case and he will give him C-rank items. And yet this is their first transaction. So consider it a welcome gift, because the value of each is about thousands, and the merchant couldn't understand if he was willing to give it all away for nothing. Sun An, to listen to the end, 
He will offer the players to play the lottery and naturally spin the drum. Mostly, they will get things rank D, but they will always have a small chance to win rank C, because now in the stores, to find things rank C. The task is not easy. And by the way, the chance to win the bonus rank C is equal to percent. And this means that he will sell a lot of things, Oang D. Hearing all this haggling started asking, is he really God in business? And how such a marvelous idea came to him, and that he would definitely be his friend. And while the merchant pulled something out of his backpack and the hero realized that he should thank the man who came up with the idea of playing things and he just borrowed it. But suddenly the merchant turned around and started saying that he would give him coins. <laughs> Soon An realized that he's something he can't forget it. That the crown of greed is activated and the price for each item plus. The total cost is coins. The merchant has already started holding out the VIP card, saying that there is a million in cash and a million in non-cash on the VIP card. And this card is certified by the New World Fee. If he goes to the place where the Zone A, he will be given special offers and VIP service. Sun An extending his hand. There was no way he could refuse such a marvelous opportunity. And as soon as he took the card in his hand, the notification system showed that a new achievement billionaire had been obtained, and the attitude towards him on all NPC bases increased to the level of... And when he looked at the coins he had, he realized he was getting closer to his goal. Sun An hugged the merchant and began to tell him not to get lost because he would have more goods for him, but the merchant replied that he would be his VIP client. After all, he had been so kind to him, and he should let him thank him. Sun An was thrilled that there were so many nice gifts and that there was a reward for a full-scale relationship with the merchant. And the gift was holy water that can be used at any time and it destroys any negative effects, sets the entire health scale and hit points. And the merchant started saying that it was very rare. That's why he only had three bottles. If it wasn't Sun An, he wouldn't even dare to take them out. Sun An took the bottle in his hands and realized that now he could take big risks. As he left, the merchant told Sun An that if they were finished, he would continue on his way and hurry up to sell it all and get his money. But Sun An asked him to wait a little longer, and he needs something else, and if he has any white powder... And then the haggler left, and the notification showed that the mole cave had been cleaned out, exiting the teleporter sun, and finally exhaled the fact that he was done with it, and now he'll be in recovery mode. And of course, it was difficult, but in the end, he did everything he wanted to do and got skills, items, and money, and probably now needs to modify the weapons. And deciding that he was going to go right now, he started to get on the road. But a while later, he couldn't believe what he'd just seen. As the cab driver started pouncing on him, saying where he was going if he wanted to get in the car, they know this city like the back of their hand. Bouncing back, he started to tell him to let them give him some thought. But still, he didn't realize what had happened while he wasn't here. But at that moment, a huge red car appeared and drove right behind Sun Anyu's back. And the man who was sitting behind the creme de la creme of the car started telling Sun, and that if he needed a car, then he would, yes, throw it to the target with the winder, and he can tell him all about the world. The other cab drivers started yelling at the guy, is it really him again? It's not his territory, and they won't let him steal their customers anymore. But immediately they switched to Sun Anu, saying that they would give him a percent discount. But still, our hero realized that that driver looked more reliable and he would most likely go with him, and that he can get answers to his questions about the new world. And as soon as Sun An jumped into the car, started telling the driver to keep on the mountain to Zone G. The guy started to thank him for choosing his cab, but told him to buckle up. And as they drove away, they only heard other cab drivers shouting in their backs that they were the first ones to come here. Sitting in the car, son, Anne started asking this guy, who were these people? 
and why were they lined up in front of the entrance to the dungeon? To which the guy started to reply that they're trying to make money that way and people like them are in the business of transporting people from one place to another for a living. And why are they across from the dungeon? It's because it's a... But Sunan's friend said that he thought and realized that they get a lot, but why don't they just go and start killing monsters and doing missions? It's a faster way to get coins. But suddenly the driver of the car started telling our hero that he bet he's good at games. Sun Ann hearing this couldn't understand why. But the guy started to answer that it's not bad, it's good. It's just that not everyone can adapt to the innovations of this world. After saying that, he took out a pack of cigarettes and started to offer them to Sun An, but Sun An refused. The man went on to say that the world has taken on such a look, very unexpected for them a real miracle to be able to survive in a new environment, and this he does not even stammer a normal quiet existence. And those people were across the dungeon because they can't find monsters to kill. So they're relying on the experience of their past jobs and trying to make a buck. But Sun An heard these words and couldn't understand why they couldn't find them, because it can't be the monsters are constantly being reborn, and there are just so many of them, at least the wild monsters. The man replied that there are many, but you have to get to them first. And most importantly, if they have already scored places, rebirth monsters behind them. So simple players with low level cannot even get close to them. Well, when he heard that, it's about Spruce and Guild's son, and started telling him that he's been in the dungeon for too long and he's missed a lot. So don't quite understand this whole Guild's thing. Can he explain it to him? Well, the man replied that well, and he's not wrong to ask him that, and he's the only one here who knows everything. And so he began to say that there are only three main guilds. One is Ryder, and the other is the Starcoin League, and the last is Dongshan. But the strongest group is from the Riders. He heard that their leader has reached level 20. And the fact that more than percent and high-level players of the world are in this group, their goal is to become at the top of this world. Starcoin League, each member of this group, have at least on deposit controlling important resources of the game. Well, but Don Shan do not capture and occupy low-level dungeons and beds of other players to raise their level the most numerous guild and the most hated guild of all. On Heroes, hearing the name Li Jejui realized it was familiar to him. But that guy started saying that the Dong Shan people are bad. They specialize in looting items and resources from other players and verbs and people. And every place, rebirth of low-level monsters is occupied by them. That's why they level up so slowly and he'd better never cross them. Sun An already realized that the looting of items and the guild. He didn't think things could change so drastically in just days. And from then on, nothing can be resolved peacefully and he must become... After some time, they still such got to the place, and our hero gave the driver gold coins for the trip. Lastly, that guy decided to ask Sun, and that, is he really going to wander around here alone, and there are many wild monsters of level and above, and it will be difficult to fight them alone? Sun Ann replied that it was fine. He was used to doing it alone, and the wild monsters he had recently dungeoned single-handedly cleaned up. But another thing the driver said is that if he gets into trouble, he should just run away because life itself is important what they have. And if he can't defeat the monster, he can just run away, and there's no shame in trying to survive. With a smile on his face, Soon An thanked him for those words. And lastly, the guy said he was on his way, and if he needed anything, he could text him. As he looked at the guy, Sun An thought about the fact that he couldn't even remember the last time someone cared about him. Well, when he opened his notification window, he friended that guy. And realizing the fact that he was so busy, he forgot to add Zai Hui as a friend, and now he's wondering how she's doing. She has the demon eye, though, so that shouldn't be a problem. But suddenly he began to hear some voices coming from the entrances to the caves where the other guys were yelling at them to move and let them inside already. Looking out of the bushes, 
Sun An couldn't realize if there was already someone here. The others started shouting that they have a lot of people and they can sweep the dungeons. And why aren't they letting them in? But the one who was guarding the dungeon started pointing his blade at the other players with words that he had said earlier they had not reached the level and they can't go into the dungeon. Those who guarded the dungeons were NPCs in which called guards with an average level above will guard especially dangerous dungeons, not allowing the premature death of players, and no matter how loyal the guards, they will still have bad habits. The guards kept saying that if they're below level 20, they're not allowed in. But the player standing in front of the guard started saying that maybe they don't realize what they're capable of because he's the deputy master of the Riders Guild and he's made a sweep of five dungeons, and he's the second strongest in the most powerful guild. And if there's anything in this game that he can't... But the Guardian kept insisting that if the level does not meet the requirements, they will not enter such a game rules. Smiling, the guy started saying to hell with the rules. He's just gonna break them and go for broke. When she heard her father, she started pulling out her weapons, telling them that if they dared, they would know no mercy. Sun An, who started to approach the other players, told them not to let the guards touch you and that he never thought he'd meet the food members so soon and even the deputy master. But those players started turning their voices around, asking who he was. Sun An went on to say that even if he defeated them, would he be able to get away with attacking an NPC? But the guy couldn't figure out what the punishment was and what the hell he was talking about. He'd never heard of it. But our hero said just because he doesn't know about it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, and he can ask NPCs. They won't lie for sure. And the NPCs began to say that he was right. If they had gotten through, their names would immediately be blacklisted in the Dungeon Kingdom of Cardio, and that this kingdom is the largest in the New World NPCs, and that by doing so they would be banned from the dungeon for days. The deputy director immediately realized that it was a good thing they didn't break in and that it was true. But he immediately told his partner Marty to check his role and level and activated her skill she, using the detective watch, this item giving the investigative skill including information about the player's role and level. But as soon as she looked at our hero, he said he wanted to go to the dungeon too. The NPC looked at him and started saying that he hadn't reached level 20 either, and because of that, they had nothing to talk about. Sun An opened my inventory and started telling NPCs not to jump to conclusions, and once he built the tent and told the NPCs it was so crowded they needed to talk in private, the other players couldn't figure out what this was about. Could he really be up to something in his tent? And once the other NPCs started to approach the tent, the head guard said he could handle it and they should continue to guard the dungeon. Players who were watching the situation began to talk about the fact that he is not really going, but the girl began to tell the captain that this guy's name is Sun An, and he is a 14th level warrior, and he is not in any guild. He is not a member of anything special, no. But she didn't understand what they should do. The captain told her they would wait until he came out of his tent. After all, he just said that his goal is also a dungeon and he wants to see what he'll accomplish. Inside the tent, the head guard began to ask our hero what he meant. Sun An started to reply that it's nothing like that. He just wants to be friends with the head guard. And pulling out a huge bag with thousands of gold coins, he told him he wanted to give them a drink but the head guard rudely began to answer him that he can afford it, because he is an honest, law-abiding citizen and does not think he is so easy to bribe, but son, and only thought that at least he took his eyes off the money before saying such things. And with a wave of his hand, he added more. Of gold coins said that he apologized, and he did not express his sincerity to them enough. The head guard couldn't realize that this demon couldn't hold back. But still, he took the gold coins and told Sun An that from now on they are friends. And normally, he is not like this. But he gave him so much that he can't say no. Sun An realized that as expected, it is very easy to live when he is rich. 
and with the help of an Easter egg, he can increase the level of favorability of NPCs with the help of money. Their amount depends on the role of NPCs instead of racking your brains trying to please others, should use money is still cheating. But then he decided to ask the chief guardian if he could go into the dungeon, but the chief guardian looked away and said that friends are friends, but the question of entry is a tough one. But as soon as our hero added more gold coins and said that he thought they would find a solution for him, the head guard immediately replied that no problem they would let him in. After all, he has a special pass just for his case, and he's been waiting for it. The other players outside couldn't understand why this kid is still here. He's the one who doesn't consume, they wondered. The captain realized he'd just been thrown out. But inside the tent, the chief guardian began to explain that he had been awarded a special pass for fearlessly risking his life defeating numerous enemies. If their relationship wasn't so great, he wouldn't have given him anything. And there might be some malfunctions, but they were unlikely to affect anything. Taken aback, Soon An told him that it wasn't the tent that could be his Achilles' heel, but the chief guardian began to say that he would never get the money back again. Sun An couldn't understand who designed this thing in the first place and whether it was unfair to single players like him because the card said he had to bring a partner to enter the dungeon. But as soon as he came out of the tent, the captain started telling him that it looked like he'd noticed he'd been given something useful and whether he'd let him. Look at it on our hero didn't understand why they were still here. But at that moment, the captain began to emit a huge aura and say, oh, they were actually here first, and aren't they entitled to the same thing? Sun An realized that this guy looks threatening and he'll kill him if he says no. But unfortunately for him, it won't work with him. And raising his hand, he said, it's a pass as he can give it away. Just like that. If he wants this pass, then no problem at all. They can discuss the terms. Hearing this, the captain wondered if he really did have a pass and decided to ask what terms he was offering, to which our hero replied that he very constantly wants half of the rewards from the dungeon and the entire loot from the final boss. The other guy who was standing next to the captain started rude to the hero that he's laughing at them. If they give him half of it, they'll have nothing left. The captain briefly said the conditions were too harsh, and how about they help him clean up the dungeon and in return he joins their guild, and what he must understand to be personally invited to be the guild master's deputy is an incredible honor, and with the help of his special double-hearted role, it is his innate ability to split the mind thereby better understanding and controlling his abilities, have twice as many skills he began to press sun and more and more on Sun N. But our hero reflected that he would never have thought that he had a special role he is trying to show the power of the raiders, however he is not interested. Moreover, they will hinder his progress, and answering briefly that he is not interested in his proposal. After all, the items are much more valuable to him. But another player standing near the captain continued to be rude about how he knows how many people wanted to join them but couldn't, and he should stop being so ungrateful. The captain realized the fact that he didn't want to and agreed to that. On Fats told another player to look. Even his captain agreed. But at this point he started swinging his knuckles saying that he would find out if he had skills first. Sun An realized that he was about to be killed. Another player standing next to the captain started to tell the others to use their skills, but the head guard suddenly jumped off his seat shouting that such fights are forbidden here. But the captain realized something was wrong. He had a bad feeling. Sun An grabbed his hand and started to say that if he didn't like the conditions he could have said so, he could always ask for more if he wanted to. But still our hero realized that it was good that he had new equipment, Otherwise, it would be difficult to stop this attack, but still it is not so easy to oppress. Captain could not understand how a player of 14th level so much. Maybe it is some kind of special equipment began, he asked. The other players couldn't believe their eyes how he managed to stop this attack. And did their captain not use his full power? 
And withdrawing Sun An's hand, the captain began to say that he didn't think he had an ace up his sleeve, yet he agrees that he will get half the reward Sun An said he hoped. However, he has a few scratches after his lunge, and he attacked him for no reason, so would like some compensation. When the captain heard that, he got even angrier, saying he wouldn't let it go. And I wish he'd hurry up because they've already wasted so much time here. And once our hero got a family of magical flower that once planted will turn into a whole field of flowers that will automatically attack monsters, he realized that it could be useful and looks like they have nothing better to do. The captain told him one last time to get a move on. And as they approached the guards, he started asking how many players they had. Our hero replied that only nine players should go inside the portal. And as soon as the preparations were finished, they all began to go inside the portal. Finally, a senior guard told our hero to come back alive. But something made him suspicious because those guys were looking at him strangely when they went inside the portal. And he realized that there would still be difficulties in this dungeon. However, he has already become strong enough he has nothing to fear. But still, the special role of the captain, he was a little alarmed because with the help of this skill, all his statistics are increased by percent. And when a new slot for a skill is open, the player gets a double slot for skills. Going inside, the captain of the squad saw something different from the current dungeon where they were last time because there are no paths in a solid piece of earth. But Sun An was happy about this place because he knows it well. And remembering that this was the most points. And he almost died working overtime trying to fix all the flaws in this map and these memories that he wished he could erase from his memory. But suddenly his musings were interrupted by the captain telling everyone to focus on Tinergis on the left-hand side. Other players heard this and started hoping that there wasn't a dungeon boss hiding there. After all, that silhouette looks like a monster, even though it's not moving, and I guess they haven't pissed it off yet, and the fact that that, but the thought that they have to fight that monster from the beginning, just sent shivers down my spine. Well, the captain has decided that they will avoid the boss for now and leave him for last, but first they need to thoroughly check into the mines. And the captain began to give out orders, first of all, to the two rookies who are to stay here, and they will start when they are done with the mines. Sun An suddenly realized that there were newcomers besides him, and they seemed to be traders who had been called at the very last moment. But at that point, he started telling the other guys that the monster was already here. Hearing this, all the players began to prepare for battle, because the monsters were already too close. Monsters. They were beetles huge with a sharp stinger beetles because they have a sword in place of a proboscis, so they are so nicknamed have a high speed of flight and the ability to drink blood. And once all the players were ready, the captain gave the order for them to begin the battle. And then he started attacking them with his weaponized brass knuckles that he had on his right hand. Other players who were behind the captain began to join the battle as well, shouting that there were too many of them here. But that didn't stop them from also destroying insects in one fell swoop. Well, one of the beetles' friend flew right behind the girl's back. She wasn't expecting that maneuver. But the beetle was immediately torn into several pieces by the bright light. And the one who fired the shot was the archer who was standing behind the rest of them, and she was also pissed off by those bugs. Sun An looked at this battle and realized that these guys work well together and fight so well after only ten days, and the riders have a real talent for it, and the fact that even medics go into battle to treat the wounded immediately. But suddenly, one of the players started using his skills, and as soon as he finished the spell, there was a bright firelight that began to destroy all the bugs in the immediate area. But soon Anne, who had not yet joined the battle, was surprised that there was even a mage. And these guys are not bad since they balance the strength of their team so well with different roles. Combat roles are awarded depending on the player's preference. There are aggressive fighting and magical roles such as collecting magic inventory to acquire magic skills and increase their magical status. So they develop the quality of a mage 
all this applies to other combat roles as well. And the fact that he took a sudden interest in raids, their team is much stronger than a lone player. But at that moment, one of the Beatles flew to the newcomers and started attacking them. They could not understand why he flew to them. So as they were still new, they didn't fully understand how to destroy this monster. But suddenly the monster was torn apart by a bright light, and the one who destroyed it was Sun Anne, who started asking the newcomers if everything was okay. But he also started telling them that even though these gnats do a lot of damage, they have low health. If they want to kill them, they should aim for the stomach. But after thinking about it, he realized that he expected that the merchants don't know how to fight. After all, they are not fighters. And the fact that these creatures have a higher level, their merchants began to introduce themselves, that their name is Cheng Dong and the other Feng, and they were called at the last minute to create inventory. Fukung began to address our hero, saying that apparently he is very strong and that he easily killed those mosquitoes and was even shoulder to shoulder with their guildmaster, but still they didn't understand why he came here. Sunan replied that he had his own plan, but he suddenly wondered if there would be any drop from the mosquitoes. And looking at the nearest dead insect, he saw something glistening near its body. And just as he started to bend down to pick up the drop, he ran into another merchant who was also interested in these insects. The merchant had already begun to apologize to our heroes that he did not resist when the loot dropped, and holding out his hand, he began to give the leg of a huge mosquito with the words that it is his. After all, he saved his life. Sunan started to take the wood and said that, in that case, he would be happy to take it, no matter how thin the leg was. It was still meat, at least he could sell it for coins. But now the merchant has used his skill because their hands have touched, and his thief skill can now steal a random item from his inventory. And even if he doesn't talk about it, he's sure that he has something to gain and no ordinary kid could defeat the deputy leader of the Rider Guild. And if he steals a rank C item from him, it would be awesome. The squad captain killed the last mosquito and started telling the other players that this wave was cleaned up. And then they started telling the other guys to come to them because they found the mines and that the monsters wouldn't spam in the mines. One of the merchants started telling his fellow merchant to tell another merchant that they needed to hurry up. At the merchant Fong holding the strange white powder he stole from Sun An, he couldn't understand why he needed it. The captain started to say that he didn't think it would be so easy. Usually you have to defeat a boss to get magic crystals, but this time the mines are a safe place with no monsters. But the merchants weren't even going to rest and taking out their kirks, they began to prepare to mine the crystals. Sun An thought about the fact that it would not be easy for him to lure the boss to this place, and now it was time for him to use the powder that Merchant Ah Dong had given him. But as soon as he wanted to get his white powder out, the captain called out to him, but he couldn't understand when it was that they recognized his name, but the captain began to say that he always had something to wonder if he was able to recover his attack so his strength and speed is as good as his. And the fact that his gear is pretty good and he really wants it. But Sun An couldn't understand what equipment he was talking about because he was just lucky that he was able to stop his attack. But he realized that now these guys were showing their true intentions. But the other players with the captain's guild started telling Sun An that they would have to repeat the experiment to find out if he was lucky enough to stop the captain's attack then or not. But Sunan guessed that this could happen and that he could try his item on these guys right now. But as soon as he started to open his inventory, the captain gave the order that the other players should not let him use anything. And now, the most important thing is to surround him and attack all together. Well... Sun An couldn't figure out where the white powder had gone. But then other players appeared and started attacking him from all sides. And he realized he didn't have time to think about that powder right now. Using his acceleration skill, he started away from the nature side to avoid the mage's attack. And realizing the fact that he needs to deal with the ranged attack players first, 
and then switched to close combat with other players. The mages who were standing nearby saw that he was preparing to attack, but the captain ordered him to calm down because it was a completely idiotic decision on his part. And he's in a bad enough situation as it is. He wants to make it worse. And he thinks he's got a chance. They could shoot an arrow through his head. But Sun An raised his hand to see that they are all in his attack zone. And immediately he began to apply his third level Black Veil skill. The captain noticed this and started ordering all the guys to fall back. But it was too late. They'd all fallen into his zone and so the Black Flames... And as soon as they were caught up in his attack, the players began to lose their sight. Because of this, they couldn't properly aim to hit Sun An. The hero realized that everything as he expected the difference between the first and third level is just huge, and his coins were not wasted because with the help of Black Veil of the third level of his attack radius is increased to 5 minuters, and the duration of the skill is equal to 20 seconds. And the fact that, affected by his skill, with a probability of 50% to miss, and such his... But once the captain and all his subordinates were blinded, he began ordering them to get close to him to avoid an ambush. Realized it. The other player started using his low, lazy dispersion skill to get rid of the blinding. But as soon as he said that Sun An was just lucky... And later on, he won't be so happy anymore. Our hero has already approached him to destroy him. And swinging his blade, he started inflicting huge wounds on the guy who wanted to dispel his black veil. But as soon as the player fell to the ground, Sun An told him that he would not let him do things his way and to heal and need to use his hands or a weapon to convert energy. And if you cut off his hands, his skill would be useless and that they are all undeserving of pity for attacking non-skilled players all the time. Other players from the captain's squad started shouting to their comrade that they would save him, but the girl stopped that guy in time, telling him that it was all a trap and it was better for him to stand still. The captain guarding the other mages ordered them to be careful, because as long as they can't see anything, they can't do anything about it. Sun An noticed that it won't be easy because they feed to defend themselves, and it's hard to deal with one or two of them in such a short time and constantly have to think about the counterattacks of their partners. And if he had that white powder, he'd be done with them by now. But turning his head, he looked at the two merchants and the fact that they are still here. But the merchants saw that our hero began to turn to them, they immediately began to tell him that they have nothing to do with those guys. But Sun An started responding by saying, he's not some evil overlord, and why would he kill them or would they want to do something to him? And turning to one of the merchants, he asked what he wanted him to confirm something, because there's something very important that he's recently lost, and he should let him check his skills and his backpack. But Fung, without a word, started to turn around and run away. Sun An realized that this was even better than he wanted because he found the one with the white powder right away. And with the help of his acceleration analogs, he caught up with the merchant in an instant. And as soon as the hero threw him to the ground, the merchant started screaming that he was in pain and he was wrong and begged for forgiveness not to kill him. But Sun An started to ask where the powder was and the merchant replied that it was in his pocket, but he couldn't get it out because he was fully restrained, and if he let go of it, he would immediately get it out and give it to him. But on the second trap, our hero did not want to get caught and said that he did not even try because he can get it himself. But for some reason, Trades first blush and yells at our hero not to touch him, taking out the white powder sun and actually realized that it was indeed in his pocket, but the merchant kept shouting for him to get off of it. And as soon as he got up from the merchant, he said that since he had confessed, he would take pity on him and not kill him. But Sun An was only interested in the fact that if you think about it, is the black veil effect still going on? At that moment, his thoughts were interrupted by the scream of another merchant who began to fall to the ground, screaming that he had nothing to do with it. But he was yelling because another player jumped on him and started throwing heavy punches. 
and as soon as he finished, the merchant continued to shout in the direction of our hero that he dared to cut off his brother's hands and he will tear him to pieces. But the captain began to tell him to calm down because they will avenge his brother. And since they now know the limits of this skill, they have nothing to fear and turning to Sun Anyu, he said it was time to send him to hell. Sun An was in agreement that he too wanted to finish quickly. The players with the captain's team decided to first exhaust our hero with long attacks and make him show all his trumps. The merchant who was behind Sun An couldn't figure out what to do, but Sun An started telling him to hide somewhere. He doesn't have time for them. The captain, however, continued to give his orders so they would not let him catch his breath and continue to attack with all their might. Onik could not imagine that now Sun An started using a bottle of white powder, and as soon as he opened the bottle, he started throwing it towards the captain and the other players. And realizing the fact that the performance was about to begin, Sun An began to back away with a slow step. The captain couldn't figure out what was going on and how many more aces this guy had up his sleeve. And what he threw stinks badly the other players couldn't breathe properly. But as soon as the veil cleared, they realized something was wrong and started looking up the mountain when they saw something approaching them. And whoever it was were monsters from this dungeon, and this powder was bait for them. Continuing to destroy the insects, the players couldn't understand why they were all of a sudden. And most importantly, they can't understand where Sun Ann is hiding now. But at that moment, one of the players was grabbed by something strange. And as soon as he was in the air, he started yelling to his comrades to save him. And the one who dragged him away was a giant frog. And she was the main boss of this level 24 poison frog dungeon. The players, along with the captain, could not understand where the boss came from and how they could deal with this situation and him as well. Well, Lordy kept taking down one player after another. Sunan at this time managed to hide in an Easter egg that was unlocked in a secret place, and it was hidden from the outside world, and hiding in a secret place. Sunan began to ask the merchant why they came here, and he must hurry with the answer because time is running out. But the merchant began to reply that it was safe to follow him, and he wanted to stay here because it was too dangerous outside, but Sunan couldn't trust him. So the merchant began to promise that he wouldn't touch him again and would keep his hands behind his back. But Sun An told him to do whatever he told him to do or he'd die. But still, he thought that if he threw him out, he'd be better than that bald man, because if you think about it, how did he get into such a small place? Well, turning around, he saw a multitude of insects attacking the players. And soon An said that it seems like it's about to become clear who's going to win. There was total devastation outside and the players, having lost a great deal of blood, began to exhaust themselves, screaming for help to their comrades. The captain couldn't understand how it all happened and how their flawless team fell apart in an instant. But he got even angrier and started yelling that it was because of that son and guy. I'll give you the loudest screams to get the dungeon boss to pay attention to him. But the captain began to activate all his skills because he didn't want to give up so easily. And once his body enlargement reached maximum, he shrieked to the dungeon boss that he had not yet seen what he could do. Because now he's ready to destroy everyone in his path. Inside the secret room, the merchant along with Sun and noticed that the captain had begun to activate his second body augmentation skill. This skill increases the user's body size along with all of his stats by percent for 10 minutes, although it looks cheesy. But the effect is cool and considering that he has another skill as well. Then his rock destroyer will now increase its grapple and damage. And in that case, we can say that one plus one is greater than two, but at that moment, the merchant noticed that his level was down and started asking the hero if he thought the captain could handle the monster alone. But Sun An told him that the boss is not easy to defeat, and that soon Ki Hulai will be finished. If he doesn't come to his aid now, this battle will be his last, and telling the merchants to stay here and stay out, he began to move out. 
But in the meantime, the captain continued to fight the dungeon boss. And by holding back the boss's attacks, he could even rude him that it was all he could do. But suddenly the captain began to feel a strong pain in his body, and raising his head he saw in the window of the notice that he had been poisoned, and that his health will gradually decrease and his movement speed slowed by twenty percent. Well, after looking at his hand, he realized that the poison was spreading too fast throughout his body. Na raised his head. He saw that the frog did not stop attacking him and opened his huge pasha. It was already ready to strike some more times. And after a moment, Ono hit the captain a few more times, causing him to fly off to the side and crashed at breakneck speed into the nearest rock. But the landlord still didn't stop and slowly bouncing towards his opponent, he was already ready to deliver the final blow. On his gaze suddenly shifted to Sunan, who appeared snowed where, and calling the boss that she's just a stupid frog and that this isn't over and she shouldn't relax. After all, he came here for a reward and she better not disappoint him. But at the same moment, the dungeon boss started to attack Sun Anya, but he bounced aside in time and started calling the dungeon boss name so that she, stupid toad, would try to catch up with him. Who was in the hidden room saw this and started yelling at Sun Anyu not to go that way because Roy Zhukov was there. But at that moment the notification system began to show that my hero that there were detected 15 enemies and his skill dangerous player was activated and the defense was activated to the maximum. Now he is protected from blows dealing damage less than 2% of his hit points. And as soon as the insect surrounded him, our hero started saying that he was counting on them little mosquitoes. And as soon as the mosquitoes started attacking him with their sharp stingers, the notification system showed that his damage defense was at maximum. But the dungeon boss's huge tongue began to grab one of the beetles, and son Anya realized that he was finally here now. And once the dungeon boss swallowed the insect, the Easter egg was launched, and she announced that when a multitude of mosquitoes she wouldn't be able to hold back and would start attacking his food instead of the player, and he should forget what he did and only start worrying about it after a snack. I jumped aside. He started using insects to defend himself from the dungeon boss. After all, now behind that weight from the gnats, the toad just won't be able to attack him no matter how much it wants to. And while she continued to devour the insects, Sun Anya shifted and using her acceleration skill started running straight at him. And with his whipping, slashing attack, he began to deal many blows to the dungeon boss. Because of which the same began to feel a lot of pain on his paws and abdomen. Sun Anya realized that this was not all and there was still a lot of work to be done to destroy this thing. And attacked him once again with his skill poison frog, was blinded. Although it resisted this skill well because of which the duration of blinding was reduced to 10 seconds, this half-time was enough time for Sun Anya to inflict many grievous wounds. And as it got bigger and bigger, he decreased its lifespan, but by doing so, he added one second to his blinding skill, which affected the toad because of the blows. The merchant who was in a secluded spot watching the fight couldn't imagine this guy was capable of such a thing. And the fact that he's so strong he took out half a boss by himself. And with his power he can clear the entire dungeon on his own, taking all the rewards for himself and the fact that he gets nothing. But realizes that there must be bodies of raiders somewhere nearby, and he decided he should at least take their gear. Sun Anya continued to attack more and more, which caused him to increase the duration of the dazzle to seconds with his attacks. But suddenly, Sun Anya noticed to make you dungeon embittered due to low XP and looks like he only had one quarter of his health left. Well, Postpocalypse began to open his huge mouth and use his poison blessing skill. Sun Anya thought it wasn't a problem because the mosquitoes were still around her. But after a few blows, he realized that she was now randomly attacking. And what was worse was that the color changed and this poison, even the stones are destroying, which caused the rock fragments to scare away any mosquitoes that were in the vicinity. And just a second later, 
the whole situation took a turn for the worse for Sun Anya. Well, having looked around, our hero decided to look for options that here must be an opportunity to interact with the environment if there are poisonous creatures here. And then there must be plants that don't realize the poison. And remembering the words of my friend that she said a long time ago that if they add such a thing to the game, it would be reasonable and make the game much more exciting. And he realized it's a good thing Zai Hui suggested adding an antidote to the plants game or it would have ended much worse. But at that moment, the gentleman accidentally hit Sun An, causing him to fly off to the side. But looking at the impact, he realized it was only a scratch, but his movement speed was significantly reduced. And he happened to look behind him and saw an antidote growing right next to the lake. That was the advantage of being a merchant. He could use whatever materials he wanted whenever he wanted. And after ripping out the plant, he began to create an antidote. But the dungeon boss saw that he was creating an antidote and immediately started closing in and getting closer and closer to him. Leaping into the air, he was ready to swat our hero with his huge belly. And at this time, when the hit points were decreasing more and more in Sun Anya, he raised his head and saw that things were getting much worse. I jumped aside. He barely dodged such an attack, realizing the fact that it was too close and he was almost turned into a flapjack. But not knowing what was going on, he turned around and saw the dungeon boss rushing at full speed straight at him, but he was still confused by the fact that he was acting strangely. All because it was another god of the game and that stupid frog's attack didn't hurt him in any way, but instead it got stuck in the texture itself, and he remembers that he put a lot of effort into fixing the bugs and he didn't think there were still any faulty ones left. And who would have thought that these bugs would be to his advantage? But he wasted no time in drinking the antidote to reverse the effects of the poison. And immediately after that started running straight at the dungeon boss to destroy him while he was stuck in the textures. After a few hits, our hero was ready to deal the last critical damage to destroy the boss. And swinging his blade, he delivered the final blow that ended him. Then finally sighed what I saw on the window noticed that the dungeon boss had been destroyed. And it was a lot easier for him than he thought it would be. And it looks like he's actually gotten a lot stronger than he was before. But now he looked at the dungeon boss and realized that it was time for him to do the most enjoyable part, which was collecting the rewards. And the fact that this boss's skill was quite good to slow down and permanently remove the enemy's hit points, however, his level is still too low and he has one unlocked skill remaining. But at that moment, he saw a notification sign that an empty gold merchant skill slot had been discovered and wished he had purchased it. Sun Anya could not understand the essence of this notification. After all, he had already received the skill of Black Veil, and that there was another slot with skills. But then he realized that having two rolls gives four skill slots for each roll, and just now he used crafting and can. Therefore, the game identified him as a merchant. And when he developed the dual roll passphrase, he didn't set the exact number of skills, and he didn't think that the game would automatically set four skills for each roll. And it looks like this bug came about because of the passphrase. And he got four extra skins without any effort, and now it's the best news for him all day long. But at that moment, the hero heard the shouts of the merchant, who began to shout to the captain to take his hands off him, because he did not intentionally snatch things from him. And grabbing the merchant, he began to turn to Sun, and said that he did not expect to have the strength to defeat the boss, but thanks to him he increased his level and recovered. It's not like Sun Anya didn't expect this petty merchant to hide and that he didn't think the captain was still alive. But the captain went on to say that he caught the one chair that was trying to steal his gear. And I'm talking to Sun An about them trading his gear for his partner. Sun An started to reply to him that why would he think they were partners? The merchant kept shouting at the captain to let him go because he wasn't going to steal anything from him. But realizing the fact that they are not comrades, turning his head around, the captain told the merchant that he didn't need him now. And hitting him with all his might, he started flying off to the side. 
Son Anya didn't even raise an eyebrow when he saw this because he didn't care about that guy, but he was worried about the fact that the captain could still fight. And he started telling Son Anne that he was a cold-blooded type and whether he knew not to waste energy on such useless garbage. Well, now they will speak the language of power and he is lucky to survive. However, now he will use all his power to finish him, and only one of them will get out of here alive. Pulling out his weapon, son Anya realized that this battle was inevitable and told them to finish quickly, because now is the best chance for him to use his new skill. But the captain heard this and thought to himself, is he really getting a new skill and not bluffing, and does he have a difficult role to play in this game? I have the fact that his time is limited, the hero began to summon a notification window, thus raising his level. Seeing this, the captain looked in shock at what his opponent had pumped from early on to the max, and what's worse is that it's about a few million coins. It was unbelievable to him. This guy was too dangerous for him, but still, the captain decided he couldn't lose to him, and as soon as he wanted to use his skill, our hero with all his speed inflicted a heavy wound on him. And as soon as his new skill began to take effect, the captain saw a lot of notification windows in front of him and realized that he had a poisonous effect on him. Sun Anya realized the fact that the deputy leader of the Rider Guild is a weakling. And as soon as the poison effect kicked in and another 21 points of additional damage was dealt, the captain realized he had lost. Turning his head around, Soon An couldn't understand why the captains were laughing. But the captain has finally realized that people like him or Jejui are the same and they're both New World game developers. Sun An started to reply that he was actually involved in the development of this game, but what that must mean, he didn't understand. The captain began to explain that he thought he was strong enough and that he had gotten a special role and he had the skills for such games and he did all sorts of things to get good equipment, but in the end he was still a step behind people like him. And he finally realized that they had pulled it off and they wanted to show off their accomplishments and the players were just lab rats to them. Sun An still couldn't understand where the captain was going with his stupid talk. But the captain raised his hand and gave him the middle finger and told him to go to hell. But at that moment, the poison effect was triggered again and caused 21 points of additional damage, resulting in a fatal blow and killing the player named Kai Howley, Sun An. Watching this made me wonder if there really is someone who can turn a game into reality, and that he does remember who Li Jiejui is. He is a former employee of his company a celebrity in the eyes of other employees and a genius, but he almost never crossed paths with him. Games and reality are not necessarily contradictory. And if he could run the project, the new world wouldn't be just a game. Those words are the only thing he remembers about it. Based on what the captain said, it's quite similar that Li Jejui had a hand in all of this and he's afraid that his role in Selah is imposing. Well, turning around and looking at the merchant who was barely sitting on earth, the hero realized that this guy is a survivor. But as he looked closer, he noticed something strange and eventually realized that it wasn't a guy at all, but a girl who was breathing very hard and started asking for help because she felt that her organs would be all mixed up after such a blow. But Sun An, realizing that she was a girl, remembered that in such a case before when he threatened her, he now understood her reaction when she told him not to grope her. But the merchant began to ask our hero if he still has the regenerated ones, because she has already used all hers, and she is ready to buy them for a high price, but son. And her life and external wounds, it is useless with internal wounds. But there is another way for a full recovery. However, whether it will help her or not depends on what she offers him in return, and he hasn't forgotten what she stole from him a while ago. But the girl couldn't realize that she'd really have to give this guy all her savings, and she'd spent so much time and effort to get it all together. But if she dies, who's going to take care of Xiao Yu? After thinking it over, the girl said that she could give him the star coins, and there were about 
600,000 of them. That's all she had. Hearing this, Sunin thought that 600,000 was quite a lot. The girl started begging, or rather pleading, that she can't die here and someone is waiting for her to return. But hearing this, Sun An realized that this was different from his idea of her, and he thought she was just a small in the nuts. But judging by the look on her face, it didn't look like she was lying. However, it's still not worth wasting it in holy water, and there are still plenty of insects to destroy, and it's worth figuring out a way to kill two hares with one stone, and telling the girl that he'd better tell the truth because he doesn't like to be cheated on. The girl realized that meant he was agreeing to the deal. But this way will take some time, so she must hold on a little longer. But turning around, the girl started to shout to him that wouldn't he give her the greens, but son, and replied to her that he didn't say that. I also told her that there were plants near labor that would help restore the bleeding, which would take away some of the pain, but the girl decided to ask him what he was going to do. It's not like he didn't understand why she was asking so many questions and why she couldn't just sit on earth and wait. After all, he just needs to approach the dungeon boss he destroyed. Because of Key Howley, he hasn't had time to collect the rewards, and a good start is half the battle to pump up his gear first. In fact, the long segmented bone of the tongue can be used to improve its arms. And as for the oil, if the opportunity arises, he'll use it, then it won't be much fun if his performance drops now. But on the notification window appeared the text that the equipment improvement of the blade knuckle blade is a Class B equipment for the improvement requires additional Class C material. But remembering that special mole crystals are C class and he can use them. After finding all the ingredients, he began to apply the enhancement to his weapons. And he ended up with a bone blade that can make ranged attacks after being improved. However, the damage from ranged attacks is half of the normal damage. After raising the blade and squeezing it harder in his hand, Sun An realized that its characteristics were almost like an A-class weapon, and now he's going to try it on those flying mosquitoes. Although the range of this blade was approximately 5 to 10 meters, the range of the soaring strike should have been enough to destroy everyone in one strike. And swinging, he began to attack all the mosquitoes that flew over his head. And once he destroyed them, he realized it was pretty cool. Now he's got long-range attacks in his arsenal. And now the next goal is accomplished. The next is to work even harder and pump. So can, for starters, you need to at least reach a level in this case. He will have two more slots with skills and this will be a distinct advantage. If he succeeds, Zai Hui will be shocked when she sees him, but now he's wondering how she's doing. After all, he misses the money when they could just chat. And after he gets stronger, he's bound to find her. Now we see a lot of players gathered in an underground parking lot, and the mysterious guy in the red mask began to ask his squad if everything was clean. Blood other players in one voice told him that everything was crystal clear. And on a huge screen, he started showing the girl Zai Hui and talking about how this girl had gotten a top-of-the-line weapon. And whoever can steal it for him, he's a demon dragon who will grant any wish. At this time, Sun An continued to destroy insects throughout the cave. And once he had destroyed enough mosquitoes, the notification system showed that he had gained the required amount of experience his level was raised. And then raised his head. Our hero could not understand why the language in the system is a mixture of English and Chinese, and it seems in this place by appear much more often. And once the last notification showed that the monsters had been eliminated and the dungeon had been cleared, Sun and realized that he had already cleared the dungeon and everything else was unimportant. But in the distance, he began to see the merchant he had met in the mole cave, and the merchant began to tell Sun Anne that he didn't think they would meet so soon. But it was actually this morning when he sold him his gear. And asking the merchant how his sales are doing now, the merchant replied that thanks to him they are very good and he sold a third in half a day. And most of them were bought by people from Don Shan Guild, 
Almost every one of them bought two, three items, and he even raised the price to three X million per item. Smiling son. Anne replied to him that he was a real businessman crook and that the Dongshan Guild was a bandit group and he should serve them to the best of his ability. The merchant went on to say that after they got a Class C item in the lottery after 1,000 tries, they thought he was cheating on them and wanted to attack him, and who's to blame for their bad luck and why blame others? And it's good that they were punished by the system for wanting to attack him, and pointing his finger, son, and began to explain that the things he is selling this time they are such prices are material from monsters, and he is not sure if he will need them. But when he opened his backpack, the salesman said he'd take them. After all, he's his VIP client and it's his job to sell junk gear. That's just a little bit of what he sells. Hug the merchant's son. And began to ask why he did not wait here while he is mining, because there are still magic stones in which he did not have time to mine on the merchant. Smiling said that the price will be the same. At the same moment, a girl came up holding out a huge bag, and they say that she has collected all the items worth sixty million as promised, and she is grateful to him for saving her, because her condition was restored after getting level fifteen, and now they're definitely even and taking the sack son, and said it's no problem for him to collect his reward and she can contact him any time. The girl turned to the merchant began to tell him that she wants to sell some items that the merchant replied that of course he does not mind as long as it is legal, but our hero thought about the fact that she did not seem to him that all the things in this bag that she gave him, is it really, again, she has him around his finger. But approaching the captain who was lying on the ground, she began to use her thieving skill, and at that moment she had the blade in her hand but she didn't realize how much money it was worth. Turning around, she began to explain that her skill is stealing through touch. She can get random items from another player's inventory, and by chance she discovered that it also works on killed players as well. And asking son Anya if she could take the blade or if it would just disappear here, he said she could take whatever she wanted in their deal and it was not mentioned in the deal. And in normal circumstances, after death, the player appears at the rebirth point and there is usually no corpse left behind. But since this is all reality, the stealing skill is quite useful and worth looking into later, son. And thought to himself, and scattering all the junk she got with the skill, the girl didn't understand why there was so much junk, because there are limits on how many times she can use this skill on one person. But picking up some strange orb, she started asking what it was. Sanon saw it and told her to try to open it, but the girl didn't understand. Is this thing really worth much? Sanon began to explain that sometimes what's inside is more valuable than what's outside, and it's called a video bolt. And if he was carrying it with him, it means there's something important, and maybe there's more information about Lee Jejui in it, and to open it. You have to press the button, and as soon as the girl pressed the sphere started to open, and there was a strange masked man who began to say to the captain that they hadn't seen each other for a long time, and had he stopped thinking about the things he had told him before. When Sun An saw him, he couldn't tell if it was DJ Jui, but the merchant said he was the boss of the group that bought a bunch of gear from him this morning. But on the hologram, the masked man went on to say that it's pretty depressing for a guy as talented as him to be a servant, and since they have cooperated so much and made him the new leader of the Guild of Riders, they will become the most powerful in the new world and everyone will be at their feet, son. And after listening to the end, started to ask the merchant what he was saying, that this is the boss of the Dongshan Guild and he didn't know that he was in such a relationship with the captain. But the masked guy went on to say that, so about it to show him sincerity in his words, he would give him information about one high-class face, and since they are in the same boat. But who gets it first depends on the skills. But upon hearing those words, Sun Un realized what kind of high-end weapon he was talking about right now. 
But the digital panel started to show that the weapon is now in this girl's hands. When Sun An saw all this, he got really angry and said he'd kill the guy in the mask. At the same time, but in a different location, players started coming out of the portal. And one of the players started telling Zai Hui that she really wants to give him this equipment that fell out of the boss, because with this equipment he can speed up like a feather for a short period of time and also has a chance to dodge attacks. Zai Hui replied to him that he did a good job when they fought the boss, so it must be his. And that last punch, his special punch, was so cool. But the guy got embarrassed when he heard those words, because she doesn't always tell him that but he said he would gladly accept her gift. And then Zai Hui started opening the panel window and says that they will divide the rest equally among everyone and if anyone has an objection to that, the other players said that there are no revivals. But the other girl who got the reward started asking why so little this time and if she was sure they didn't divide everything equally. But the guy started telling her that it's not her place to talk about it. For if she had more magic crystals, the loot would be much bigger and she always refuses to help. I shouldn't say that I didn't know that this area was filled with the remains of wolves. The smell of rot was everywhere and she didn't know how she could resist that smell. And she's the only one here who can create equipment and their lives depend on the quality of the equipment. But the girl started to retaliate so he wouldn't blame her for everything. Zai Hui, watching the argument, started to tell the guy to stop arguing. And at the moment, their levels are very low, so the magic crystals won't help them much. And if they miss them, then so be it. And she knows that Xiao Mei is doing her best, and she will give her reward to her. So she should help them with making equipment next time. And then she began to thank all the guys for their work, and while she went to find a place where they could rest, everyone else should work hard as well. Xiao Mei, who was standing nearby, began to think about how everyone here is so kind and they agreed to be a team, but in the end they only blame her, and it's all because Zai Hui has a top-of-the-line weapon and everyone is sucking up to her. A guy in a red mask showed up nearby saying it was a very good match and who would have thought they'd meet right there. And I'm speaking to Zai Hui. He said he's glad to meet you and his name is Gui Lung. He's the guild leader. Zai Hai hearing this started to gather all the guys together. But in the end, it turns out they're all surrounded. Zai Hui started to get nervous and told the guys that there was some misunderstanding and she didn't think there were any hard feelings between them. Gai Lun began to reply that they had no hard feelings and he just wanted to borrow her weapon to play with it. But he doesn't see this weapon on her and why doesn't she show it to all the guys who are here? Zai Hui closed her bracelet which was on her hand and started to say that she can't give it to him because her friend entrusted it to her. But one of Gui Lun's subordinates came up to him and started whispering in his ear that he thought that this bracelet on her arm was a weapon because he remembered that it could transform. When the boss heard this, he realized that it was indeed a real treasure. Another player who was on Zai Hui's side started shouting at his opponents that they were attacking them for no reason and in such a large crowd. But Gui Lung, without any explanation, and ordered his subordinate to attack them and thus give them a reason to, and at the same second, the spear that the guy threw flew straight at Chen Yun, causing him to fall to the ground. Gai Lung wait, I'm on the other side, started to ask if they realize that he is the reason and now all his subordinates will capture them, but should not kill them yet. Zai Hui finally decided to show off her weapons and raising her hand, she started asking all her friends to get closer to her. And turning to the bracelet, she began to ask that she needed its help right now. And a huge barrier shield appeared around the boys. Their opponents started bouncing around, not realizing how she did it. Watched in great amazement as a barrier appeared around that girl at that very second. Gui Lun, keeping everything under control, began to order his subordinates not to be afraid because it was only a shield and they should continue to attack them. Well, the guys inside the barrier couldn't figure out what to do. After all, those bandits are attacking them again, asking for Zai Hui. They wanted to know if they would fight. 
But Zaihui told them that there were too many of them to defeat them, and that they could only hold them off for a while. But what's worse is that the shield can only be activated for a certain period of time, and they need to think about how to escape when they're exhausted. But one of the guys raised his hand to heal his comrade, could not understand why the South healing spell began to do damage, but suddenly there was a notification window that showed that, because of the shadow reversal effect, the healing value would be converted to a damage value, but the guy who was outside threw the spear and decided to ask how his A-rank shadow spear was doing, because it works wonders with healing spells. But what was worse was that the guys realized that Xiao Mei wasn't with them, and if she didn't make it inside the protective barrier. Gai Lun's subordinates started to ask their boss that they had caught one of them and what he would do with it, but Xiao Mei, who had fallen to her knees, started to shout at them to wait, because she had something to tell them. Gai Lun took out his weapon and began to tell them to bring her to him, while everyone else should continue to attack the protective barrier and break it down. But the guys couldn't understand what Xiao Mei was doing and why she would just give up like that. But his excitement was interrupted by the clash of the hammer on the protective barrier because the attackers could not understand why this bill is so strong and thus his weapon will break because it is even stronger than the boss shield. On the guy who was inside the shield, when he saw that those guys couldn't break it, he started rudely telling them that they were just losers, because that's the power of a high-level weapon. But some guy who dared started yelling that it's his turn, because he doesn't believe he can't break through that shield. And with all his strength in his fist, he struck the shield with it. His arm bounced to the side, and the gay inside started yelling at him that he said he couldn't break through that high-level shield. Gong Lun watched his subordinate fail to break through the protective shield, and presenting his weapon to Xiao Mei's head, he began ordering her to tell him how to break the protective barrier. I mean, she knows how to get through to him anyway. If she doesn't tell him, she's going to kiss her life goodbye. Seeing this, the guy who was inside the protective barrier started yelling at Xiao Mei that if she still considered herself part of their team, she wouldn't tell them anything. Xiao Mei still started to say that its defense is very strong, and as long as the owner of the weapon uses it, it will be very problematic to penetrate it from the outside, but Gong Lun still decided that she wasn't going to talk, and he would still try to get her to tell everything. But Xiao Mei said it wasn't. What she meant was that the more something looks strong, the more obvious its weakness. She remembered how the bill broke once in the dungeon. And as soon as it stops working, it will take a very long time to reload it, and all other weapon capabilities will be frozen at the same time. Hearing this, Gong Lun realized that they simply needed to increase the strength of their defensive shield strikes. But in fact, Xiao Mei was only happy to be told, because she hated those showy weapons. And in this situation, the surest way out was to surrender, but she didn't understand why they didn't just want to give them the weapons. But at this point, the guys started to raise their heads and saw the protective barrier start to crack, and that this was its maximum limit. Gong Lun that the shield was almost broken, he started shouting to his subordinates, whoever can break through it first will be rewarded with three C-class weapons. Zai Hui inside realized that this weapon was given to her by Sun An, and she must return it to him in perfect condition, and she can't let him down. After all, this account will not be broken, and now she needs a lot more strength than she was getting before. And at that moment there was the sound of a demonic weapon, and she began to say, and that the power she so craved, she could give her more. Ramel's demon inside the weapon sensed her desire for more power. Zaihui saw this and realized that she was a weapon demon, and she didn't even summon her. And the fact that she appeared on her own is suspicious. But the demon began to speak, and what she sees she is in quite a predicament and red here is broken. Her friends are in danger and you don't have much time left. And so does she not wish to unleash her power, for the price will not be so high. And it looks like she really wants to protect her body and protect her comrades, and protect this man's trust, 
but the contract will help her with that. Zai Hui was so scared that she said she'd agree if she knew the terms. The demon started saying that her present and future would be preordained, and at that moment the guys who were inside the protective shield couldn't understand when the stitching had had time to recover, and the fact that it seemed to have become even stronger. It's because Zai Hui signed a contract and her strength was increased, and her score increased because of the owner's strength. Stamina decreased to units and stat points decreased, and were converted into strength stamina, no longer increases with level increase. But also her perception has been reduced to one and her stat points have decreased, and have been converted to the power of perception will no longer increase with level increase. The guys noticed Zai Hui who could barely stand on her feet and said that this feeling of having her characteristics reduced was so painful, but one of the guys couldn't understand why she did it since her characteristics can't be upgraded in the future. But Zai Hui replied that at least they are all alive, and maybe it's just a bet on their fate. Gong Lun couldn't understand what was going on because his shield had just almost broken, and why the hell did it regenerate? The other guys couldn't understand what was going on, because their mana and stamina were almost at zero. Gong Lun turned his head towards Xiao Mei and started to get angry, but Xiao Mei raised her hands and started to shout that she had nothing to do with it, and it was the first time she had seen such a thing. Gong Lun, have the guys call everyone guarding the dungeon, because he won't rest until he gets that weapon. At the same time, Sun An was rushing at full speed to reach the target and save his friend quickly. But he slammed his hand down on the car with all his might and got angry that they wouldn't make it in time, and that he doesn't have enough time to use teleportation, and the conditions are too difficult, and all he can do now is hope they're okay. Still, he hoped that everything would be okay and his friends would be unharmed. But in the meantime, the guy's notification system showed that the shield was activated, and they all began to prepare for battle to protect their friend. Zai Hui standing behind realized that the demonic necklace had entered a hibernation state and its continuation time was 1 hour and 21 minutes. Gong Lun, who was watching the situation, realized that the shield was almost gone and immediately he asked the guys if they thought he could stand up to him. But their opponents continued to prepare for battle, telling them not to come near them because they're not afraid of him. But Zai Hui standing behind the boys realized that her weapon was able to repel all attacks. Gong Dong, who was standing in front of her, began to activate his skill, and her eyes became redder and redder because the thought that soon that weapon would be his greatly excited him, and immediately he gave orders to his two commanders to finish off their enemies. But the guys didn't realize that their rule was to rob but not kill, and that no good would come of it. Well, as soon as he heard this, he began to turn his head around and activated his skill. He once again ordered them to do as he says. And at that moment, one of the guys suddenly had a terrible urge to nail someone. Zai Hui immediately saw that the atmosphere had fundamentally changed, and they were really going to kill them. But she still insisted that they could talk about it again. But most of all, she can't endanger the lives of her comrades but she has to do something to save her comrade. But at that moment, her thoughts were interrupted by a voice that came out of nowhere, and it sounded all over the place that if the guys heard it. The voice was so loud that Gong Lun couldn't understand who it was. Sun An kept shouting to the guys that he knows they were attacked by the Dan Shan Guild and they are in a difficult situation, but he can't be at their place in the blink of an eye and that the recording time is limited, so he will tell everything briefly, and they have to pull up some time before he arrives. And they only need to last 15 minutes, and he'll try to nail it as fast as he can. But as soon as the sound stopped, the guys started discussing the fact that in the current situation, it's not easy to last a minute, let alone 15. Gong Lun realized that there was no more time to waste and began to order his subordinates to attack them with all their might. While holding back the onslaught of his opponents, one of the players thought that even if Sun An came, would he be able to defeat so many people? 
Xiao Mei showed up and started telling her ex-girlfriend Zai Hui that she told her to think it over and just accept defeat and give up their weapons because there was no need for them to fight anymore. After all, the weapon is worthy of the strongest, and she knows that it is the boss. Gui Lun Repertory saw that she approached him and began to tell her that she is trying to get out of the situation. However, the threshold for entry into the Dongshan Guild is extremely high, but she was ready to defend herself at any cost. But one of her former friends noticed this and started yelling that she was disgusting. And angry, he struck his enemy with all his might, causing him to fly off screaming and screaming in the direction of him. And as soon as the item from the inventory was obtained, the guy started to hope that Sung Un would keep his promise, but he would be able to last no more than ten minutes. And with an iron bar for a special situation, he began to prepare for battle. Boss Gong Lun saw this and said that they shouldn't be so worried or you shouldn't just know that soon they will all die. But Xiao Mei saw his weapon and couldn't understand why she had never seen him use that stick before. Zhe Hui watching her companion began to ask if he wanted to use that skill, but he replied with a serious expression that her parameters are too low now and she'd better stay behind and him... And once he drew the magic circle, he said that because of bad memories, he didn't say he wanted to use it. But now there was no other choice, and since Sun An asked him to wait for him, he would take the risk, and with the help of the Monkey King's protective circle, he was ready to absorb any damage as long as whoever was inside the circle, but he only had ten minutes to do so. And that's when the Monkey King appeared on his head and started blowing his pipe because now the old boy's back and ready to fight to the death. Gong Lun saw this and started laughing loudly. I don't know what kind of monkey is this, and he doesn't want them to die from laughing. But the Monkey King, we'll call him that, started telling him to show him what he was made of. The monkey sitting on his head suddenly started blowing his horn even harder, and a huge stream of magical energy began to appear from all directions. Their opponents didn't realize that he was there to please us, but they had the feeling that he was calling them names and they started to get even angrier. The Monkey King, on the other hand, kept yelling that their grandfather was already here and they should come and he would punish them all. But immediately, many arrows and weapons appeared right at his feet and flew straight at him. And when he saw a huge crowd of enemies rushing at him, he started to turn around and run away with all his might. And although you realize that this is too much, he continued to run away from the attackers. But Boss Gong Loon realized that he was just stalling, and he began to order his guys to go back. But they did not listen to him because they were too aggressive. The monkey that was sitting on his head kept yelling for them all to try and catch them. They're just a bunch of assholes. And as soon as the boss heard what he said... He got angry because he didn't like it when he called him a moron. The Monkey King still continued to run away from the attackers and realizing the fact that he could be killed with a single blow, but he still tried to dodge all their attacks. The guys couldn't understand what was going on and how he managed to dodge all the attacks and how he had such flexibility. But the Monkey King used all the points to pump up stamina and agility. If I don't think I can catch him so easily, I'm too much of a mistake, and plus the item of the Wolf King's right leg which allowed him to enhance all his characteristics. But after about eight minutes he realized he had to hold out a little longer. But at the same moment he collapsed to the ground because he didn't see that one of the attackers was right in front of him. All the attackers started running up to him saying that where all his self-confidence had gone and now it was time to show him their power. And as soon as he received a few blows, he realized that his effect had been terminated and that he would most likely be coming to an end. The system notification kept appearing that the player is in danger, and his Monkey King's protective circle of the Monkey King, Pascal, has been removed. Zai Hui sitting in front of Boss Gong Lun couldn't understand since he had already gotten her weapons and why he kept publishing her friends. But he briefly replied that he had put so much effort into stealing that weapon and that he had really earned it, and since it was now his, she could offer something else. 
For such consequences await anyone who stands in his way, William, and he hopes they've learned their lesson. And though she still relies on her boyfriend, let's say he does come, but will he be able to overpower the entire guild? And if you look at her pretty face, it's a shame to kill her, and he'll spare her life if she agrees to be his maid. Zai Hui briefly told him that he could only dream about it because she would rather die than be around a low life like him. Well, the fact that she didn't appreciate his kindness, he was ready to finish her off. And turning around, he ordered his ward to get rid of her because they didn't need her anymore. And the guy who took a swing at her was always curious what it would be like to kill someone with one punch, and he's about to try it on her. But no sooner had he swung than another attack flew at him, which at that very moment with a single blow knocked him dead. Boss Gun Lun turned his head around, couldn't believe his eyes where this guy had come from. Sun An ran up to Zai Hui and apologized to her for not showing up on time. And he couldn't protect her, but it's a good thing she wasn't badly hurt. And that wasn't enough to calm down. And raising his head, he began to tell guild boss Dong Shan that he swore he would destroy them all. Gong Lun, who was standing in front of him, began to say that he had gotten in their way and that he was not too much of an accomplice, but he actually thought about the fact that this brat had also killed Uthi in one second. But ask him why he came here because the outcome will be the same. Even if more people come, nothing will change. The cab driver and the merchant girl sitting behind the bushes couldn't understand why Sun An was in such a hurry to come here since the entire Dongshan Guild is here. Sun An didn't pay attention to the boss because he was more concerned about whether his girlfriend was okay. But Gong Lun kept shouting that he was talking to him because he wouldn't live to see tomorrow. But at the same moment, Sun An stood up to his full height and ordered the boss to slam. After all, if he wanted to fight, then he could already start already. But suddenly, Little Zero appeared from a crystal spirit bandage that was immediately activated. And the entire Dongshan guild couldn't believe their eyes. Where did the magical beast come from and could he really tame the magical beast as a pet, even though it looks like a baby cub? As soon as little Zara climbed on son Anya's shoulder, he started biting his finger and presenting your finger to the pet, telling it to eat it. As soon as he tasted son An's blood, he immediately began to turn into a huge monster. And at that point, he grew a few meters uphill. The guys from the Soul Guild couldn't understand what was going on because they suddenly found it hard to breathe. And the fact that they were under tremendous pressure and that this mole looked much scarier than any boss before and that what rank this thing was they couldn't figure out in any way. Sun An, realizing what finally worked, because although his goal is just to look intimidating and at least they won't act rashly, and using the glaive passphrase which consumes 20% of the player's blood and temporarily strengthens the pet, causing it to gain a large body size and intimidation power. The pet's physical strength is not affected. On calling to himself Little Zero, our hero began to tell him that there was a task for him, and by means of telepathy they could communicate without attracting attention. At this time, Boss Tang Gong started telling his subordinates not to be afraid because they outnumber him and they just need to deal with this brat. But pulling out his weapon, our hero was ready for this battle, and with his poison blessing skill, he began to take over the entire area to attack at the same time. And swinging his blade, a huge poisonous wave began to throw all the nearest enemies in different directions. And as soon as the poison effect was triggered, players began to feel a tremendous pain in their bodies. Sun An, realizing the fact that everything would be satisfied faster than he expected, he continued to run towards the boss, who didn't know what was going on and shouted to his men what they were doing. They had to surround him faster. But at that moment, another guy appeared in front of our hero and shrieked that he had to go through him first. It wasn't enough because Sun An broke through that guy's defense and started using his skills to reach the boss. And as soon as his skill reached the target, the notification system showed that the player Gui Lun was blinded. 
And that's when our hero realized she'd done checkmate. In the other direction, the Monkey King started yelling at Mole Zero to be gentle with his girlfriend because he could break all his bones. But still, the Monkey King was very scared because he wanted to pretend to be dead. But this monster immediately discovered him and that all his bones are almost broken and he can't move a finger. But Little Zero started to pull out the elixir that Sun An had given him. But the Monkey King couldn't understand what this strange life was, and did Sun, and give it to him, and realized the fact that he had to drink it because it was better than being eaten by that monster. But at that moment he realized that he could move, because his entire body had been restored, and this restorative potion was very rare, and he never thought that Sun An would get his hands on it. Kid Zero realized that this guy had recovered, started pulling out a sign saying that the master needed his help. But the Monkey King couldn't see how he could help him. But still, our hero needed help because he was struggling to fight off all the attackers. And as many as there were, he didn't understand how he could deal with them all quickly and take down the boss. And although he anticipated what he had up his sleeve, he himself had never attacked him before, and he didn't think that Trump would have such a nasty skill like mind control. And these guys started attacking him like crazy, and they've pretty much lost all their senses so the black veil doesn't work on them. Gong Lun running away with all his legs kept shouting for them to keep such a guy at all costs. But still, he realized that it was close. If he hadn't used his skill in the last second, he would have died. And just to think that this guy has a mass control skill and this man is too terrifying and they won't hold it against him for long. The only thing left is to get away quietly. The rest of the players with the guild could not understand why they were behaving this way and didn't do it. 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 Are simply cannon fodder and realize the fact that they can't and won't take part in this anymore. They all turned around and started running away. But the guild leader activated his skill and started ordering them to come back as they were all his puppets. Sun An realized that he was doing badly, seeing that Guy could control even more people and their number already outweighed all the parameters of the game. And even though it's weird, he's decided he's going to use his knuckle blade to take out anyone who gets in his way. Boss Gong Lun saw our hero rushing towards me and kept shouting to his subordinates to hold him back. And immediately all his subordinates began to mob the hero, even though he fought back as best he could. But there were a lot of them and Sun An realized that things were very bad for him now. After all, while he spends a lot of time fighting with his underlings, the boss is already starting to run away from him far away. And Gong Lun realized that this guy had him cornered, and he had to use everything to hold him back. And the fact that he just sat down and invested in creating a guild and put everything under his tail, and he planned to use them another time as well. At least he was glad that now he had a top-of-the-line weapon he could even resurrect. And this time he'll succeed. But he had no idea that there was a huge attack coming at him right now. And no sooner had he turned his head than the attack reached its target and hit him right on the head, causing him to fly off to the side. But as he fell to the ground, he saw that a high-end weapon had randomly flown out of his hand. And the Monkey King who hit him said he wouldn't let him escape. But Boss Gong Loon couldn't understand where he came from because he thought he was dead. But the Monkey King couldn't figure out what was going on. Because how did a guy with cool gear end up so new? But while the Dongshan Guild fought, another guild was following on their heels. Bai Mu, who was a 19th level warrior fighter of the 1st Division and a senior programmer of a game company, was enjoying a delicious drink. But at that moment, a strong blow hit him right on the head, and then the girl told him to stop chilling out. And while he was holding his head, the girl began to ask him if he had done what his brother Jie Jui had told him. But he did not dare to answer the question, only shrieked at her, did she really collapse? For he was in great pain, and could he not make a sip of tea, for he had worked like a dam all day long. But the girl didn't like that answer. 
And while she was angry, the guy kept telling them to stop wasting time because he'd already put the information in this video ball. Gui Lung's role is called traitor, and even though it's her special role, it's strange because it's different from their roles. His role traitor allows him to use his skills only on his comrades, and no conditions for the use of these skills are not required. However, on enemies they do not work, and his main skill is from the skill a rank puppet, and that his skills were perfect for the role of a traitor. But the girl didn't understand who had the idea to create such a role. Bai Mu sitting next to her started pointing his finger at Jie Jui and saying that he was the one who came up with all the roles in the game. Jie Jui standing in front of them replied that it was okay because he wasn't the only one doing it and he would like to know where the role came from too. If you compare the game New World and the world in which they are now, a lot of things have changed and I would like to find out the reason for such changes and where they will lead them to. But as soon as a huge explosion sounded near them, the guys began to realize that the Danshan Guild had gathered in this place, and it seemed to them that something had happened. But still, they decided that they should wait for the return of BPO Lo and the others to go and find out what happened out there. Five minutes earlier, the Monkey King continued to beat up Gong Lun, and dealing him more and more critical damage, he could barely stand on his own two feet. Well, as soon as he fell to the ground, he immediately started yelling to the Monkey King that they should discuss everything, because his death will not give anything, and he no longer needs this weapon, and he should just let him go, because he is sorry. But the Monkey King took another swing, saying that if his apology solves everything, then why the hell do we need the police, because he didn't spare him when he attacked. He followed those words with another blow to the head, causing Gui Lun's mask to shatter completely. And then the Monkey King realized he was acting too impulsively, but I still don't understand if he died after being hit like that. And realizing the fact that he killed the leader of the Dongshan Guild, and that his minions would come after him for revenge. But at that moment, there was a sound behind him telling him not to worry because the Dongshan Guild no longer existed. The Monkey King turned around and saw that it was his comrade Sun An. Sun An realized that it looked like he'd figured it out because he thought there would be trouble, so he rushed over as fast as he could. But the Monkey King, with a serious citizen's face, started to say that there is no problem here because he is the only one who could fight him, and he even returned the weapon, and plus he should know that it was him who won him 15 minutes of time. And he's not very happy after Sun An asked to bide his time. If it wasn't to save him, he wouldn't have helped him. But as soon as they looked at Gong Lun lying there, they heard some strange voice saying that it was too bad because he thought he would be more useful. But since Gong Lun is his apostle, he can give him another chance. But he has to show everyone the real power. And at that moment, a huge wave of magical energy struck directly at the place where Gong Lun lay. Sun An saw this and couldn't understand what was going on and why he was suddenly struck by lightning. The Monkey King, who stood beside him, also did not understand himself. But still he hoped that maybe he would be rewarded for his sins. At the same time, the other players couldn't figure out where the huge explosion came from. But no one could have imagined that a very dangerous creature would come out of that explosion, who suddenly said that I thought they'd meet again this way. You guys have already realized that it's still Guy Lung, but in a different guise. Sun An looking at him suddenly began to guess something to suggest to him that he was too dangerous, but asking in Gui Lun has he fallen so low as to become a devil. But Gui Lung looked at his hands and began to tell him that this was the power that the master of the world had bestowed upon him, and he's about to make them all beg for death. Monkey King, after all, heard, but could not understand what to do. He does not recall anything like this when he created the game, and this skill would not turn the player into a devil. But Sun An began to move. It was confused by the factor that he said, the master of the world, and maybe this is the final boss. 
But at that moment, Guilun saw that they were fleeing and began to accumulate a huge amount of dark energy in his hand. And releasing it, he began to attack them with all his might, for he had been looking forward to this moment. But by coincidence or luck, his attack flew right by our hero's head, causing a huge explosion to positively explode. And the guys turned around and couldn't believe their eyes that he'd unleash such a huge attack, and that the worst part was that it was so close by. Gong Lun looked at his hand and realized it came out a little clumsy, but it seems he needs a little practice, but it would be terribly boring if they were to die from that. And he'll torture them to get rid of all the hate that fills him. And looking at our hero, he started asking who was the one who just killed him. But after a few seconds of silence, the password monkey shouted that he had come for him, one, and they need to get out of here. But soon Anne didn't want to waste a second and started swinging her weapon at the same moment and so was already too slow. Guy Lung didn't even put in many episodes to dodge her, and raising his hand he began to prepare to attack again, for this time he was determined that he would not miss. When Sun An saw this, he realized that there was no way he could dodge the blow now, and at the same moment Gui Lun's attack broke through our hero's defenses, and he began to lose his balance, falling to the earth. Guy Lun taking offense at the fact that he hit the exact target you started telling him, it's time to grow out of fear, and he looked at our hero and said, is he so tired he can't get up with Zimli? And what's more beautiful is that even his arrogance is gone, for he will turn everything around him to ashes, leaving only despair behind him. The Monkey King, who was standing near our hero, began to ask how he was feeling, but Sun Anne began to answer him to stay away and run away as soon as possible. Because Gong Lun has already lost control, and he should take Zai Hui and the rest of the survivors and get out of here. I mean, if he wants to stay alive, he's got to run away. And as soon as the Monkey King realized the gist of his words turning around, he began to kill with all his might shouting at Sun An to try not to die. Gong Lun noticed that the Monkey King had started to run away and summoning a few more magic balls decided that he should not let him go of his wish. At the same moment, Sun An began to call up his inventory and bandage his wound because I realized that while his HP is at zero, he is using the bandage to stop the bleeding for now. If he's a demon, he still has a chance to defeat it, and these rock walls can do a fair amount of damage if he can somehow hit it. And the fact that Gong Lun uses ranged attacks means that close combat is his weakness. All he has to do is not miss his chance to strike a fatal blow, because with his speed he can use it. The Monkey King realized that he was not being chased, and it looked like Sun An was left to fight him, but he couldn't help him because he had done everything he could. He had no use for such a battle, and there were not many brave men like Sun An to stand up to this monster. All he had to do was run away, so he decided not to blame himself. At the same time, it appeared a girl who began to tell Bai Mu to run faster because they need to catch up with Brother J. Joy. But he, in the form of a turn of the gray wolf, began to answer her that they so learn how to broom. Does she think that it is easy to run in the new with Brother? Well, as soon as they looked and Paycheck saw the Monkey King but still thought it looked like some, they decided to ignore him and run along. The Monkey King realized that they were heading towards Sun Anya Well. What was strangest was that he saw that the wolf had a talking wolf. At this time, the battle continued, but not in favor of Sun An, for Gong Lun had already caught him, and holding his head, he began to lift him up, telling him that it was a strong attack and it would have been much worse if it weren't for his quick regeneration. And from the beginning of their fight, he used a lot of tricks. So Gong Lun decided he had to get rid of him first and then destroy everyone else. Sun An suddenly thought that he had tried so hard to injure him, but who knew that he could immediately heal himself? Yes, and what was later on, what kind of power is this? But now he realized that he was losing consciousness because his opponent was too strong. Gong Lun keep holding his throat said, 
You could break his neck to count, but that would be too boring. What about directing all his attacks at his brain? But at that moment, a guy named Jeju appeared and started using his divine light skill. And once divine light was applied to the notification system showed that all critical attacks and so far have been blocked. But you can't use divine light on the same player for an hour. Getting closer, Jeju began to ask Sun An that he was the one fighting Gui Lun here. Sun An turned his head around, couldn't understand where Jeju had come from and how he recognized him. But then Gong Lun interrupted their conversation. I thought it was a great day for him because he didn't expect to meet the leader of the Raiders Guild and asked him, did he really come to capture the moment of the birth of the new Gai Lun? Without thinking long, Jeju replied that it's not important now. What's more important is that Sun An should tell him about his ability and immediately. Sun An started to say that he can use ranged attacks that shoot an explosive flame similar to a laser in close combat. He is also strong and more importantly, he has a high regeneration ability, so he should keep that in mind. Sun An understood the fact that Jeju had come here to fight Gui Lun, but immediately his thoughts were interrupted by a huge wolf that appeared with her from wherever with a girl on her back. Jeju thought it wasn't worth wasting his time and started pestering his guilt and saying that as soon as a demon appears, it immediately brings chaos and destruction and they need to rid the world of it. Gai Lun was angry and couldn't understand if he wanted to kill him. And even if he is the strongest player, it won't help him because he has the power granted to him by the master of the world and he is as far as the sky to him. But Jeju with a serious expression on his face, began to answer him that didn't he understand yet? That he can awaken the power of God at any moment. The girl sitting on the wolf's back, seeing this started to heat up that brother Jeju is using this skill again and he's so cool. Sun in seeing that it is the golden wound in his role, he can still awaken her and he can't believe his eyes that this is even possible. Drink with this golden roller player gets the power of God. One within the weapon after using the power of Odin 20 times, the skill will come to sleep state, and he can use any skill for 10 minutes. And now Jeju will use all his strength to take him down. These words only made Gui Lun a little angry who thought he would also show them his final form. Sun An realized the fact that after this awakening, Gui Lun became even stronger. And once Gui Lun had gotten his final form that the World Master had ripped off, he decided he would test how many attacks he would need to finish them all off. Jie Jui has enough time to ask his friend Nana to help Sun Anyu and cure him early, and Bai Mu at this time must protect Nana. Or is it different now? And this time Jeju decided he couldn't protect them, and for their own safety they should stay away from the battlefield. And using the might skill Odin Speed, he began to approach Gui Lun at an incredible speed and attack him with the might skill, one strength. Gui Lun had time to react and stopped Jeju's attack before realizing that he was still in pain. But Jeju didn't stop delivering blows with his fists while he defended himself against the sword. Nana at this time began to approach our hero with words that he should not worry because this chip of her family, healing butterfly, it automatically heals his wounds, and since the brother trust him, she will do everything possible to heal him. But he'd better stay here if one of her butterflies disappears. He'll be in trouble because she automatically heals the player by turning into a healer's butterfly ability. However, if the player she's treating is in danger, she sacrifices herself and frees him, all her power to heal the player, and it takes three days to recover one butterfly. As soon as the healing kicked in, the guys started watching the battle and realized that taking them out is still manageable, but he said it would be dangerous, but so far he's defeating him effortlessly. But Sun An was aware of the fact that even if Jeju is strong, he's too relaxed because he's fought Gui Lung before and knows it's not that simple. But deciding that he should wait for the right opportunity to attack while all eyes were on Jeju, 
who stood beside Gui Lung and told him that no one would come to his rescue and this demon Lucifer or someone else. How much does he know about all this? But Gui Lung didn't hesitate to reply that my master's power is so great that they humans can hardly imagine it, and they only have themselves to worry about. And grabbing Jeju's weapon, Gui Lung kicked him with both feet so hard that he started to fly several dozen meters to the side. But as soon as he flew off, the notification system showed that Odin's mighty stamina had been activated. The girls and the guy who watched the battle couldn't believe what they were seeing. But Jeju had time to regroup and kneel down, saying he was fine. Gai Lun, seeing that he didn't do enough damage, started to summon his fireballs, and because now he wanted to see how he would deal with his dark fire and if he could say he would be okay afterwards. Because after that, no one can survive, and with all his strength, Gui Lun started to attack Jeju. But he managed to activate his power skills, Odin's awareness, stamina, and strength. And as soon as he blocked a few fireballs, he realized that he could not find the right moment to counterattack in any way. At the same time, other fireballs flew towards the girl, but her comrade successfully managed to change his form into an armadillo and protect her from all those attacks. But suddenly Gui Lung started screaming that his master had given him this power, and he realized the demons are the real rulers of this world, and he is invincible. But at that moment, Sun An took him by surprise and delivered a crushing blow straight to his heart. Gui Lun couldn't understand how he ended up behind his back but with a cloak of disguise that helps conceal its presence, and monsters can't detect the player who uses the item, Sun An replied with a serious expression that he was here to kill him. And after a crushing blow, the blade he held in his hands began to activate its power and dealt Gui Lun a tenfold blow. Sun An couldn't believe that he could recover and take damage at the same time after such a blow. Jaya Jui saw this and decided not to waste precious time afterwards because this is his chance to crush this demon. And with the might and power of Odin, he approached Gui Lung at full speed and started throwing a lot of heavy punches, causing Gui Lun to shout for them to stop. And at that moment, he was able to shove the guys aside, who couldn't figure out how he could still put up a fight in his condition. Gai Lun restoring his hand began to tell the guys that the god hates traitors, and so he cursed them and made them immortal, and he's one of them and they can't kill him no matter how hard they try. And while they're trying to do that, he'll destroy them all, and all of them will be the ones he will finish off without any regrets. And immediately after these words, he started to raise a huge fireball into the air and attack them all in this area of effect. In the other side, the girl's comrade Bai Mu was blocking all of Gui Lun's you-wanted attacks, but the girl was trying to help him with her instant healing. Sun An from the side to side realized that Gui Lun was attacking him, not caring about her wounds. But still, he realized that Gui Lun didn't fully know him, so with his blade sliding out, he realized he could strike from the other side. But as soon as his attack was blocked, he realized that things were bad and started activating one of his skills, Black Veil. But Gui Lun managed to hit Sun An before the Black Veil completely engulfed him. Sun An realized that this was the second fatal blow he had received. And even if he's lucky enough to hit it, the damage it takes is far greater. And he couldn't figure out if he could beat it. And even though it's risky, he needs to use that Bach that he's the only one who knows about. At that moment, Gui Lun saw a pop-up with notifications that he had been poisoned and also blinded, and his movement speed reduced, and the difference in strength too. Great debuff effect was greatly reduced. As soon as the effect was removed, Gui Lun realized he couldn't be defeated and started shouting at the guys to attack him as much as they could because he couldn't feel anything anyway. Jeju, standing next to our hero, asked him if he can still fight, to which Sun An replied that he still has strength, but not much as he would like it. But Jeju suddenly told him that even if his regeneration has no weaknesses, he still needs some time to recover. 
The longer they don't allow him to heal, the better their chances of winning. But son, Anne replied that he had thought of that too. On the other side, the healer started telling Jeju that Bai Mu was hurt, and they needed to finish off Gui Lung as soon as possible, and that he will use Odin's power seven more times, which is his first, and will limit his movement, and although it's dangerous to study, he hopes that son Anne will be able to give him the final blow, because his weapon does more damage. But son Anne raised his hand and told Jeju that this house wouldn't be enough, and he had a better idea. And he decided to ask him if he'd ever used the divine light on himself. But at this time, the blinding effect that was applied on Gui Lun was over and he started shouting, Have they really finished gossiping already? He's had enough of it, and now they'll finish this battle quickly. Sonan moved from his seat at that moment and shouted to Jeju to just listen to his instructions, but Jeju couldn't understand what he was saying because he hadn't even explained anything clearly. But Gui Lung saw that our hero had moved towards him. He liked this passion for battle and raising his hand he was ready to strike with his fireball. But still, Sunan knew he had to succeed, because if he keeps up with the timing, it'll trigger the passphrase. If he doesn't, he'll turn to dust. And the moment he's about to take the most damage, Jeju should realize that this is the plan he was originally talking about, but still, Jeju didn't realize that. Doesn't he know that he can't use the divine light on him repeatedly? And as soon as the attack reached our hero, Guidong began to laugh out loud because he realized that he had finally gotten rid of Sun Anya. But as soon as the smoke cleared, Sun An appeared and decided to ask why he was laughing, because did he really think this attack would kill him? Because if he can see, there's not a scratch on him and he survived the third fatal blow. Gai Lun was terrified and couldn't understand how this had happened, because he had definitely hit him, and what were those panels that had appeared around Sun Anya? But he replied that it didn't matter, because from now on, his attacks were nothing to him. But Gui Lun had gotten off his seat and simply didn't want to believe it, so he hoped that he could prove to him that he couldn't be invincible. Because no matter how it goes, he'd never believe it, and now he's just bluffing. And after receiving several more fatal attacks, our hero realized that he cannot be invulnerable for long, and this is just an act of God in which after receiving three fatal attacks in battle, the player will have ten seconds to rest, and any attacks received during this time will not be counted, but the damage received will be reflected to the attacker. And our hero's goal now is to anger him and force him to continuously attack him to get his strongest attack from the Gai Moon. Because Gui Lung was hoping this guy wasn't vulnerable in any way. But at this moment, Gui Lun's attack was nullified again and he couldn't understand what was going on here. Sun An at this point realized that he was done and told him that it was his turn to attack, since the time of the passphrase was over and all damage received would be turned into the player's attack. But also the notification system showed that not orderly data and player's health will gradually recover in 0.1 seconds. And as soon as the player's health reaches zero from that moment, the player will enter a mysterious state and in this state all attacks will be absorbed and transferred to the next attack of the player, given to return to normal state after the attack. Jeju seeing this now realized what Sun An had to do. Gai Lun saw the familiar energy wave and he couldn't believe that Sun An was using his own attack against him. But Sun An immediately told him that he was just returning what was his. And now his sword's pretty big and he's going to see how he does with it now. With his hand up the mountain, our hero asked Jeju to help him. When Gui Lun saw this, he couldn't understand because he had already shown all his power, but now it looked like he would have to run away and retrieve them if possible. But Jeju, who ran up to him, said he's not going anywhere now. Sunan looked at his comrade, then realized that he underestimated him. After all, he did not even have time to speak, and he has already understood what to do, and that as it was expected of her from Jeju, he is able to correctly assess the situation and find the right moment. 
and as soon as he got close to Gui Lun, he started attacking him with all his might. But after a few successful blocking attacks, Gui Lung told Jeju that it was too easy because his abilities were far from perfect. But at that moment, Jeju managed to grab his arm and bring him to the ground. And holding him with all his might, Jeju began to use divine light to cast it on himself and thus activate immunity to the death blow while Sun An was attacking. And swinging with all his might, Sun An was ready to send his opponent straight to hell. Gai Lun saw his attack and realized that he was definitely going to die now. At that moment, a huge explosion sounded, and as soon as the smoke cleared, Sun An began to ask Jeju if he was all right. Well, Sun An couldn't figure out if Jeju couldn't survive. But at this point, he started to pull out from under the rubble, saying he was fine and the radius of this attack was too large, and he didn't even have time to dodge the chest of rocks. Sun An started to apologize to Jeju, telling him that he only had one chance, so he put all his strength in. But Jeju said it's okay, and all that matters now is that they defeated Gui Lun. And while Jeju's subordinates were shouting at Sun, and that how dare he treat their brother like that and that he had become his butterfly, he decided to ask Jeju that he was not the developer of this game, and this world was created entirely by him, so that's where the demon came from. Jeju began to answer that demons are the most powerful monsters and outnumber all others in the new world, and it is related to the plot of the game. The clash between humans and demons should be the basis of the storyline in the game and from the beginning of the storyline, the first invasion of demons to the subsequent continuation of the war, with demons stand in the eight largest demons. But it seems as if the creator of this world is not on their side. Our hero did not realize that he is saying that he may be a demon or even a mythical boss and that he is going to attack untrained people on purpose. And while the guys were talking, Gui Lun's particle was still alive, these fortunately, at the very last moment he was able to stop his body particle, but it's a pity that now the recovery speed won't be as fast as it used to be. But suddenly Gui Lung heard the guys talking about how, after his death, nothing happened. And it's strange because usually a panel or a notification pops up, and they couldn't understand if it's God. But our hero didn't remember such a Baja. But still, Gui Lun realized that he had to get out of here right away and would take revenge after he had fully recovered. But suddenly, the conversation was interrupted by the Monkey King, who started asking our hero if he could kill Gui Lun. But without realizing it, he accidentally stepped right on Gui Lun and destroyed him himself. Sun An didn't bother to answer his question and asked how his friend was, and the Monkey King replied that she had already woken up and he had given her the inventory. But he had come to dawn the situation and he certainly had no intentions of helping him out. But at that point, the guys couldn't understand why the system was suddenly raising their levels. The Monkey King couldn't understand how he got so many notifications and that he had reached level 20, but when he looked at the pop-up window, he realized that he was cool after all. Sun An did realize that Gui Lung had somehow survived but was accidentally killed by a fat man, and that he had gotten such an achievement. And it's sad, but the Monkey King couldn't figure out how to live his life, and why he always gets into such messes. In another place, Zai Hui sitting on a baby mole started at full speed straight towards our hero, but she didn't understand why they were running so fast. But the guys replied that they were being chased by a whole crowd of people and they were scared. And behind them, some guys were shouting that the demonic beast would come from their hands and they should stop running. But in front, Zai Hui kept questioning the other guys. Are they really Sun Anya's friends? The other players running behind started telling the guy called Bao Luo that they were probably wrong but he insisted that this beast had a terrifying aura and was definitely the monster their boss had mentioned. 
and they immediately started shouting to the guys in front to stay away from this demonic beast, or they would have no choice but to attack them. But Zai Hui started telling them that they were mistaken because this beast would not harm anyone. The players could not understand how such a monster cannot hurt, but Little Zero began to shout at the players that they themselves are monsters, and at that moment our hero heard that it was the voice of his rabbit. And seeing that his mole started attacking the other guys who started yelling back at him not to give in and started fighting with all his might, Sunan could not understand what was going on. Jeju also, watching this stupid situation, began to ask his comrades what he was doing and why he could not in any way let go of Sunan's pet. And then Bao Luo scratched his head and started to say that he didn't know that this monster was his pet, and it gave off such a frightening aura that it seemed like a boss to him. Sun An's pet became even angrier after these words. But Sun An began to beg him to calm down, because there was nothing wrong with it, and turned to the guys and started asking if they were okay, and they said they were okay and he didn't have to worry about them. Zai Hui approached Sun Anya and said that she heard that he was badly hurt and she apologized to him for not being able to help him. But Sun Anya replied that it was just a scratch. But he was more concerned with the fact that limiting her characterization is her big problem. And they need to deal with it right away. The other guys started coming up to Jeju and telling him that they needed level 30 materials were collected and stored in the underground city. He replied that they had done a good job and they needed to level up sooner rather than later and they didn't have much time left. But he also decided to ask our heroes if he had thought about joining any guilds and if he wanted to join a raider's guild. But he realized that since there had been conflicts between them before, it was better to avoid unnecessary problems and that he didn't plan to join the guild for the time being because he was more comfortable being alone. Jajui heard him and realized that since he said so, he wouldn't insist. However, he must hear one piece of advice, because he knows that he is very strong and can use the disadvantages of the game for their own purposes. However, everyone has their weaknesses ahead of them, awaits a lot of dangers, and all yes, there comes a time when a person will not be able to cope alone. Therefore, Sometimes it is better when behind his back are his reliable friends and support. He needs to try to try to trust people. But hearing those words made our hero think about the trust he'd just heard about. But at this time a floating island that was 20,000 meters above sea level. Raffaello started telling her master that again, this guy is using bugs that are against the system again, and that he is really pissing her off and he should ban or punish him, otherwise the game will be unfair. But the man started to say to calm down, because the game must have some flaws so it will be more exciting, and he's just watching and wanting to let them bloom like flowers. That time will come, they'll realize, that only despair rules reality. Well, as soon as he looked at the notification window, he saw that the demon creation was almost complete, and 276 demons out of a thousand had been uploaded. And there are 29 days left until the demon invasion. Jeju at this time, who was on the ground with the rest of the players, began to tell our hero that if he wanted any information, he could contact him at any time. And from now on, they're rivals. Whatever it is, the rivalry will make them stronger, and he hopes he doesn't fall too far behind. When Sun An heard these words, he realized that he is obviously the main star here. But why does he feel as if his words overshadowed his success and what he wanted to ask about getting the gold class, but now he doesn't want to know anymore? Later, Sun An suggested to the other boys that they go to the dungeon with him, but they started to make excuses because if they went, they would surely die. And Sun An didn't understand why they had all decided to stay. Did he look so unreliable, but still, the dungeon they were looking for should be right up ahead, he said to Zai Hui, who started asking him, does he really want to enter the living forest? Because the recommended level there is supposedly higher than 28, and they barely survived a battle with a demon. Why would he want to risk his life again? 
Zaihai raised his finger and said that they were not risking their lives but were only helping her get rid of the seal and he was 80% sure they would succeed. And then he decided to ask Zai Hui if she remembered when they first met. And at the time, he was lost and thought his life was over. But her appearance made him find hope again. Zai Hui had already started to remember those times, because it seemed like she realized that she was talking about the time when he was being bullied. Sunan remembered that she not only didn't look down on him like others, but also always helped him out. And it was only through her that he developed an interest in writing code for the game, and it helped him realize that coding can create a lot of... At that moment, she saw him replaying his memories, and that she looked like Tolstoy on the screen. She didn't like it, so she started yelling at him not to do it anymore. As soon as she swung, you realized you'd forgotten that her power is twice as strong now as it was before and randomly she destroyed the fence that was behind our hero's back. Sunan realized that it looks like the girl is getting too sensitive if they call them fat. But there was something he wanted to tell her in general, or rather, to thank her for being his friend and he is willing to take any risk for his precious friend, Zai Hui replied that even though her characteristics are frozen, she is still the monster designer of this game so she can help him. But then a girl came along and crossed her arms and began to tell the boys that it was very touching and they should be together. A cold-blooded fool has such a soft heart, and it's very sweet, she thought. Sun An couldn't understand what she was doing here, to which she replied that she thought that if she followed him she could make some money. But Sun An didn't hesitate to turn her around and start escorting her, because there is only one merchant in the team and they don't need her. But she still asked him to let her go with them and she will help him get things and she only needs a part of the loot. Zaihai suddenly decided to stand up for the girl and says to our hero that why didn't he let her join in after all the more people the merrier, but what he replied to her that she should promise that she would only pack up and stay away from them. And yet without much thought, he decided that he would go all three of them who were in a dangerous dungeon and told Zai Jun that later he would give her a cloak to help her hide from the monsters. And going inside the dungeon began to explain to his partners that this world is inhabited only by vegetation in accordance with the will of the forest and jungle. And thanks to the climate, the native plants grow faster and more lush. And even if there are no animals here, it doesn't mean the danger level is low, because it's home to many dangerous creatures and one of them is a level 27 centaur tree, whom Sun An also destroyed. And after destroying him, he started saying that the weak point of these monsters is their faces. They do the most damage to their faces and he's done with them quickly. Zai Hui raised her head and began to tell our hero to beware of mischievous birds, who were already speeding straight at him. And at first glance, they didn't look that dangerous. But in fact, their level was quite high. If you don't pay attention to them, they can use a pack to finish off a victim very quickly. Sun An saw that there were several of them who thought it was a very difficult job because they had to be attacked directly in the air. However, he had prepared for this battle in advance. And shipping with inventory family demonic flower, which after planting, who grows out of it, Demonic Flower Battery automatically attacks monsters. And once the Demonic Flower reacted to the environment of the forest, then its attack was multiplied as well as its health. Zai Jun, along with Zai Hui, who was standing nearby, realized that they had been spotted by the centaurs, and their intuition level was too high. But Zai Hui knew the solution to this problem and told her friend not to worry and let her handle a couple of monsters but now she must cover herself with her cloak and not come out of her hiding place until she destroys every island that approaches them. She also began to analyze the situation that the centaur's attack range is 1.8 me, and the demon scythe's attack range is 2.5 milmer, and she can destroy them before they get too close. And as soon as she swung her scythe and killed two centaurs in one fell swoop, Zai Jun watched the battle and was very excited that she was so strong. Sun An, who was in front and was destroying all the monsters that were coming towards him, 
suddenly started to turn around and ask Zai Jun how they were doing. Zai Hui raised her level, telling him that everything is fine and she can get rid of them before they can get close to her, and she's definitely not going to let him down now. Sun An heard her words and realized that she was doing much better than he expected, and they destroyed most of the monsters that were nearby. And it's only a matter of time before those monsters that have been poisoned die anyway. But at this point, all monsters have begun to distribute their damage, and in this state, monsters other than the main body will not be supported by any disease or poison. And all because there was a dungeon boss, who with his shouting began to inspire the players a huge pressure. When Sun An saw this, he realized that there were stronger monsters than Zai Jun, who was behind him, was too surprised that the Lord could talk. The dungeon boss was a level 30 living tree that was several tens of meters tall, and raising his huge hand, he began to swing with the words that he would not let live anyone who dared to desecrate his forest with his filthy existence. Sun An saw this attack and started telling his partner to retreat back because it was too dangerous to be here now. As soon as they jumped back and saw that the attack flew straight at Sun Anya, but he still survived and started to attack the boss back. But because of the damage distribution, the notification system showed our hero that the resistance of the boss is too high poison, only works once for each attack made, and when the target is the boss, each attack of the player does no more than 250% of the number of attacks of the player. But he didn't want to wait for the right moment and jumped up with all his speed and started to attack him with a counterpunch. But after our hero's attack, the dungeon boss felt almost nothing and said he was even a little ticklish. Sun An already realized that this is what he was expecting. He can't do any damage to the boss while he's sharing wounds with other mobs, but the effect of physical attacks is still there. But immediately he realized that he was in a bad situation because being in the air, the monster birds that were at his back waited for the right moment and began to fly towards him from behind with all speed. The guys in the back started yelling at him to be careful because all the monsters were heading straight for him. But he didn't let us defeat our heroes so easily and started using his black smoke to blind the monsters. And with the help of black smoke, our hero began to blind all enemies for three seconds, and he also gave a missed chance to enemy attacks. Sun An was still beginning to realize that he just needed to keep hitting the same point, and that way he would definitely be able to defeat the dungeon boss. After many blows, the dungeon boss got even angrier, and with a loud shout, he threatened Sun An Yu. How dare he attack him? And now he's going to turn it to dust with one punch. At that moment, an Easter egg appeared and Sun, Anne appeared at a certain point. The dungeon boss couldn't figure out what was going on and why he couldn't hurt the player who was attacking him after all. But Sun Anne continued to beat him and took one last swing and said it was a programmer's secret. And he wouldn't understand it even if he explained it to him but with his explosive attack, he sent the dungeon boss straight to the ground and realized the fact that he found his weakness and now he can finish him off in a heartbeat. Sun Un swung his blade once more. Zai Jun, who was nearby, started talking about her sister, Zai Hui, that she had an idea, and aren't trees afraid of fire? Why don't they start a fire and burn them all? It might help Sung An Yu. But Zai Hui told her that they can't wake up the fire because it's too dangerous, and it will only spread the forest even more and increase their power. This is the hidden characteristic of the living forest, but still. Sung In has some kind of plan, so he constantly attacks the boss core, and now they need to prevent the other monsters from attacking Sung An. And seeing several monsters that were nearby, Zai Hui swung her scythe and killed them all at once, because she decided before she entered the dungeon that no one could get through it. Zai Jun running away from the flying monsters started yelling at her on her finger to help her like that. And as they tried to buy time for the hero, he continued to destroy the dungeon boss, and such is his core. And while the passphrase was activated, the Lord of the Earth could not damage our hero, so he was safe. But still, 
The boss couldn't figure out what the hell was going on here and the fact that he was never reached by a player. But with all his chatter, he made sung -on even more angry and started telling him to shut up and pretend to be a normal tree. After all, he's already pretty much defeated. And while striking the final blows, sung -on still reached the pure ancient crystal that was inside the tree, and this core was a living tree. The extraction of the core will deal absolute damage and kill the dungeon boss, and it may also have other special uses. Still couldn't figure out what he was going to do with his core, and using a wooden spike, he started attacking the player back at him. But just like last time, nothing happened, and Sung An finally started pulling out the core that will help his friend too. When I pulled out his tree, I realized this was his end, and now he's just going to die. And at the same moment, the notification window started. The yet living alarm was destroyed and they successfully cleared the dungeons. Zai Hui together with Zai Jun, fighting with monsters, could not understand what was going on because their level immediately began to rise and that the connection between the monsters makes them die at the same time. Sung An holding the cannonball in his hands realized that the ability that was supposed to give protection was a fatal blow to them. And jumping off the dungeon boss, they all saw that there was a lot of inventory nearby that had fallen out of all the monsters. And now they have the class change items and can remove the restriction on Zai Jun by changing her class. But the guys looked at the core and couldn't tell if it was an unusual core. It didn't look like a class change item. Sung Yan began to explain that even though he doesn't look like a cool object to me now, he will become one after one small command because players can use a certain command to activate the power particle inside the crystal, turning the player's class into a special class. It will take 24 hours to change the profession process. And it's going to take all day and Zai Jun's going to have to be patient. But Sung An realized that I sometimes overstretch trust is not exactly advantageous, and he had already forgotten which team was there, and something like the letter C. But Zai Jun asked him not to fool around, and he replied that he just wanted to relieve the tension after the fight. But still with his arm outstretched, he began to tell her to get ready. They're about to start. And as soon as he said the command that was immediately activated, recovery began for Zai Jun's player. And her body began to wrap itself in a wooden cocoon, but finally the hero told her they'd see each other in 24 hours. And now they have to wait for a miracle to happen. Because now we just have to wait for Zai Jun to change class and come out. Suddenly, Sung Annie's stomach started to hurt, and he realized that because of all the commotion, he hadn't had time to eat. Zai Hui at this time began to collect a lot of materials. And as soon as she looked at them, she realized that they were at least rank D and worth a lot of money. At that moment, Sung An started to turn around to Fong because he realized that she hadn't eaten anything either and decided to ask her a question. But before he could even ask her, she turned around and with fear on her face started telling him that she knew she couldn't do anything here alone and was just helping him gather items and he should get it right. And now she will collect all the magic crystals. But for now, she can give him the cloak and the materials from the living tree because it is his merit. Sung An couldn't understand what had happened to her because he only wanted to ask if she wanted to eat and why react like that, he wondered. But in the end, he decided if she didn't want it, he'd eat alone and he'd pack his gear first. And picking up one of the items, he was surprised that it was moving. And the spiritual body of a living tree is a material that will help make a restorative potion and is enough for about seven, eight bottles. And he also has other magical properties. And if he loses an arm or a leg somewhere, he can use a restorative potion. But here is the most important item. This necklace from bosses starting from the 30th level drops equipment of purple rank. And according to Jeju's words, trouble is coming to their world in the form of demons. That's why they need to create an advantage by collecting items that are effective against demons. And understand the fact that the demon king is Lucifer, our hero decided he'd get to him first. 
But at that moment, everything suddenly disappeared near our hero and he couldn't understand what was happening. He turned around and started shouting to his comrades where they'd gone. But the mysterious voice said, I'm not here and it's just the two of them in this spiritual world. And this NPC that appeared was called a spirit body and she immediately started telling the hero that she was glad to see him. She is the original goddess with the protector of this forest. The voice of his heart woke her up, and there is no need to worry. She came in peace, hearing these words. Sung and breathed out because he realized that she is different from the previous monster, but then he decided to ask what will happen next, and does she want to take revenge on him? But the goddess said no, she came because they have a common enemy. The demon king has brought countless calamities to this world, and though he was once defeated by the Hardiman Alliance and his existence was not completely destroyed by the... And she felt their army wanted to attack their world again, and they have become stronger if they are not prevented, this world is doomed. However, she is under the restrictions created by the demon king and can only survive in this small section of the area and she longed for the emergence of a true hero, and he defeated one of the Demon King's minions and the abilities he had just used demonstrated that he was that hero. But in fact, Sung An realized that she was mistaking the limitations of the system for the limitations of the Demon King. But the goddess went on to say that destroying the Demon King is his true goal. If so, she'll lend him a helping hand, but immediately the heroes replied in no uncertain terms that it is. For he realized that if her request suited his needs, how could he refuse and telling her that he was going to kill the demon king anyway, and if she would help him he would be grateful? Well, she said, for the creatures of this forest give him their blessing. But as soon as her blessing was activated on the hero, he realized that except for this aura he felt no change. But the goddess told him to look at his palms, and now he has a glowing flower mark on both palms and must try to touch down from earth. And with these tags, he can control the plant, and the blessing of the forest will allow him to control plants without spending mana, and he can also change their shape, but then the hero decided to test their limit. But the goddess said that the limit depends on his spiritual energy, it will increase with his level. However, she would not recommend using the blessing now with his current level. He will not be able to maintain this power for long and he may lose consciousness due to lack of spiritual energy. And then Sung An realized why he felt so bad. Leaning over, he didn't expect such an effect and asked why she hadn't told him before, but keeps losing consciousness. The last thing he heard from the goddess was that she trusted him with the future. But a little later, he finally began to regain consciousness, and opening his eyes, he saw his comrades in front of him who looked at him anxiously. But when he got up, he immediately asked Zai Jun if she wasn't in the profession change, Princess, why she was released, and didn't she have a profession change? But Zai Jun told him that it's been a day and she's long gone, but he fainted yesterday, and no matter how much they called him, he couldn't wake up. For Sung An, it was terrifying because he had been fainting for so long and he realized that he should use that special power more carefully. Zaijun decided to ask for what power he is now speaking for. He replied that it's another story and first he wants to see her update, but she blushed and told him not to be jealous of her. And it seems her new class is made especially for her and not only can she keep her strength as if she doesn't have to worry about other characteristics and all, because now the characteristics depend on her strength also, she can now use vampirism. Except that all her skills were reset when she changed class, but she added the ability to connect with Fate Sung and asked her if that wasn't good. There will come a time when you need to use all fates, and the effects of vampirism are evenly distributed among all allies, and she can damage or heal allies at the same time, and it is very useful. Fung, after hearing his story, picked up a huge bag of magic crystals and handed it to the hero, 
said that she did not take a single one, but he did not fully believe it because it was not like her, and do not think she is planning something. But the Fung girl only said one thing, fell on her knees and started asking them to give her the spiritual body of the living tree, but the guys couldn't understand what she was doing and why she was kneeling at all. Fung went on to say that she has no right to ask for such a rare item, and now she doesn't even have enough money to buy it. This item is very important to Xiao Yu, and only it can give her hope. If he can give it to her, she'll do whatever he says, and no matter how much he asks, she won't until he agrees. At this time, other players were fighting against the new wave of monsters and seeing this didn't realize that they were stronger this time around. But the Monkey King saw that they are only little fairy ghosts, and they must provide them to him but only remember that all the reward will be his. And after gathering his strength, he decided to show all his strength to kill. And at that moment his hostility skill began to activate, and immediately the little fairy ghosts began to get unreasonably angry with him. And as soon as they didn't fly towards him, they immediately started attacking him, but it was all for nothing, because he simply blocked all their attacks. And with each blocked attack, he was able to heal all of his wounds. The other players began to take advantage of the fact that the Monkey King was distracting all the monsters, and without any regret, they began to destroy one by one. The Monkey King at first thought that this ability was terrible, but as it turns out, it is very useful skill not only provokes enemies, but can also heal something similar to the regeneration ability that Gui Lun had, and he became a completely different person. Even realizes this fact that Sung An will now be jealous of him. But immediately, a level 11 fanged boar appeared and began running at full speed at the Monkey King so he couldn't figure out where they came from, and he can't handle them and starts running away. He shouted to the other players that they're on their own now, but the players started asking him not to run towards the ruins. But at the same moment, a huge wave of blows wiped out all the monsters that, and the one who destroyed the monsters was Sung An. And then he turned around and started asking the Monkey King what he was doing here, and if he couldn't even handle the uncrowded monsters. But he started to nervously reply that it's just a warm-up. If he was serious, he wouldn't have died long ago. But the other players who were standing behind the Monkey King started to ask who he was. Zai Jun suddenly saw that the area looked like an abandoned school and Feng standing beside her started to tell her comrade Wang Di that she had come back. Van Di was surprised to see her because she disappeared for a few days and they were afraid that she got into trouble, but Fen told them not to worry because she is that lucky guy guys, looked at our heroes began to ask her, is it really her partner's boyfriend because he looks very strong? But she replied that it's not really true that he's actually a very mean and evil person, even though Sung An heard everything. Sung An started to pick up the item that was still in her possession and told her that if she said he was a villain, therefore he should behave accordingly. If she let him think, she could work for eight to ten years, or he could send her to a dangerous dungeon where she would earn money for him. Immediately she realized that she was wrong, but in fact, our hero realized that the spiritual body of the living tree was not so special. It could be obtained again, and of course, he could give it to her for a low price, but he needed to see her sincerity. But at that moment, some other guy appeared and ran at full speed towards the guys shouting that big brother Wang Di had come to the rescue and now he's going to destroy all the monsters and stop them from destroying their house. But the guys see that he's activated the spell and start asking that it's okay and he can undo it. But after taking a few more steps, he tripped over a rock, and his magic orb flew straight into the guys who started flying apart after a huge explosion. Seeing the water ball, Sung An was surprised that this little guy could use such a rare spell. And although most of the players were unharmed, one player did get hurt, and it was the Monkey King who didn't realize what had happened. One of the players started coming up to the boy and scolding him for not telling him to stay inside. 
And did he not listen to him again? Every time he tries to help, he makes things worse, and he even managed to hurt a man. But the guy couldn't understand why they never take him into battle. After all, he is a grown man, and he is already ready to defend them. Fung went over to the guy who was scolding the boy and said that he always had good intentions and Wang Di should stop being angry with him. But Wang Di still thought that, however, he was too reckless, and when there was a real threat to his life, they might not be able to save him in time. The boy started asking Fung where she was, because Xiao Yu is not feeling well and doesn't even want to eat anything, so she came over now he must be feeling better. And that Xiao Yu already knows she's back and he's running here himself. And then Sung An saw what she kept saying about the dog. And as soon as the puppy ran up to Fung, she knelt down and began to greet him. Desai Jun and Sung An were sure that Baby is a dog and has no hind legs. The player standing next to them began to explain that it is not congenital. He lost his limbs after he was attacked by a monster, and when he rescued him he was covered in blood and had to have his paws amputated. And this game took so many lives, including Fung's parents, but she was able to raise and care for the puppy. It's almost like a family member to her and to help her recover. She's teamed up with a lot of people trying to find any information on a healing cure. Sung An realized that's why she begged him so much and had to go through so much. And then he started asking her if she still wanted to receive the spiritual body of the living tree. And she said of course she did, because she only wanted her friend to get well soon. But picking up the spirit tree and the hero wondered how it really worked. And giving it to Fyung, he also said that for a while everything should be kept near the object, and the body itself will repair the injury, and there should be no pain. And at that moment, magically, the puppy's wooden hind legs began to appear. When she picked up the puppy, Fanu saw that it worked. And as soon as she let the puppy go, he started barking loudly and running around in circles. After making sure everything was okay, Fane picked the puppy up once more and began to tell him that he could run around like he used to. The other players were shocked that in this world there are mystical things that cannot be explained. Sun Ann standing nearby began to tell her not to get too excited because she has to pay him, but Zai Jun thought that he shouted such a touching moment. But the Monkey King, who was standing nearby, raised his head because he had finally been spotted, the other players began to apologize to him. Although they hadn't completely forgotten about him while they were doing Fung's business, the Monkey King realized that it looked like he had caught a cold and began asking the guys if there was anywhere nearby to change clothes. And he also suggested to the other players that, if they're not in a hurry, how about staying with them for a while? Well, Sun Ann didn't really want to go with them. But as soon as that guy said they had hot water, they agreed. And approaching the building, the man went on to say that it used to be a college, so a lot of stuff was left behind, and they decided to set up a shelter here. And this building even has electricity on the roof, with solar panels, and they're using their power. And that it's not easy to find a place like this in this world, so they're determined to protect it no matter what. And going to the shower stall, the guy said it's a bathtub, and on the left is for men, and on the right is for women, and there's hot water everywhere. The guys had been wanting it for ages, and before they started throwing their stuff around, one of the guys started pulling on the kid that they needed to talk about something because he had thoughtlessly thrown a magic ball at his allies. Another player began to turn to our hero asking him if he was going to go inside, to which Sun Ann replied that he would not for the time being. But to tell you the truth, with food and electricity, it's a pretty good place he's got, and even the monsters aren't usually the strongest, and everything sure looks great. But why does he feel so uneasy in his heart? I mean, he's got some kind of ineffable feeling that you're terrifying. But then some strange woman showed up and all she said was that she'd found him. But she also kept saying that he actually hit her and he doesn't love her. At the same moment he realized that she had disappeared and what he didn't want, his heart didn't rise. 
And was it really a ghost thought? Sun An. Sun An told him that a ghost had just appeared here and that it was a common thing here, he asked. But when he heard about the ghost, the guy got scared but said he'd been here for a long time but hadn't seen anything like it, and maybe he's imagining it. But the truth is, he's a coward, and he's scared shitless of all these creepy supernatural things, and he can't hope he's joking because he's afraid he's going to fall over. But Sun An raised his hand and said he'd upset him because that ghost was right behind her. As soon as he turned his head, the ghost started coming closer to him, asking if it was him and if he liked her. But the guy with horror on his face began to fall to the ground, screaming that it was a ghost, and then he simply lost consciousness. But the phantom began to wonder if he didn't love her too much if he fell to the ground, and that no one wants to be her boyfriend. But at that moment, our hero saw a notification window that showed that it was an NPC with a broken heart, and he should talk to her, and maybe he can find out something. Sun An realized that the way he did and said that ghosts don't exist and are just NPCs, and more importantly, it's a potential passphrase, passphrase full of experience. The NPC started to turn around and walk back through the walls saying that there was no one who would love her because she was just a ghost. The loser realized that it was bad that she was leaving, and if he misses her now, there's no telling when she'll show up next, and he can't let her leave. He started saying her name and asking her to wait. He said she was different from the others because she'd managed to get her attention, young lady. Well, NPC couldn't understand what he wanted, and does he really want to hit her again, and the fact that this guy is too close and her heart, you transfer from others. But by pinning her against the wall, our hero said it was a little misunderstanding, and now they can talk about their feelings. But the NPC thought he wasn't his type at all. But soon An told her it was just her imagination, because he was willing to change for her and be the perfect match. But really, for the sake of the passphrase, he thought he could afford a few pompous phrases. The NPC started sobbing loudly and asking, does he really want to change for her? And she finally found someone she likes. Sunan decided that since he'd already confessed to her, shouldn't she? But before he could say anything, she took his hand and started pulling him through the wall, saying he should go with her and realized the fact that he'd spun the passphrase and he'd go back to wherever he was to deal with the real thing. Zai Jun was taking a shower and started telling Feng that she thought something was happening outside. At which time the hero finally arrived on the scene. On the NPC started telling him that he should stand here for now and she will be back soon, but he should also try not to hurt anything here. But in fact, our hero expected a little different. This place is not like a dungeon. Well, after looking around, he realized that he had been led to an old warehouse and he was early to rejoice and already hoped that he had filled her affection meter very quickly. But he also lowered his head and saw books that said it was a love manual for female ghosts. And in the book itself, a love guide for the ghost woman. In point 11, it was written that he should dress up to emphasize his coolness and it will give him a confident aura. And in point 19, he should definitely get behind any person, and it will be a pleasant surprise for them. In paragraph 37, if he meets a man who will change for him, he should cut off his hands and feet, and then he will be around forever. And then he realized that she was going to mutilate him so he wouldn't go anywhere. But then an NPC appeared behind him with a giant pair of scissors asking what he was doing here. But he turned around in fear and began to tell her to wait, because he wanted to talk about it. But also she must first put down her huge and sharp scissors. NPC couldn't understand what was wrong, and didn't he say he was willing to change for her, and he didn't even want her to give him a haircut? But when he heard about the haircut, the hero calmed down because he realized he'd stay alive. But he also feels like a lamb, and there's no telling what it feels like to have sharps flying over his head. But he knew it was a passphrase, and he wouldn't give up. And as soon as she was done, you told him to look at himself in the mirror. 
and when he saw his reflection, he was surprised that he'd only changed so much when he changed his hair. And the fact that this hairstyle looks incredible. NPC said yes, it's all because he read Tony's haircut manual. But with her hands down, she started to pull out clothes and told him that the next clothes were his, and he had to choose the one on the left, but the hero replied that he had chosen the one on the left. But still, he didn't realize he didn't have to change his image and his suit and how about giving him a little privacy. And as soon as he went into another room and started to change his clothes, he turned his head and saw that the ghost NPC was peeping at him. But when he put on his new clothes, he saw that they looked good on him. And at that moment, the notification window seemed to have triggered the Easter egg of healing a broken heart. And his love helped Gen Z, and he got the location of the dungeon with double experience, and it is marked on his map. Happy that the passphrase was complete, he started to leave. But before leaving, he thanked the NPC because she helped him a lot and gave him very cool clothes, but she somehow strangely introduced herself and told him not to approach with her because she can and not stand it. Also, the hero opened the map, started to look, and where is the dungeon with double experience? Looking closer, he realized it was nearby in the diner, and other players would have found such an obvious place long ago. But he still couldn't figure out what was going on here and how the monsters got out in the first place. Double Experience Dungeon this is a special dungeon in the New World and can be opened by completing missions or meeting NPCs. It looks like a normal dungeon but has a double experience bonus. And it's worth noting that in addition to the regular boss, there are one to five elite monsters sitting there as well. Because of their danger, they are imprisoned in this dungeon and only players can enter it. But this time, they broke free. Zaijun was in the bathroom and couldn't understand where that little demon had come from. But she began to realize that the green demon was a dungeon monster, and what he was doing here she couldn't know and that he had double experience and was a dungeon monster with double experience. But then Fung's girlfriend came up to her and handed her a towel and asked her to take it. But Zai Jun started telling Fung that they had to leave and the little green demon is a monster that moves in groups and his friend is somewhere nearby. But in the meantime, the Monkey King continued to fight against the little green demons. But then, the guy who just fainted woke up. And before he could open his eyes, the guys started yelling that the monsters were coming and defending myself with my shield. The Monkey King started yelling at the orc to stop spitting, because his mouth stinks like a garbage dump. I knocked him over. Then the Monkey King immediately started to finish him off by hitting him several times with his shield on his green head, but he also couldn't figure out where the devils came from. And it's a good thing he was here or the other guys would have gotten in trouble. But he also couldn't understand why he fainted. But the guy said that it seemed like it was leading a ghost. He freaked out and passed out and couldn't remember anything else. But when the Monkey King heard about the ghost, he told him that he'd lost his mind. But more importantly, where is Sun An now? But then Zai Jun came running out from the corner asking them, did they run into the little green demons too? But the Monkey King told her that he had already taken care of everything. Zaijun began to explain to them that the situation is not good and she suspects that the monsters in the dungeon have gotten loose and that why are there so few of them? Where are the other guys? But the guys started to say that the others are in the cafeteria at dinner time. If what she's saying is true, then they're in danger. They need to run and warn them. But one of the guys started to say that Sun An might have been tricked by that ghost, and he was so scared that he became delusional. But the Monkey King asked, is he really delusional because the ghost doesn't exist? And it was probably an NPC, and maybe he went back on the mission, because that's very likely. At that moment, they all turned their heads together towards where the monster lay, which began to growl loudly. And then they realized that Fatty hadn't finished him off. And right after that, other monsters showed up, so he called his buddies for help. 
and it didn't take long for the Monkey King to fall right on top of Monster, screaming that he was trouble. Zaijun started telling him not to get too involved in the fight and they should find the others first, because this place is already crawling with these monsters. Zaijun opened his notification window and started to send messages to Sun An, but realized he was offline and couldn't reply, but she still hoped he'd see him sooner rather than later. At this time, Sun An looked at the notification window and realized that the small green demons were living in groups, which meant that they could earn a lot of experience and his friends were now heading towards the dungeon entrance, but he still couldn't understand what had really happened. It made him realize he needed to get away and help his friends, and raised his head and started yelling at the entire warehouse why she wouldn't let him leave and why she put a restraining order on him. But then a female NPC showed up telling Sun, and that there are so many monsters outside and isn't he safer here, and she's doing this for him. And besides, she can't let him run away. If he leaves her, she'll be alone again. But Sun An starts to tell her that he needs to help his friends and get experience. But the NPC said that until he found another person to stay here and keep her company, she wouldn't let him leave. But he didn't understand how he could find him, and she couldn't change the terms. But she turned around and started flying away, saying there was no other way and he owed her. And that's when she vanished and our hero realized she'd left him. And then he realized that he couldn't stay here much longer and he had to figure out a way to get out of this place somehow. At this time, other players kept running away from a lot of monsters. And one of the guys started saying that around the corner, the cafe would be right across the street. But immediately, the Fung girl's face became terrified, and she raised her hand and began to say what lay ahead. The guys immediately started checking to see if there were any survivors in the room, and the other players will try to hold off the monsters. But it turned out that some players were very badly hurt by these horrible monsters, and the guy got up and quietly said, they're all gonna die and they need to get the hell out of here. And the other guy couldn't believe his words because it's impossible I can't be. And how did such brutal monsters get here? And still hoping that someone was alive, the boy moved from his seat and started running towards the closed door. And although his comrades shouted at him not to do anything stupid, he didn't listen to anyone and ran on. Zaijun and the Monkey King fighting the monsters could not understand what to do because where they were going to go is very dangerous and will they really go there, asked the Monkey King in Zaijun, but she still thought that saving people is more important. And they need to get to that place as fast as they can. After dealing with a small group of monsters, they still started trying to break through the huge doors. And running outside, they saw their comrade on the ground bleeding, and they also couldn't understand what had happened and where the huge footprints came from. But lying on the ground, the fellow suddenly began to move, and turning to the other players in his head, he whispered softly that they should be careful, for behind the, there's a huge monster standing there swinging a huge baton. And after a tremendous impact, the guys were blown right off to the side. Trollberg realized by the clock in his head that his swing didn't hit the spot he was aiming for. Zaijun got up and started telling the Monkey King that Fung had luckily only lost consciousness, even though that troll's blow was too strong, and the direct damage from that guy is lethal. If he'd hit, he'd have blown them to smithereens, but still, they didn't know what to do with him. Well, at that moment, another huge troll appeared, and now there were two of them. The Monkey King still could not understand where the other one came from and that they had a lot of wounded and did not understand how to fight. But while the Monkey King was looking at the two huge trolls, Zai Jun told him that they weren't the worst thing here. Because right in front of her stood a huge demon sorcerer boss, ruler level 36 demon, who began to address Zai Jun, saying that he was very happy that the prey had come into their hands and he was feeling just fine since the restriction had been lifted. And now he's going to wreak havoc and make people suffer. And at that moment, the huge troll swung his club straight at the Monkey King. 
But the Monkey King had great difficulty holding back his attack, and also asked Zai Jun if she was okay because he wouldn't be able to hold on much longer. Zai Jun fending off another troll said only that she was struggling to bide her time. And she's got a couple of wounded people here and they need to be protected and there's nothing she can do about the fact that no one's targeting him because of that phantom dragon curse. Demon Warlock, watching the guys struggling to fight off the trolls, just laughed because for him such a scene was very entertaining. But raising his huge paw, he said they weren't like other people. They were dying too fast and he couldn't enjoy it and then started asking them if they wanted to play a game. But the Monkey King responded by saying, who would want to play with him because he's a monster? Demon Sorcerer, summoning a huge fireball, began to immediately direct it at the Monkey King and Zai Jun with the words that they will not leave so easily. And they should also look directly at him now. Because those men he caught his boys taught them a little lesson and kept them from dying on purpose. Zai Jun saw it and realized that that guy was with Sung Um. But the demon warlock started saying that the rules of the game are simple. A huge fireball will slowly melt over their heads and they have to save their friends before they turn into kebabs. And they also have to consider that the temperature of the balloon reaches 1,000 degrees and a small drop can kill a person. And as soon as one of the fire drops fell on the player, he started screaming loudly because of which the demon sorcerer said that for him this sound is very pleasant, and they do not have much time left to save their friends. Another player who was lying on the ground pressed the king to shout to the sorcerer that he was scum and he would haunt him even after death. But Zai Jun stood in front of him and said they wouldn't die. And she will definitely not let that happen, not even at the cost of her own life. But suddenly the Monkey King started asking Zai Jun what kind of phantom strike skill she had and where she got it from in the first place. But she told him he'd rather just exist on the screen and jumped into the air and started swinging her huge scythe telling them that all they're doing here is destroying and hurting humanity. And hitting the huge troll a few more times, he slowly began to lose his balance. And at that moment, the other player's notification system started showing that the pure talent was activated and vampirism was used. The fate link was activated and the main player was healed and the related players would be healed evenly. Zaijun realized that her vampirism skill was quite good. However, even though the bond of fate can prevent life-threatening injuries, there are too many people and mana consumption is also high she needs to heal the wounds of the others so they have a chance to save themselves. But that's when the Monkey King started calling all the monsters in the neighborhood names, about how stupid they are and how they can't even attack a donut like him. And at that moment, the aggression level of the little green demons was raised and also the aggression level of the troll Berg was also raised. And while the huge monsters were interested in the Monkey King, Zai Jun went into action. And after a few seconds, she managed to destroy one of the trolls for a triple experience bonus. Zai Jun immediately realized that her comrade Sun Yu Yue had caught the moment, because as expected from an old comrade, he could be relied on. But as soon as she saw that he started running away from the monsters screaming at them that he was giving up, she immediately took it back. Demon Sorcerer, who was watching the situation, realized that that guy was able to attract all the monsters on himself, and the fighting ability of this girl and how she was able to distribute the damage is also impressive, but it will be terribly boring if no one dies. And then he decided to end it by summoning a huge <laughs> yellow clouds, <laughs> from which emerged a huge one-horned monster dubbed the elite riding pet of a level 34 Krampus demon rhinoceros who immediately began to smell the fresh scent of blood and jumped on it, the demon warlock started ordering it to destroy all the players. And as soon as he ran up to Sun Yuo, he threw him aside with one punch. But those could not understand where another elite monster had come from and what was worse was that they did not understand how to fight it. But Zai Jun couldn't let this attack hit the wounded, 
so she decided that she would try to sever the bond between the sorcerer and the rhino. But at that moment, another underdog troll appeared behind her back that caused the ground beneath the player's feet to begin to crumble. And they all started flying into the abyss as the wizard king watched with a smile. But still he realized that trolls can't use their heads at all and they finished themselves off and that's problematic for him now because the demon king ordered him to stay alive. But now he has to follow them and he doesn't want to be trapped in the void again. Well, once the wizard king ordered the rhino to get ready and started to jump down, but suddenly the wizard king became wary. Realizing the fact that they had a tough fish in their net, other players who were nearby started trying to escape somehow. After all, they decided to escape while the monsters were distracted and they might not get another chance. But one of the players raised his head and started talking. But still, the guy decided they wouldn't know until they tried it. It's better than waiting to die. But then the king and sorcerer appeared behind the players' backs, saying they won't know until they try this stuff better than waiting to die. And at that moment, one of the little demons stabbed the player right in the back. The sorcerer king went on to say that, did he really think he wouldn't reveal this little plan and this rope is made with his spell, and only those stronger than him can cut it, and he will feel it even if someone tries to break it. However, today he is merciful and may be able to have mercy, but the player suddenly asked him what terms he is offering, and the terms were simple. Once he'd killed all his comrades, he'd let him go. And upon hearing this offer, the player told him to just dream about it, because he'd rather die than betray his comrades. And finding it entertaining, the wizard king said he would give him a fate worse than death and ordering his pet rhinoceros to make a hole in his chest and let him watch him slowly bleed to death. And branches the weak are not allowed to choose their fate. Pain, bitterness, unfortunately kill him. So much more fun. But when the player heard this, he started screaming that he was a demon, and one day God would punish them all for it. But the wizard king told him that he didn't know if there was a god in this world, but there definitely was, and he would send him there immediately. But suddenly something strange started happening over the wizard king's head, and suddenly a huge magical lightning bolt struck the rhino. The sorcerer king realized it was teleportation, but he also couldn't understand what had happened because his rhinoceros was killed in an instant. Sun Anne appeared out of nowhere and saw that he had gotten double experience for destroying the monster and was happy about it. The other players looking around couldn't figure out who it was and if it was God coming down on them. But it was Sun Anne who appeared and realized that luckily he wasn't too late. And he went to a lot of trouble to find the Wizard King. And luckily, he hasn't been killed yet. But the Sorcerer King angrily replied to the hero that he had not thought of killing him, and what a mouthful, and that he was overestimating his abilities. But since this kid killed his rhino so quickly, he must proceed with extreme caution. The guys behind our hero were shocked that he killed an elite monster and made the boss retreat, and finally God heard their prayers and sent an angel to help them. And then he began to thank Sun An, telling him that he was a messenger of God and they were finally saved, but Sun An couldn't understand why this ionic playwright was talking this nonsense about God and what kind of God is this messenger being mocked by a monster. And as soon as Sun An told that guy that they had seen each other recently, he immediately froze and couldn't understand if they knew each other. But when he got closer to him, he saw that it was Sun An's brother, and immediately he started asking him how he got here, and did he know that they were in danger and that he didn't expect to see him. But Sun An replied that he was wrong because the main reason he was here was to destroy the Sorcerer King's Krampus. But the guy suddenly started saying what he realized, and Sun An is actually an angel, and how else would he be able to turn out not to be an outsider, and it's all thanks to Gen C's abilities. A little earlier, Sun An had shown the NPC ghost pictures and the guys asking her how about it. 
and showing her the phone, our hero started telling the NPC that countless other handsome men are stored in this little box, and she can look at them whenever she wants, if she wants. He'll give it to her, and she'll give it back to him. But the NPC girl told the hero that they can't talk and it's the same as if she were alone, but soon An suggested that he introduce her to the main handsome guy, because he can use Bach to let her talk to him whenever she wants, and somehow he thinks they're perfect for each other. And then she reached out her hands and took the phone and told the hero that she was okay with it. But now he realizes that Jeju will be in trouble. Well, once he turned his head, he couldn't figure out what was going on, because when he looked at the Sorcerer King, he saw that he started summoning some huge magic and saying that the enemy is now right in front of him, and they managed to chat offensively, and what is more important is that Sun Anne should not look down on him because they will all die soon. But the guy who was standing next to Sun Anne started telling him that that monster was going to throw his fireballs right at them again, and what should they do now? but Sun Ann silently turned around and started walking in the other direction. The Wizard King saw that guy ignore him. Sun Ann decided to first approach the guys who were bound with a magic belt and ask them if they could move and he would soon get them out of here. But the guy said that he shouldn't have come here. And these monsters are using them as bait. And they've broken their bones and they won't escape and he shouldn't waste time trying to bail them out and that he should take Wang Di's boyfriend and save himself, and leave them here. They're just a burden. But the king and sorcerers have already prepared for the attack, telling the players that it's too late to run away. Vitya Laurel, Stonefather, everything, and one attack, and they'll all die, and there's no way out. Now they have no way out. No one can escape. You can Krampus and immediately the guys started yelling at Sun Ann to turn around because it's dangerous. They should run away, not waste their time on them. But Sun An started to tell the guy he saw he still had hope. The Sorcerer King standing behind saw that his orb was close, and now they would all be corpses. But Sun An turned around and said that they just didn't have the guts to deal with that demon yet. And as soon as he dissolved the Demon King's attack, all the players went into shock. They couldn't believe he could do it, but at that moment he went up to them and told them to let him help, and then he cut the rope that was binding these guys. And he also started pulling C-Class gear out of his inventory, telling them that it is magic water that cures wounds and even fractures. But since there are many wounded here, it must be shared among all of them. The effect will not be much worse. After giving the last bottle of healing water to Wang Di's boyfriend, our hero began to turn around, and saying that if he can't win, he can run away and save his life is more important, and he used to say something like that to him, and he's one of the few people who cared about him, and he always remembered those words, and that running away is a good way to avoid trouble and keep yourself out of danger, but still, escape doesn't solve the problem. And the more he runs away, the more fate mocks him. And the more he resists, the more fate takes care of him. This is what life has taught him to do, and they are ready to die with disease and regret. But how about fighting fate face to face, holding on to victory and taking control of their lives? The Sorcerer King at this time began to act again, and ordered his little green demons that they were distracted and that they should attack the wounded for it seemed to him that these people were his weak point. Well, once the little green demon started to surround Sun Anya, he told the guys that he would help them one last time, because they are now being offered the choice of choosing their own path. But then one of the guys started asking Wang Di's guy to give him water, and as soon as he drank it, he immediately took up arms and began to tell our hero that he is right to continue to run away, will not achieve anything, and he needs to return everything that he has lost. The other guys, who were also courageous, started to ask Van D to give them some healing water, too. After all, they are ready to fight and die in battle. And as soon as they started drinking it, the notification system showed that half their hit points would now be restored. 
Wang Di seeing that they finally had courage and that if brother Sun N is not a messenger of God, then he doesn't know what he is. After a few seconds, they all began to prepare for a fight to the death, and immediately they sprang up in a life-and-death battle. They're fighting for themselves and their destiny. The sorcerer king couldn't understand what had happened. Had they all changed so much, the hope of these people had recently been shattered, and why were they fighting now? And since that man showed up, the situation has changed dramatically, and he's making friends out of fear, and that has to be a sign of danger. But in the meantime, our hero decided to use teleportation to get to the Sorcerer King. He noticed he was trying to sneak attack him. But Sun and Sorcerers, that from the beginning, his goal was his death. And using a teleporter, he began to travel quickly to the Sorcerer King. Well, as soon as he swung, he saw that the Sorcerer King had disappeared and found himself right on top of him with a magical fireball. And the Sorcerer King realized that no matter how fast he was, his teleportation was times faster, and that he had missed the attack, and now it was his turn to strike back. She is the same hero realized that he can teleport, only up, down, left, right, forward, and back, and his advantage is fast but predictable. And as soon as the Demon Hunter skill and the Tenfold Damage Multiplier was activated, the Demon King felt the full force of our hero's strength. And as soon An got to his feet, he realized that everything was ready. Other players fighting the monsters started asking Sun An if he was okay, because he had a low level. But other players realized that it is not worth it, because it is shameful to lose just because of the difference in level. Well, at that moment, the guy with the red hair hit the monster in his head. And then he started soaking his weapon, telling the monsters he couldn't kill him. Makes him several times stronger. And as soon as he destroyed the last monster, all the players started to see a notification window announcing that their level had been raised, and they realized that they had won. Some players looked at their weapons with admiration, because they had risen as much as eight levels, and before that they could not swing beyond the nineteenth year. But then they decided to check on the other guys to see if they were awake, and when they came up to them they saw that they had started to come to their senses and said that everything was fine and they only remembered being hit by something. At the same time, Sun An and approached the Sorcerer King and began to ask him, why are they able to break through the dungeon boundary? But the Sorcerer King started laughing loudly and saying that, is he still trying to learn a little information while he doesn't remember, but son? And realized that even if he doesn't do anything, he is suffering from the poison knife. Sighs heavily the Sorcerer King that if he thinks he's dealt with him and it's all over, then they're not even pawns. And they're here as a scout to locate the troops, and the best part is ahead of them, but Sun An couldn't understand what troops he was talking about. On the Sorcerer King saying the last two words were that it was an alien invasion, and at that moment the other players noticed that their lava began to flow across the ground and huge flames began to appear, because the Wizard King wanted to take everyone with him to hell with his queen, and as soon as the King of Sorcerers was destroyed, our hero thought about those words, alien invasion, and what it could even know he did not realize that the war with the rejection of demons has already begun. But now it was too late to think about it and they had to get away from this place. But Sun An was not sure if that trick would work or not. The players were running in different directions and couldn't figure out which direction the exit was now because everything was on fire. And the flames were so intense that you couldn't see anything within a few dozen meters. And even though they realized they had finally escaped and defeated the monsters, they still didn't know if they could get out of this place. Come on! At that moment, Sun An appeared out of the flames and started telling the players that he had a solution. And then somewhat unreliably, he still hopes that they will believe him, and it is necessary that they tread the ground with the same frequency, and the faster the better. But the players couldn't figure out what he really wanted them to do, and hoped he wasn't joking now. 
But one of the guys trusted our hero and said that if he had to say anything, he would do it without a word. Other players also started saying they trust him unconditionally and they believe he'll get them out of here. And that now they'll have to follow his lead because they have no other choice. But they didn't realize if it would really help or if after this experience it might. But Sun An noticed that the rhythm was a bit erratic and he started telling the guys to keep a steady pace. But still, the flames were getting closer and closer, and the players were getting nervous about what to do. Sun An insisted that you don't panic and get rid of it because you're almost there. And at this point, there was a system error that says that monitoring of anomalous signals and high-intensity frequency range and error detected temporary exclusion from the game, and the same players realized they're fine. Not now they're on fire, but they can't burn. And the fact that the temperature didn't feel like the flame didn't even exist. Sunan realized that it wasn't that the plans didn't exist, but that they were temporarily excluded from the game and couldn't touch the real objects. If you consider the game as a whole, it has its own frequency of functioning, and they modeled the changes in frequencies. So the system erroneously went this error and temporarily suspended them. Increasing the number of people can extend the time of action on. It will take no more than one minute. And tell the other players that they won't be in this state for long and they should hurry and find an emergency exit. Well, that's when the Zai Jun shout was being sent out. And on the lower level, she started yelling to the players that they were safer there and there was a way out and they should hurry down to them. The Monkey King was protecting Zai Jun from the huge lava flows, and he also couldn't understand if the image of the volcano was from above. When Sun An heard that, he was glad that she had helped them out and they should move in that direction, because from the sound of it, they were now not far from Zai Jun. But on the lower level, the Monkey King couldn't figure out where the guys were disappearing, but Zai Jun kept insisting that they should be ready to meet them. Sun An turned to the players and began to say that if I did not pass through those flames behind his back who could go downstairs and realize the fact that there was nothing to fear, all the players began to gradually pass through the flames. When they came to the cliff, they saw the Monkey King who found shouting to them that below they were all ready and they should jump to them. And looking up, he saw a girl jump in first shouting that girls shouldn't go first. And at this point, the Monkey King started saying that the landing was soft and now the next ones should jump like the previous ones did. And the last player with red hair started telling our hero to go with them. But Sun An told him to go down first and he would come to him. But why did Sun An decide to delay? It was because he needed to retrieve the items from the Sorcerer King. If he didn't take them, he could lose a lot. The fact that the wrong frequency time is not eternal, and he only had five seconds to get back to the game. From below, the Monkey King started shouting that since everyone was here and they hadn't lost anyone, they could go, but then they noticed that Sun An wasn't with them. What's more important is that the flames destroy everything, and this building won't go up again. They need to run away. If they stay here for more than a minute, They'll all die and it'll be too late. Sun An is probably already out. He's always playing by the rules. And yet it's Sun An. They all have to believe in him. And after a few minutes, they did get out, even though it was very hard. Some players started asking others if they had seen Sun An because he was walking right behind them. And as they lowered their heads, they realized that he was dead after all. But at that moment, some silhouette appeared on a nearby rock, and the guys couldn't figure out who it was. But it was Sun An who had used his new teleportation skill to get there in time. And looking at all the players, he realized that everyone got out unharmed and he wasn't too late. And I'm talking to Zai Jun and Sun Yue. He said he wants to talk to them alone. But Sun Yue couldn't figure out who this guy was and started asking who he was until the other players started to sit on the ground and catch their breath. But they also realized they didn't have much in the way of supplies right now, so they needed to save money. Sun An, standing with Zai Jun and Sun, 
Yue suddenly remembered that they didn't know that his appearance had changed, and it was like in some comic books when the iconic hairstyle of the main character disappeared and he became so ordinary that he wasn't even recognizable. After a long story, Sun Yu Yue still couldn't believe that the NPC ghost girl and the special dungeon and why all these goodies were falling on him, and that now, no wonder, why so much experience had been given to them, and that they had leveled up by as much as eight levels. Sun Yu Yue had already continued to say that he didn't have to ask them for a secret conversation, and they were somehow uncomfortable that he wanted to hand over the Noe equipment to them. When Sun An heard this, he began to explain that special dungeon items cannot be equipped. It's just a souvenir, and he called them here to say one more thing. And whether they remember the alien invasion, Sun Yu Yue started to ask that, does he mean the mission of this demon in the kingdoms of Hodaimon, and the difficulty level there reaches the SSS level, and the minimum monster level is not less than 60. Also, there are monsters of 70th, 80th, and even 90th level. If this is true, then it's over. Sun Yue is getting very nervous. I ask Sun An why he told him this, because they can't even defeat a level 60 monster spirit, not to mention a thousand of them. Zaijun started to ask Sun, and what is he worried that others won't be able to accept it, and that's why he called the two of them over. But Sun An began to explain that they had certainly given up confidence. When you hear this news, they probably won't have any hope left, and basically they all know more about the new world than anyone else, and maybe they have a better strategy. But at that time, player Fung was eavesdropping on this conversation, and his comrade ran up to him yelling at him that if he eavesdropped, their messenger would be angry. But she'd already realized she thought she'd heard something terrible. Sun Yu Yue still didn't understand what they could do. But first, they can find a safe place to solve this problem. Something beyond the screen of possibility, but Zai Jun to him, that they still need to unite strong people to deal with this together. Zai Jun sent plans to ask Jeju what he thinks on this occasion. But suddenly a notification window popped up in front of his face showing that Jeju had sent him a message that told him to pay attention to Diana. They've been too active lately and this conversation seems like a harbinger of an alien invasion. Zai Jun decided not to waste time and sent him a message saying that he also wanted to talk about it but now he needed to find out where his coordinates were, and once he found them out, he opened the parka and saw that they were in a field. If so, hate them, but Zai Jun didn't understand how they would do it, or if it wasn't located kilometers away in a field that was very hard to get to. But Zai Jun opened his notification window and started showing them his new skill. And this time he uses teleport teleporting a long distance between he has a special feature equestrian card and he turned around and started to walk off into the teleporter telling the guys he was going and to hope for them. Sun Yu Yue answered him with only one thing he had always suspected that they were not developers, ordinary profane and whether it was items or skills everything in his hands would change. At this time in the field, one of the players began to approach their leader, Jeju, and ask him why they were not moving out. Because if there is a war, they must be ready. But Jeju told her not to hurry, because Sun An said that he too had met the escaped demon and would be here soon. But the girl turned around and started to show that there was no one on that field and he should look. Didn't he just joke about it? Jeju was still sure that he would come and they just had to wait a little longer. But just as he was saying the last word, Sun An appeared in front of them. And tell the leader of the riders that they haven't seen each other in a while. Jeju smilingly told his boys that if they saw him, he was already here but they couldn't understand how he had appeared by falling from the sky. At the bailiff, Jeju began to tell our hero that he has become much stronger and unlocked the teleport with movement, and that he was right from the beginning in, it really has something special. 
Sun and replied to him that he is also almost 39th level and also quite a lot of experiences. But the guys standing behind couldn't understand why their commander was still being nice to him. But the girl told her partner that Brother Jejui was just being polite and that this little girl's strength couldn't compare to his power. Jejui pointed at the giant turtle and told them to go and not waste time because they needed to talk urgently. Sunan looked at the turtle and realized that it was the same excellent turtle as the excellent law and he had been feeling a suspicious look on him for some time now, and the stare comes from the guy standing behind him. And while the other guys were calling his name, the hero couldn't figure out if they knew the guy who was staring at him. And going inside the tent, they began to ask Sun An if he had clearly heard the words, Alien Invasion, to which the heroes replied that it was true. But Jeju began to say that he had just heard from the demon chief that their army didn't have much time left, and his words confirmed his hunch. An alien invasion is a huge hassle, but he also couldn't quite figure out where they would come from. But still, if you gather so many demons, they can only come from one place. And it's the entrance to Zen and Hell on the edge of Area K, and the other side of it is called the Demon Gathering Place that powerful demons can only enter this world through that entrance. However, the terrain there is dangerous and it would be very difficult to launch an attack in advance. Sun, and still decided to ask where the farthest place from the entrance to hell, Zane, was located. Well, one of the guys said it's Japanese sapium. It's obvious. And at that moment, Sun An realized that this was a zone in Hadayan, and it might be a good idea to back off to get ahead. But Jeju asked Sun An to elaborate and he began to say that they could forgo an active attack and concentrate on forces to retreat to Haidemon. Haidemon's terrain is high and difficult, which will make it easier to defend but more difficult to attack, giving them options with Haidemon's support so they can get reinforcements in a timely manner. And besides, it'll take the demon army at least three to five days to get there. And that equals more time for them to upgrade and modernize their equipment. And hearing this, Jeju thought it was pretty reasonable. But all in all, 30 days to group an army of demons and five days to advance the army, if they are well prepared, they will be able to fight demons of level 60. Our hero has realized that there are only 35 days left. And now that Jeju is in charge, there will be no problems. But for some reason, he always has a feeling that the time left is not much longer. But suddenly, a deputy came into the tent and immediately said he didn't agree with the plan. And firstly, he doesn't trust Sun An. And secondly, the battle situation is uncertain. They must take advantage of the situation. Defense gives more opportunities to the enemy, which creates danger and the same man started introducing himself to Sun An, that his name was Chisaki, and he was Chiholi's younger brother they killed, and unfortunately, they were dating. And asking him, Sun Anya, that is he afraid to confess. And then there was silence in the tent. No one could say a word. Except for Sun An, who said he didn't see anything wrong with it, and who told his brother to kill his companions for equipment, and he killed him for his own safety, does he consider it a sin? By chance at that moment he found himself in the general headquarters of the Raiders' Guild, and he does not think that he made a mistake, but Chi Holi was the former vice chairman of Jeju, and others will not ignore it, and the same our hero thought maybe he should simply teleport away from this place. But suddenly Jeju intervened in the conversation, telling Chisaki that they had already discussed it and shouldn't bring it up again. Chi Hall was untrue and secretly killing players for equipment is contrary to the original purpose of the Riders Guild. The only one to blame for this is his negligence in hiring people but not Sun Ann's. Chisaki, on the other hand, replied that he was still his brother and besides the enemy right in front of him to take revenge would be quite natural, Jeju decided to ask in him that, isn't their kinship ties very strong? Chisaki replied that he was not mistaken. His take is indeed a scum, deserving death and hearing this conversation's son, and realized that, once again, 
the same Sharmanka, not an so long know about what happened. But Chisaki went on to say that he relied on his strength given to him by self-training. He was always bullying even his younger brother and only got worse when he acquired new skills, and he despised him with all his being, feeling pain and hatred. But it doesn't matter now. Revenge is just a convenient excuse. And tapping his palm on the table, Chizaki asked Jeju that he had one request and hoped he would accept it, and he's going to challenge Sun An right now. And then the other guys at the table started saying they'd watch it. But Jeju started to ask why he wanted to challenge him, and Chisaki replied that, as he had said before, he didn't trust him. And the battlefield will tell of his power, but he doesn't believe his power, and he has special status or special gear. He doesn't like it if a rider is commanded by an incompetent person, and since they appointed her deputy, it is his responsibility to make him realize what is going on. And as soon as the head wanted to say something, son, Anne interrupted him, saying, It's okay. He accepts the challenge. And he understands what's going on is very important. And he's obsessed with the offense, and he's probably confident in his offensive abilities. But why don't they play offense and defense now? And as soon as the guys heard, they were immediately horrified. Sunan began to explain that he could attack any way he wanted and he was already in charge of the defense and as long as he was doing damage, then he was winning. And to keep the peace and prevent the raiders from losing another deputy, he will not use a weapon. Hearing this, Chisaki thought it was Chisaki herself and that he would pay for it. And turning around, Chisaki began to walk away saying that they would meet downstairs and that he mustn't think of running away. Jeju thought about how things are getting interesting right now. A little while later, the guys are already gathered outside. After all, they heard that someone wants to fight the deputy, and knowing their deputy, the battle should be interesting. But suddenly a guy came up to the commander and said that Sun An didn't have any equipment and he wanted to borrow the men. But the commander said it's okay. He seems more than willing. And so they have already met and begun to prepare for battle. Chisaki before the attack started saying that he didn't even prepare his armor and why he keeps looking down on people, but Sun An replied not to worry about it and was already starting to attack. And at that moment, Chisaki began to use his skills, and huge fire beasts appeared near him. The guys who watched the battle, we saw that this is a special deputy skill that can turn shadows into all sorts of shadow beasts, and one hit is equal to three. When Sun An saw that it was a shadow dancer, he immediately understood and started calling him to him. With a swing of his blade, Chisaki began sending his shadow beasts straight towards our hero, shouting for them to teach this guy a lesson. And we don't care what he's got in mind. Because when the shadow leopard gets close enough, he'll use the move and surround him. And he doesn't care what he tries to do. But at this moment, Sun and opened the notification window and began to think that he better use it less because it would be a pity to spend a lot on this fight. But seeing that the shadow beasts were already close enough, he realized that he had to make the most of it and activated the skill of filigree he began to attack the beast that approached him. Because of which Chisaki started losing a lot of blood as part of the player's shadow and when taking damage, 30% returns, players automatically recover after a while. And suddenly the girl standing next to the commander started asking him what's going on, and if he has a creature, and if it's a merchant skill and not a warrior skill. Jeju was also surprised. You can that Sun An has two roles, and skills are not like a normal merchant. And then he thought about the fact that Sun An was hiding quite a lot of things. Sun An watching the shadow clones began to ask, Can't they get up? Because if they don't go up, they can't get him. But Chisaki crosses his fingers and yells at him to underestimate him. He can use transformation to form a shadow beast and can change the shape of a shadow beast by sacrificing a small amount of blood. And at the same moment, his shadow clones started turning into birds. But Sun An started pulling out his wooden staff from his inventory. Using it, he said that although it can't be used, 
The crystal has the fire attribute and can be used to reinforce structures. And that's when the tower he built started spitting out massive amounts of lava. And as soon as the lava hit the shadow clones, Chisaki started losing a lot of blood again. But still, one of his shadow clones managed to fly to the target. And turning his head, Sun An saw that a single shadowy bird was at his back. And as soon as she started transforming, Chisaki showed up saying the winner was already decided. But as soon as he swung, he realized something was wrong because the tower he had climbed on started to collapse. With the help of shadow travel, our hero was able to move to another location to protect himself from injury. The guys watching the battle saw the deputy start to collapse with the tower. And at that moment, the tower was destroyed and the winner was already decided. Jaejui wasted no time in telling the healer Nana to heal Chisaki. Because the battle is over and the winner is certain, and it's Sun An. Sun An began to see Chisaki slowly start to climb out from under the rubble. But Chisaki himself didn't think he'd fail so badly, and in the end, he had no idea of his intentions. He could always anticipate his next move. But as soon as he looked up, he saw that our hero was holding out his hand to say if he was okay and that his offense was impressive much better than his brother's. But Chisaki gets angry and tells Sun An that he's done with his pity, and that losing is losing. If he wants to humiliate you, let him start. Our hero really thought he fought a good fight and maybe he wasn't sincere enough. Jeju walked over to Chisaki and began to tell him to stop staring angrily at Sun Anya because the matter was already closed and that Sun An originally wanted to demonstrate tactical capabilities through battle. Sun An began to answer that the alien invasion is not unusual and they should not focus on equipment and focus on survival traders, not only supply equipment on its provide defensive structures, sufficient resources greatly increasing the safety of fighters is also the reason why he decided to start to become in Castle Heidemann. Jejui agreed, because no casualties should be allowed to go to waste. But ordinary merchants can't use such unique skills as he did. Sun An immediately realized he'd been exposed. But Jeju will continue to say that completing the construction and directly using the construction in Bayouwu is beyond the normal capabilities of a merchant. He has a special class. Only a gold merchant is capable of this. And also he has shown his skills as a warrior and he is still a two-class player. On the other players behind the commander hearing about the two classes, they immediately turned around in shock. I mean, this guy's a golden player like the captain. Embarrassed, Sun An started scratching his head and saying that he might be right, but he was actually scared when smart people feel this, and now his class is known to everyone. But what's worse is that the other guys were looking at him strangely, and it was all because of Jujuya, and they started asking him if he was interested in joining the raiders. And then they started pouncing on him, yelling for the captain to hold him. Sun An knew in advance that the raiders' guild admires the strongest, but they have too much enthusiasm. And then the guys started telling their new teacher Sun An to teach them how to create and use the created in the equipment. After all, they also want to learn combat skills to bargain. Jeju saw this and realized that it looked like he had fit in pretty well and now he was a member of the Raiders Guild. But when Sun An heard that, he started yelling that you don't have to decide for him. And what's worse, he saw that there was no end to these guys and he had to find a way to escape. But at that moment, Jeju saw that annoying ghost reappear, telling him why he wasn't answering his letters. Well jumped aside, Jeju couldn't understand since he already set up message blocking. And why is it problematic? NPC is here again, who kept saying, why is he ignoring her to see? She's waiting for her heart to bleed, and they'll never break up again. But Jeju went on to say they never met. But at that moment, Sun An realized that this was his chance to escape. And immediately he started telling the boys that their captain was in trouble now and see if they want to help him. And once they turned their heads, 
Sunan started to use teleportation and get far away from this place. He told Jeju that they'd meet in Hudaimon. Jeju still couldn't understand what kind of good fortune had fallen on his head and W.H.O. the hell had dumped the NPC on him, who shows up over and over again and wants to take him somewhere else all the time, arriving at the place Sun. And finally exhaled, saying he had used up all his mana after one trip back and forth, and he instantly felt weakened. And this time he realized that everything went well, and there was already a rough plan for the demon invasion, and he even saw J. Joy confused. But after looking around, he couldn't figure out where everyone had gone, since he'd arrived at the place where he'd last seen the boys. And what's more strange is that there was Feng's grave and Wang Di Zai Jun's Ling Nan grave, and he didn't understand why there were so many graves. And then he thought that maybe when he wasn't founded the field of monsters, but it's somehow impossible because how can an ordinary monster stand up to Zai Jun? Well, looking closely, he realized that the graves were empty. And it's probably some kind of sick joke. And he got angry and started yelling around the neighborhood that, man or monster, he had to get out or it would be worse. And at that moment, Zai Jun came around the corner and started telling the guys that she told them she heard Sun Anya's voice. And they're just about to cook something interesting. And he's here, but he's a little late. They've already eaten. But Sun An doesn't understand what's going on here. He's getting nervous. A little later, they sat down to drink tea, and our hero began to ask, did they already know the alien invasion, and therefore, and cut down the graves of dead comrades because of one prepared his. Fung started to explain that she had overheard their conversation, and if he wanted to accuse anyone, it was her. But Soon An told her to forget about it, because sooner or later they would have found out anyway. But still, he couldn't understand why they made their own grave in the first place, since it wasn't like Zai Jun. So she started to reply that he should listen to the other guys first. The boys started showing off their new weapons and hoped soon Anne would let them keep them for themselves. But still, he couldn't understand if he looked like a miser, because it's their weapon and they can use it whenever they want. The vain-haired boy went on to say that in fact they were all destined to die at the hands of monsters, and if it hadn't been for his appearance they would still have died, but for his desperation and what he had given them and what he had already given them not only a kind of courage and hope, and in fact there is another reason to build your grave. It's about saying goodbye to yourself that you've been running away forever in the past, and escape won't change anything, won't save anyone. They've lost enough already. There's nothing left to fear. And if disaster strikes, they'll fight to the last man. I, the other guys, immediately backed each other up, saying they all agreed to go all the way. Zaijun went to the center and started telling the guys that they needed a leader right away. Sun Yu Yue, standing nearby, said that reluctantly. But he would accept it. And at this point, our hero will begin to remember his past life where he was beaten for doing my job and that he was humiliated by the fact that he was hired as such a scumbag. And the fact that no wonder no one communicates with him and who would want to be friends with a piece of fool and the fact that he several small bugs are not corrected and he still has a lot of work to do. And the way the other employees laughed at him and said he had to work overtime and that he was a pathetic jerk. But then he already believed in himself and believed that he could do it all on his own. But now he's looking at the guys who put their trust in him and they're telling him he can count on them. And while he was distracted, Zai Jun came up to him and said that everyone was waiting for his answer. Immediately he began to tell the plan of action. But before that, they need to prove that they are able to defeat the monsters and they need to be able to deal with elite monsters alone or as a team, and that he doesn't want to sacrifice the team to save one person. They don't want to hang, he asked. The guys immediately started looking at each other and realized he was right. Sun An realized that they needed more fighting power to counter the alien invasion, but daring without real strength or his experience would only lead to death. 
Zaijun started to ask Sun Ann that he didn't think it would be difficult considering their situation, but he couldn't understand if they couldn't fight before this. If it's difficult, it's worth giving up early. But when the guys heard that, they said they weren't going to give up if he showed them the monster. They'd prove otherwise. As soon as Sun An heard that, he started opening his inventory. And delivered, he started telling them all to put them on their hands. Then they have to tie them together several times between each other, so they are all together. Sun Yu Yue realized that, did he really want to use the unification of the group, and he remembered. This way their boss canceled the very personally. But Sun An kept the original when he made the program. So everything's fine now. And just because it's not perfect doesn't mean you can't use it. Creativity is part of the programmer's job. And as soon as he finishes his mana jar, you start asking if everyone's ready. And holding out his hand, he began to say that the first one to hold on was the first one to fly today. And he told Zai Jun to take his other hand. Sun Yu Yue suddenly revealed that he wants one too, but our hero replied to him that there are no more hands or tape, and immediately he started running towards our hero screaming that how could they do this to him? They're comrades. And as soon as he ran up to Sun and started holding him anew, they shouldn't have left him alone. But Sun An turned his head and began to tell him what he hadn't said that he was going with them since he was fine with it, he should hold on tight. And at that moment, he began to bring the long-distance teleport into action because he could initially bring other units with him, but the maximum number for teleportation was only three participants, and all objects that were exposed to the strong wind gusts except the main unit began to feel discomfort. And after a few minutes, they did arrive at the scene. Sun Yu Yue lying on the ground began to feel dizzy and asked in Sun, and that didn't he fix God with the flow of the wind? But Sun An began to apologize because at that time there was so much that it was unrealistic to fix everything. The other players started to turn around and saw behind them a huge tree and rocks covered in slime. But also they could not understand where they were now because everything around them looked disgusting. One of the players started calling for the other guys to come over and look at what he found. Because it's certainly impressive if you look at it straight on. And as the boys approached, they saw a huge state in front of them. And it looked just like in the movies. And this town was called Hadamon. When Sun An came out of the forest, he said that the biggest city in the game was in front of them. If they're going to fight, they need a base and this city is rich in resources. So... This is the best choice, and nearby there are two big stats. This place is also called the War Gate. To enter the city, you must pass through them, and this city surrounded by mountains is easy to defend and difficult to attack. If an army of demons comes, they will have plenty of time to prepare. And besides, there are a lot of dungeons on the edge of the mountain, and this area is their best bet. But there's still a slight problem. And soon, all the players will know. At the same moment, the sound started, so the guys couldn't figure out what was going on. And as they turned around, they saw a huge monster named Bogart who was level 36 and he was also an elite. The guys are terrified that he's so strong and that they can't beat him. But turning their heads, they saw that Sun An had climbed up on a hill and began to tell them not to worry, for he would not interfere and they should fight as long as they could. And this is Bogart's territory. If they don't defeat him, there will be no base. Zai Jun, who was near Sun, and asked him, Are they not shrinking? That he replied that this is their trial and they have to deal with it themselves. And now it's up to them, and the guys start talking about a plan because they need to attack him together. But at that moment, Bogart sneezed loudly, and his green snot flew straight at the players. And once it reached the players, some realized they couldn't breathe anymore. Sun An watched the situation and hoped that the boys wouldn't let him down. Sun Yu Yue, who was behind a nearby tree, realized that his snot had done a lot of damage. And some players were shocked by what they saw and couldn't recover enough to keep fighting. But Bogant slowly approached the guy who was lying on the ground and yelled back at him not to come any closer. 
Sun An looked at the guys and realized that if they can't even kill this monster, one of the weakest monsters since he is not going to defeat the demons, it's time to save them. But Zai Jun started yelling at Finger to use his skills and get rid of the slime, because that monster hates cleanliness and his stickiness decreases with water so he can save his comrades. And if he doesn't, he's in more danger and they believe he can do it. But the guy looked at you at the horrible monster that was in front of him. And with fear on his face, he started using water magic. And as his huge water balloon reached its target, the monster began to back away. And at that moment, the boys were able to escape the trap, realizing the fact that they weren't almost dead. Zai Jun turned to our hero and began to apologize to him because she had said a lot of unnecessary things in a panic. But he said it was nothing and it wasn't a big deal and he was really sorry it had to end this way. And it will make an indescribable impression on them. And it's good that they finally realize how dangerous the world can be and her kindness helped them. And then he started talking to all the guys underneath him. And he said he's sure they understand their problem now. If they cooperate, the battles will be a lot easier. They need to realize their strengths and use them in battle. And that's the only way they'll beat a tough opponent. But there are no more clues beyond that and they must use their advantages in battle, like the kid hiding behind the rock. Sunyu Yue, who was hiding behind a rock, suddenly jumped out and started asking our hero why he first took him with him, and now he's hurting him, and can he help? But at that moment, his notification window lit up, and his hidden aggro skill was activated, causing the monster to immediately start paying attention to him. And as soon as he shut the monster down completely, it started running after him, and then the other guys realized this was their chance to attack the monster. The red-haired guy started telling the other guys to hurry up and try to distract the monster, and the rest of us should follow. But as soon as the monster turned around, the notification window showed that his target had changed and he started paying attention to other players. And as soon as he took a huge tree and started swinging it, the players saw it and started ducking in different directions, and after a few dodges, they began to respond to the monsters by attacking him. Fung stood behind her with her pup and began pulling supplies out of her inventory, and Sun Yu Yue, who was running away from the monster earlier, realized that it was unrealistic to stop that monster. Zai Jin also looked at the situation and realized that they had done it. Sun An stood on the hilltop and thought about what he thought was the most interesting thing ahead of them. And apparently, the situation is, Brother Nan will be more the head of a large group. Their fighting style is suited to go in front of Wu Wan Di, and as a result, the girl's good blade will not be scouts. Although the merchants do not have the same combat power Fung can use items combined with her thieving, she may be part of a special group. And it's also worth noting that Brother Nass's leadership skills are rare. And as for Gigi, he's a very capable guy. And his initial first-time exposure to water magic makes him the perfect mage. And after a little analysis, our hero realized that they have no healers. And that girl who's really bad with a sword and uses his quick spin to use precision attacks. She's probably the weakest player and her skill set is weak. But at that moment, the other players started yelling at this girl to be careful. At that moment, Sunyu Yue appeared in front of that girl and blocked the monster's attack with his account, telling him in return that you can't bully girls. And even though the girl asked him if he was okay, he turned around and winked at her, because he thought it was a self-congratulatory attempt to get them to talk. And she was relieved to take deep breaths, not realizing that everything was okay now and that this guy was a really good person. And at this point, the other players realized that this was another chance for them to swoop in and destroy the monster. And their entire group began to surround the monster and attack it from different directions. And after a few minutes, everyone had a notification window that the elite monster had been eliminated and their level had been raised. When Soon An and Zai Jun saw this notice, they began to descend from the tower. Feng's girlfriend ran up to Sun An and asked if they had passed the test. 
he replied that they had done a good job, and later he'll give them a couple of more tips, but now they can proudly call each other partners. But now they have to wait a couple minutes, and he has some adjustments to make, and they'll go to the next dungeon. But the guys couldn't understand why it was so fast. They had just finished, but soon An said that time was of the essence and that, since he was in charge, everyone should listen to him. And a disgruntled Sun Yu Yue to tell him that they are very tired, they need to rest for an hour and a half. But the red-haired guy turned around and said he didn't know what to do. After all, he had gotten the snot monster skill, and he just wanted to check it out. But who knew he'd have that first skill, and that it's a skill of Bogart's elite monster, and now he'll be splattered with slime, too. But Zaijun started to tell the guys not to worry, because really the main skill of a Bogart is healing, and they just did a good job, so he didn't even have a chance to use it and it regenerates by reabsorbing its own slime, which is why it's everywhere. And when the guys heard those words, they realized they were lucky they didn't have that skill. Sunan started telling the guys not to make successful conclusions and if they wanted to test their skills. So far, they're all too focused on the outcome. And first, the red-haired guy has to try to spread the energy around. And as soon as he concentrated, a huge green light started moving in the neighborhood. And the guys realized they were also within that realm, and that color was very pleasing. Sun An, after making sure that everyone could feel it, began to explain that this light contained healing power, although very weak. And since I was too rich, too inhuman at the beginning of the game, Zai Jun immediately realized that he had succeeded after all. You got this very first skill, Healing Aura, which was a passive character, questioning spreads from himself, a healing field in a radius of 10 km, and more healing effect is 8 units of hit points per second. And our hero began to explain that this is a passive skill and it can work continuously, but the disadvantage is very visible recovery rate is relatively low. And only by superimposing multiple auras can you maximize the effect. Because soon they may finally increase. But even though there was an income and that ended up hurting more. Come on. At this point, a girl came up to them and started talking. That she actually has a healing skill too. And maybe that will help everyone. Sun Ann immediately realized that turns out she was also a healer. But not all players realize that this strange skill was considered a special advantage. But the end result wasn't bad in the future. It's the treatment they'll miss most. Sun Yu Yue couldn't understand what he was talking about. They don't have any other healers. So Sun An replied that he would soon find out for himself. And at that moment, a huge gust of wind began to approach directly to our hero and the guys who were standing near him. And this aura was coming from a small dungeon where elite monsters were lurking. The guys who spotted them saw that they looked depressing and that there were a few other bog rats there. But Sun An started telling the boys that from now on they had to do three things. And first, everyone's level must be raised to at least level 30 within a week. Second, everyone should get a healing aura. And even though it was a whole field of people to choose from, the only thing left to do is maximize the result. But for some reason, once the three auras are superimposed on each other, the healing will increase. And only when their lives are protected will they get a longer-lasting effect. And the other players couldn't believe it. But Sun An said it was just a bug in the game. And that only a few people know about it and don't need to ask about it anymore. The battle was still going on, and Sun Yue continued to defend himself and suddenly cried out that he couldn't take it anymore, and if Sun An didn't come to his aid, he would run away. But Sun An replied with a smile on his face that he shouldn't worry because he's already there. And Brother Wang, I am not three, will be in charge of the front line and follow Sun Yu Yue to understand defense skills. Kier Wang Di Yi Xiao Su. Later they will be in charge of attacks, but now they must learn from Zai Jun how to find the monster's weaknesses. And the other three will follow him, and he'll teach them special tactics. But suddenly, Sun Yue shouted that it's not fair, 
why does he only have men on his team? And if Sun An has a grudge against him, if he doesn't add a girl, he'll refuse. But Sun An's only response to him was to give him a set of first-class armor. And immediately his eyes lit up, and he began to say that since Sun An was their leader, he would keep his opinion to himself, and the brothers would follow him from now on, and they would now show this monster. And some time later they met the boss of a level 40 ruler. Zhe Jun started shouting to the guys to be careful. After all, this skill that knocks out HP to strengthen the attack and everyone should move away from the affected area. But someone showed up Sun On and said, It's okay, they can't give it to him, and they should listen to his next third demand. Maybe they were unhappy and helpless before, and maybe there will be more difficulties and obstacles in the future. And from now on, he's asking them all, to fight with all their might and try to survive the chaos. And he won't let the team die for all intents and purposes. And the boys, inspired by these words of the commander, rushed into battle shouting that they will not die so easily and should not be underestimated. At the same time, something strange was happening elsewhere in a secret cave. And a lot of players were mining valuable resources with all their might. One of the players approached the deputy and said hello to him, and the vigilante started saying that he heard he found one special mine of magic crystals and he should show him the way, because he doesn't have much time. And he turned around and started to show them that they had to go forward now. But the other workers watching them couldn't understand what she was doing here, because it's the famous star coin Lily and doesn't he want to take control of this mine? And the guys realized it was over and the days of idleness were over. The deputy at the time began to rejoice that this is an exhaustible mine of magic crystals and he likes a good thing that doesn't run out, and if this guy isn't messing with him, they'll make it work. Well, this guy said he wouldn't dare and he still understands the difference between reward and punishment and they shouldn't worry. They'll get their share. Well... Once the deputy took his glasses off, he saw a lot of bugs in the system. And the guy started to explain to the deputy that there seems to be some bug here that causes the mind crystals to always regenerate, and since he had never encountered such a situation, he contacted him as soon as possible. Deputies turned around, Yi began to ask Lao Bi, if there are any other witnesses to this incident to which he replied that no other than those present. And smiling with his gold teeth, the deputy said they were in for a big show then. In another place, a couple of trains met the Earth Dragon Boss Ruler 43rd level, and they all started to surround him, even though they knew it couldn't go on. And they had to investigate in two squads, taking up planned positions on both sides. And the first group went immediately to the left and the second group to the right. And the centerpiece that covered everything else was Sun Yu Yue in his new outfit. But as soon as the green dragon hit him, Sun Yue realized that not only could he not hit him, but he could not hit him back either. And at that moment, the earth dragon started screaming loudly and it ended up with a burning status and an enhanced damage status. And Sun An, who was watching the situation, saw that the earth dragon had run out of steam. He used his cloak of secrecy to teleport behind him. Other players have noticed that this attack is too powerful and Sun An really deserves to be the leader. And once the monster was destroyed, Sun An said he hadn't done a good job. And then he starts asking the other guys if they're okay. And they tell you not to worry. It's fine. And as soon as they put down their auras... Their wounds immediately began to heal and one of the guys said that even if they were hurt, they'd be okay. Another guy started telling Sun An that they can start collecting magic crystals because they don't have the strength to endure anymore. And they have to try because they can't embarrass themselves in front of the leader. They realized that if they worked hard and could get good equipment from the leader. Sun Yu Yue, standing nearby, began to say in a voice that they are today's youth trapped in material things, and unlike him who is struggling for an ideal, Sun An suddenly bent down and saw that this time he had a dragon bone falling out of his hand, and now the materials for the bone blade have been fully assembled. 
Fang, standing nearby, realized that they would soon witness the creation of an A-class weapon, and as soon as all the preparations were finished, Sun An began to create a new weapon, and at that moment the notification window turned out to be a weapon stat that said that multiple strikes formed and spread it around dealing damage equivalents to normal attacks each time it hit the target, and each strike is treated as a normal attack that can activate effects and abilities. And as soon as the preparations were finished, Sun An began to hold his first A-class weapon in his hands. After seeing this, Sun Yu Yue started to say that it looks very cool, but in terms of actual combat, his defense is definitely better. But Sun An heard this and suggested to him that why don't he try this weapon on his defense, but Sun Yue got nervous and told him to forget it because he didn't say anything like that. And once everyone had calmed down, Sun An started saying that they were almost there and they'd better see if Zai Jun and the others had finished. And coming to a passage in the dungeon is a passage in some dungeons can lead to the nearest dungeon, if players will be more attentive can miss the passage. Once inside, Sun An started telling Zai Jun that they were done and how things were going for them. Zai Jun threw a lot of punches and told him not to finish it yet because it takes a long time. And the fact that Nobis aren't yet familiar with boss attack tactics and are a bit passive to begin with. But gradually they're turning the situation to their advantage. And she thinks it's probably another 20 minutes, give or take. But Sun An decided to ask if they needed help, and she said it was fine. And applying her blood pulse, she realized that if it didn't work, she would fail with her command to lead the team. Sun An was only offering his help to show everyone his new weapon. But apparently he realized his help wasn't needed here, and they'd go outside and wait for the others there. Sun Yu Yue entered the portal and began to ask our hero, what about the other items that fell from the Earth Dragon, and whether they would divide them according to their needs, because it was necessary to create materials that Fung could handle? And over the last ten days, the guys have greatly increased their level and improved their gear. With the addition of a few traveling players coming out of nowhere, the team has increased from the original 11 people to 21 and thus all that was left in the team to be converted into a guild. And then there was a new guild that no one knew about, but it was called Zero. But Sun Yue thought that the name of their guild was too simple and it would be better to call them Super Alliance or Invincible Team, because these names are also quite suitable, but Sun An said that you forgot about it, because Zero sounds good enough. Zero can destroy any other number and he thinks it's a symbol of absolute power. And as soon as they left the portal, the other players saw that their leader had returned. And they all treated him with respect and no ill will. And although Sun An smiled stupidly, he told them to ignore him. And the fact that he's so suddenly the leader and he's still a little unaccustomed to it. However, this is at least different from what has gone before. His thoughts were suddenly interrupted by other players yelling at him to look at what they found, and a fleeing Fung began to show her leader that she had finally made a magic gun, because in the craft system, a merchant can randomly create countless blades, swords, shields, armor, knee pads, helmets, and so on. Equipment requires special materials, but there is one of the most special equipment, even if you have the necessary materials, the probability of creating it is only 0.01%, which is equivalent to one unit of special equipment per 100,000 units. And other crafted items is the magic gun. Sun An didn't expect her to make a magic gun when he saw this, to which she said it took her nine days to do it all. The other guys couldn't believe their own eyes that such a weapon really exists and that the developer Sunyu Yue didn't even know about it. And the fact that it's called cheating. They didn't realize how close they came to creating it. To hear these words, Sun An replied to the boys that wrong on the sources of his power also lie in his rarity. If it weren't for Fung's four-leaf clover blessing, he's afraid even his gold merchant wouldn't be able to handle it. Because with a four-leaf clave, the owner can receive blessings, and 
unexpected good things will happen with his attitude and this item is only for female characters. Waved his hand, Fung said she had put a lot of hard work into him. I was also surprised when the rainbow bunny showed up. But Sun An didn't let her tell her interesting process of obtaining and turning around. He decided to test, give the gun away. Because now everyone's more interested in learning about the magic gun. And the reason the magic gun is called the magic gun is because it's powered by mana vision bands converted into real damage. And as Sun An took aim, the guy saw the color change, which created a very powerful force. And realizing this power, our hero made sure that high-level demons have the spell of mute, and if they have the ability to sweep the hood with the effect of mute, it remains only to endure the beating. But things are different at the moment. Sun An also started asking Fung if she could do something else. But she said that she would like to. But even with the four-leaf clover, the chances are very slim and she is very short of materials. But at that moment, Sun Yu Yue volunteered and said that if she didn't have enough materials, she could call him for help. After all, they had just rested. And now it's time to stretch her bones and she just needs to tell him what materials she needs. But at that moment, one of the players on the tower started shouting to Sun An that Brother Nan had returned. And when Sun An smiled at the news, it was just in time for him. And at that moment, Brother Nan appeared behind him, who started to say that he had brought the informers as he had asked. But Sun Yu Yue, who was standing next to him, began to ask if it was the old man they were waiting to hear from, and if Grandfather had the services to be a scout. As soon as the old man heard these words, he hit Sun Yue on the head several times, and Brother Nan said he was wrong because this old man was not a snitch. At that moment, the old man pulled out his weapon and waved it around. Sun An realized that this grandfather is probably a master at his craft. After all, Sun Yue wears such thick armor that it's still hard to break through his defenses. But at that moment, the grandmother standing next to the old man started pulling his ears, shouting that he was showing off again and that he couldn't behave. But suddenly Sun Yan noticed another guy hiding in the grass and asked what about him. The red-haired guy came up to him and started pulling him out by his clothes, asking him what he was doing there. And once he's all the way out, you start shaving leaves off his clothes and say he doesn't have to hide now, and he apologizes because it's an occupational deformity. If he doesn't hide anywhere, he doesn't feel safe, and he's also better known as the messenger old friend Nan Ah, and he knows about everything and everywhere. Sun An started to tell him that he should have been warned why he was called. But the guy started to put two fingers up and say that if they know, it's nothing more than just news, and here are two they'll be interested in, but they have to choose which one they want to hear first. And one of the news stories is about demons, and the other one is about bugs, and they have to choose which one they want to hear first. But the guys who heard those two sentences got nervous. But Sun An had a serious look on her face and said he wanted to discuss first. And the guy started to explain that they say there's an anomalous celestial phenomenon in the area, and a lot of monsters that for unknown reasons became stronger and caused the deaths of many players. And based on his investigation, there's a gateway to the demon underworld that's very likely where it happened. Sun An heard this and wondered if the events were taking a turn for the worse and the demon army was planning to act in advance. Sun Yu, who was standing next to him, also decided to ask about the second story about those bugs. But the guy started to smile and told the guys that he always acted according to the principle of buy one new story, get the second one for free, but he had already told one story for free. Sun An tossed him a bag of gold and told him to be straightforward. And the guy started to tell that the Star Coin Alliance has discovered a limitless mineral location, and they say it's caused by a mistake. They're trying hard to hide the information, and it took him a few days to find out. And Sun An asked the guy how long. He said 10 days. And in addition to Paragenesis, 
who can endlessly produce magic crystals, changes in other magic crystals will also change the abilities of the monsters in the dungeon. And for all players, it would be better if magic crystals could be produced continuously. However, this is difficult as long as the Star Coin Alliance exists with its profit-seeking nature, and he still has a bad feeling. Well, Sun An turned around and thanked the guy for continuing to investigate the situation in Zone K, and he could come to him if he had any new information. He told Sun Yue to wait for Zai Jun to come out so he could tell her what he had just heard, but Sun Yue didn't know where he was going. Sun An told him she was going to a meeting with the Star Coin Alliance, and a little while later in the mines where there were bugs. And the manager started telling one of the players that the food supply of magic crystals has been decreasing lately and that he must be doing a bad job. But the guy replied that the magic crystals were just getting murkier. But at the same time, other players started yelling that he's the deputy leader of the Star Coin Alliance and he's the one who's monopolizing the mining of magic crystals. So now they can't even afford to buy equipment. And they've fought five battles without equipment because of him. But now they're going to show him who's the strongest. So they jumped off the cliff and started flying straight at the manager, yelling at him to give them their money. The manager, adjusting his glasses, thought it was insolent of them to attack him so suddenly. Well, at this point, a group of mercenaries began to defend the manager. And after hitting him several times, the attacker bounced away, frightened because he didn't expect to see the mercenaries here. The mercenaries started to run towards the bandits with all their might and chanted that they had come to the wrong place. And after several attacks, the bandit leader saw that their rivals had left him a chance to retreat, and as soon as they threw a smoke bomb, they started running away. The mercenaries saw that things were bad for them now, because those guys were going to escape. If they succeeded, they would not be rewarded for their capture. But as soon as the smoke cleared, the bandits couldn't understand what had happened because they were quickly tied up and thrown to the ground. Sun Tian Xing, who was 39th level, appeared over the horizon and said that the capture was successful. The other guys who were fighting him started telling him not to stick his nose in where it didn't belong. But Sun Tian Xing told them that they shouldn't thank him because he appreciated their work. But the guys nearby started discussing that if he was able, Sun Tian Xing would have gotten it long ago and that the guy makes them look weak every time. The manager started clapping his hands, telling them that it was very good, but as I expected from a group of mercenaries invited for a large sum of money, the problem was solved so quickly. The bandit lying on the ground started shouting and calling the manager names that he was a stinker and it was great to have so much money, and when they got out, they would publicize it for stealing their mine. But the superintendent started laughing and telling the guys to cool their heels, and he'd treated them badly and unfairly earlier. And since all they're missing is money, it would be nice to make restitution. And as soon as the manager spoke, Sun Tian Xing turned off his ability to bind the opponents. These guys immediately started running towards the gold, one shouting to the other that it was all his. When they got to the gold, they started shoveling it into their pockets. The manager who was standing over them smiled evilly and said that now that they had taken his gold coins, they would talk about investments. Because repaying a debt when a player takes the initiative to get a character's star coins means that he has accepted an investment, he must fulfill an order from an investor before he can be released. And at that moment, the players realized that their bodies had become unmanageable. The manager started screaming for a new mine for him. And that's when they started picking up pickaxes and started mining. The other players behind the manager realized that they had to be careful if they were going to talk to him anymore. But the manager started telling those players that he would pay them for their hard work later. Sun Tian Xing looked in his inventory and saw that he only had enough magic stick for a few times, and it looked like he needed to use it sparingly, but he didn't know how much he would get after completing this order. But at that moment, Soon An appeared and started asking if they were the people from the Star Coin Alliance. 
The manager was looking at the magic crystals and realized that it was the excessive mining that was making the light in them cloudy. And it's a headache. If this continues, production will drop significantly, and it looks like he needs to find a better place for the miners to work. So he started telling the players that they had done a good job and they could go to Lao B and get a hundred star coins for their hard work, but the players didn't understand why it was so little because it wasn't what they had agreed to. The managers began to explain that they should be grateful to be paid at all if they wanted to be free labor like the others, and some could just say so. Sun Tian Xing went up to the manager and said that he didn't want the star coins and would only take the magic crystal. Well, the manager realized that this guy is interesting, and he is not only the strongest among these mercenaries, but he doesn't want the money, and after that he will fire the others and leave only one of them. But suddenly they started to turn around because the manager couldn't understand what was going on. Sun Tian Xing realized that he had a bad feeling, and now someone was approaching them and someone quite strong, and the person approaching was Sun An who realized that it was the endless replenishing mine that Xiao Bao was talking about. But suddenly he remembered what kind of Bach was installed here. And while he was sitting at his computer and couldn't get rid of this Bach, because the crystal supply there is not unlimited due to excessive humanization, a hidden punishment mechanism will be triggered. And with the opening of an unlimited source of mining, they must not overdo it and not give in to greed. Otherwise, a man whose heart is not filled with pleasure is like a snake trying to swallow an elephant. But Sun An didn't expect that someone would identify him and find Bug here and that it would be the Star Coin Alliance. But anyway, he should hurry up and warn people. And after a few seconds, he started walking toward the guys waving at them. The first person he met was the manager who started asking who he was. But Sun An replied that it doesn't matter. He has important information about this place and now they are doing a very dangerous thing. The deputy replied that the monsters in the area had been killed long ago and what danger was he talking about if he wanted his share, he should say so. But Sun An said that crystals are not infinite here. An excessive mining will activate the S-rank dungeon and they should stop, or it will be too late by then. When the players heard there was a dangerous dungeon, they realized they were doomed to die. But also a player standing near the deputy started to say that the words of such a guy seem to be true because lately crystals are becoming more fashionable. The deputy waved his hand and started shouting that they shouldn't hear this nonsense and how can some guy from the mountain know anything and he is trying to scare them to monopolize the mine zone. Sun An, hearing these words, started to lower his head and said that it was up to them to believe him or not because he still had to stop them. But the guy standing in the deputy's dream started shouting that this guy was just trying to scare them and everyone should kill him now because they'd promise a reward for him. When we heard that, Sun An realized that he could make a good deal with them and started pulling out his high-end weapon. Sun Tian Qing also started to take out his bow, but he also didn't understand what kind of man he was with such a powerful weapon. But at that moment, the guys couldn't understand what was happening because they stopped seeing. And in an instant, Sun An ran up to them and hit three men at once, knocking them to the ground. The deputy who was watching this was shocked and stepped back a little and started to order Sun Tian Xin to destroy him. But Sun Tian Xing herself had long felt that there was a problem with the spring. Is it possible that this man was not lying and after excessive mining, the S-rank dungeon would really activate? On the deputy kept yelling for him to shoot already and got a mountain of magic crystals for it. Sun Tian Xing pulling the bowstring realized that in any case, first he would have to catch him before knowing the answer. Sun An dodged the arrow and couldn't understand because he blocked his opponents with black fog, but how the archer managed to aim and shoot. But at that moment, the arrow came back and pierced his leg and he realized that he had an unusual bow and the arrows fired seemed to have their own sights, 
and they won't stop until they reach their target. And since he's a long-range player, he has to get in close and hit him at close range. But this time, Sun An saw him attacking and started using fire mage magic. As Sun Tian Xing kept firing, he realized that he was down to his last magic crystal. And since his freedom bow can shoot special arrows loaded with magic crystals according to the excellent properties of the magic crystal, he can also create different shapes and effects. And by firing his bow, he told our hero that he had lost. Because the arrow that reached the target started to bind Sun An, so he couldn't move. And as soon as he was bound completely, his skills began to take effect, and the other players realized that they had regained their sight. The deputy who was hiding around the corner suddenly jumped out and started ordering everyone to finish this guy off. And they immediately started walking up to our hero, telling him that they were going to see where he was going to run off to. But Sun Tian Xing started telling the guys to wait because he had some questions to ask. Sun An sitting on the ground started asking Sun Tian Xing why a strong player like him would want to join the Star Coin Alliance Mercenary Alliance. But he replied that he wasn't a member of the Alliance, he was hired temporarily and his name was Sun Tian Xing, and he was a solo player. And realizing that he is a level 39 solo player, our hero replied that his name is Sun An, and not so long ago he was a solo player like him, but now he has his own guild and a group of like-minded partners. When the deputy heard this, he started shouting that this is a lie and a lie and a provocation, and he should be gotten rid of now. Sun Tian Xing still started asking questions and asking our game. This is what he just said. True. If crystals are over-farmed, he will activate in S-level dungeon. Sun An still insisted and said that he didn't need to lag and that he didn't lose this battle. Because at that moment, the green vines started tying up other players, and everyone started shouting that Sun Tian Xing was a traitor. But also after that, the vines started to bind Sun Tian Xing because Sun An said that he had a chance to win, but he made a mistake when he used the tree attribute at the end. And the blessing of the forest allows him to control the appearance and growth of the surrounding plants, including those created by the orb. And pulled out his blade, Sun. Anne started threatening the deputy that if he didn't immediately see all the workers from the mine and stop the work, he would be finished. Well, the deputy started smiling and telling the state hero it's useless and pointless because once his investment ability is activated, even he can't cancel it. And the only way out is to dig up the whole mine or those men will be locked in there till they die with no hope of getting out. Soon An realized that he had a very nasty ability, but now he had to figure out how to get them there or it would be too late. But the manager kept laughing and saying that it wouldn't work, because how can he be called a capitalist if he doesn't squeeze all the juice out of the working class? But at that moment, the sound of huge funds was heard, and Sun An realized that something had happened inside. And something was definitely happening inside, because one of the players started shouting that the monsters were coming and dragging him to some other place, but that he didn't want to die yet. And the other players were screaming for help, but it was too late. And those mercenary players saw the horror and started running away. Sun Tian Xing stayed in the same place, but he realized that if he was right to stay here, everyone would die. And that's when the deputy realized that he was wrong. And even though the warden was pulling him away from the cave because they had to run away, the deputy realized that his legs weren't listening to him. And what was worse was that Sun An appeared at the same moment and started asking if they were going to escape. And because of the Star Coin Alliance's greed, a lot of people died. Do they really think they can just run away now? But the deputy starts throwing his hands up, screaming for the young hero to spare them. Because he doesn't need this place anymore, and he's never going back to mining, and he's vice chairman of the Star Coin Alliance, and he can't die. He tried to change Sun An's mind, telling him that if he'd let him go, he'd come back and tell the representative about him. And he'd give him a third of the proceeds from the charmer, even give him half. 
But as soon as he agreed to do something with the money and not together, our hero punched him in the face. You said that if he thought that the lost in life could be measured in money, not a bunch of freaks blinded by the glitter of coins. The deputy persisted and begged for mercy for the heroes. But it was all in vain, for Sun An didn't listen to anyone, not even the guy behind him who begged him for generosity. They would never dare to compromise again. But Sun An changed his mind and started telling them to get the hell out of here, because killing them would only get his hands dirty. And as he looked at the portal, he realized that the most important thing now, this underground city, if he didn't go in immediately, the passage might close again. Sun Tian Xing, who was standing behind him, started sifting to wait. And then Sun An canceled his skill and said that everyone had left and he could leave too. And as soon as the branches were untangled, Sun Tian Xing decided to ask him if he still wanted to save those people. But Sun An replied that it's a pity, but they can't be helped, and he was only going there for his own sake. The underground city could only be stumbled upon by chance, and it was a source of disaster and opportunity, and a place with S-class equipment, and he still hadn't found the right fourth ability. And in order to protect what he holds dear, he must become stronger. Sun Tian Xing took a closer look at him and thought that this was the first time he had met someone so confident, and the fact that he even became inflamed at that moment. Extending his hand, Sun Tian Xing asked if he wouldn't mind teaming up with him and going together, so he wouldn't get in the way. But Sun An couldn't understand why he was doing it. To which Sun Tian Xing began to reply that he used to be a non staff player and firmly believed that personal strength was paramount and he was used to acting alone. And that's why the system gave him the title of nerd. And he spent nine days and nine nights in the Luan Feng Forest. The rank was given after killing 999 and monsters. But as soon as Sun An heard about the 10,000 grand, Sun Tian Xing added that his head was swollen from shooting birds. Well, hard work finally paid off, and this title gave him a huge income. Taking a closer look at him, Sun An realized that he looked a bit like him in the past. And as he continued to hold out his hand, Sun Tian Xing asked again if he was good enough to be his partner. And as soon as they shook hands, Sun An said he'd try to do the same but he still had to think it over. It's a level 60 dungeon. Even he wasn't sure he'd make it back alive. But Sun Tian Xing started to say that if he didn't realize it, he wouldn't have asked to go. And now life is like an adventure game. If you want to be the one who wins in the end, you have to grab every opportunity. And that talk is useless. That power is the guarantor of everything. And now they're ready to go where the pool of the undead awaits them. A little while later, they began to destroy every monster in their path. And even though the notification system showed the players that the number of monsters was over 30, they still went on the rampage. And going into a bigger corner, our hero started activating the dangerous player effect, and his attack and strength and damage were increased. And even though he realized that the wave tactic wouldn't work on him. He began to prepare for battle by raising his high-class blade and activated the demonic execution skill and started pointing it at the monsters. And at that moment, all the monsters in the area were destroyed, causing Sun An to gain a lot of experience. But as he turned his head, he wondered how that guy was doing because level 60 monsters are not easy to defeat. On the other side, Sun Tian Xing kept counting and on his counter was the 36th monster he had destroyed. But suddenly he was attacked by a huge horde of skeletons and he managed to jump back. And taking a magic crystal from his inventory, he began to load his liberty bow with it. Sun An, who was watching his battle, thought he was cool. After all, when fighting the undead, you can collect crystals with all sorts of attributes that are used to create different kinds of liberty bows, and he must say that for his excellent bow skills, he deserves to be considered an expert. 
If his and Jeju's conclusion is correct, there are 14 days left to doctor the demons, and now it's most important to rally with strong players to face the crisis in the future, and he doesn't know if he can be included in the guild. But at that moment, a huge rock appeared above Sun An's head and started falling on his head. And not realizing what was happening, he panicked and started to move away. And all because of the unshakable spirit of the dinner appeared in front of them, because the malt at work is 65th level. Sun Tian Xing wondered if it was from the boss. But also with him came the 61st level guardians of the dead. And when Sun An saw this, he realized that it would be important to them. Sun Tian Xing saw that he was being attacked very hard and started to jump away. And as soon as he was near Sun An, he started to ask if he was okay, but Sun Tian Xing told him he was fine. But Sun An realized that they were facing an invincible legion that summons the ability of the unshakable spirit of resentment. And these guardians are immune to all negative effects. Even his black mist and poison blessing are useless against them. Even though he doesn't exist for only 30 seconds after they disappear, the spirit of resentment can summon four to ten new guards, and fighting directly is certain death. And upon hearing this, Sun Tian Xing began to wonder if he had any strategy, to which Sun An replied that he would distract them and he would find the right moment to attack the tribulation spirits and kill them all at once. And going at once was no easy task. They realized there was another problem. And opening a jar of mana, Sun An said he would soon find out what the problem was. And at that moment, Sun An started using his teleportation and throwing his monster warming powder at the monsters. And as soon as the powder reached the monsters, they immediately started to pay attention to Sun An. And Sun An cried out that he was taking them on, Sun Tian Xing. Watching Sun An's actions, he realized that he was a very hot-tempered kid, but he couldn't understand how he could kill two monsters with one blow. But opening his inventory, he realized that his partner was counting on him, and he couldn't let him down. He took out a magic crystal and began to prepare for battle, because at this point he realized he couldn't insist on his own. And with the help of the magic crystal, which contains a special light effect and a second 200% undead deterrence effect also suitable for creating A-rank weapons with the light attribute, and that his reward for passing the Shining Shrine in a level 39 dungeon should help him. But the stronger the item, the more it's introduced, the more it's needed at a critical moment, and now it's just to take down such a monster. Sun Tian Xing drew his bow and started shooting a huge bright yellow color. And in just a few seconds, the monster felt the full force of it. But at the same time, nearby Sun An continued to fight the monsters. Well, Sun An saw a bright light and realized that his partner had done it. Because just like he asked, the guy took down the monster with one punch and they won. But that's what Sun Tian Xing thought because Sun An knew it wasn't over yet and started shouting to the guy that they weren't done yet and he should dodge right away. Sun Tian Xing turned his head around and realized that the monster wasn't dead yet. And as soon as he turned his head completely around, you saw that Sun An, using his teleportation skill, started attacking the monster with his instant execution and yelling at his partner to run away. But after his attack, he flew away because he realized that the monster had a counterattack, and now that they were on Earth, they couldn't figure out what to do next. Sun Tian Xing ran back to his partner and saw that he was bleeding from his stomach. Thank God the wound was small, and that he had just reached level 42 and had regained all his health, but he didn't realize that he could have predicted that the damage would be so great and take away half of his health. Sun Tian Xing jumped aside and started to say that he didn't know if he could kill. But as he drew the bowstring, he began to prepare to attack with his gold crystal mountain crystal and earth crystal. But all his attacks simply flew through his enemy. And then he realized that he was in a bad situation because he couldn't even damage that monster. 
Sun An started to get to his feet and explained to the guy that when she activates the immunity, she can't do damage. And when he launched the death blow, the ability was already working, but his partner couldn't understand if it was the same with the guardian of the dead she summoned. But Sun An went on to explain that it was more serious than that, and with the mind immunity ability she could re-sustain her astral body for 60 seconds, ignoring damage control and greatly improving her summoning ability. And that she's getting stronger again now and the monsters were too powerful before. But what's worse is that Sun Tian Xing couldn't figure out how they would fight, but Sun An replied that they wouldn't fight this time. And now they should run far away for the 60 seconds she's not vulnerable. And as soon as they were about to run away, the notification system showed them that they had to wait another 30 seconds for their teleportation to work. But there was also the problem of the nine monsters they saw that didn't give them a chance to respawn. And the fact that while teleport is recharging, they can't do anything and he's afraid less than 20 seconds have passed since he activated the ability and that he's got a wound that's bleeding a lot and he's not going to heal for the 40 seconds they have to run away. But suddenly Sun Tian Xing got up and started to move forward with serious intentions to leave it to him. Because he's packed his life away because he doesn't like to be in debt to anyone for long. And he would use the wooden crystal to control the guards and the earth crystal to protect himself and Sun An. But he realized that it wouldn't last long so Sun An had to get out of here as soon as possible. But suddenly, Sun An began to ask him to repeat his words, and Sun Tian Xing began to say that the wooden crystal would hold them back and the earth crystal would protect them. And hearing this again, Sun An came up with a plan and started telling his comrade to start beating him up, because it would be the same as when he used the crystal with the tree attribute to attack him. And as soon as Sun Tian Xing realized, he started to turn towards the hero and says that he's an amazing man. And since he's asking him to trust him this time, and as soon as he threw a few blows, the tree goddess appeared using her blessing. And in that very spot, huge tree roots sprouted up and lifted the boys into the air. And once they were up there, the guys realized that it wouldn't stop them for long. But Sun Tian Xing saw that our hero didn't take care of himself at all, and he was on the verge of death and asked him to shoot him and that he wasn't afraid that he might actually kill him. But Sun An raised his hand and gave him a thumbs up which meant that everything was all right now. In the South, his partner was surprised that he trusted him. He'd never done that before. He was a solo player. But Sun An was 100% sure that he was really like him in the past. He didn't rely on just anyone and only believed that strength was the most important thing. But now he has companions to trust in his life. And in the future, there's an even bigger disaster in store for all the players, a demon invasion. And then Sun An realized that once it was over, he started to ask the guy if he wanted to join his guild Zero. But Sun Tian Xing of the Maud replied with his head that they would talk about it later because he wasn't mentally ready for it yet. Sun An here the photo replied that he would not force him, but reminded him that the path of a single player is very difficult. At that moment, a girl appeared on the bottom and started talking about her king, her only love. Followed by a notification that the unshakable spirit of resentment had been destroyed and the player's levels had been raised, as well as the player's stats restored. And they were immediately promoted to level 44 and 40. And also a notification window appeared in front of Sun An saying that the player could take this ability and that it's extremely useful in the game. But there's one thing. If he encounters real monsters, the dead man's astral body is neither hot nor cold, and he's realized that this ability doesn't work for him. Well, the scepter may not be S-class, but A-class is also useful. But at that moment, the boys heard that the miners buried here were living to help. Sun An already started to explain that before entering the dungeon, he said that there was nothing to help them and that someone else was calling them. But when they looked into the huge dark cave, they couldn't figure out who it could be. 
and once the skill was over and they got down to the ground, they decided they'd go on and find out who was screaming. But a little later, they reached a huge gate at the end of a long tunnel. When they got closer, they didn't realize that the voice was coming from behind the gate. Sun An saw this huge gate and started telling his partner that he had a bad feeling about this door and that it was probably the boss's room and that they didn't come here to kill the boss. They came here to get S-Class gear, but in this situation, there's nothing else to do but go fight. And when they opened the huge doors, they saw a huge room that was glowing with blue torches. And at the end of the room, a silhouette sat on a throne, who began to stretch out his hand asking for help because he hoped that someone had come to save him. And the headless 68th level enslaved king started asking if they'd seen his head. Sun Tian Xing was convinced that it was the boss of this dungeon after all. And at that moment, the enslaver started spewing a huge aura as Sun An attacked him. And then he realized that he couldn't penetrate his armor. The headless king put out his hand and began to squeeze Sun An's body with all his might. And Sun An started to use his teleportation skill and went back to his partner who asked if he was okay. But Sun An started to say that he was okay, but he couldn't penetrate his armor, but he could with his arrow. So he has good physical defense and can only do damage with magic. But the Headless King started asking if they'd seen Forenzi. But when the boys heard him say that, they couldn't understand what he was talking about. After taking a few steps, the Headless King began to say that Ferena was his beloved queen who took his head. And swinging his great sword, he said that he had been waiting for her for three hundred years. But as soon as his huge sword hit the ground, the boys were thrown aside by a huge wave. The headless king kept shouting if they'd seen her queen. And then he continued to attack the players without waiting for an answer. Sun An's reaction time was good and he was able to block his attack. But Sun An swung again. But Sun An kicked away from his body and jumped back and activated his teleportation skill, he grabbed his comrade and started to pull him to the side. As the headless king continued to charge at him screaming, and as he swung once more Sun, and pushed Sun Tianxin aside, because he thought he'd take his attack, which hit him right in the stomach, Sun Tianxin saw this and started shouting to his comrade to be okay. At that moment, he saw Sun and using his hands to hold his huge sword. The headless king could not understand whether he still had the strength to resist. But Sun An realized that he would not be able to hold on for long. His strength is so great that he can barely stand on his own two feet. And if he continues like this, he'll die here. And the fact that he's headless but can see quite well. And realizing this fact, Sun An started to use his black mist because his situation was desperate, and he decided it was worth a try. And at that moment, the headless king started shouting that he couldn't see anything, because that fog used to belong to those rats he hates. Sun An, watching the situation, realized that the black fog had worked, and he was scared of it. But the headless king started to say that he suddenly remembered terrible things, that his crown was missing. And while the headless king was blinded and walking around, Sun Tian Xing ran up to Sun An asking if he was okay. But Sun An saw that his health was almost at zero and realized that he couldn't go on like this because the wound was too deep. And he had to think about how to fix it. And now is the perfect time because while the headless king is in chaos, screaming that his crown has been stolen, they can come up with a plan. But the Headless King didn't give them a chance to come up with a plan because he flew straight at them at full speed, screaming at them to give him his crown. And at that moment, Sun An wondered if he could use some kind of bug or passphrase because he remembered back to when he was still working in the office and he was working on another bug that couldn't be fixed. And when Zai Jun came up to him asking about the infinite crystal mines, but Sun An started to get nervous because he didn't know what to do. This bug affects the balance of the game, and that if he didn't fix it, the boss would skin him after the release. 
But suddenly Zai Jun suggested to him that it would be a good idea to turn the bug into a passphrase. And the first one is that you can't carry too much, and let it be a zone where you can endlessly mine resources. But if you overrun the norm, you'll enter a horrible dungeon, a dungeon from which no one can get out alive. When Sun An heard this idea, he realized why he hadn't thought of it. And as soon as he started to praise Zai Jun, she immediately got embarrassed and said that she had just recently modeled a dungeon boss and could add a story to it. And based on this idea, he realized that it should be an S-rank dungeon, and it should be made so that no player is guaranteed to get out of there alive. Now, son, Anne remembered that he had set up the dungeon himself, and his goal was to punish greedy people. The headless king standing nearby kept shouting that they were disgusting rats and they should return his stolen crown. Sun An realized that there was no bug he could use, and as soon as the headless king struck the ground with his sword a few more times, the notification system told him he was low on health points, which he didn't expect to be caught in a passphrase he'd set up himself. But at that moment, the boss in the dungeon started attacking again, screaming for his crown back. Sun and realized that it couldn't go on like this. There was too much blood in his eyes. Sun Tian Xing noticed this and started yelling at him to run away while he apprehended the boss. And using his liberty bow, he started attacking the headless king with his forest blessing skill, causing huge tree branches to come out of the ground. The players realized that luckily they had done this combination before, but this is now a last resort, and the fact that the Headless King has a lot of health and too much resistance to physical damage, and that he's very powerful, and his attack style is unusual. And most importantly, he's not so stupid, because he knew that the guys wanted to win the long-range battle. But it turns out that his waterfall ball is no problem, and as soon as he swung it, all the tree branches started to collapse. When he landed on the ground, Sun An realized that his injury had been bothering him and that the headless king was already standing beside them saying that no one could escape him because the waterfall cuts through space itself and now he will kill those who came and took his crown. Sun An realized that he couldn't move. The oppressive aura of oppression was so tight that he couldn't even muster the strength to teleport. And the fact that he's already used up all his techniques, and he still can't defeat this boss, and after several failures, all courage to fight further evaporated. But suddenly our hero found himself in the office where he had worked not so long ago, and the boss was yelling at him for sleeping and slacking off during working hours. If he continued to do so, he would fire him. Sun An apologized to him. He fell asleep late last night. But at this point, our hero couldn't understand what was going on because he clearly remembered fighting with the boss. And if it was all a dream and now he's in the present. But his head was splitting so badly that only bad memories were coming to mind and they were going to come back to him. But there was a muffled voice calling him. And that muffled voice was Sun Tian Xin yelling at him to be careful. And then our hero remembered the horrible incident that he was fighting against the dungeon boss. He had to die. And now he saw his leader in front of him. He couldn't understand where that place was. And if he had gone back in time and realized that this was his present, his supervisor continued to beat him, shouting why he froze because the game was about to be announced, and if he didn't fix the bugs, he would fire him. Sun An turned around and started walking towards the table and realized that everything that had happened to him was real, and it couldn't have been a dream. And the only explanation was another bug in the game that had brought him back here. But when he looked at the monitor, he couldn't understand what it was because he didn't remember that there was a handy program installed on the computer. And as soon as he clicked on it a few times, the notification system congratulated him on activating the Stark Triangle. Stark's Triangle is a system created especially for lucky players. Only those who have mastered the bug mechanism and used more than 20 bugs in battle can activate it. Stark's Constellation is a set of game bugs. Having activated it, 
will be able to use it at any time without local restrictions. But the only condition for activation was player death, and the reward for activation was reversible death, the one and only reward. And at that moment, our hero realized that the reversible death, that is, everything that had happened before was true and he had actually died. But now he doesn't know where this thing came from, but it cheered him up a lot. But at that moment, his supervisor came up to him and slapped his hand on the table, shouting why he was smiling and why he had nothing else to do but sit around. But Sun An started to raise his eyes and look at his pathetic leader. And without any conversation or formality, he got up and hit him on the head with his fist, telling the manager that after all he had been through, he expected him to be a submissive and grovel before him like a sucker. The supervisor fell to the floor and began to shiver with fear, and he didn't realize if his subordinate was going to revolt. Sun An jumped up to him and started grabbing him from behind and yelling at the manager that they were in his memories and he shouldn't even hope to control them. The other guys in the office saw Sun An beating up the boss, and a girl standing nearby started yelling for someone to call security. But the guys decided not to wait for the guards, and immediately they ran up to Sun An and grabbed his hands to stop beating up the boss but Sun An kept beating him up because he wanted him to get what he deserved. But the girl who tried to call the guard started shouting at the hero that it was too much, and how could they treat their other boss like that, and whether he would wait to be put behind bars. But as soon as Sun An finished beating him up, the girl ran up to her boss asking if he was okay. But Sun An started yelling at her that she's a sycophant, and expects a great future sucking up to her boss, and what a calculating bitch she is. But the girl bounced aside and started yelling that you can't talk to people like that because she just wants justice. But he didn't like the words justice because he knew that everyone here should question whether this cowardly company really treats its employees fairly, daily unpaid overtime deductions from their salaries and bonuses year after year because they'd soon be dead. The girl suddenly objected to him. He shouldn't say that. If it wasn't for the boss, who would pay them? Well, Sun An turned around and decided that she was already lost and let her and her favorite boss have a little time when the game starts. When Zai Jun saw this, she couldn't figure out if Zai Jun was okay because she heard that he fought with the boss. But suddenly he came up to her and started asking her why they came here. Zai Jun took their group and started asking if he was okay and why he attacked the boss, because it's strange that he was always Shaktai and suddenly he went crazy. And that's when our hero realized that from the beginning, only these two were really with him, and that the others could be ignored. But he swore to protect them with all his might. And as soon as he hugged them, the boys were shocked that he'd been so kind to them. And the last thing Soon An decided to say before returning was that his memories were his, and it was time to face reality. He waved his hand and wished Zai Jun and Soon Yue that they would meet later and he would protect them. For now, a new reality was beginning in which he was reborn as a new man and stronger than before. At the same time on the island that was hovering above the city, a man and Raffaello saw a notification window that said that there was an error in the space-time data. And Raffaello couldn't understand what had happened because somehow she felt as if time had gone backwards. But the guy sitting next to her said it was right because someone had just activated the time travel mechanism. And it was the unknown Baba again. Raffaello realized it was that damned son and cheater again. But the guy suddenly started smiling because he realized that if time reversed, Sun An had gotten that thing. But Raffaello couldn't understand if it was really that damned Sun An and they should punish him, or it would be unfair to the other players. But the guy looked at the notification window where it was written that the demon spawn had been downloaded 6,200 out of 10,000, then he told her that there's no need because now they have a small game and a big challenge, and they can't even imagine what's ahead of them.
because it's only 14 days until the demons are born. Elsewhere, deep in the forest bowl, there was also a small battle, where Zai Jun and the rest of the boys were fighting against a level 69 enslaver boss, Anaconda. And at that moment, Sun Yu Yue appeared and started shouting that he was attacking from above and should not take the time to hit the Anaconda from behind. But the Anaconda activated its hate and rage skill and also started to attack back. The other guys didn't wait for the right moment to attack together. But Zai Jun told them to keep formation and the healers to concentrate on camouflage and support the vanguard. The guy with white hair who was hiding behind the trees heard the order and started attacking with his water ball. And they're working together, but they haven't decided to reach level 35 before Sun An arrives, because they're not going to be a burden to him. And they're going to get Fung a lot of resources so she can build all the magic weapons. But Fung hears this and starts yelling at the guys that she's not a workhorse. Zai Jun was nearby and realized that Sun An had brought them together in Guild Zero. And she never would have imagined that one day he would be a real leader for the people. But both past and present, she believes in him. And besides, for some reason they think they've already destroyed the Anaconda, but they think they have. But for some reason the Anaconda stopped moving and the guys realized that it must be another Bach. If so, it was Sun An's doing. But Zai Jun hoped that Sun Anyi was all right. She had a bad feeling in another place where Jeju's base was located. Some players felt a strange sensation as if time had stopped. Jeju began to explain that if his senses were correct, Sun An had activated another bok that rolled back time. But one of the girls started yelling why she did it, or why he's not bothering to investigate the demon invasion, and he's not helping and he's just wandering around and getting into trouble. Another guy drinking a drink started telling Nana to think positively because Soon Anyu was lucky. But Jeju opened the notification window and couldn't figure out where Chi was. He's been out of contact for 24 hours and something terrible might have happened to him. And the fact that five days ago, the deputy commander had volunteered to lead the team to investigate a portal for the demons to invade, based on their speed, and they should have reached the volcano and Moonzi in Area K. And at that time, near the volcano, they began to move forward because they realized that the entrance to the underworld was right in front of them, and the battle that started it all in the dungeon of Shar's palace continued, and the headless king continued to attack the boys without stopping. Sun Tianqing moved from his seat as he saw his partner about to be killed, and as soon as Sun An fell to the ground, the Headless King began to tell Sun Tianxing that he would be next, and that all who enter the royal palace will die. Sun Tianxing at the same moment began to remember the past when his father left them, and his mother sobbing beside him told him that from now on they would live well together, and they didn't need to rely on daddy. But the day the game began, his mother who was covered by the clouds of the building, screamed at him to run away and leave her and go on with his life. But he didn't understand why, if it was just a game, why her imposed fate was so unfair. And since then, he's only realized one thing. He's going to get stronger and he won't stop. And he's going to destroy all the monsters to raise his level. And now he has no sympathy, no pity, and certainly no companionship. And the only thing he cares about his power. But that day, being around this guy, it was like he saw a different path and remembered Sun An's words about trying to be strong to protect what he values most, which is friends. And when he asked if he wanted to join his Guild of Zero, then the path to get rid of loneliness leads in the right direction. If he got the chance, he wouldn't hesitate to join Sun An's Guild. But at that moment, Sun An appeared and blocked the headless king's punch and told Sun Tianxing to take note of the word of mouth. But suddenly the headless king saw the guy he had just killed standing in front of him and couldn't understand why he was standing in front of him again. He had seen how he killed him with one blow. But Sun An told her husband that he had killed him in the past. 
and now he's reborn with new powers and ready to fight again. But now he's sure he can take revenge and win this fight. Sun En jumped up and started to use his black mist skill and directed it at the Headless King. And at that moment, the Headless King once again lost all of his sight because the black fog made him blind. And taking this chance, Sun An began to tell his partner that only his MOY could damage him and he should attack while he had the chance. But Sun Tian Xing couldn't understand what had just happened and why Sun An was standing in front of him without a single scratch. But he drew his weapon and realized that since he was resurrected, there was still hope. And as soon as he fired, he was able to do a little damage and realizing the fact that it had worked and if it continued, they had a chance. Sun An jumped up and started throwing a lot of punches with his demonic execution technique. Well, the notification window showed that Zeus physical damage had been dealt and the second level demon killer had been activated and the target had been identified. But still, Sun An realized that knowing his abilities, he no longer seemed scary and the items his comrades had created with him. So he took out a magic gun from his inventory and began to inject half of his mana into it. And as soon as the gun was charged, he began to use a deadly attack on the Headless King. But the Headless King swung his blade by activating the Spatial Rift skill. Sun Tian Xing saw that it was that strange skill again, and he wanted to dodge with the Space Rift. And Spatial Rift, use it not only for offense but also for defense, and he can cut space whenever he wants, and he can appear in any part of the palace and it's going to take a lot of effort for the guys to get him. Sun An landed on the ground and started to say that it's true that he'll have a hard time. But still, he foresaw the Headless King's actions, and seeing the place where he appears, he immediately started to move his magic gun shot there. The Headless King saw this and couldn't understand why he was moving on him, because he had just been in a different place. It's because Sun An started using the passive ability of the Demon Slayer's Bone Blade. It interferes with damaged targets, and now wherever he goes, his projectiles will follow him. And at that moment, the magic projectile reached the target and the Headless King received a huge net damage of 4,000 units. Sun An saw that he had only lost a third of his health, and if he used up all his mana, he would have to find another way. But our hero's attack was followed by Sun Tian Xin's arrow, which dealt 500 magic damage to the boss, and was able to bind the target, causing the Headless King to stop moving. Sun An teleported back to his comrade, who started to ask him what it was, because he clearly remembered how he died. But Sun An said they'd discuss the details later, because now it's important to deal with the difficult boss. But Sun Tian Xing suddenly suggested to the hero that if they were going to fight, maybe they should take a moment to escape. Sun An replied that they can't do that because the Headless King can use the Spatial Rift, so they can't get away, so they'll just have to finish him off. Sun Tian Xing heard this and told the hero that he trusted him, and that once they got out of here, he would request to join his guild. Sun An replied that he would be very happy and that they would get out of here safely. But suddenly the Headless King shouted that he'd had enough and he'd tear them to shreds. And swinging his sword, he started to activate the Spatial Rift. But Sun An aside, he said that the same move wouldn't work on him twice. And his buffs were enough to repel his attack. But suddenly he saw that the boss had another killing move. And as soon as it started to work, the hero realized that his body didn't listen to him, and his head remembered hallucinations and that his soul seemed to be leaving his body. Sun Tian Xing, who was nearby, noticed that his attack was about to finish them off. And without thinking twice, he took Sun An's side, saving him from the deadly attack. And as soon as they jumped aside, they realized that they'd just gotten very lucky. But Sun An couldn't realize what it was because he was unharmed, but his soul was under his control. And that they couldn't fight him head on and had to find a way to attack from a distance. 
But when he saw the headless king coming toward them, and said that only his queen could defeat him, and he was holding on because of the love she had forsaken him. So now he would finally slay his enemies with one blow and gain his freedom, because he sworn to avenge all the wrongs done to the world. The guys decided not to waste time and started to use teleportation, but seeing that it was still in cooldown, they bounced back. Sun An started to call up his inventory and realized he needed to figure out how to make the magic spear again. And after looking in his inventory, he realized that this should do the trick. After all, this trophy is from the unshakable spirit of resentment, and it will temporarily summon four to ten guardians of the dead, and they could use it now. But the headless king saw that this was the scepter of the spirit of resentment Firen, and that this staff was a gift he gave her a long time ago, and now it's just ironic that his own weapon is attacking him. For once upon a time, very late at night, mysterious men came to take my rest. It was the army of the kingdom of Hymon to take away his crown, his title, and his house, and even his head, for he had no idea the date would come. But now the headless king, after all his memories, was even angrier, for he hated Firenze with all his heart, and he also hated people. And as soon as the boss had his head on his shoulders, the notification window showed that his physical defense had been reduced by 999. And then he shouted that all traitors deserve to die. When Sun Tianxing saw this, he realized that they were in a berserk state. And in an instant he could destroy all the ghost knights, for now all the traitors would know his punishment. Sun An thought that this was the most opportune moment to damage him, because in his rage he was immune to his attacks. And now was the right moment to finish him off. But at that moment he began to feel the word of this strange skill that had been inflicted on him earlier. And the king kept swinging his blade and started attacking all the squabbles. But our hero teleported behind his back and was struck again with his demonic blade. And after a few blows the king noticed him and started to turn around. But his turn was so fast that the hero flew off with a thud into the nearest wall. But Sun Tian Xing, standing nearby, decided not to waste time, and with the help of his arrows, he started to bind the king. And while he was tied up, he asked Sun An how he was feeling. Sun An said that because of the state of rage, his movement speed increased and he was inattentive. But at that moment, the king began to tear the green branches that bound him, and immediately he was free from the shackles. But without any explanation, he immediately started running towards our heroes who were near the wall. And because he had that strange skill on him, he couldn't dodge, and he found himself in a dead end again. But suddenly he realized that when he came back, he had something. And it was Stark's Triangle, a system created especially for lucky players. Only those who have mastered the bug mechanism and used more than 20 bugs in combat can activate it. Stark's Constellation, a set of game bugs that activate it, will be able to use the bugs placed in the combat game at any time and without local restrictions. And now he realized that this was the most convenient moment because there was no time to wait any longer. And at the same moment they found themselves in some strange place. Sun Tianxing still couldn't understand where they were and where the king had disappeared to. Meanwhile, the king was inside the room, and just like Sun Tianxing couldn't understand where they had gone. Sun Tianxing still couldn't understand what was going on, and you started to ask, is there really a game here that he didn't even know about? Sun An thought that the right thing to do now was not to waste time, and immediately he called his inventory and took out a cure to remove all the negative effects and replenish his stamina and hit points. And once he was fully healed, he began to explain to his partner that the bug vault allowed him to use the game's bugs as he pleased, and it was time for him to give the headless king a beating. And as soon as they both regained their powers, they began to clear the safe zone. And that's when the king started to turn his head because he sensed the guys that had just appeared out of nowhere. Sun An stretched out his hand and started to use a few more bugs, and one of them was a jumping ping. 
but the king didn't want to hear a word and started attacking them with his spatial rift, because he was determined to destroy them here and now so that they would never come here again. But suddenly he realized he couldn't move his arms or legs, and Sun An started to smile and asked him what was wrong. Did he have a high ping? Because the king couldn't move, the guys started attacking him with all their might, dealing 400 damage in one hit. And when the ping is high, the only thing left to do is stay still and now it's their turn to show what they do best, which is to take down evil kings. So they jumped aside and launched their metal attacks that did the most damage. But they didn't expect that the king would react so quickly and that the ping wouldn't last. For the king activated his berserk skill and began to shout to the boys that whatever little tricks they used were useless in the face of true power. And that since they like to sneak around, he'll give them a chance to run with his spatial turbulence. And now he'll see how long they last. Mm. Sun An saw that he had unexpectedly started using ranged attacks, and that if this continued, he and Sun Tian Xing's health would drop to zero. And Sun Tian Xing started telling his comrade to hurry up and use the safe zone. But Sun An replied that Stark's triangle can't reuse Bug in the same location, and he has to find another way out. Sun Tian Xing closed his body and realized he couldn't take it anymore and that they had to come up with another bug to help them, and there must be one. But at that moment his pet appeared in front of our hero, and he couldn't understand why it appeared in front of him and was holding it in his hands. And at that moment his pet raised the crown up and started saying something in its own tiny language. And at that moment our hero realized that what he was saying was a crown that he could use. But the pet kept telling him to trust him because once he put it on, the king would regain his mind. But since Sun An had no choice, he decided to trust him once. And using his black fog skill, he started getting closer and closer to the king, which made the king realize that this guy was up to something again, since he decided to overpower him with his blindness. It was a shame that the state of rage had subsided, and his speed was once again matched. As soon as our hero was badly wounded again, he realized he had no more holy water to heal his wounds, and with each passing second he was losing his hit points. If he didn't finish the boss by leveling up, he would die from prolonged bleeding. But the king was already standing over him, ready to finish him off. All the souls of traitors should go to hell, he thought. And as soon as the blow reached our hero, he raised his demonic blade to block the attack. And at that moment, the king's sword flew aside, and he couldn't understand how this could have happened. But soon An replied that the winner determines the outcome of the battle, and he started calling him a rat and that he'd tear him to shreds. But it was too late. Our hero took a swing and started throwing the crown at the king. And as soon as the crown hit his head, the king couldn't understand what was going through his head and what was this strange feeling he was getting, because now it feels like he's alive again and in the kingdom he was in 300 years ago. And then his sister came running in, screaming what kind of decree he was making, and that he was ordering her to marry the ruler of the kingdom of Lept. But he didn't hesitate for a second, and with a serious look on his face told her that that was his decree. But his sister didn't understand why he was doing it, for their kingdoms were at war. The counselor who stood by the king began to tell the princess that the king had no other choice, and that news had come from the front lines that King Dews had completely wiped out 300,000 of their best warriors. When his sister heard this, the princess understood what he was trying to tell her, and by agreement she was to be his spoils of war. But the king didn't like this tone and jumped up from his throne and started yelling at her that how dare she talk to the king like that. But she thought she was telling the truth because he couldn't get what he wanted on the battlefield and now he wanted to make it up to her sister's woman. But the king went on to tell her that she didn't understand and that everything had been decided and she should stop using her tongue. King Dews is a brute force and the main thing on the battlefield, 
but they will expect him to make his kingdom disappear sooner or later without a trace. A few days later in the mountain lodge, a huge army marched through a narrow gorge, and the princess began to ask if he was the legendary son of God, the valiant and unrivaled King Deuce. Deuce turned around and started laughing loudly and told the princess that she was King Hadamon's own little sister, and he was accepting his gift. And holding out his hand to her, he suggested that she come with him, for she is now his queen. But the princess suddenly realized that she had thought him a bloodthirsty and cruel man. But he turned out to be a generous and wise king, and the people in his kingdom honored and respected him, and more importantly, he took tender care of her, and she never felt like a prisoner. And a little later he showed her how many azalea flowers were blooming, and they were as captivating in beauty as she was. And at that moment the princess realized that she had tasted happiness for the first time with him. And through their marriage the two kingdoms reconciled and signed a treaty. But she knew that her brother was a hypocritical and cruel man, and his cunning scheme didn't end there. And having got rid of the enemy in the person of King Dews, he tired on the way of territory expansion and the territory of the kingdom of Hymon increased appropriating in the nearest small states. But not even five years of fake peace had passed when the fire of war reached the capital of King Dews's kingdom. And his queen begged him to surrender to her brother and not fight him again. But he couldn't understand why he should surrender, for he had broken the treaty so he would have to feel his fury. But the queen felt that the kingdom of Hymon was not what it used to be and he could not handle it. But suddenly King Dews embraced her and said that no words were needed, for he cared for her and for this city, even if it cost him his life. The queen couldn't calm down and kept sobbing because she realized that her brother didn't want to do him any good. But then she fled to the kingdom of Hadimon, and when she went back to her brother to ask him for one thing, but he got up from his throne and looked at her with an angry look and asked her what she really wanted. But his sister fell on her knees and began to ask that five years ago he had ordered her to marry King Dews, and now she begged him to let her and her husband go and have mercy on them. But he started laughing as soon as he heard these words and said only that she had done well in those five years. <laughs> because she'd drugged him and given him a chance to be stronger, and now were they in a position to make demands of him. And King Dews's defeat is obvious because resistance is a path to nowhere. But his capital is heavily guarded and not easy to take. And she must use her position as queen to lead his troops inside. And when it seems to be captured, the war will be over. Therefore, his life will mean nothing. If she agrees, he'll consider her offer. But the queen actually realized that the king would not give up so easily, and perhaps this is the only chance to save him, and he should forgive him. After all, it's only to save his life. But suddenly the queen told her brother that she hoped that he still had feelings for her, and that he would stay true to his promise. And a little later, the queen went back to her palace and started telling King Dews that there was no way out and he should surrender right now. But King Duze couldn't understand what she was doing. But Ferena kept insisting that he give up his domain and his crown so her brother would spare her. But no matter how she persuaded him, he couldn't understand if she had been deceiving him all along and she had married him only to betray him five years later. And at that moment he got really angry and started yelling that anyone but her could have betrayed him. But then his hand swung the sword that I was flying at the queen's neck. But at that moment the sword stopped near her head, and the king realized he couldn't do it. He couldn't kill his beloved. The queen at that moment began to weep loudly and with a smile on her face told her king. But before she could say a word, a terrible thing happened. His crown flew off his head and a lot of blood spurted out. When the queen saw it, she couldn't understand why he did it. She had helped him as they had agreed and he should have kept him alive in return. But her brother, smiling evilly, said he had changed his mind and the capital was defeated and the war was over and they could go home. But the queen thought otherwise only that her king would forgive her for she had been selfish 
and had hurt him because of her own ignorance, for now she was with him and her meaning of life was gone. And even if she has to become an evil spirit, she wants to protect the capitals and she hates King Hadimon, and she can't wait to chop him into many pieces and let her die, but leave a ghost to haunt him forever. And at that moment, King Hadamon couldn't understand what had entered his mind. The queen knelt down and apologized to her husband for the evil she had done to him, for she never wanted to betray him, and he should know that even in the afterlife. Now in the present, soon on, in front of the king, said that his head had changed again and that maybe it had something to do with being in the crown, and that he was very grateful to his pet for helping him. Sun Tian Xing also noticed that space had returned to normal. The king continued to kneel and weep loudly as he realized what had happened and that his beloved had actually done it to save him, and that there had been no betrayal in the first place, and he had been wrong from the start. His confidence in a time of peace had led to the kingdom's destruction and his desperation. But what was worst of all was that it was all his fault. Our hero finally realized that they could take a breather. But the other problem was that he had almost no health left, and this was his third mortal wound. But unlike the last battle with the demon, he didn't have any holy water with him, which means he has to destroy the boss and hang the level in ten seconds or he'll die. But the king got up and started to address our hero that he saw that he was in a predicament. An honorable adventurer, he is grateful that he found his crown and helped him find the truth. And now he must do him one last favor, and he must answer his final blow. Sun An realized that he wanted to settle the battle in one blow, and that he had only ten seconds left. But she stood up and took the weapon in her hands and told him that he agreed, and that right now it would be decided with a single attack. And even though his odds were slim, he'd put all his strength into one blow. And as they crossed swords, somehow our hero found himself behind the king's back, and a huge wave of magic began to destroy. But sitting on his knees, Sund An couldn't understand because he couldn't have dodged it. So why is he still unharmed? But turning his head, he saw the king say that his blade was for his favor. And three hundred years ago, his hatred and rage were meaningless and holding out his hand, he asked his beloved Farina if she would join him, and so they were united again in the afterlife, but happy as if they were on earth. And at that moment, the notification system showed that they were now together forever, and all that was left of the king was his crown and the adventurer's words of gratitude for finally giving him peace. And then the notification system began to show that the headless king had been killed, and the players began to regain their hit points. And once everyone was healed early, Sun An said he had raised three levels. Sun Tian Xing ran up to Sun An and started to say that he had killed the king with his last blow, and he was surprised because it was powerful. But our hero replied that even if he had been twice as strong, he would not have been able to stay unharmed after his blow and the king had almost certainly succumbed. And he doesn't know what the crown held, but apparently some very touching and profound story. But suddenly, a notification window appeared in front of the guy's eyes, showing them to choose a reward for defeating the boss. And the first reward was in the spatial rift. The second skill was Soul Strike. And the third was the unique item Eternal Crown, which made a timeless agreement with its wearer increasing all his attributes by 20 and blocking one mortal damage per battle because it was improved from Greedy Crown and its buffs were inherited. When Sun Tian Xing saw you, he was surprised that they had gotten the S-Class hat. But Sun An was surprised that he had gotten it for the first time because it was unexpected especially after the D-grade items. And the fact that it's immune to one deadly blow is like having a chance to make a mistake in every fight. But Sun An suddenly held out his hand with the crown and told his partner to take it because it could save his life at a crucial moment. But Sun Tian Xing said that this time he was much stronger. Besides, the crown was originally his, so naturally he refuses. Hearing this, 
Sun Ann started to suggest that he should choose something from what's available and he hasn't gotten the level 30 ability yet, so he can choose it right now. And after a moment's thought, Sun Tian Xing looked at the notification window and chose the one that suited him best. Because his 10th level tracking skill can capture a target by aiming an arrow at it and combined with the spatial rift it can increase the accuracy of long range shots. Sun An agreed that this sounds good and he has teleportation to control the distance, so spatial rift is not really needed and he can take the hit with souls. And at this point, our hero has gotten a fourth soul strike ability. And this ability is supposed to help influence the human mind controlling abilities. Very rare. But at that moment, Fatty began to feel a strange aura that was weighing down on him. And a strange creature appeared in his head saying that another one of the lucky ones had unlocked the personality card and that the game was getting more and more interesting. But Sun An couldn't understand who was talking to him. But the creature went on to tell him to try harder and one day he'd poke him to see what this game was all about. But Sun An couldn't understand why some ghostly golden image and mystical voice had just appeared in his head. And his head was splitting so badly that Sun Tian Xing ran up to him and couldn't understand what was happening. But Sun Tian Xing kept asking what was happening to her, but he didn't hear anything back. After a few minutes, Sun An replied that everything was fine. It was just that the fight had gone on too long and he was a little tired, but he actually realized that there was probably a bigger story in the game. But for now, they're done and now they have to decide what to do next. Because as it is, it's time for them to get out of this depressing. At the exit, Sun Tianxing held out his hand and told them to come back. And as soon as they shook hands, our hero told him not to bother with names and to call him Sun An as always. And together they began to walk slowly out of the oppressive cave and into the light. But Sun Tian Xing started to turn to Sun and asking Sun An what he remembered and he said that it would only get more dangerous and what he meant. But Sun An replied that there would be an alien invasion and they would follow the road that led to his camp and there he would tell him everything in detail. Elsewhere, near a huge volcano, three characters finally arrived at the site, and one of the guys started to say to replace or what. According to the map, there's an entrance to the Kingdom of the Dead ahead, and they're not going to go any further. But Chisaki started to say that the purpose of their investigation was to find signs of demonic invasion, and they couldn't come back empty-handed, and what's more funny is that they were scared. But still, Chisaki couldn't stand the weaklings and cowards who had never seen a demon in their lives. Even those who weren't demons weren't worthy of being his partner. But at that moment, a huge one appeared in front of them, and they couldn't understand what was going on and if it was made by demons. But Chisaki ordered the boys to keep going. Whatever happens, Vitya doesn't have to find out the truth. But as they climbed the volcano, they started to see that inside were huge eyes. When they looked closely, they didn't realize that the demon invasion was going to happen. But at that moment, the huge eye looked away and noticed the guys peeking at it. And a huge demon girl appeared. And immediately she started telling the deputy that she thought the volcanic rhinoceros had run through here again and that they were tastier than it. The guys jumped up because they saw the real demon in front of them. But the deputy couldn't believe she was here because Dr. Gianni had been here for over 10 days. But the huge eye that was in the volcano began to say that Moloch is one of his apostles to the eight great demons, and she must leave no one alive and let no one ruin his plan. And as soon as she realized this, she began to draw her weapon, because she decided that she would not let anyone pass on the information she had received, and that these people would be his first meal in this world. And as soon as she threw her chains and didn't shackle the two guys, they wouldn't even move. But Chisaki wasted no time in using his shadow leopard skill to attack the demon. The three of us began to surround the demon to attack synchronously from different directions. 
The demon saw this and thought it was funny because it was her first time fighting humans and now they have to show how strong they are. And as soon as she was hit by the shadow leopard, she started laughing loudly because she had never felt pain before and it was a great feeling, she shouted. Chisaki continued to attack with his blade because he didn't want to retreat and he had to overcome his fear right now. If he did that, no opponent would be afraid of him. He had to keep laughing and shouting at Chisaki to keep going and let her feel more pain. But Chisaki noticed that his allies were free of their chains and began to shout quickly for them to leave and tell the others that the demons had already appeared. Meanwhile, he would hold this demon off as long as possible. But the demon started putting all its power into its weapon and telling the guys that they weren't allowed to leave. And as soon as it attacked the guys, Chisaki screamed their names. And after she finished them off, she told Chisaki that the games were over and their meat had to be cut down. Now it's his turn and he'll be part of her. But suddenly she saw that this guy had the courage to fight back. Well, as soon as he threw a few punches who didn't notice, her chain started to wrap around his arms. And then the demon pulled his chain, damaged Chisaki's arm, and he fell to the ground. When he looked at his arm, he realized it was torn. But when he looked up, he heard the demon say that humans have very fragile bodies and his pain was unbearable and he knew it would be like this. And now he had to stop fighting and make her eat him. But Chisaki knew he didn't disgust her, only he never liked his own weakness. And when his brother bullied him and said he was a resentful coward, and when he didn't have the courage to stand up to him, and after the game came out, he got a shadow dancer class and he was finally able to fight back. Used to endure and couldn't muster the courage to say no, but this time he wouldn't run away. He's got the pride and courage of a man. But the demoness shouted that he was very interesting and that she was making a whole meal out of him and would enjoy it to the full. As he approached him, he began to activate his shadow dancer ability. And in an instant, he was behind the demon's back to deliver a fatal blow. But the demon reacted quickly and turned around and started beating him with her chain. But it wasn't enough to stop him. He was ready to fight to the death. And after teleporting a few more times, he still managed to hit her behind her back. But his wounds were too severe and he fell to the ground. He realized with a sigh that his yoga assignment was over, and now it was up to the guild's head. For his shadow bird must fly from this realm of the dead and bring everyone here. But the demon standing over him began to use their body regeneration to tell him that this is the limit of man for she had promised her master that no information about them would get out and that the human world was useless. They just had to wait for the demon army to defeat them. In another place, our hero was moving with his teleportation skill to his camp and Sun Tian Xing, who was flying with him, started asking what he had just told him. Is it really true and a demon invasion is about to take place? Our hero replied that everything was right because he had once fought a real demon. After realizing this, Sun Tian Xing decided that they should hurry up with the preparations and recruit strong players, all of whom should unite and overcome the difficulties together. But Sun An told him that he was right. That's what his guild is all about. And after a moment, they arrived at the site. The guys on the tower started shouting that the leader had finally returned to camp and that all must now gather at the gate and open it, greeted their leader. And immediately the gate slid open, and Sun An and his new partner began to walk in. But as soon as they got inside, Sun An immediately started to notice the sign that said that this camp had a patrol unit for arming and treating. What he didn't expect was that the guys had reinforced the gates and built buildings inside, and that the camp had weapons and patrol treatment departments, and that Sun Ann had only been gone for a few days and things had already changed. But at that moment, all the boys started screaming for the head who had finally returned to the camp. Fung ran up to him and started asking who was the guy who came with him. But Sanan waved his hand, saying that a lot of things had happened and he would tell them later, 
but he was actually pleased that they hadn't seen each other for a few days, and they were so warm to him. But at that moment, Zai Jun showed up with tears in her eyes. But as soon as our hero smilingly greeted her, who didn't realize how she quickly ran up to him and started hugging him, and telling him he was a fool and why he hadn't contacted them all these days and where he'd gone and if he realized how worried they were. And Sun Yue also started asking our game what the hell was going on with the recent time reversion. Is it really his doing? Because he's usually the one who's connected to the bugs in the game. But Sun An started to explain that it was an unforeseen circumstance, but everything was resolved safely. Zai Jun calmed down and asked him not to disappear for too long. Their other crayfish started to take pictures of them, because they knew for a long time that these two would be together sooner or later, and love comedies and such things are what girls like most. But suddenly Zai Jun turned her head and started asking who was that guy standing next to him. Sun An started to introduce them officially a guy named Sun Tianxing, who is the strongest shooter in the guild. And today he's joining their guild to fight the future demon invasion. And the wind is only 13 days away from the demon invasion. And a little while later, the guy started to ask the head to look at the materials they had collected over the past few days and cleaned up the area of monsters. But the Feng girl started to tell the guy that he was lazy when it came to killing monsters and that he was lazy when it came to taking credit. Sun An went to the gold and was surprised that it was a lot and that the guys had done a good job. But now Feng should try to make a magic weapon out of the loot. But she said she'd thought of that too, but the success rate. And even with the blessing of his four-leaf clover, it doesn't go above 0.1%. And if they had a bunch more of them, it would be fine. But she also remembered that son Anne owed her for the last time. But at that moment, he thought that you can't waste materials for a small chance of success. And some of them are quite expensive and there must be a way to make money quickly. And then he remembered that just the other day, a merchant had given him a VIP card and told him that when he went to a trading alliance, he could get perks and excellent service and he took out a gold card and told the guys that he had to go to the Trade Alliance Zone A. And at the same time, in that very same Trade Union Zone, a in one of the VIP lounges, a girl with a glass of wine started asking her ward if he was lying. Perry with glasses continued to say that, just like he said in that mine where you can get unlimited resources, there is a problem inside, there is a hidden S-level dungeon, but the girl didn't care about the process of the result because she cared about something else. That he admits defeat in the crystal mine. But the guy with the glasses keeps shouting that it's all the boy's fault and the head should listen to him. If it wasn't for him, everything would be different. But at that moment, the other guy punches the man in the face with all his might and said that even the deputy head dare not come within five meters of her. But the girl ordered her ward to leave him alone. After all, he'd done his part and this time she'd spare him. And the boy suddenly out of the blue shouted that he was obeying his mistress. But the girl went on to say that, in addition, when he discovered the endless source of crystals, she guessed that the difficulty could not be avoided. But the beaten guy would start to give the girl up for her favor and he'd lay down his life for her and do anything she wanted. But the girl said she was grateful to him, too, for helping her catch the big fish. But the guy with the glasses couldn't understand what she meant. But then the guy realized that since Sun An knows so much about the mine, he's the one who's running the game from behind the scenes. And when she gets him, she can get closer to finding out what the game is really about. But in the meantime, our hero has made his way to Area A. One of the players starts telling the others that now is the time to show them the existence of miracles. Sun Tenxing, who was with Sun An, said that she didn't know that Zone A was such a festive town. Our hero began to explain that when the new world was designed, Zone A was created as a place where players could trade freely, so naturally it was very lively. 
Feng also didn't understand why that fatty son Yue didn't go with them. But Sun An didn't understand either because he invited him. But he refused. Zai Jun began to explain that since they were already here, they could split up and go about their business, because it was rare to have time to go shopping and that they could buy whatever they liked, but the rich head would reimburse them. And as soon as they left the guys, they started talking about how they were happy to go shopping after a long time and they wanted to buy some new clothes and cosmetics. But Sun An hadn't called them to use his wallet. A little later, Sun Tianxing ordered a strawberry ice cream and told the clerk that the man behind him would pay for it. But Sun An heard that and couldn't understand if he had joined the Dharmods and why they were all like that. They didn't come to Zone A for a tour. But Sun Tianxing smiled and couldn't understand if it was impossible to combine the two. Sun An thought that there had been a lot of things going on lately and everyone's nerves were on edge, so they should relax and have fun. Sun An hugged his partner and started telling him that if they needed to have fun, they should visit a place. And a little while later, the girl at the front desk started greeting the players who had come to visit. And as she led them to the main entrance, she told them to go ahead and make themselves at home. Sun Tian Xing didn't expect him to bring him to the casino and that he was a draftsman. But Sun An started to reply that he'd only seen casinos in movies and TV shows and had never been to one. But as they were walking further away, they were stopped by some guy with glasses and started saying that they could play here and that there was a VIP room upstairs that they weren't allowed to go to. But Sun An took out his gold card and showed it to the guard. As soon as they saw it, they were surprised that this card is black gold, certified by the trade union, and can only be obtained with a deposit of over 100 million. And then they started worshipping our hero and his comrade and said they could go up and they would show them the way. Sun An, with a smile on his face, started telling his comrade that they are here for this. The other guy starts talking about the rules and they have to put on their masks. Because the guilds have so many materials that their total sale amount is so high that a simple person can't afford to sell them. And Sun An came here to find a suitable buyer. But Sun An replied that not only him but also a suitable seller. Upstairs there was a game where one of the players said that the maximum bet here was 500000 and the new girl who had just made a profit must play. Sun An replied that he agreed. They'll play now with all the money they have. And a few minutes later, the guy in the center of the table said 21 points and the dealer won. The player who was playing with our hero started laughing loudly and tell him that he lost again and his loss is already 10 million and is he sure he wants to continue? Sun Tian Xing behind him started telling Sun An that the guy was weird. But Sun An said that they continue because why should he stop since it's such a small amount for him doesn't count. The player sitting across from our hero waved his hands and said he was happy to hear that and why don't they increase the stakes to make it more fun? But putting his hand on Sun An's shoulder, Sun Tian Xing asked if he'd lost his mind and why keep competing with him. But the guy sitting over against our hero started to say that at first sight he realized that he was not a card player, but a real player. But Sun An couldn't understand why. But he went on to say that even though he's a businessman, he knows that in this game the most important thing is power, and that no matter how much money he has in the face of absolute power, everything is ephemeral. That's why he doesn't value money, but his equipment. And at that moment, our hero realized that he had his eye on his weapon, to which the man replied that it was because he was familiar with the weapon system that he could tell that his blade was at least A-class and could be upgraded even further. The value of such a weapon is not measured in money. And suddenly he started to offer our hero a pairing. But Sun As told him that if he wanted him to bet the bone blade, he had to bet an equally valuable item in return. And the man started to take out of his pocket an item because he liked his weapon and because he had an item that could repower it. And it's the Star Spirit Stone, the material for upgrading equipment to S-Class on the entire continent, 
he's the only one who has it. But as soon as Sun Tian Xing saw this rare item and Sun An realized why he was so taken with his bone blade. The man said it was valuable enough to be compared to his weapon. And at that moment, Sun An agreed that they would play another game. But suddenly a girl came into the room saying she thought it was a bad time and that Mr. Sun An already had an opponent. But the man couldn't understand why the head of Liu Xu had come here. Sun Tian Xing recognized this girl as the head of the Sky Gifts, but he didn't like what he met her very much. And at that moment, the guy with the glasses saw the two players he'd met in the cave recently. The head of Liu Xu noticed this and started asking the glasses guy what was wrong. But the guy with the glasses started to say that it was the two who had trashed their endless mind. But Sun Tian Xing heard the words and started yelling at the guy with the glasses. How dare he mention it because their union's greed had killed so many innocent miners. Lu Xiu's head looked at the guys and realized that it was really them and how quickly they had met each other. Sun An was as angry as his partner and decided that today they would have to settle the score with the union. But suddenly two guards stood in front of Liu Xu's head and said that no one would dare approach the head. But the head of Liu Xu started to calm her boys down and ask them to step aside. The guards thought it was dangerous and continued to stand in the same place. But then the head of Liu Xu began to raise her hand and address our hero that she had learned about two heroes who had safely escaped from a high-level dungeon and they could not be ordinary people. And on behalf of the Gifts of Heaven Alliance, she would like to bow and express regret for the unfortunate insult and inconvenience caused to them. Seeing this, Sun An started to tell Sun Tianxin that they would observe for the time being because this is not a good place to fight. The head of Liu Xu put her hand on her chest and told them that if they wanted compensation from them, just say so, because she could afford it. But the guy sitting at the other end of the table suddenly burst out shouting that they were his guests and they had a very important party and she could talk to them later. Lu Xu's head could see what kind of important party it was since he'd put his star spirit gem. But the man continued to get angry and shouted that it was none of her business and he was asking her and her men to leave. But she just kept smiling strangely and pulling an hourglass out of her purse. And that's when Fung came through the door. Medina couldn't understand what had happened. They came as soon as they heard from him and they hadn't even had time to wash off their makeup. But Sun An started to smile because he was glad they were on time. The guy at the other end of the table was still angry about the uninvited guests coming in. And now he didn't know if they were going to keep playing or not. Fung looked at the gambling table and couldn't quite understand if she was going to gamble too. But Sun An got up from the table and said that these two were his gods of bad luck and they would not give up gambling. Lu Xiu's head suddenly started laughing because the game was getting more and more interesting for her. But the guy at the other end of the table suddenly slapped his palms on the table and said that since everyone was gathered, the three of them would make bets that would satisfy the others. And to keep the rules as simple as possible, they'd just play one game and they'll roll the dice. Whoever rolls the highest number will take it all. The head of Liu Xu heard this and started telling him that he was very confident and she agreed to the condition. But at that moment, Sun An raised his hand and said he didn't care about the conditions. But there was one request. The head of Liu Xu and that guy were excited about his request. Sun An sat Feng down at the table and asked her to play for him. But Feng realized why he called her and started waving her hand that it wasn't good. The other guys couldn't understand why he put his weapon on the line and whether he should let someone else play in his place. But Sun An said that at times like this, you should trust in the strength of your comrades. And putting his hand on the girl's head, he said he wouldn't push her and wouldn't blame her if she lost. But Feng was very touched that he really trusted her so much. But he handed her a bottle of water and told her to drink it just in case. 
But as soon as she hesitated, he opened her mouth and started pouring the liquid inside, telling her not to be shy and to drink more. But the girl didn't know that there was no kindness in him, and he had to give her back her warm feelings for him. And as soon as everyone was ready, they decided to start the game. The staff who came to the table started to make sure everything was in order. And the man started throwing, first saying that they didn't know that his victory was predetermined from the beginning. But also a man with glasses came up to the head of Liu Xu and whispered in his ear that the head of Wu Liang is the opposite of virtue. But the head of Liu Xu waved her hand and said there was no need to examine him. She trusts everyone. Sun An also replied that they had no questions, but in fact Feng sensed some kind of trick. And when everyone agreed, the man said they would start and they could get ready for the shot. Taking their glasses, they began to twist them in different directions. The head of Wu Liang was smiling strangely, thinking that his ability as a businessman was tailor-made for gambling. And all he had to do was win this game and he'd be out of the life of crime for three months. And as soon as he slammed the bowl on the table, his activation began. Because he realized that victory was a foregone conclusion, the head of Liu Xu was also ready to open the bowl and show everyone her dice. The last person left was Feng because she didn't know what to do because she felt that the oil didn't work. But Sun An smilingly told her not to panic and to think about her ability. And as soon as everyone was ready, the man at the edge of the table said they could open it. But the Fung girl suddenly ran straight at him, shouting for him to wait. And taking hold of his bowl, she started asking the guy if he wasn't cheating playing these games with them. But the man couldn't understand the joke and she couldn't admit defeat. And as soon as her skill kicked in, she got down on her knees and started apologizing to him because she was really joking. As soon as she sat back down, the head of Liu Xu opened the first one and said that they had done what they could and the rest would be left to the goddess of luck to decide and everyone should agree to the lose-lose-pay approach. Liu Xu looked at her bones and realized that luck had turned against her today. The men behind her were horrified that she was losing. But the man on the other side of the table started laughing loudly because he realized that it looked like luck had turned against him. And he was going to win. But as soon as he picked up the box, he was surprised at what he saw because he couldn't believe he had two out of three dice. But as he lifted his head, he heard Fang laughing and saying how he could beat her without one dice. And at that moment, she picked up the box and counted and realized she had won. But the man jumped up and started accusing her of pulling the dice trick. Finn started to ask him if he could accuse without proof and if he couldn't admit defeat. But he kept shouting that obviously the victory must be his, and he demanded a search of everyone present. But at that time our hero had already broken the cube Fung had stolen for him. The head of Liu Xu started to ask the man that everyone had agreed to the rules and was not too petty but now angry. But he started pointing his finger at her and accusing her of being with them. But she got up from her chair and told him not to be silly, because she meant that in gambling you have to admit defeat and he didn't want the casino to blacklist him. But he had to leave and he said that sooner or later he'd have his revenge on them all. Fung was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief as she realized it was all over. The head of Liu Xu approached our hero and started to congratulate him on his huge winnings. But he started to ask her if she had given in on purpose or for a purpose. She didn't answer that question. She just asked Sun An. Is it true that he's a new world developer responsible for fixing bugs? and had been using it since day one to get two classes. But he couldn't understand how she knew and how she recognized who Sun An was. But she went on to say that after that he was always using bugs to his advantage and wishing for a normal player's level of equipment and riches he could get easily. And he's exactly what she's been looking for. He's a real player. And she's congratulating him now and he's got the biggest winnings of all. And as they started to turn around and leave, the guy standing next to her head started asking her if she'd let them get away with it. 
but she just said she didn't expect a man as short-sighted as him to realize one day he'd see that this investment of his would do them a lot of good. But still, this guy couldn't realize that this hourglass was a valuable object they spent a billion on, and she gave it to the boys for free. But she said that a valuable object in the right hands would be even more valuable, and he'd be a better handler of the hourglass than she was. Zaijun went outside and started to ask Sun An that this woman knew a lot about his past, and maybe she was up to something. After all, they had destroyed the inexhaustible mines of the Sky Gift Union, and she must want revenge. But our hero knew she had no good intentions, but since she wouldn't fight with them, they wouldn't start a conflict and talk about it when they got out of here. And a little later, they went to the merchant and soon on about buying 20 B-class items and 100 D-class items for a total of 120 million. The merchant told him they had a deal, and after picking up many bags of gold coins, he realized it was a pity that the greedy crown effect only works when trading with NPCs, otherwise he would have earned another 20 million. But as he approached the merchant, he started whispering in his ear that he had a couple more great deals at a big discount and if he wanted to buy. And the first was a sad hat that reduces magic damage by 5%. Ah. The second was an infinity gauntlet that adds 150 points to all attributes. And they say if you pump it to the limit, it'll be as strong as a meteorite. And the last one is a magic-resistant cloak that adds 250 points to magic resistance and can be converted into a high-end item. When the merchant heard that, because to him such equipment was something unbelievable. But in fact, our hero realized that these items were useless for the time being. So he'd rather trade them for star coins, which he would spend on improving skills or equipping guild members. And suddenly the buyer yelled out that he'd take it all. The guys who were behind him started smiling because I didn't realize that son Ann had just fooled a rich simpleton who was easily scammed out of his money. And by now the purse was filled with 560 million gold coins. And our hero realized that if he sold the items one by one, he would probably make more money. But it would take more time, and who knows, the price he paid was not low, at least more than 10% higher than A. Dong. But suddenly he got a notification and couldn't realize who was texting him at this hour. And the person who wrote the message was Jeju, and in the message he asked where he was now because they had to meet and there was an urgent matter, and here were his coordinates where he could find him. Sun An didn't understand why Jeju was in Haidemon, and shouldn't he be in the area to investigate the demon invasion? But what's worse is that he now has a terrible premonition of what might have happened in the K district. The guys behind him started asking Sun In what happened and who just texted him what he was so excited about. But he told them that there was no time to explain I wouldn't talk, how to get back to Hademol. And that's when they started moving with his teleportation skill. And at that moment in the neighborhood of Hadamon's palace, the guys were already inside the mansion, and Nana noticed that the phrase on the wall seemed to tell the dusty past of a princess who fell in love with the ruler of a hostile country. But the boy sitting next to her began to ask if she cared about the murals and if she knew what Jeju was doing now. She replied that a week ago the deputy led a group to the Lunxai district volcano to investigate the truth about the demon invasion, and today was the third day he hadn't been in touch and Jeju decided that the deputy was either in trouble or dead, so their raiding guild went to Hadamon, and the leader is doing a ritual to upgrade his sword, and Jeju has already sent information about the demon invasion to all the powerful players, and they'll be waiting here when they arrive to fight the demon's plans. And the first to arrive was Sun An, and now Jeju is inside doing a ritual to upgrade his divine sword and they'll have to wait a little while since they've been away. He seems to have gotten stronger. And as soon as our hero went inside, one of the guys who was there started yelling to Zai Jun that he hadn't seen her for so long and he missed her to death. Sun An started to ask if something had happened in the K district and what was the status of the monster invasion. 
But the girl rudely told him that he'd find out about it from her head, Jejuya. But Jajui was already behind her back and said that he thought it was right that something had happened in Kay's neighborhood. But the first thing Sun An noticed was that he had upgraded his sword. Gejui went on to explain that if Chi was in trouble, he and his team had gone to investigate the demon invasion and were probably already dead. But Sun An couldn't understand that a deputy could die so easily. Jeju went on to say that as one of the two who fought demons, he must understand what it means, that they met a demon and were brutally killed by it. So time was running out, and a huge army of demons had probably already come to this world. And it turns out his plan was right. They need to abandon the attack and concentrate all their forces and take a defensive position in Hadamon, and he sent out a message to all the strong players with a large army of demons. They must fight together, and that's the only way to win. And now he hopes that he and Zai Jun will join the Raiders' Guild, and in the face of such danger, it's pointless to stay apart. Sun An replied that he was pulling what he had good intentions, but he had to refuse because he no longer fights alone, and that he'd created the Riders' Guild, and he'd created the Zero Guild. Nana couldn't believe that they had started a new guild so quickly. Zaijun started to say that there are already 40, 50 people in the guild, and even though they are not as famous as the Raiders' Guild, they have a very friendly atmosphere. But the guy standing next to her suddenly got upset that she joined the guild. Jeju thought it was unexpected and that he didn't think he would change so much. Sun An said the same thing, that he didn't think he would become stronger. But at that moment, the head of Lu Xu appeared and apologized for disturbing them, and apologized for being late. Sun An turned around and saw that she was the one from the sky, but they didn't understand what she was doing here. Jeju saw that they already knew each other and said he wouldn't introduce them and the head of the union is one of the players he invited. The head of Lu Xu didn't really expect to see Sun An player so soon and she heard from the head of the raiders that the demons were rejected and he was counting on her help. Feng standing behind her started asking what she could do and if she would give the demons money. To which the head of Liu Xu replied that war is a costly business, and she is very naive to think that being a warrior is enough to remove an army of demons. But after she said that, Feng started swearing loudly, and Zai Jun, who was standing next to her, started apologizing to the head, because Feng didn't mean anything bad. The head of Liu Xu turned to our hero and told him that the hourglass she lost to him would be useful to him soon. The hourglass. It's an expensive item, and she spent a billion on it. Sun An. He won't cheat her expectations of him. Sun An immediately realized that she was right. Such a precious sealing object will come in handy when the demons come. But the worst part is that it shows who's sealed there. In other words, if she wanted to harm him, she could have used it on him when she met him. But when Sun An held out his hand... He told the head of Liu Xu that he knew she'd deliberately lost, and since they were both in the ranks against the demons, they could be comrades in arms. But there can be no comradeship between comrades, so she could reveal her true purpose. And she replied that she has a merchant class when she bargains to invest something he, of course, expects to get even more profit in the future. And Sun An. Did he ever think that the demon invasion is Igor's test, and only by passing it can they learn the truth behind it? And she wants to live until she passes the game, because only then she can truly be the winner of this cruel and violent game. But Jeju intervened in the conversation and began to tell the players that now is not the time to suspect each other, and if they fail to pay... They will not pass the demon Astana trials, and they will not have the future they are talking about. But Sun An suddenly asked Jeju that since he invited everyone, he must have a plan and could he tell them more about it. But he opened the map and began to explain that first of all, they had very little information about the demon army, so they would prepare for the worst case scenario. 
and they assume that the demon army is already all assembled. Based on the speed of human travel, it would take about half a month to get from K to A. And with the current strength of the players, trying to stop them is doomed to defeat, so they should just retreat and take a defensive position in Hodaimon, locking the gates of war and setting traps, and that he's called everyone to pool their abilities and form a resistance army. The strongest players will lead the units defending their part of the city wall so that once the demon army reaches them, they can prevent them from finding a break in the defenses, which would lead to the death of all humans. And when it comes to the survival of their kind, there should be no substitute. And they all need to unite as representatives of humanity when he was working at the company he felt he had the potential to be a leader. And Jeju started to tell Zai Jun that he hoped she would help him organize a human resistance army, and he wouldn't lead, but he would help. But Zai Jun suddenly asked Sun An if he had a better plan. Because, like he said, they don't have much information about demons. But he briefly thought about it and realized that he couldn't think of anything, and Zai Jui has always been a strong idealist, which could affect the success of the plan. But at that moment, the head of Liu Chu said that she didn't agree with the plan, and that simple defense would not be enough. And since they had no information about the demon army, they would need volunteers to explore the key area. But suddenly Jeju thought of something he hadn't thought of before, but Sha Chi. Even if they don't come back with useful information, at least by sacrificing a small number of people they will know the speed of the demons, which is what the head of Lu Xu decided. Well, our hero didn't like the fact that she wanted to send people to their doom. But why not? Said the head of the war is only good for the players, but not for the people. But at that moment, Fung lost her temper and started shouting that she was no use at all as a peddler and that she should be sent as cannon fodder. Jeju realized that the atmosphere was heating up and asked our hero what he thought of the head's proposal, and he replied that although he doesn't approve of what she said, but if we only defend ourselves, it's unlikely that we'll be able to deal with the invasion, and it became clear to Jeju that even Chisaki was dead, so we couldn't send unarmed men to scout and needed a strong and trustworthy player. So he said he would go to the K area by himself but his men thought it was wrong. He's a resistance organizer and a top-level player. He can't take that risk and maybe they'll go in his place. If he makes a slight mistake, the whole operation will be a failure. But Jeju said that because he's the highest-level player, he has a better chance of getting information. If anyone should be sacrificed, let it be him. But our hero realized that he can't risk Jeju's life like that. He's the only one who can unite all the players, and we have to find a way to stop him. But Jeju's subordinate suddenly asked him to let him escort him. If they were to die, they would have to die together. But Jeju forbade him because Chisaki had died because of his carelessness, and how could he send his men to take risks again? Sun An thought about what Liu Xu had said without information about the demon army. I could not win the war, and moreover, if Jeju was willing to sacrifice himself, how could he care only about his own interests? Not thinking long, Sun An asked him to let him go, because he's thinking about what the demons are doing. But Zai Jun suddenly moved and started to talk to Sun An about how he promised her that he wouldn't go alone anymore and what would happen to their guild if he died. But the head of Liu Xu started to tell our hero that she didn't give him the hourglass to be a hero. But he replied that he wasn't a hero. But Jeju was right to say that they needed a strong player they could trust. And there's no one else here with the ability to travel great distances like him. If there's anyone in this world who can survive being surrounded by demons, it's him. At this time, one of the demons came to his lord about his summons, and the whole army of demons had already gathered, and the demoness started to say that for his sake, they would level the whole continent. The demon lord began to tell his apostle that even though the army was assembled, he still had some unfinished business, and what he has in mind is the birth of devils. And unlike the creation of the army, 
the birth of the eight devils is necessarily accompanied by the death of life, and only when he has exterminated all living things on the continent will he be able to take his true form, and his apostle suddenly suggested that he let him accomplish this task. For she had absorbed that player and gained the new ability of a shadow leopard. And each of the eight devils has its own personal ability, and now the ability of milk is gluttony, and everyone it consumes becomes a part of it. But the demon lord also said that he doesn't need her now. He needs a mass murderer. And the demon lord needed her power of avarice more. And as soon as she appeared, another demon started telling her she was a vile viper. But she crawled behind her back and started saying that when a bird attacks a poisonous snake, the snake eventually swallows it. But the other demon didn't like that and she got angry. A new conversation intervened with the demon DC who said that now was not the time to argue and that Bodus had to listen to his orders. She's going to lead an army of thousands to where the humans live, making the land barren along the way. And when she heard his order, she said she would obey it. Elsewhere, our hero began to create an amalgamation of his ultimate weapon, and the guys couldn't understand what was happening because the earth was shaking like an earthquake. But Jeju said that this is how heaven and earth reacts to the creation of C-class weapons, and the boys were surprised that someone other than him had gotten such a weapon, and if that person was Sun An. Because the birth of an S-class weapon, finally the Star Spirit Stone had been utilized to its full potential, said the head of Liu Xu watching this miracle. Still, she hoped that Sun An would use the hourglass wisely. And at that moment, he finally finished the preparation to unite and obtain his S-class weapon. And once it was successfully completed, he did get it, holding this blade that would kill any demon with a single blow. But Sun An also realized that his every skill had been upgraded by one level, and there was a new one called Perception, which would come in handy when he was investigating the demon invasion. But then Zai Jun and Sun Yue ran up to him. But Sun An started telling them that he was glad they all came and they should also see that he had upgraded his bone blade to S-class. And as soon as Sun Yue saw this, your expression changed. Because Zai Jun had already told him what had happened and he started asking him if he was crazy and why he was going to investigate the demon invasion in the key district alone. The other guys didn't understand why the guild would take any unnecessary risks in the guild's mind. After all, they had talked it over and were against him going there. If something happened to him, what would happen to the guild? Sun Tian Xing, who was standing nearby, started to suggest to Sun An Yu that he could go with him and help him in some way. But Sun Ye couldn't calm down because he didn't understand how he could be so free especially when he was the head of the guild. But Sun An listened to everyone and thought that he didn't expect them all to come to change his mind and that he didn't realize he was surrounded by so many people who cared about him. But then he decided to take Sun Yu Yue by the hand and tell them that he was very grateful for their concern. However, the possibilities and dangers of this care are not comparable to any of the past quests, and if they go with him, he will not be able to teleport as fast and will be distracted during the fight. Sun Yu Yue couldn't understand what he was saying. Did he mean to say that they were all a burden to him? They've been through so much together and he wants to undo all their past efforts. But Sun An told them all that they're not a burden in any way and that he doesn't deny their efforts because he's willing to risk it to protect them. But unfortunately, this time no one would go with him no matter what they said, and no matter how much the guys begged him, he insisted on going alone, because he'd made up his mind beforehand, and if they thought he was their leader, they wouldn't follow him. They had to stay in Hadamon and train without respite to prepare for the demon invasion. And it's not a request, he said. It's his orders as guild leader. But suddenly, Sun Yu Yue decided to ask him if he thought it was a good idea because the last time he met the demon, he had Jeju and them with him, and now he'll be alone. But he replied that it's all right, 
but he's gotten much stronger than before. And now he promises them that he won't lose to the demon again and he'll come back alive. And as soon as he started to activate his teleportation skill, he found himself a moment later in the K region of the Lunxi Mountains. As he looked around, he couldn't understand why the earth had become so barren. But at that moment, he noticed something strange and immediately drew his blade, asking who was hiding here. And in the distance, he saw a group of people sitting around doing something suspicious. And then he realized the fact that his bone blade didn't react, which means they weren't demons. But he felt something strange because they had unusual bodies. And yet he decided to ask again what they were doing here. And as soon as one of them turned around, our hero saw that he had colors, and they didn't look like humans. They looked like undead people, and as soon as those creatures turned around and started pouncing on him. Yeah, it's definitely a demonic trick to lure him in. But at that moment he realized there was nothing he could do, and he had to calm them down first, and then he'd think about what could have happened. And using his black smoke skill, our hero jumped into the air and started using the skill. And when he was behind them, he started pulling out his bone blade and ordered the last guy not to move and said, what are they and what's going on here? But suddenly that guy started to turn his head and our hero couldn't understand why the black smoke didn't affect him. But soon he realized that they weren't human and that's the same reason his skill didn't work on them and with a swing of his bone blade, he took out that guy. And when he saw the others start running at him, our hero got ready. And with his demonic execution, he started attacking them with air magic. And after a few seconds, they fell to the ground and stopped moving. But soon An couldn't understand what had happened, and probably the demon had made these people look like zombies. But there's another fact that he's never seen demons face to face. His intuition tells him that there's something extremely horrible among these mountains and that the demons must have already descended from the summit. And just then, one of the ordinary people starts begging for mercy from the demon who caught him. But the demon in the form of a snake who grabbed the guy started to say that people are very fragile and when their lives are in danger, they only ask for mercy but don't try to do anything else. But she also told him not to worry and that even though his life as a human being was over, she was giving him another. And now he could meet his new race. But he kept yelling at her not to do it. But it was all in vain because she had already bitten his neck. And then he fell to the ground and started to turn into something else. But at the same moment he got up and started to feel like a different creature and his eyes turned bright green. And he got up and started looking at the other guys who were tied up in the tent, but the guys noticed him and started telling him to stay away from them. But it was too late. He started running at them with all his might. But right after that, the demon friend thought that something strange was going on, and someone had destroyed her wards who were near the Lord. But at this time, Sun An realized that while his bone blade was not signaling that the demons were near, and since he was already here, he would climb to the top and look around. But with incredible speed, a demon suddenly appeared behind him. And Sun An also sensed it and turned around and saw that it was a real demon. And her name is Baudis. She is one of the eight devils. She is the power of avarice. She has the ability to turn all creatures, including humans, into a different species that will obey her. Sun Anya got a familiar feeling because she's just like a demon dragon. Bodis immediately began to ask how a man like him bypassed her intelligence and got here alone. And after they came down from the mountains within a radius of 50 kilometers, not a single living creature could hide from her. And why did he appear here? But our hero wondered, for it was no surprise to him that the land had become barren and it was the work of an army of demons. And he drew his blade and pointed it at the demon, telling her he saw no point in talking to her, because if she's a demon, she must be killed and they're enemies. But Bhatti suddenly started summoning a huge green ball and saying that he was ignorant and had the nerve to provoke her great Bhattis, and now he would feel the hopelessness of his scheme and then die. 
But as soon as she launched her attack, our hero realized that her long-range attack is similar to the demonic dragon's laser bomb. Even the attack styles are the same. Well, as soon as our hero used his black smoke skill, Botus stopped seeing everything. But our hero was already at her back. And Botus realized that this guy was really fast. And as soon as his attack worked, she realized that her wound started to tear from the sharp pain. Sunan started to tell her with a smile on his face that his bone blade was made to fight fierce demons like her. But then Botus went berserk and turned around and hit our hero with her huge tail. He flew off to the side and realized that she had a terrifying ability to heal herself. And he couldn't see the panel with her attributes, so there was no way to deal lethal damage to the demon. But at that moment she began to prepare for battle. Even though our hero realized that the fight had just begun, she was far more oppressive than the demon dragon he had fought earlier. But now that the black smoke blocked her view, he could teleport wherever he wanted. But at that moment he changed his mind because he didn't know if it was worth retreating when the battle was just beginning. And the head of Liu Xu was right to say that with the information they have now about the demons, they can't beat them. And since he'd already promised he'd have to do some scouting before he came back, he'd have to deal with her. And at that moment, the demon Botus couldn't understand what had happened, because she noticed that the guy's energy was suddenly gone. And immediately she started to go looking for him, because she realized that he couldn't have gotten far and all her subordinates had to find him and get him even from under the earth. And at the same moment, all her subjects began to carry out her orders in action. Soon An realized that their boss was really one of the eight devils. And they looked like the people she turned into zombies. And from what she said, he killed her minions, and she has a special ability to turn people. And if she turns everyone, they'll be facing something much worse than her demonic invasion. And if that's the case, then all the more reason for him to stay and finish her off. And as soon as he drank the potion to restore his little regeneration, he started to appear behind her back. And at the same moment, he pulled out his magic pistol to realize all the mana essences stored in his body. After firing a few shots, he finally said that all that would be left of her would be ashes. And no matter how great her self-healing was, she should have died from such a powerful blow. But suddenly, something went wrong. He realized that the sight of those eyes made him uncomfortable because she started to recover very quickly and screamed that he had finally pissed her off and if she hadn't absorbed enough life energy before, she might have died. Sun and well, she recovered very quickly and he couldn't kill her with one blow. Bordis kept yelling at him to listen to her carefully and the eight devils come from absorbed life energy which means that as long as her words are alive, she can be reborn indefinitely. But as soon as she was done, our hero realized that she was taking their flesh and blood and regenerating from it. And now she's ready to strike again. He couldn't realize that since the dead devil could be reborn, there was no point in continuing the battle. And he needs to get out of here, and then he'll figure out how to proceed. Bodice immediately shouted at him not to think of running away again because her servants would attack him and tear him to shreds. But Sunan realized that he had already used the infinite zone and the black smoke magic weapon was still recharging. But at that moment he jumped aside and cried out to the demon that she was very desperate to attack her servants too. But at that moment he couldn't imagine that a great danger was lurking over his head and all because another demon had appeared and started attacking him with a huge log. Bodus went on to say that while he was being attacked from all sides, he couldn't strike again with that strange surprise attack. She would recreate her servants as soon as she dealt with him. But suddenly our hero realized that the situation was now very bad for him, and he immediately began to use his teleportation. And as soon as he teleported to another place, he realized that he was lucky because at the last moment teleportation finished recharging and this blow took away half of his health. Bodus, smiling fearfully, started to ask him what's wrong 
and if he's still waiting for the moment for a surprise attack and then first he has to kill her demon and hearing. But son Anne realized that if he continued like this, he would be in a dead end if there was no other way out. And now he had to think hard because there must be a solution to the unused bug that could turn the tide of the battle. Bodus at the same moment started ordering her servants not to give him even a chance to attack. But our hero realized he couldn't fight them off again. And these barren lands don't have enough conditions to activate the blessing of the forest. But he has the ability of a creation merchant, and he used it to spend ice blocks that made a protective barrier around him. But Bodus kept shouting for her servants to keep attacking. No matter how many of them died, they had to deal with him. And they began to do her bidding, surrounding son Anya on all sides. But he started using his incredible skill of demonic execution and killed several demons with a single blow. But right after that, there was a huge explosion that threw Sun on a side. And he realized it was his, but he was surprised that it was a very powerful laser bomb. Bodus, who attacked him, realized that he was too fast and dodgy like a creeper. She also realized that he had a special attack against demons. If she doesn't hold back and recklessly approaches him, she's afraid she might walk into a trap. At the same time, her subjects continued to attack son Anne, but he decided to use his inventory again. And as soon as he pulled out an earth briquette, he used it to create a huge and earthy mega tower because he could use the merchant's ability to constantly increase the range of the battle. But this way, he would only hold the position he had and he has to spend money and resources to build it. And no matter how rich he is, he can't spend much. And now he has to find the right opportunity to get in and finish them off. But it didn't take him long to jump off the tower and use his black smoke, which caused all the demons in his range to lose their sight. And he started attacking them and provoking them by saying that they didn't have the courage to stand up to a mere man. And at that rate, he could kill all her minions. But she clutched her contribution and told him not to hope that she didn't understand what he had in mind and that she wouldn't fall for his tricks again. And raising her hand, she began to order Arnold, her son, to come out. And at the same moment, her children appeared behind her back, and she turned around and started giving them her power, saying that as leaders of the army they were superior to ordinary demons in characteristics, but she would add unique powers to them, and they would become her minions, but still retain the demon's influence. And as soon as they were reborn, they smiled fearfully as they realized that they had great power in their hands. Sun Anne continued to fight against the ordinary demons and realized that there was no end in sight. He had to come up with some other plan, but at that moment something strange happened behind his back that started to catch his attention. And as soon as the smoke cleared, he saw a huge demon flying at him, trying to kill him with a single blow. But as soon as Soon Anne blocked its blow, he felt its full power. So he jumped back and used his teleport to break the distance. But it wasn't as easy as he thought, because the demon grabbed his leg. Sun An couldn't believe his own eyes that the big guy could keep up with his teleportation speed. But at the same moment, Arnold slammed Sun On to the ground with all his might, which caused him to feel a tremendous amount of pain in his body. But after that, Arnold decided to take him out with a powerful punch. But luckily, Sun An's analogy of unwavering loyalty worked. This eternal crown makes an out-of-time agreement with its wearer, increasing all of his attributes by 20 and blocking the death blow in every battle. And as soon as he stood up, he realized this was his chance to counterattack. And with his bone blade, he began to fly at great speed towards Arnold, who was standing opposite him. Because he was lucky that the Eternal Crown had blocked the death blow. And now, it was his turn to attack. As he leapt toward him, he began to attack him from different directions. But it wasn't that simple, for Arnold began to regenerate his limbs and swung with all his might at Sun'an, causing him to fly away. 
Sun An still couldn't understand why he was regenerating so fast and why his demon hunter's punch didn't work. But running up to him again, he started attacking him with his demonic execution skill. And as soon as the notification system showed that 600 physical damage had been dealt and the demon hunter was activated, at the same moment the notification system showed that the demon hunter had lost its effectiveness. Sun An thought about the fact that it was obviously a demon, but why it was not recognized or if it was not a demon but a mutant. But at that moment, a loud laughter sounded behind him. When Sun An heard it, he couldn't understand when she was behind him and his demonic bone blade sense didn't work. And as soon as she moved from her seat, she immediately began to attack our hero in the back. But he teleported away and realized that he had escaped serious injury. But she still managed to wound him several times and the notification system showed that he had been poisoned and that his eyes were blurry and that his arms and legs weren't listening and it was probably some kind of paralyzing poison. But at that moment, Bodis appeared to be watching the battle from the sidelines, but she also told her minions that they had done a good job and that Cena's poison was enough to kill a hundred elephants. Well, just in case, she ordered her henchman Arnold to finish him off. And as soon as he heard the order, he moved to Sun Anyu's side. And as he swung, he was ready to finish him off right there. But suddenly some guy appeared in front of him and blocked his attack and turned around and started asking Sun An if he was okay. Another demon, Cena, noticed this and at the same moment moved behind the guy to finish him off. But as soon as she swung, the guy's partner appeared behind her and started to stab her. And then the girl said stealth wasn't her specialty. But the same demon immediately turned around and started fending off the girl's blows and tell her they're nasty people and she'll skin them. But the guy who had just fought off the attack started yelling for them to attack together and destroy the demon army. And as soon as he spoke, he tossed Arnold aside with his huge sword. And the other players in his guild started attacking the demons. The demons also couldn't understand where such a huge crowd of people were coming from. But the players kept shouting that no one should stop. They could destroy all the demons and that they were from the coolest guild in Dotan. Sun An raised his head and thought that he didn't expect help to come at all and that where did all these people come from? And half an hour ago, a guy sitting on earth started telling his partner that he felt uncomfortable here and that the air had a disgusting stench. The girl behind him started asking him if he had heard from Jeju because it was obvious that the invasion had taken place and it was very likely that the demons had descended here. The other guild members standing nearby began to tell their head that they were not feeling well and were feeling very nauseous and a little dizzy and wanted to get out of here and then come back and explore. But their head turned around and started yelling at them that they'd never seen demons before and they were already scared of their guild members' fortitude. But the guys started to reply that it's not about fear and that they should make a strategic retreat and that the head didn't say that when faced with danger you shouldn't immediately show your strength if you can't win. You should run away. There's no shame in it. And revenge should wait. But their head replied that if he joins Jeju, how can he show his face in public after he swore to take his first place among the players and he doesn't want to serve anyone and become the best boss of all? But suddenly the girl starts telling him that someone's coming. He pulled out his huge sword and asked her if it was a demon or a human. But it wasn't clear to her yet, but judging by the energy. He's extremely strong and the guy was Sun An, who they didn't know yet. But suddenly the head ordered everyone to hide and watch for a while. Turned his head around and the head started telling his partner to use the skill. And as soon as she realized that she started telling all the guys to group up because she was about to apply the unprecedented shadow zone. And in the distance they started to hear Sun Ann's words saying that why the earth here has become like this, it's completely barren, and they realized that he didn't look like a demon at all, and this man, 
but still they would wait and not show themselves. But then they saw the demons who started telling Sun Anyu that he had killed all her minions. And as soon as they started fighting, the guild leader noticed that Sun An had a very good punch and unusual strength. The girl also noticed that he might very well be able to defeat the demon. And the demon kept shouting that it was a pity if it hadn't absorbed enough life energy before and it could have destroyed her. The guy noticed that the situation was getting really bad that he couldn't kill the demon and now there might be more trouble. Then they started to see that she started to summon her demon Cena and Arnold's sons, and the guy couldn't understand whether he should rush to Sun Anya's rescue or not. But the girl standing next to him said she thought they were uneven demons. But he decided that if Jeju found out about it, what would be his honor? And he moved to run to Sun Anyu and help him. The girl behind him began to take her head in her hands, for she realized that they must go and that who had insisted on electing such an impulsive head. Presently the head stood opposite Arnold, who was beating his chest angrily, and he decided to ask him if he had decided to make peace with him by force, because he can summon the golden personality of Hercules, which at the same moment awakened and awakening the golden personality gives the destructive power of Hercules for 12 seconds, during which his power is multiplied initial cone X10, maximum X40. Well, as soon as Sun An came to his senses, he saw that this guy has the same golden personality as Jeju, and this guy is also awakened. And now he's confronting the demon and telling him to go ahead because he wants to see how strong he is. But without waiting for the demon to do anything, he started to increase his strength 20 times. But that wasn't enough, so he started to increase his strength 40 times and swung his huge sword. And as soon as the power was built up, he sent an all-you-can to the demon, and there was a huge explosion. Well, as soon as the smoke cleared, he saw that demon lying on the ground unconscious. And he began to tell him that he had observed the demon so he knew how fast they regenerated, but they were inferior in strength. Sunan saw that you can and was surprised because he realized that unlike Jeju, his awakened quality only increases his strength. Another demon who was floating in the air saw that her partner was almost defeated and she was ready to fly to his aid to save him. But she didn't realize she had a girl behind her who was already pulling out her sword and telling her to take care of herself, and turned her head and started screaming that she couldn't see anything because her eyes were hurting so much. But the girl kept attacking, saying she wasn't done yet and she continued to attack her with her unprecedented blinding skills. Sun An watching her noticed that she has very powerful technique, and they have unusual strength, but why he never heard about their guild. And as soon as the guy turned around, he started asking Sun An if he would continue to sit in one place like this, because he is a strong player and surely Jeju gave him the information. That's why he came here. Upon hearing this, our hero started to tell him that his name is Sun An, and he and Jeju are old acquaintances. The guy also replied that he was from the Datong Guild, and his name was Lutin, and he probably hadn't heard of him. And their guild, unlike the Raiders or Star Coins, there are only 16 of them in Dotan. But Sun An really hadn't heard of them. But as far as he knows, there's the famous University of Dothan. And Lu Tong said that's right, not before at the same university. And are they really classmates? Our hero asked. But Luton said don't underestimate them. They all have unique knowledge. And they've known each other for a long time, so they're very close-knit and will never leave each other. <laughs> and from the beginning, they knew that this was not an easy game and every battle was fought to the death. So they never tried to draw attention to themselves so as not to cause trouble, because their goal was to survive and finish the game. As soon as Luton gave his hand to help Sun An up, he said that he realized they had similar goals, and he also wanted all the people he cared for to survive to the end of the game. Luton, I told him that there are not many of them now, so they can't handle an army of many. Does he have a plan to survive this mess? 
Sun An replied that he had a plan, a very good one. When you hunt thieves, you have to start with the leader. On the other side, the guild members were still fighting against the demons, and one of the guys started telling the others to cover each other and stay in formation. Arnold and Hay couldn't fight anymore. They were lying motionless in the same place where they had been destroyed. And they were approached by Bodis, who didn't understand what was wrong with these people. They had managed to destroy her two strongest demons. And that weird guy almost killed her. And now there's another guy and a girl who's also very strong. And they're stronger than the regular players. That's right. She needs to come up with a plan to beat them. And the best plan is to go back and report to her master before she makes a decision. But no sooner had she run a few dozen meters than Luton appeared in front of her and said that she didn't think she could escape. Because with his 160 power boost, he wouldn't let her get away. And after hitting her a few times, she started flailing from side to side, but behind her was another player, who started swinging his sword and attacking her, with an unprecedented shadow attack. And at that very second, Bodis started screaming that she couldn't see anything. But she decided to recover quickly. Luton saw that now that the demon was immobilized, soon Anne should use everything he had. But still they noticed that she was recovering fast and he had to deal with her. Son Anne ran up to her at full speed to thank the guys for buying him some time because he's going to make the most of this opportunity to destroy her, and took out his hourglass and started to activate it. And at that moment, he and the demon moved into the enclosed space, and Bodus couldn't understand what was going on and what those things around her were that gave her a bad feeling. But just as she was about to escape, Sunan told her that she couldn't because the hourglass creates a temporary labyrinth that can't be traversed from the inside but she kept screaming that she couldn't stay here. And as soon as she started attacking the hero with her shadow leopard, he realized that he had already seen the Deputy Rider Guild attack. Outside, the battle continued and Luton felt the terrifying aura approaching. And his senses never failed him. And as soon as he realized things were bad, he immediately started screaming at his partner to get out of there. But another demon had already appeared in front of her who was as strong as the one son Anne had sealed away. And using her skill recognized execution, she started to attack the girl who was closest to her. Lutong noticed this and started shouting at Xion to be vigilant. But it was too late, for the demon grabbed her by the neck and began to lift her into the air. And from afar, she began to greet Luton, telling him that her name was Moloch, and she is one of the eight supreme devils. Sun An also noticed that another devil had appeared, and one that could use the abilities of people he had encountered. And their situation is very bad. Everyone is busy fighting. And the guys who were fighting against the demons realized that the head had not found a solution yet and they would not last long. Luden was watching the demons and saw that he had grabbed his partner and was getting very angry. He took off at full speed and ran straight at the demon. As he got closer, he tried to get her to let go. But Moloch stood in the same place Luton had hit, and noticing his strength, she said he was really strong for a human. And she'd have him for an appetizer after she'd consumed the girl. But he kept screaming, even begging her to let his partner go. But Moloch began to turn to the other demon, Bodus and tell her she was one of the eight devils. And because of the humans... She was in such a sorry state, and if she hadn't sensed something going on down in the mountains, she'd be dead here by now. But Bodus gave her a mean look and told her to keep her nose out of other people's business and she could do it without her. Moloch heard this absurd excuse and replied that if she continued to be stubborn, she would die. And even if she died, she would not leave this place and those who dared to trespass instead of where they were buried would be destroyed. And no one can survive in this place until he makes them leave. And after this long speech, she began to squeeze her hand even tighter. And Lutu noticed it because he realized that she might kill his partner. But at that moment, Sun Anne appeared, 
and successfully took the girl from the demon's grasp and began to move toward Luton so that she would be safe near him. And then he started to thank the demon, because with her help he's going to activate a bug, and it's called The Game's Not Over Yet. But Moloch couldn't understand what had happened and why. When she snapped that girl's neck, she had a strange feeling. Luton had already run up to Sonanya and started asking how she was feeling. The jury said she was still breathing and that she wouldn't take any damage for ten minutes. But Luton couldn't understand how this happened. But our hero replied that when the new world was created, they made a bug that ruled out player death if they walked away from the computer. And the intentional killing of a player is considered to be when the opponent is vastly outclassed, or there are more than three opponents, in which case the system can treat the attack as illegal. And if a player during a minute with does not indicate any resistance and the damage inflicted by him is zero as well as his health points, the system grows as an attack on players who are not on the spot. And for this purpose was created defense mechanism, it restores lost health points, and for 10 minutes gives invulnerability and players who attacked get punished. The mechanics of the punishment is that all damage done will be returned to the attacker and his accomplices. And at first, he wanted to use this bug to avoid the lethal damage. But they showed up and saved him. And after he was grabbed by the throat and dealt lethal damage. So in such a situation, it's especially good to use this bug. As soon as Soon An finished speaking, Moloch intervened in the conversation, telling them that they had taught her a good lesson. Even though she didn't realize the trick they had used, it made her very angry. And I turned to my partner. She says that as much as they don't want to, they must put aside their animosity and join forces. Otherwise, she realizes what the Lord will do to them. But Bodus wasn't about to let them go. Luton, holding his partner in his arms, couldn't figure out what to do because his partner was badly wounded and his awakening mode was over. And the guys from the guild had no strength left. And now... There are two opponents, and if they fight together, he's afraid they'll be finished. But Sun An said that's why they won't fight but run away. But Lu Tong realized that's easy to say, because running away won't solve the problem. But Sun An had a way to drive away all the demons, and now he should take his men and run to the foot of the mountain. But Lu Tong couldn't understand if he wanted to show everyone how fearless he was, and how he alone could drive them away and it was better to fight together and take the risk. Sun An moved out of his seat and shouted to the boys to trust him, and he would come to them in five minutes, but the boys couldn't understand what he was going to do. But there was no choice, and Luton decided that she would do whatever Sun An told him to do. At that time, one of the demons started to say to Sun An, would he attack the two devils voluntarily, it would be suicide. And in response to his attack, they started attacking him themselves. Also, one of the demons started telling his underlings to stop him. And at that moment, they all attacked him from all sides. But Sun An started to smile because that's what he expected them to do. And using his shadow execution skill, he started throwing off all the demons that were near him. And then the notification system began to show that the demon hunter had been activated and the level had been increased ten times. The Moloch demon also decided to use her shadow moving skill that she had stolen from the human. With all her might, she started attacking Sun An. After hitting him a few times, he started flying away and taking damage. But it didn't end that way, so he decided to counterattack the demon with his bone blade. And as soon as the demon was confused, he activated his spirit mark skill, which he did manage to wound her. But she started to retaliate with blows and flew off to the side. She decided that she needed to get her life back on track. But she couldn't understand what was going on. There were strange voices in her head, and she started to wonder if he was using some kind of controlled ability that she couldn't move. And realizing that she was in a predicament, you started yelling at the other demons to forget about the others because they had to deal with the most annoying one first. 
When Sun An landed on the ground, he saw that the demons were already too close. They all began to surround him from different directions. Meanwhile, Luton continued to move as fast and as far away as possible. The wind turned his head and he heard the battle that was going on behind him and he hoped that that guy really had a way out of there. And now Sun. Anne realized that everyone was finally coming together because he had been waiting for them to attack all together. And with his shadow execution, he began to destroy one demon after another. And because he had destroyed enough demons, his damage was so great that it could not be counted. Bodus watching from afar, saw this and realized he wasn't scared at all. And did he really want to pull some kind of stunt again? But decided she couldn't let it happen before she started to create a huge demonic core that started flying straight at our hero for a second. And the demon started to realize that he'd run out of mana in a couple of minutes. But their demons recover quickly, and victory will be theirs. But at the same moment, Sun An teleported straight to that demon and started to lift his bone blade up the mountain. And the fact that he was grateful to his boss, the villain who was squeezing them for all they were worth, and he himself had personally completed the entire code of the New World in a short period of time, explains why the code is being lost for some unknown reason and is in disarray. And his bone blade does ten times the damage to the demons. And since they're constantly regenerating, the amount of damage can't be counted. But the demon couldn't understand what he was getting at. But he said that the amount of damage he did to them with the bone blade must add up to 100 million. And now all the damage that couldn't be counted would be concentrated in the next blow. And he didn't know if she'd survive it. When the demon heard that, she knew she had to get away from that guy because he's not kidding. But Sun An added that he'd forgotten to tell her that his bone blade can leave marks on its target, so wherever she runs to is useless. She turned around and started to reply. And how can you forget to tell such an important thing? But he added that there's also something else that puts a mark on the soul that does damage. And even though she has fast recovery, no matter how much she recovers from a soul strike, it's enough to kill both gods and demons, and asking her if she could take the blow. But she put her hand over her face and begged him not to do it. But it was too late. His energy began to envelop his body. And at that moment, the notification window showed that the demon hunter had been applied, and the dwell had been applied, and the soul strike had also been applied, and that her body was slowly disintegrating and every cell was screaming in pain and now she was simply disappearing, and after Zenith in a nightmare. But all she could do was beg him to let her go. Sun An landed on the ground and said he didn't know if she could revive after that, and the fight was very intense, and he was already dying, and he was afraid that it was his last trump card. And the other demon, Bodus, realized that the milk energy was really gone, and she didn't realize that this guy and how many tricks he had in store. But angry she thought it was impossible because they're one of eight devils who can't destroy a pathetic human player, and there's no way she's going to accept that. But hopefully Moloch is still alive. She started screaming for her to come to her senses because their lord wouldn't let her lose. Sun Ann's only answer was that the pain of losing a comrade could be seen as a return gift from him to all the demons and that he had already gathered enough information about them, and from now on humanity would fight back. But Bodis shouted that she remembered him. If he ran away to the ends of the earth, she would catch him and turn him into her henchman to make his life seem unbearable. He flew away and also said he wished the same for her because she had killed so many that she didn't deserve to die with dignity and their next meeting, humans and demons would decide who should live and who should die. The other players who were running away with their leader began to tell him that they were tired and couldn't run anymore. But they had to stop. They couldn't continue and told the leader to wait and not to run away so fast. 
Luton stopped and started to feel angry at himself because he had just run away and he had tucked in his tail, regardless of whether his comrade was still alive. His comrade started to support him, telling him that there was no other way. And the guy had volunteered to stay. But Luton didn't understand how he could become a great warlord if he asked at a crucial moment. And he has comrades he fights alongside, but at the same time he took an oath to protect all men, and he didn't have the courage to go to the neighborhood to meet with Jeju, nor did he have the courage to remain their leader. He didn't turn his head, he started to tell his comrades to take the girl and go away, because he had to go back even if he had to die there with that guy. But at that moment, Sun An appeared with his teleportation and told him not to come back. No one would blame him. And he'd done everything in his power, so he shouldn't blame himself. If he hadn't come and his loyal friends hadn't helped him, he doesn't even know how you ended up with the two devils. Then Lu Tong took his hand and started asking him how he did it. But Sun An didn't understand what it was because he had just been so depressed and suddenly changed. For me twenty night, but he kept shouting that there were so many demons and two other high-level devils and he was the only one who could get out of their midst, and he should not hesitate to tell them what happened. But Sun An just said he'd tell him when they got to safety. Now we have to get out of here. So Lu Tong agreed to tell him that he's strong and right and he'll do whatever he says. But another guy came up to them and started telling our hero not to pay attention because their leader is a man who always strives for strength. Sun An replied that according to the information available, the deviless has the ability to turn people into her minions, and they should quickly tell the other players and send them to Area A. But at that moment, a girl came up and started telling the guys that she had a question. They don't have a way to tell everyone in A. Even if they did, they wouldn't believe them. And getting everyone together is a difficult task, and they have a lot of questions to think about. Sun An thought about what she said, because he knows it's very difficult. But if they don't, they'll all become minions of the demons and therefore their enemies. But the girl went on to say that he should do what he could, and the rest would be up to fate. There wasn't much time left, and on the way to Area A, they would try to gather as many people as possible. And opening the map, they began to look at the closest city to them now. Luton put his hand up and said that Manchez was in the H district. Meanwhile, Bodis had managed to get to her demon leader, and with fear in her eyes, she began to tell her master. But before she could say anything, he asked her what she meant. She just let them go without going after them, but she was afraid she'd be killed like milk. But the Lord got angry and said she was a disappointment to him, and he didn't realize she was so untalented and cowardly. She told the Lord that she didn't deny it, but that this player and his abilities were too strong and far superior to her, and she was afraid if she continued she would die. But at that moment the Lord got very angry and ordered her to shut her mouth. They are the eight demons he has painstakingly created as killing machines and given them unique abilities. But she only replied that he was not a mere man. He was stronger than he and the devils, and the death of the Maloka proved it. But at that moment the Maloka appeared in the lava, and Bodis began to ask the Lord if he had revived her. But he replied that he had tried many times to recreate her body, but her soul was sealed and would not awaken. And then Bodis remembered Soon An's words that his soul strike would overlap with the soul mark, adding to the damage. And she realized it had happened then, and it seems that she won't be a prophet for a while, the Lord said, and to wait for her soul to wake up, and then he'd keep resurrecting her. And luckily she had gathered enough life force for him to create a new devil, and this time he'll put a lot of effort into it, and there can be no mistake. The final devil he creates, she'll do the chasing, and Bodis will concentrate on gathering life energy. And now he's got to finish what he started and make Bayman come to his senses. And as soon as she wakes up, he tells her to use her invincible sword to destroy anyone who gets in his way. And she must go after the man that Bodis escaped from and bring him his head. Now we're transported to the neighborhood of Manchez, 
And at the entrance to the town, our hero is met by two men and a woman. He slowly began to approach them as he expected to get as much help as he could from them. And Lutun saw them and raised his hand to greet them. But the women responded to his greeting by saying that he was a rude boor and a lowlife. Sun An couldn't understand what was going on. But one of the men shouted that they didn't care where they came from or why they came and they couldn't even dream of coming to this town. One of the men went to his leader and told him not to just stand there and say something. And he realized that he had to act because he was the leader, so he had to act like a leader. And he raised his hand and started to say hello to them again. But the man shouted again for him to wait. This town doesn't welcome strangers. And when Lu Tong heard that, he realized that he had failed as a leader again. Sun An couldn't understand what was going on and started to tell them to forgive and then there must be some mistake and they came to tell them about an important thing that concerns the life of all people. The girl said that if they're demonic rejects, they shouldn't waste their energy talking. And then the guys were surprised to realize that they already knew about the invasion and they'd probably already been told about it by Jeju but he couldn't understand why they weren't evacuating people. The girl said, why would they run away? This city has a growing population and plenty of resources and it's better than other places. And what's more, they're protected by an able-bodied army of the Order of the 30-Foot Order. And even though the demons are really coming, they don't want to become vagrants like them and this city can't fall. And at that moment, Lutun's patience ran out and he began to yell at her for saying such things, because she's just an old witch and wants to put the inhabitants to a cruel test. But also the deputy head's patience ran out, and she began to get angry, drawing her sword and saying, Do they mean to say that a handful of worthless knights can stop a large army of demons? And now she will use her shadow space to show them the true power that threatens them. Sun An was watching the situation, and all he could say was that they shouldn't be afraid. And one of the men standing near the entrance shouted that things are bad and the knights must now protect Lady Diana. And as soon as they heard the order, they started running towards her. But it was too late. They were too slow. And a girl was standing behind Mistress Diana with a sword to her head. When the girl saw it, she started to ask if this was their fighting army. They wouldn't even protect her from her weak woman, laughing. But Mrs. Diana couldn't understand what she was doing. If she wanted money, she'd give it all she had. The man in the golden robes began to draw his sword and tell her to let go of Mrs. Diana, or they would never leave this desert. Luton standing behind couldn't understand who he was trying to intimidate and let him try to touch them. Sun An suddenly put out his hand and ordered the man to put away his weapon. They had not come to fight, but to convince them that they are not strong enough to resist the army of demons and to listen to them is up to them. The girl standing next to Mrs. Diana realized it was pointless. To hide their weapons and say they were grateful for their good intentions, but they couldn't leave this town. But suddenly the merchant started saying that he remembered him, and he was in the trading area of Area A and sold him a bunch of Class A gear. When he heard that, our hero remembered that last conversation when he sold him all the items he didn't need. Another man in golden armor came up and asked if he had bought that mountain of gear from this guy, but he said that he had. Then this man who can give so many things at once, a class is not easy and he will accept his offer to evacuate the villagers. But there is one problem. Sun An couldn't understand if there was anything more valuable than the lives of the townspeople. And they suddenly stopped talking. They were puzzled by the question. And the merchant replied that in such a situation he thought it was okay to tell them. The people of this town are rich because at the beginning of the game a meteorite fell from the sky. When Sun An and Lu Tong heard the news, they were shocked. But the merchant went on to say that soon after the game started, the island suddenly landed with colorful theories and at first, few people paid attention. But soon special stones started appearing continuously. And then they realized that they were very valuable. 
All the reinforcement crystals needed to make weapons came from here, and they keep it a secret and forbid the citizens to leave the city so no one else will know about the meteorite quarry. The man with the gold armor interrupted the merchants and began to say that they had created the Order of the Golden Foot. Sun An immediately realized that no wonder he had the money to buy all the materials from him. Lu Tong, who was standing behind them, came up to them and said it was indeed a gift from heaven. But the merchant added that, moreover, among the crystals from the meteorite, there was a small chance that an extremely precious and peculiar item would emerge, like the Star Spirit Stone is required to make high-level gear. And now the boys must realize why they don't want to leave this town. When Sun An heard this, he thought that, indeed, with such a meteorite, one could have limitless wealth and many could resist the temptation. But Sun An also asked the merchant that if they had revealed the secret, they would be willing to abandon him. And they must realize that if they abandoned the land, they would lose it. But if the demons broke into the city, they would lose their lives and property, and the meteorite would be theirs. So just in case, they should evacuate and destroy it. But when Diana heard that, she couldn't believe he said, destroy the meteorite and it's vital to this town and she won't let him touch it. And while Diana was yelling at them not to destroy the meteorite, he thought about it and then told our hero that what he said was right, as much as they wanted to, they would have to keep the quarry. Luton also could not believe that Sun An said this seriously, because it is a source of reinforcement for the whole continent if it is destroyed then they will not be able to get equipment. The girl behind her also said that they think it's wrong to do that, and maybe they can discuss this incident further. But Sun An, I don't understand if their eyes are clouded by wealth. It's a matter of life and death, and they've fought demons before and know how powerful they are. And if the meteorite falls into their hands, the new weapon will be used to cut off the heads of their people. After hearing that, Luton realized she was right. If they can't use it, they can't leave it to the demons. And the crystals would be of no use if they lost their lives and all objects must serve in humanity's victory over the demons. And soon they went to the very same meteorite quarry. And when they got there, the merchant showed them that it was here. Sun An bent down and picked up one crystal not expecting that such hard-to-find resources would be scattered all over the place. The other players were staring at these A-class materials they needed with burning eyes. But Luton shouted to them that they were here by accident and shouldn't touch the resources of their countrymen. And grabbing his partner, he said it was her business too. And when she sees something beautiful, she always freezes. But she just wanted to get a closer look at the crystals. At that moment, the merchant started to ask if they really had to destroy them. They wouldn't give them a day's mining time. But all Sun Ann could say was that they lost the land, but they're saving the people, and as long as they're together, they can get it back. And they can't take the crystals. There's no time to wait. It's important to evacuate the people as soon as possible, or the demons will chase them. But at that moment, one of the demons was hovering over the city, watching all the people evacuate quietly. But suddenly the demon heard a voice telling her to wake up, and when she opened her eyes, she was on some beach and she was having flashbacks. But suddenly a guy was standing next to her and he started asking her what happened. Did she fall asleep? And grabbing her hand, the guy started taking her aside and saying that she'd been asleep for a couple of days and why she wouldn't get up because he wanted to go with her to collect seashells. But when the girl saw him pulling her arm, she couldn't understand who he was. But he just showed her to look up, because I'm his mama's airship there. And their mom flew straight for them to get them out of here. And pretty soon they're going to be out of here. But the girl couldn't understand why she remembered. The look of anticipation in his eyes for this world. But now this girl was under the control of the supreme demon. And a little while later, Sun An was sitting by the fire in the forest. And at that moment, a hand was held out to him and in that hand was a drink. Luton started to ask him why he looked distracted and what he was thinking about. 
but he just replied that it was nothing, but that he shouldn't indulge in it. But Lu Tong went on to say that even he had no idea what kind of situation Commander Hussein was in, because it's not easy to evacuate an entire city at once. But Sun An said half a day was a short time, but it was enough for the boys to take advantage of the opportunity. And one of the players shouted that he'd found something useful too. Luton saw this and got very angry and didn't understand what they were doing. He had already told them not to touch the crystals. But the guy picked up the crystal and started to explain that they were going to destroy them anyway and it would be a waste not to collect some. Well, at that moment, another guy appeared and started shouting to his Galava that he asked him to help him find the reinforcement stone, and he found it. The head couldn't understand what he was saying because it didn't happen and he shouldn't say anything against him. But their little quarrel was interrupted by a merchant who said that they had already prepared 32,000 people and 36,652 inhabitants ready to leave with them. But Sun An asked them if they could leave 4,000 men behind. The merchant said that not everyone believes in the demon torment and doesn't want to part with their riches. Sun An asked if they could let them persuade them, if they couldn't. But Luton stopped him and asked if he was planning to save everyone. But our hero didn't understand why he had to abandon all 4,000 people. The real me at the merchant said it's useless. They've already tried. And if she and Shosan didn't have the authority to convince him, he shouldn't try. Sunan didn't understand. It's 4,000 lives. But Luton interrupted him and said that he said, It's a war between humans and demons, and they have no choice in facing the truth and lies. A girl appeared behind him and said she was finally finished. And they asked to set the explosives, and it came out to 246. And once everyone had done their job, our hero cried out that it was time for them to leave. They went a little farther away and set off the explosives and blew up all the crystals that were in the area. Watching this huge explosion, Luton realized that Soon An was very harsh because he had wasted so much wealth. A little later, a lot of people started coming out of the tunnel, and even though the guards were telling them to hurry up, every second counted. And as soon as almost everyone had gathered and begun their preparations. But at that moment, he was thrown aside by a huge energy charge. And he couldn't tell who had attacked him because he didn't even see anything. But it was the new devil that had been recently created. The knights behind him saw that this was the enemy and they had to destroy it. The man in the golden armor could still stand on his feet, and he got up and drew his sword even though he was badly wounded. But the demon didn't give him a chance to counterattack, for she had once again done great damage to him with her greatest blade. And all the demon said was that there was going to be a massacre. The villagers suddenly began to raise their heads and saw the demons coming, and they did appear. A little while later, the demons started killing all the citizens who were screaming for someone to save them. The soldiers who were supposed to protect the civilians ran away in fear. But at that moment, a shadowy space appeared from which the players began to emerge. Luton, who appeared first, began to gather all his power and attack the demon who was floating in the air. And after throwing it aside, Lutun went back down to his partner and asked her if she was all right, to which she replied that it just seemed like they were a little late. And the commander was already dead and his subordinate from the order was already disbanding the troops. And she didn't expect the demons to get here so fast. But still some of the inhabitants were alive and they kept screaming for help because they weren't going to die. Luton started shouting to the guild members to listen to his orders and protect the townspeople and save as many people as possible. When they heard their commander's orders, they began to fight. But the demon was still in the same place. She didn't like the fact that the ants had gotten into the tree. And no matter how hard they tried, everyone would die here today. And as soon as it started to attack, Luton felt first its immense power. And even with the divine power of Hercules, he realized that he couldn't handle it. But the girl behind him started shouting to Luton to be careful, because she was already at his back.
but he managed to bounce back a little, but the girl yelled again that she was coming up behind him. But at that moment, son Anne appeared and started using his demonic execution skill. And then he went down to the Luton and started to take him by the shoulder to teleport him to another place. And once they were in the other place, he started apologizing for being a little late. But the fact that there's another new devil means it's going to be a tough fight. But the problem is, he doesn't know what skills she's going to have. But Luton suddenly told him to be careful with her sword, and even his divine personality couldn't resist it. But he pulled out his bone blade and said he'd already killed one demon, so he could handle the second one. The demon standing in front of him with his eyes closed started to say he couldn't see his face, but his energy was specific, and like a drop in a pool, very warm. But son Anne moved behind her back and said he had no warm feelings for them devils. And as soon as he wanted to attack her, she attacked back even though she didn't see anything. And son Anne couldn't understand how she reacted so quickly. The guys watching from the side started asking him how he was feeling. But he couldn't realize that it was Zotto who had just pulled out 1,000 daggers in an instant. But the demon raised her sword to the mountain and said that no matter how hard they tried today, they would die. Because she could turn them to dust in an instant. But just as she began to attack, a Luton appeared in front of our hero, and with his Hercules power, he began to increase his strength 960 times. But that wasn't enough. I started to increase my strength by one Theros on 220 times. And while he was holding back, the devil started yelling at the guys to retreat. But he didn't have to hold back for long, because in an instant, he just fell to the ground. And as the girl started to lift him up to bring him to his senses, son Anne started to draw his bone blade but he realized that if he tried to fight her back now, he'd die in the same place. And as the Lutun lost consciousness, he realized that he definitely noticed that every blow from that devil was taking a toll on his mind. And at that moment, the devil's fog began to clear and her vision began to recover. But our hero realized that before that, it was the spirit strike that had allowed him to deal with that devil. But if the enemy has a similar ability... There's nothing you can do. The devil standing opposite our hero began to say that finally she could see him clearly, to which he jokingly replied that he was worried because his warmth charmed her. But she replied in a rude tone that no, he was not the right man, for he had just the same energy and raised his blade as he began to summon a tremendous energy and activate his 3,000 moment skill. And as the huge wave hit Sun Anyu, he refused to resist at that moment, because such an opponent seems capable of destroying the world with every blow, and maybe she's right. No matter how hard he tries, he'll die. And whether people would be destroyed by demons in the end, he didn't fully understand, and he didn't know if there was any hope in the world. A little while later, Luton began to calm down, because he saw Soon An come to his senses, not realizing where he was. And he began to explain to Sun An that they had escaped from the city of Manchez. Although they had suffered minimal casualties and most of them had managed to stay alive, and Luton also added that he had been unconscious for two days, Sun An could not understand why it had taken so long. And perhaps the Eternal Crown had kept him from the death blow but the mental attack had robbed him of his senses, and yet he couldn't understand how they had managed to escape from the devil's grasp. Luton slowly began to answer him that it was thanks to Hussein, and he had sacrificed himself to save them. For when he stood before the devil, she said only that he had not long to live, and he said it wasn't worth it to keep them all. But the devil said why should he suffer such agony? and she would ask Battis to turn him into a henchman. But Hussein shouted for her to shut her mouth, and as long as his arena and combat powers are in effect, she won't escape his control, and until her last breath he won't let her go after his kin. And he is Hussein commander of the Order of the Golden, that of the Knights of the City of Manchester. 
His abilities were created for fighting, but the devil replied that he's just a man without food and VD with severe wounds. He won't last long and she can already feel the effect of the gradual collapse. With his last breaths he shouted that it was enough for him to let his people escape to fulfill his duty as a knight. And the rest is up to them. He always believed that they would find a way to deal with them. The people will defeat the demons. And a little while later in the neighborhood and the many people who had escaped from the city continued on their way. Luton began to say that they'd been walking for three days without sleep or rest and they were exhausted and that they should stop and rest soon to regain their strength to keep going. But Sun An forbade them to do so, for the demons could overtake them at any moment, and until they reached the city they must not stop for a minute. It was hard for the girl to hear, for she didn't understand why they had to go and, if they were going to, where Jeju's main army was. But Sun An, looking at the mountains, told them that they had not long to go and that as soon as they crossed the Sunset Mountains they would finally reach the place. At this time in town, one of the guys started coming to Zai Jun's house and asking her to have a drink with him. But she wasn't alone and Fung, who was sitting next to Zai Jun, started yelling at him that he was crazy and didn't know the rules of decorum and that he should knock before entering the girl's room. But he kept laughing and asking why they were having a party and he wasn't invited. To which Zai Jun told him that girls like to gossip together. But as soon as he heard the word gossip, he started to ask what and who he wanted to hear about. Everybody likes to gossip. But his partner suddenly got up from her seat and put her hand on his shoulder and told him to get out of here. And with a flick of her hand, she threw him out the window. Zai Jun then started laughing and told Nana that if she really liked Bai Mu, she should tell him because she had actually noticed that they were attracted to each other in the guild. But Nana just blushed when she heard that and said that whoever likes him is just calling her a redhead. But Zai Jun added that if you like someone, you have to be brave enough to confess. Otherwise, how can he know how she feels and secret crushes are the most useless thing? But Nana suddenly turned the tables and started asking Zai Jun what about her. Because she had noticed in the guild that she cared about son Anya all the time and she wouldn't deny that she had feelings for him. And she realized that they have mutual love. He has a look on his face that says he feels it, even though she does too. But at that moment, Zai Jun started waving her arms around saying, It's not true. She just doesn't like that he's always alone and it's very sad. And Nana realized that it's true that the guild is full of single bachelors, and why doesn't she care for them so much? But suddenly Bai Mu burst through the door again, and the girls saw him and started asking why he was back again and why he shouldn't eavesdrop on their conversations. But he just had something important to say, and it's about Sun An. They have to listen to him to understand what it's about because he's right outside the main gate and he's brought a bunch of people with him. And he was standing at the main gate and he started to tell the guards that his name was Sun An and he had 30,000 people with him and they should open the gate. And at that moment, the head of Liu Xu came to the gate and began to tell the guards not to let them out because of course Sun An would be able to get into the city. Lu Tong, who was standing next to Sun An, didn't understand what was going on and why they wouldn't let them in. But the head of Liu Xu began to explain that his mission was to gather information about the demon invasion in the K area, not to show his bravery by saving people. But Sun An began to explain that the situation was more complicated than she could imagine, and the demons could attack at any moment, and she should open the gate and post, and they would talk. But she just smirked and said that now she is in charge of the defense of this city, so it's up to her to decide who gets in and who doesn't. And then Zai Jun started running up to the gate to make sure it was really him, because she'd just heard his voice. And once they got upstairs, they were glad he was back and started asking him if he knew anything about the demon invasion, but they also didn't understand why they weren't being let in. 
and the head of Liu Xu started to answer that it was because it was up to her, not them. That made Feng angry and she started calling her a weasel. But Nana also added that the head of Liu Xu, just because Jeju isn't here doesn't mean she can do whatever she wants, and Sun An is not only the head of Guild Zero but also a friend of her strategic group. Outside, Sun An started asking the girls if Jeju was around, to which Nana replied that he's been reclusive since he left. He's at the Hadaiman Royal Palace. Logically, the Holy Sword Improvement Ceremony should have been completed by now, and they don't know what he's doing now. The head of Lu Xu will also add that this is the way things are and Jeju isn't here. Only she can raise the Hademon's banner, and he can only get in if he leaves those people behind. Feng standing beside her couldn't understand what she was saying and why she wouldn't let the civilians go. But the head of Liu Xu turned his head and said that they naive girls don't understand that they are in a war for survival, and the worst part is that they have no idea how long it will last. The city they're in is very large, but its resources are limited and everyone needs to eat. So the more of them there are, the less time they have to fight. And she doesn't know who to give the resources to, players or civilians. The common people are just a hindrance to keeping the victory, so why not give them up and in the end she'll be the winner? The girl standing next to our hero started to ask what kind of woman she is because she looks like some kind of sick person and they don't have time to convince her and if she continues not to let them in, she will use her power. But Sun An put out his hand and forbade the girl to do so because he figured he'd go in and handle it alone. And using his teleportation skill, he moved to the head of Liu Xu and started telling her that if she thought she could stop him from doing anything with her heavenly gift alliance. At that moment, two men stood in front of him and decided that they would not let anyone near the head and would protect her with all their might. Sun An went on to say that he was the one who had the real power and the strongest now, except for Jeju and turned his head to the girls and started telling them to come to him. The head of Liu Xu didn't understand what he was going to do, but he just said that he wanted to keep his men away from weaklings like them. If they were not welcome here, they would find another place to fight the demon. Bai Mu also joined in saying that they would find another place. And at that moment, the head of Liu Xu realized that they couldn't leave because someone would fight the demons. Sun An replied that that's why he says she's not in charge. She needs them, not the other way around. And through all her will, she ordered the guards to open the gate and let everyone in. And as soon as the gates opened, people started coming in and were happy that they were finally safe. But the head of Liu Xu told our hero that this city could only feed this many people for a month. And if the war with the demons didn't end in that time, the human race would die. But Sun An told her that she didn't have to remind her. He knew better than she did how cruel the war was, and she should tell everyone to gather at the Imperial Palace to tell what they had learned about the demons. And a little while later, they all began to enter the main hall in the center of the city. And inside they were met by other players who were very happy to see that Sun An was okay and they started asking if he was okay and how his investigation went. Sun An started calling everyone to come closer to the table because he didn't want to waste time. At that moment, a boy ran up to him and hugged him and said he missed his head. Don't you want the other boys to tell him not to get all uptight about the chapter's clothes? They didn't want him to make a fuss while everyone was gathered and talking about their important business. While the guy was hugging Sun An, he started to ask Sun Yue if he was mad at him. But Zai Jun decided to tell him first to drop it because there was no need to fight now and when they were together they could do anything. Sun Yue also added that when he was angry with him and came back safely and well, but he should not get involved in such risky affairs anymore. After these nice words, Sun An thought that as long as they were together, no matter how difficult the demon invasion was, he would protect everyone. And at that moment, they began their urgent meeting. 
But noticing that another member of their guild was missing, soon Anne asked where Jeju was. And Bai Mu replied that he said he needed to be alone and asked not to be disturbed. Sun An couldn't understand how such a moment could give him time for privacy and training, and he had to go see what the hell he was doing. And at the same time, Jeju was in the main hall, and as soon as the door opened and Sun An came in, he started asking Jeju why he was sitting here in the current situation. But Jeju was weird and started to activate his skills towards Sun An. And at the same moment, his sword flew straight at Sun An's face. And behind him, Jeju walked slowly and said that he was like Sun An without ceremony. And didn't step back, Sun. An asked him if that was his way of greeting him. Jeju started to say that he knew he had a lot of questions, but unfortunately he had a lot of things to do and would explain to him and the guys later for being absent. He didn't understand what could be more important than the demon invasion. The people had chosen him as their leader, and he didn't think he would lead them to fight the enemy. But Jeju replied that he had personally fought several devils, so he knew what to do, and no matter who the leader was, the people would face eight devils with a large army of demons behind them and no chance of winning. But Sun An was getting angry and didn't understand how he knew if he hadn't started fighting them yet and why they were trying so hard if he wanted to surrender. And Jeju didn't say he wanted to surrender. He had a plan to break the stalemate, and he's been making it up as he sits here all these days. But it wasn't even about the plan. It was about whether he believed him even if it was the last time. Sun An said he'd only been back half an hour and hadn't told anyone about the eight devils or how he knew about them. To which Jeju replied that it was because he said it was all about whether he trusted him. And holding out his hand, he offered our hero to fight him shoulder to shoulder one more time so that there would be hope for the people. But Sun An pushed his hand aside and said he couldn't trust a man as mysterious as he was. And until he tells him everything, he won't trust him. The only people he trusts now are Zai Jun and Sun Yua, all the people outside who are ready to resist the invasion. And whether he joins him is up to him. After a few minutes, he left the main hall and went back to the meeting hall where the other players were waiting for him. Once inside... The guys started asking how Jeju was doing, but Sun An said that they couldn't count on him and he wouldn't rely on him either. When the guys heard that, they couldn't understand why he was saying that. Zaijun jumped up from the table and asked what happened. The head of Liu Xu also slapped her hand on the table and said that he was still their leader and how could they be without him. And he had gathered them together, but he hadn't come and who would lead them into battle. Sun An listened to everyone and said that, even without him, there would be no unity, and by uniting all the players they would still be able to defeat the demons. The one-eyed guy also supported and said that his head was talking and that they would not unite and survive the hard times. Anyway, they've been together and fighting side by side all the time. And turning to the head of Liu Xu, our hero said that, even though they had their differences, they couldn't help but recognize that she was the right person to take his place as the leader of the All Men's Union, but she couldn't understand what that meant. And Sun An went on to say that in a direct sense. Of course, in another time he wouldn't have obeyed her orders either. But now they're in the same boat and she's the best suited to be captain. And if no one has any other suggestions, then the head of the Gifts of Heaven Alliance will be their head and then he'll share everything he learned during the battle. They must begin preparations for battle immediately. And already a countless army of demons, led by eight devils, is marching towards the city. When the story was over, they all gathered around the fire to drink to the gathering this evening. Bai Mu, along with Nana, also joined the banquet. Luton turned his head at the same moment because he heard that they were from the Riders Guild and all the other players were happy to see them, because the more the merrier. They had come here because they couldn't sleep and because their leader had told them such horrors during the day. When Sun An apologized for being the culprit for all the sleeplessness, 
But the girl Nana said that they shouldn't apologize. She was the first on the continent, and at first they wanted to lead all the people to victory in the world, but at the most crucial moment their leader backed off. But Bai Mu picked up a bottle and started shouting that enough talk today they would drink. And raised all the bottles, they decided to celebrate one last quiet evening before the battle. And one by one they decided to wish for the union of men in advance and to hold on to victory. The hero thought that no matter how dangerous his path would be, he had nothing to fear as long as his friends were with him, and he would do his best to protect the people who were important to him. But at that moment, Jeju joined them and started telling Soon An that he had business with him. And the other players were shocked to see Jeju here. They started to run towards him. They were happy that he had finally arrived. But Jeju bowed his head and apologized to the guys that he couldn't spend the last time with them before the war. And he didn't come to drink. He came to talk to Sun An. But Sun An didn't understand why he had come to see him. A little later, it was already the second day, and all the boys were very tired after a hard night. But little by little, they started to come to their senses and convince one of them. The first one to wake up was Fong because she heard Zai Jun say it was time for her to go to sleep and opened her eyes completely. She realized that she could sleep a little longer because her head was spinning. But at that moment she realized the horror of what she had just seen, because there were a lot of demons above her head and she realized that the invasion had already begun. The other guys also started pointing upwards that demons were coming, and the demons were real and it wasn't a dream. They should be warning everyone that there's a war on and that a lot of demons had appeared over the city. When the citizens saw the demons, they ran in different directions to find a place to hide. Fung, who was near Zai Jun, started asking her what to do. The other guys were still recovering from the party and couldn't understand why everyone was so loud in the morning. But Fung, with a horrified look on her face, started yelling at them to get together because the demon invasion had already started. They couldn't understand why it had happened so fast and where their commanders were. The head of Liu Xu started shouting to everyone to keep calm and the guild should send people to the places to protect the passages as they had discussed at the meeting, and the rest of the strongest people should come together to fight the devils. But Zai Jun decided to ask his head Liu Xu where Sun An is now. But the head of Liu Xu said that he ran away at a crucial moment. But in fact, Sun An and Jeju were near Liangxi Volcano, and with the help of teleportation skill, they finally reached the place. And according to the information he found out last time, the one who creates all the demons is on the mountain in front of them. Jeju started to ask Sun An if he understood why they came here to which our hero replied that it was the last time he trusted him, back when Jeju came to Sun An with an important conversation. Even though Sun An didn't understand why he had come at this hour, but Jeju began to explain that he wanted to tell the truth about the demon invasion and explain how to deal with it. If he wanted to hear it, he could stand aside with him to tell it. And once they found the safe place, our hero started asking him how to get out of the situation. And Jeju started to explain why demons have an almost limitless ability to regenerate. But Sun An replied with his head down that he didn't know the exact reason. But from what he had learned, they were created by the life energy harvested from their continent. Jeju replied that that was the point. They didn't appear out of thin air. The situation that is happening now has been brewing since the beginning of the game. Hearing this, Sun An couldn't understand what he was getting at. But Jeju began to explain in detail that the game exists to get rid of all living things and the more players die, the more demons can be created. So when they encounter them, the ending will be worse. And Sun An couldn't understand if all they had to do was hide from them and play cat and mouse. Jeju went on to say that if it had been at the beginning of the game, they could have avoided it, but now it's too late. But Hiro couldn't understand what he meant. 
Whereupon Jeju continued to say that whether it was a reality game or the creation of times and demons behind everything hidden by someone invisible, there was only one way out of the impasse. A little further on, the two devils began to discuss how boring it was for them to stand guard here. One of the eight devils, Xilio started to say that he had the ability to change his appearance. So why did it take such a terrible form? City, the devil of lust, said that beauty can't explain it. And she doesn't have the energy to argue with him about the value of beauty and stand guard here, in the middle of nowhere. And doesn't it mean that the Lord trusts them the most and that they are the strongest? The other devil replied that they weren't the strongest, and had she forgotten, that unlike them, she was not created directly by the Lord. It used to be a man, but his story was interrupted by a strange feeling that someone had invaded them, and jumped out of his seat and started shouting that whoever he was had to show himself, and he hit it with all his might and it made a hole. And then they realized they'd come to the right place and found whoever was trespassing in their domain. And one of the devils started shouting that she would take the right one and he should take the left one. Sun An jumped on the lust devil without a word. And as soon as he swung his blade, the devil realized that he was very fast and she should be careful. But his attack got to her and she started screaming that she was on fire early. It was because the demon hunter skill was activated, and she jumped back and realized she had to keep her distance. But after a few hits, Sun Ann noticed that her ability was to endlessly change her appearance, but he couldn't figure out what good it did. But the devil herself thought she was far away from the guy. But why was he still chasing her? But she had to use her trick to escape. Sun An saw that she had turned into a worm so she wouldn't die, and the devil herself realized she was careless but would never let him hurt her again. The last devil who lost to him said the same thing and flew up to the devil. He asked her what she thought had happened to that devil. The other devil who fought with Jeju started to say that he was just now dissatisfied with what the master had given him to do. If he doesn't fight and kill people, what's the point of being a devil, and he didn't expect them to come willingly? But Jeju told him that his existence was already meaningless, and he would send him back to where he belonged. Because with his golden skill of awakening the god Odin, from which he gets his power and it can be used twenty times in ten minutes. But that devil noticed the skill and realized it was a golden personality awakening ability, and that this guy was one of the chosen ones. He went on to say that it was all the more advantageous for him to finish him off personally, because he was once one of the chosen people. At the same time, in another place on an uncharted island, Raffaello began to ask his master if he had finished creating, but the Lord replied that it took him a long time too, but it was worth it. And the plan to destroy the world began to come to fruition, and now the dastardly humans were cornered in the demon army. But at that moment a notification system window appeared in front of him, asking him if he wanted to close the creation program. But he told Raffaella he wasn't done yet. She didn't understand. Did he really want to create more demons? But he asked her if she'd forgotten that there was one more very important identity card left. She couldn't believe it. Did he really mean to tell her that the final appearance of the head of the demons is Lucifer and that his appearance marks the end of the game? At the same time, a devilish appears in the town where many players have gathered and realizes she's won the jackpot, and she sees a lot of people in this huge city. One second there was a huge explosion and there was a huge turtle, and another devil sitting on the turtle told his partner that she wasn't the first one to find the place. But his partner started yelling at him. Was he crazy to trash her playground? But he replied that he couldn't control the turtle's power and all he could think about right now is about destroying everything in this town, including the people. He's having a lot of fun. They've come together to be trampled under his feet. The head of Liu Xu, who was inside the city, heard that something had happened in the northwest, and she started to ask if anyone knew what was going on. But one of the guys standing next to her said it was the devils invading the city. 
but she thought it was impossible because every neighborhood was guarded by several thousand troops, and they had fortified the walls in advance, and how could they just break through? But the other players didn't understand. It all happened so fast. But at that moment, a deviless appeared behind Liu Xu's head, and she wasted no time in creating fire in one of her hands and shouting to the players that her partner had captured everyone's attention and she was going to kill the leader. As soon as she tried to touch the head of Liu Xu, someone nearby shouted a liberty bow. And right after that, a bright arrow flew at the deviless and hit her in the arm. She couldn't realize if it was the reinforcements that came here so fast. But the first to arrive was Sun Tian Xing, and when the devilist saw it, she flew up in the air because she realized that it's nothing to her, and she's going to kill them very quickly. And she realizes that these people have a very useless ability. But no sooner had she blocked the arrow than Sun Tian Xing shouted into the spatial boundary activation. And immediately the arrow appeared right behind the maiden's back. But she didn't expect him to use such a simple trick followed by a huge wolf that bit the devilus and shouted for Zai Jun to act. And Zai Jun was already right on top of her with her huge scythe. And hitting her, she yelled at her to underestimate people, and after much damage, the maiden began to rise up, healing her wounds. She said that these little wounds didn't hurt her at all, and a man like her she could easily crush. And as she swung her arm began to expand and lengthen in size, and Zai Jun realized that she had been inattentive, not expecting her arm to extend that far. But a huge wolf who was nearby started asking her if she was okay. And before she could answer, Nana started using her magic to heal her. And behind her, the other guys also appeared and activated their healing skills. Zai Jun realized that luckily, while she was living in the forest, she had mastered this skill and if they were together they could share damage and healing equally. And their combined strength would even be enough to defeat the devil. And they're about to attack together and not even give her a chance to breathe. But the devilist clenched her fist and started yelling at them that they were going to get themselves killed and she was going to help them. But one of the guys who was behind them started yelling that she's strong and they won't stand up to her and they need to ask for help. Also at this time, another devil was enjoying the destruction of the fortress and was watching his partner yelling at her to make meat patties out of them. But at that moment, Luton appeared in front of him. And the devil couldn't figure out who this guy was or where he came from. But Luton started asking him if he was having a good time here alone. And he jumped out of his seat and started flying towards the devil, yelling that then he'd would amuse him a little bit, and then he started to increase his powers to Ab 48 times. But the devil couldn't understand how he destroyed the hair defense with one blow. And immediately after destroying the defense, Luton moved behind the devil's back and began to increase his strength by a factor of 2048 and decided that the next blow would be retribution for all he had done before, because he had now invested enough power to crush this devil. And after all of the above, he struck the devil's face with a mighty blow. And the devil felt the full force of his power and couldn't understand why he was so strong. But Luton realized that after a blow with 2048 times the damage, the devil couldn't survive. But still, the devil got up after such a powerful blow, and Luton realized that the damned devil was incredibly resilient. But you lose the dirt, and the wounded devil replied to Luton that he was indeed strong as a man. But he was sorry that he was the enemy of the Volus. Hearing these words, Luton decided that if he wanted to make peace by force, he would. And as they dispersed, they clashed with blows, causing a huge wave to envelop the entire area. And Luton decided that he needed to increase his strength by a factor of 4096. But the devil himself also began to use his sky power to increase his power. And eventually the devil pushed Luton away with his superior strength. But Luton couldn't understand why his strength wasn't enough, because he had used so much of it. The devil smiled and told him that it looked like his strength was just enough to break his armor. 
but now he must bear in mind that his power of anger can make anything he touches hard, and even if he touches himself. But Lutun realized that before he had destroyed the stone turtle in a blow, but why can't this devil do that? And as soon as the blow was over, Lutun flew back towards the devil and asked if he had already realized that he had destroyed his turtle because it was very large and if he used a small amount of power. The object created would be stronger than the diamond itself, and he created a diamond from the earth and began to squeeze it in his diamond hand. And immediately afterwards, he threw it with all his might towards the Lutin who was nearby. It went straight into his hand, causing him great pain. And immediately afterward, he fell to the ground, holding his wounded arm. But the devil wasted no time jumping up to him with all his speed and began to grasp his diamond hand, saying that now he would end their battle. At the same time, in another place, Zai Jun was still fighting with her comrades against another devil, and she shouted to the guys to surround her and stop her from attacking. And as soon as the devil spread her wings, the guys started coming at her from all directions. But they didn't expect her to be too strong for them, and immediately she launched them all into a movie. But Nana standing nearby started using her healing skill and asking the guys if they were the target. But some of the guys got up and started to tell her that it was too fast, and they couldn't get to her, and they weren't hurt as much as expected. But then Sun Yu Yue showed up on the other side with his huge score and shouted to the guys that he'd distract her attention and they should take a moment to counterattack. But the devil herself couldn't figure out what it was, but every time she couldn't take her eyes off him. But it's because he started activating his Demon Slayer skill, and after successful hits on the demon, the kill branding activates his boss ability, and high-level monsters will consider him a prime target for attack. The Devilist became even angrier because she couldn't understand the fact that no matter what, she had to kill that guy first. Sunyu Yue took advantage of the moment to shout to Zai Jun to act, because the boss was already furious. And without wasting much time, Zai Jun grabbed her scythe and started running towards her. When she jumped up in the air, she gave her another heavy blow and said that her blow had vampirism, and they would not lose in a long fight. But that wasn't enough to finish the devilus off, and she got more angry and started turning around and yelling at the guys that they were just a swarm and that she could crush them with one finger. And that's when she started attacking Sun Yue, and he couldn't understand why he was in so much pain. And he can't take any more of her blows, but still there is hope, or now he can't just pray that Jeju and Sun An will make it. Meanwhile, elsewhere, one of the devils started to attack Jeju, but Jeju started pulling out his sword and activating Odin's personality, which is his power. And at the same moment, he deflected the enemy's blow with his sword and started to activate the second stage of Odin's powers, which is speed. But the devil wasn't so easy. He also activated his blue Pegasus skill. And Jeju realized that the situation was not going his way. And their power collided between the Odin light that Jeju used and the Pegasus light that the devil used. But the devil began to smile because he realized that his opponent had to use his trump quickly, and it seems that his golden personality is not that developed. Jeju couldn't understand how the devil knew so much about the golden personality, but he replied that he hadn't said before, but that he was once one of the chosen people. Jeju couldn't understand if he wanted to say that he was a person who could be the player who awakened the golden personality. But the devil laughed when he called him a player because it was a funny name for him and he didn't play any games and he's been here a lot longer than him and his personality. And now he's the real one. And with his bluebird skill, he started attacking Jeju. Sun An noticed this at the same time and started to ask his comrade if he was doing well. But a huge snake appeared in front of him and told him to worry about himself and if he was good, he would go straight into its belly. Now history shows us how one of the devils was once the greatest warrior of all, and all who watched him fight shouted his name, and shouted that they loved him, 
for he was the most valiant warrior they had ever known. And he stood against an opponent who was several times his height and weight, and at that time he had only a spear and could accomplish anything. He was the strongest warrior that had ever entered the arena, and there were only players to destroy, and he had wealth and status and rights and women, and if he wished for anything, it was all his. But after more than twenty years, he realized one truth. There is no warrior who can remain invincible forever. And at one point another warrior appeared, and the audience praised only him. And a little later, Salas came to one of the officials who told him that he had grown old and threw him a bounty and ordered him not to come to this place anymore. And so when a warrior loses his glory, he loses everything he had before. But one day he passed a girl sitting with a somatic ball and she said hello and asked him if he wanted her to read his fortune. But he just replied that nowadays not many people recognize him. And that fortune-telling was a trick to fool fools. But the girl held out her hand with a divination ball and said that if she could fulfill his dream of eternal life. And then he couldn't resist the offer. And eventually he made a deal with the devil, who told him that he was the chosen one and the power of the ancestor would grant him eternal life. But he had to pay a small price. Well, of course, the mitorium of words gained power and became invincible. And now for the present, he went on to say that the small price she said he hadn't thought of at the time. And now he would be given to fight him, the legendary king of the gods who is Odin. But when he heard all this, he began to waste no time and to use his Odin speed. And as soon as he developed great speed and began to fly towards his enemy and hitting him several times, Jeju cried out to the devil that he was making it up. But the devil threw him aside and repeated his words that he wasn't making it up and that he was telling it like it is, and that he thinks their players were created as pawns for the devil's pleasure, and they're all here playing their parts, and the real audience is high up somewhere applauding them. But Jeju got up after the hit and started asking why he'd never heard of these spectators. And when he fulfilled all the plot requirements to level up the holy sword, he was answered not by someone, answered by the devil himself, who is also called the demon lord. And the voice that came from the sword began to ask if he was the chosen one. But Jeju didn't understand why he was here. But the guy with the glasses started greeting the riders with his head and said he was glad to meet you. But Jeju didn't realize who he was to which the guy said he'd find out the answer, but why didn't he fully believe that he's the demon Lord Lucifer? And even though it's a stupid title, it's the way the system was designed, he said. But Jeju couldn't take it anymore and shouted that it was all a scam and he'd invented the game and put demons and players together. To which the demon Lord smiled and replied that that was right. And they created the game and he found the story boring and added some variety. But Jeju started yelling at him to shut his mouth and asking him why he did it and who he was and how he got his power. But he said it doesn't matter who he is because his goal is simple. He wants the 99% of people who shouldn't exist destroyed. But Jeju didn't understand why he wanted to destroy the world. But the demon lord replied that you, we are before humanity, doesn't mean destroying the earth. You might say he's cleaning their house to meet his owner in it. And here he is, Jeju, is among the 1% of the survivors and he congratulates him and they will meet the new world together. And by then he'll be an endangered species and everyone will be interested in him. But Jeju couldn't understand if he wanted him to join him. But the demon lord replied that this game was a lucky draw from the beginning and he should cherish the opportunity. But Jeju didn't understand why he should cherish the opportunity, for his opportunity was betrayal. And betrayal of the teammates who came to play here with him. That means betrayal of all mankind. But the demon lord went on to say that the choice is his, and he can die with the others or join him in the game in a new role. And once he thinks it over, he can tell it to the sacred ball and he'll hear about it. He doesn't have to worry either. He's already prepared a new identity for him, 
and it's exceeded his expectations and he's sure to be pleased. And while fighting the devil who told Jeju that he's no match for him, and when it comes to strength, no one can match him. And he jumped up from his seat and started flying straight at Jeju and said that he was going to die in his doubts and agony. But Jeju just said to himself that it was a hard decision, so he wanted to come here himself, so that he could ask only one question in farewell. Why he has to carry this burden and one more thing, if he was really suited for the role he had been given. Meanwhile, in the city, the battle was still going on between the players and the devils, and a devil agent standing near Luton began to tell him that it was all over and that a pathetic man like him should say goodbye to his life. But the devil added that it wasn't his fault. Could it be a few days or a few months? Because unlike him, he's a true elite who's been through the ordeal. So death at his hands is considered a gift from above. And just as the devil was about to finish him off, a girl appeared behind him with her stealth attack. And on the other side also appeared the players who started to attack him because they knew that no one dared to lay a finger on their leader, and before touching their leader he must first kiss their sword. And as soon as the devil was out of the way, the girl started to ask her comrade if he was all right, because she was a little late because she was dealing with some demons in town. But Luton didn't understand if she wasn't assigned south of town and why she was here now. But she said or that it wasn't because she was worried about someone. But Luton realized things were bad now and he became the one holding back. But the girl asked him not to get depressed. They'd left some people on the south side of town. That should be enough to fight off the demon invasion. And now the most important thing is to find a way to get rid of this demon god that stands before them. But Luton added that this guy has the ability to harden anything he touches, and the smaller the range of hardening, the higher the hardness. But the girl didn't understand. Couldn't he counter it with his own power, with the strongest attack and the most powerful defense? What's better? she asked. But Luton replied that from his current point of view, he felt he was stronger. But that his strength would multiply over time and that it would take time to break his defense. And meanwhile, the players surrounded the devil and started insulting him to look at his age and he's a bad student and his hair is like a bandit's. And also he's just a teenager so they don't want to drop out of school to blend in with society. And when he said that, the devil got so angry that he started crushing everything under his feet. And he also summoned a huge dinosaur that was made out of earth. And that dinosaur started smashing everything, knocking down all the players who were near it. And the devil watched and told them to shout louder, because they were just chirping with happiness, and now they're all going to be destroyed. But at that moment, Luton ran up and hit him with all his might for prevention, because he said that it seems that his mother didn't spare him as a child. And Luton added that he had exaggerated a few minutes ago, saying he was an elite who had honed his skills over thousands of years of hard work. And he thinks he's a jerk who's never gotten his ass kicked. The devil noticed that this guy's strength had increased again, and he needed to reduce his hardening range. But it was too late, for the Luton had brought his power down on him with all his might, driving him into the ground. The devil couldn't understand how this was possible. But a girl came up to him and said he was just a distraction. She was the main force here. And Luton got off his seat and started running after her, telling her they'd made a good combo. But she said her palms were dirty and they'd shake hands later. But Luton agreed and said that after all he was not God, his body was flesh and blood and only slightly defeated. The girl decided to get some bandages to heal his arm and wrapped it around his arm. She said she'd told him several times not to go anywhere alone, and if she hadn't come in time, he might have died. But he said he was just watching this guy senselessly kill people and overdoing it. The girl kept yelling at him that it wasn't a fight for life. She said he'd stay out of it because he promised that by the end of the game they'd be alive and no one would be left alone. 
but he raised his hand and said he promised he'd never put anyone in danger again. But at that moment, the devil began to rise up and tell the boys that in as many years as the battles, they were the first to break through his defenses. And the Luton turned his head and said, he shouldn't have come here. And to be honest, his head was so flattened from his blow. And isn't that normal? But the devil, smiling evilly, said he was wrong and he wasn't sorry. He was thrilled, and they humans can't understand a creature who is so thrilled he almost loses his sense of pain, and what a wonderful feeling they gave him just now. But Luton couldn't understand if this guy still wanted to fight because he wanted to give him more. But all the words that came out of Luton's mouth made the devil smile. I'm still with her for he's finally met worthy opponents and he'll torture them slowly, till he feels the fun is gone. But when Luton heard that, he told him he apologized because his power bonuses can only last 12 minutes, and he doesn't have that much time to play with it. So eight minutes have passed, and now he's going to use his power bonus 5,520 times. Meanwhile, in another battle, Sun Ann saw a huge snake coming straight at him, telling him that he was going to die in its stomach. Sun An took out his magic gun and said he'd been waiting for it for a long time. And as soon as he jumped up, he was on top of her and started using his weapon to the max. But as soon as he fired, the huge snake opened its huge mouth. And jumping to the ground, our hero couldn't understand how it could absorb his attack. But at that moment, the devil began to transform into his true form, and thank son Anya for completing her because she was very pleased. But he couldn't realize that she had really absorbed the energy he had released. But the devil began to say that he had underestimated her, thinking that her abilities consisted only in changing her form and his information. The greatest effect of the power of lust is imitation and reproduction. That is, the movement he had just shown her had already been copied by her. The huge wave that our hero had recently released began to return directly to him, and he couldn't realize that this meant she could imitate even his bone blade. And then she screamed that this is what it means to do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and now he's going to die from his own skills. <laughs> but at that moment, soon Anne began to use the new eternal crown effect that counteracted the fatal injury. And as he jumped to the ground, he realized that at this rate, it would use up all his existing skills, and he couldn't make any more mistakes. But still, he realized that something was wrong. <laughs> After all, he had just deflected a lethal weapon with the Eternal Crown, and before that, he had taken no damage. <laughs> and according to the previous algorithms, he was back to the state he was in before the shot, which would have been in a state of full blood. However... Since the fight with her, he always had a non-compulsory sense of illusion, and maybe this girl's power lies not only in shape-shifting or imitation. But the devil came closer and closer to him and said that if he changed his mind about fighting, then he should let her finish him off. But son Anne stayed in the same place and thought only that he was not 100% sure, but he had to try something and that he could withstand the blow she was about to give him. But after the blow, the devil started to scream that he couldn't resist anymore. But Sun An stayed where he was and saw that he was down 300 units of health. And he realized that as he thought now, he's almost certain that her power isn't imitation or shape-shifting. It's just the power to create illusions and nothing else. So he turned around and started telling her that her true ability was like Phantasagoria. The moment he saw her, he was in an illusion. But she heard this and got angry and started asking him, what if it's an illusion? And since he's in her illusion, he can't break free and move freely and there's no way to break free from the illusion without outside interference. Or is he still trying to find hope for his girlfriend? And unfortunately, she was supposed to die at Silas's hands, and he's going to suffer the same fate. But he continues to hold his blade in his hand, smiling and telling her that since there is no hope for the outside world, how about striking from within? And at that moment, he began to use his skill, 
causing a huge amount of Renegria to be released, and in doing so, he broke down the barrier it had put up. And at that moment, he realized that everything had happened just as he thought it would. It was pretty messy, but it was worth it if he could shatter her illusion. But the devil continued to emit a huge aura and tell him that, It's okay. She's taken over all his powers with the illusion. And then the real moment of truth awaits him. But as she approached, our hero realized it was very fast and unexpected. Jumped aside, he saw that she started to come back from the other side. And that she had turned into a hawk. And so she decided that the most important thing in her is intelligence and strategy and she has already mastered all his abilities and knows how he will act. But soon Ann started to use his new skills, and he raised his hand up and said it's not over yet. But the devil in the cage realized the fact that she didn't know this guy had these skills and it's too bad for her because she needs to get out of this place. And as soon as she turned into a dragon, she started searing everything around her. But at that moment, Sun An was already above her and ready to use his magic gun again. And as soon as the power was released, she started screaming loudly that he had definitely gotten her. And as a demon, she has unlimited regenerative powers. So everything he did was for nothing. And just as she was about to swallow him, he twisted and started flying back toward her. But as soon as he hit it, it turned itself into a worm. And cutting her into several small pieces, Sun Ann said he'd use a decisive move. But she immediately turned herself back to her normal state and started taunting him that if this was his last move, she had somehow overestimated him. But at the same moment, she fell into his trap and the branches he created started to take her over completely. But she kept screaming that did he really think that a few lians could hold her back? But still, she could hardly move in the vines that bound her. And Sun An said that they were not just vines. They were bloodthirsty eyes, and this plant grows in harsh conditions and could not have grown to this size without the blessing of the forest. And if she had fought seriously, who wouldn't have gotten trapped? And that's why he attacked her. Then he forced her to change her shape and made her weaker. But she kept screaming that he'd forgotten about her regeneration and if he gave her some time, she could get out of there. But Sun Ann lowered his head and said she couldn't because the growth of bloodthirsty tails requires a lot of energy to feed, and he can only sow it with his energy and the blessing of the forest. Well, then they keep drawing energy from her body, and the better she recovers, the stronger the holding power will be as she grows. So unless she breaks free the first time, she'll never get out. But once she's trapped, he tells her to think fast. And right after he said that, he turned to his partner and said that he was done and Jajui would be done soon. But Jeju smilingly told him that he had chosen a new identity. And that means that Silas is no longer weak. But Silas kept yelling at him to shut his mouth because he's been in power longer than he has. But Jeju told him that in the end he wasn't chosen he was just a temporary replacement, and that he would disappear with his miserable fate. And at that moment, Silas couldn't understand why this guy suddenly seemed like a different person, and why he had the ability to regenerate unlimitedly, but now he couldn't heal at all. Jeju kept attacking him and ordered him to fight to the death. The devil didn't like these words and started to insult him back and said that he would destroy him even if he had to go to hell he would take him with him. And as soon as he squeezed his weapon in his hands tighter, and immediately he threw it toward where Jeju was standing and it hit him right in the chest. But as soon as he looked up, he couldn't believe what he was seeing and that his attacks did no damage even though it hit the target. Jeju pulled his weapon from his chest and threw it aside and immediately began to heal himself. But he also told the demon that he felt great shame and that he was the only one going to hell today. And as soon as he got close to him, he threw a lot of punches. And as soon as the devil was done, he looked at his hand and realized that the power was incredible. But at that moment, Sun Ann came up to him and asked if he was done. But he didn't hear anything back. Sun Ann saw that his partner had changed dramatically. 
and his holy sword, he couldn't understand what had happened to him. But Jeju told him that it was just a second-level upgrade. But as much as he didn't understand, our hero couldn't quite grasp the fact of what level 2 he was talking about. But Jeju also added that he could not have defeated the devil with his own strength and alone, and that's admirable. But Sun An didn't answer his question and said only that the second devil's breath had disappeared, which meant that he would finish him off. But Jeju smilingly said not to worry because even if he has the ability of eternal regeneration, he will not be able to return to life today. Sun An turned around and asked him to get down to business, but in fact, he realized that his partner was strange today. After a few minutes, they came to the volcano's entrance to hell, where Lucifer, the lord of evil, dwells. And Sun An went on to say that he thought if they went there, they'd meet the man who started it all. But Jeju changed his mind and started telling Sun An that there was one last thing he needed to do before he went there. But our hero didn't realize what he was talking about. But it was called betrayal, and at that moment he stabbed Sun An in the back, which made Sun An realize that he had betrayed him. Jeju standing behind him said that killing him was the last thing he wanted to do. But Sun An couldn't believe that Jeju would betray him, but he also asked why he would do it, because he really doesn't understand right now. Jeju told him to get some sleep and he would wake up in a completely different world, a new world. Meanwhile, huge red birds were flying over the city. Zaijun saw them and couldn't understand what they were. But the devil she was fighting told her that the birds were bringing news that one of the devils had been killed. And Zaijun couldn't understand that a devil could be killed and what it could mean. But Sun Yue, who was nearby, said it was Sun An and his men who did it. The other players also realized it was Sun An, and they managed to cancel the devil's immortality. At that moment, the guys started attacking the devil together because it was the right time for them to destroy him. The devil himself remained in the same place and realized that she had lost her regenerative powers and couldn't understand what this thing was. And she would mourn her companion promising to destroy everyone even more brutally to honor his memory. Elsewhere, another devil also noticed red ravens flying over his head. And Luton, who was near him, couldn't understand what had happened to this demon, for he had become something else. But he decided to activate his went to 40 power bonus. His partner, who was standing nearby, thought about the fact that it had only been nine minutes and her partner had never had such a hard fight. And as time went on, Luton's strength would grow, but there would be a price to pay. And that's when Luton hit the devil with all her strength, which caused the devil to fly away at an incredible speed. Then Luton asked the devil what was wrong because he thought he was failing. But after a tremendous blow, the devil put it up and started climbing out of the rubble and tell Luton that one of his comrades had just disappeared from this world forever. But Luton couldn't understand what he was saying or which comrade he was talking about. But Luton's partner began to explain to him that one of the devils had just disappeared and didn't that mean there was another devil in front of them? because they knew those two guys were up to the task. And now Luton wants to do it because now it's his turn to finish his task as the final end of this battle. But as he relaxed a little bit, he started flying a huge crystalline object, and as soon as he caught it, who realized that it was too close. And they also noticed that if Sun An and the others had completed their task, the rest of the demons were likely to lose their powers. Well, as soon as the devil got up, he started telling the guys that they were doing something wrong and he was in a great mood. When the girl heard that, she started telling her friend to get ready. But he responded by telling her to go away and leave him here alone with the devil. And in the battle that's about to take place, she shouldn't take part. And she's always been very clever, so she must know what she's going to do next. He's the head of the guild, and it's his job to protect the people of the guild. The other guys behind him couldn't understand why the leader was going to fight him alone because he shouldn't be such a hero and should rely on his team. 
but the girl turned around and started ordering the guys to leave. Everyone who supports their leaders should follow her. But finally she told him to remember that they all had to stay alive until the end of the game, and as he built up his strength he said he would keep his promise. His skill ran out in three minutes, so the devil would spend the next three minutes tormenting them, and at that moment they started running at each other with all their might. At this time, Jeju on the other continent started to enter a huge manor, and when he got inside he met a man and called him Lucifer and started saying that he had come to meet him. But the man turned around and started asking him which Lucifer he was, because he didn't even know there was such a thing. But Jeju looked at him and started asking if he was the one who was called Lucifer. And the man said that his name was one of the eight demons of the gods, the demon of laziness. And Jeju couldn't understand if he was the last demon and why he was here and not outside. To which the man replied that fighting and killing wasn't his style, he preferred to sit quietly here and read a book, and he should remember one wisdom that better than brute force is knowledge and knowledge is power. But Jeju started to say that he didn't come here to listen to his lectures and where is the man he's looking for. But at that moment another demon with six wings appeared in front of him, and she started telling Jai Jui that she didn't like him at all and he said he'd be proud of her for calling him human. And Alara started asking the Bayman why she was back and how the battle was going outside. She came down to earth and said that, just like killing the pest swarm, it was fast and very boring and that's why she came here. And thanks to Bodice's ability, most of the people on earth have turned into her race and only the last few locations are still fighting. When Alaris heard that, he said that there was no need to ask her for help because she had brought the ancestors. He and turning around, Alaris began to tell Jeju that he wanted to meet the demon lord and if so, he should go after him. But at that moment, Bayman noticed that Jeju was holding something strange. And as soon as the blindfold was unwrapped, she saw Sun Anne and was very surprised. Jeju also noticed it and turned around and asked Her Majesty what he could do to help her. She just pointed her finger at what he was holding and asked who it was. Jeju started to answer that he was once one of his human companions and now he's just a corpse. Alaris also heard this and began to ask him how he could bring a corpse into the Great Hall of Valor. And corpses should be buried in the ground and left there not dragged to the place where the heroic souls of the ancestors sleep, because it's a great insult. But Jeju only replied that he had brought him here because he had his own reasons and it was not for him to teach him. Bayman became alarmed, but she also told him to put it on the ground. Jeju turned his head around and told her he was sorry and that he didn't obey her but only the demon lord's orders. But Baiman got angry and told him again to put him on the ground. Jeju turned to her and said he didn't mean to hurt her, and that son Anne was his best friend and he brought him here because he thought he had everything he needed to become a new man. But Baiman said again that she wouldn't do it a third time and he should put him on the ground and come to her. And Jeju also got angry and asked her what would happen if he refused. Bayman drew her sword and said that then the only thing she could offer him was that she would destroy him if he refused her again. But Jeju said he didn't mean to hurt her, but he couldn't give them son Anya. And as soon as she moved, she threatened him that she'd have to kill him. And as he struck her with his blade, a huge wave of magical energy started flying at Jeju, and he started to activate Odin's power and head and jump away. But it wasn't enough because Baymen kept attacking him from different directions. Alara started shouting at Baymen to be careful because this is where the spirits of their ancestors rest. But she wouldn't listen to him and was already behind Jeju's back and wanted to give him a final blow. But he turned around in time to block her attack. But he also realized that she was very fast, even faster than Sun An. But Baiman kept attacking him and said the word Vancouver. That's why Jeju started to realize that even in his head she was attacking him. And after realizing it completely, he started to jump away. 
and Byman continued to tell him that she doesn't care who he is or what the Lord said to him. But if he doesn't give this guy to her, he may not get any mercy and he'll die right here. Jeju had already started to tell her that he didn't think she was so obsessed with a simple man or that there was something he didn't know about. She only replied that there's only one reason for it. She feels some kind of attachment to this guy and can't do anything about it. Jeju couldn't understand what kind of attachment she was talking about because demons can't feel something like that and aren't ordinary people more than parasites to them. Bayman flew up the mountain and told him that she didn't have to explain anything to him and she wanted to take him away and he couldn't stop her. Jeju didn't want to listen to her and started pulling out his blade, saying that her capriciousness would cost her. Alaris, who was behind them, started yelling at them to stop this circus. But at that moment he started to turn his head sharply because he realized that there was someone behind him and the guy who came out of the portal started telling Bayman to calm down. Alara saw that it was a dragon and told him that he was glad to see him and that he got here before they defeated the Hall of Valor. Jeju heard that the guy's name was Dragon and asked if it was his real name, but the dragon said he was the demon lord and the creator of the game and he could call him anything he wanted as long as he liked it. Bayman, who was hovering in the air above him, told the dragon it was about time because she was about to ask him why he let the man come to this place. The dragon raised his hand and said there were only three things to say. First, Jeju was the first human to complete the main quest and he deserved a reward. Second, even though there's a war going on outside, the demons are winning the battle. But fire and wind will carry them away, so they need a human as a container to destroy the human race once and for all. But the last of her highnesses is like a rare animal in a zoo, and when their ancestors return to this earth, they'll want to see for themselves what humans look like today. And after hearing all this, Bayman said something told her he was lying. But the dragon just laughed out loud and said he'd worked so hard to make her sad. But she didn't care what he was going to do to him. She just wanted the corpse he was holding. But the dragon heard those words and started asking Jeju what corpse she was talking about because he didn't allow outsiders to come here. Jeju started to worship him and said to the great demon lord that Sun An was once his close friend and one of the strongest players in the game, so he thought he would be useful. But the dragon said he didn't care what he wanted or what he thought, because he told him that only one person could come out here. But Jeju wanted to explain it properly, but the dragon told him again to shut up, and went on to explain the fact that he didn't understand what he said. Jeju also got angry and said that even if it was true, he wouldn't give Sun An to her, but the dragon couldn't understand why they were interested in this man, and especially in Baiman. But she said it was none of his business, and she didn't have to explain herself to him. The dragon wasted no time in approaching Jeju to see what was so special about him. The moment Raffaello noticed that it was that guy soon on, and at that moment the dragon thought about the fact that he knew him too, and he remembered that he had gotten him a special gift of Star's ear triangle, but now it was just a tube if the bay man wanted it so badly he could have it. But Jeju didn't want to give it to just anyone, and a demon too. He said that even if they all wanted it, he wouldn't give it to them. But the dragon couldn't understand if he was really crazy to protect Sun An, who had died. Raffaello, who was behind him, suddenly started screaming that she knew this weirdo couldn't be a good boy and that there was a catch, and that maybe he was just a fraud and they should take the precaution of killing him. After he said that, the dragon realized they were up to something, and Jai Jui, if he didn't give him up right now, he'd have to fight him. And the chance of him staying alive is nil. But at that moment, a strange yellow sphere appeared over their heads, from which Sun Anya's words started coming out. But most of the guys couldn't understand who was talking or where he was coming from. But as soon as he finished speaking, 
Sun An appeared in front of them with his magic gun, and he started asking them, didn't they recognize him? But Jeju was shocked at what he'd just seen, because he'd just finished him off. The dragon immediately started asking if it was his body, because he didn't think they'd get caught in the crossfire. Jeju immediately started asking Sun and why he was here. But Sun An told him that they would talk about it later, because he had to deal with the main leader first. And three hours ago, when Jeju attacked Sun An's back, the last thing Sun An heard was Jeju telling him to kill him. That's the last thing he wanted. But Sun An couldn't believe that Jeju would be a traitor, but he didn't understand why he would do that, because he didn't understand and he really didn't. Did he betray him and humanity itself? Well, later on when he came to his senses, he was holding his stomach because he remembered Jeju stabbing him in the stomach with his sword. And it was the effect of the unshakable crown that didn't work. So the blow wasn't fatal and it was just some kind of psychic attack that puts people in a dream state. But still clenching his fist, Sun An didn't understand why Jeju was doing what he was doing or what he was up to. But now the dragon didn't realize if it was a trick because he didn't expect to be set up like this. And just as Sun An wanted to destroy the dragon, Jeju also moved the dragon. But it was not easy to stop our hero and he went straight at the dragon shouting that he had to destroy the main scourge first. Alaris, who was also in the room, started yelling at his master to be careful. But somehow Bayman appeared in front of the dragon. But soon An knew that she would come to his aid, so he decided that this blow would be especially for her. And at that moment he shot straight at her without thinking. And she started flying away at full speed. And then he pulled out his blade and said that he was saving this blow for the dragon, which he would destroy immediately. Raffaello, who was standing behind him, started shouting to her master that he was in grave danger. But the dragon at that moment began to use the time-setting command. And as our hero approached him, he just snapped his finger and he hovered in the air. And then the dragon started to say that he is the creator of this game, and if he thinks he can hurt him with his skills, you are wrong, because at this moment he can introduce a new command invincible, and also red and blue infinity, and increase his points to plus 10,000. And as soon as everything was activated, the dragon began to unleash his power, because now time was in his favor. And at that moment, the bone blade that our hero was holding in his hands began to disintegrate. And Sun An couldn't understand what had happened. But the dragon began to explain that he not only controls the gameplay, but also all the prop skills and attributes. And at will, he can adjust the durability of his weapon. And when this happened, the dragon also asked the hero what he would do next. But Sun An didn't waste any time and started using his legendary skill to deal with it. Well, of course, the notification system started to show the player that it is impossible to damage the opponent's third invincibility skill. And then Sun An started attacking him again with his black smoke to blind him. But the dragon didn't care because the notification system kept showing that it was impossible to inflict negative effects. So the dragon asked him if he could show him anything else interesting and pulled out his magic gun, which was the last one left. Sun An started using it. As soon as he took aim, the notification system showed that the props had expired and it was impossible to lock on to the target. I'll bounce away. He started to say he didn't believe it and wouldn't accept it. But after thinking about it, he remembered that he still has one god exploiting game bugs and his ability, and as long as he can find and use them, he will. But the notification system still showed him that he couldn't use it, and he had no rights to use it. But the dragon saw it and started laughing loudly and told Sun Anyu that he had given him this ability, and he would take it away. Sun An fell to his knees and despaired that he couldn't even use the bugs and that he was now an ordinary man. And Jeju standing behind him started telling him to give up because he said they're just players and can't stand up to people like him. 
but Sun An didn't understand why Jeju had brought him here if he knew that fighting was useless. But all he said was that he was here to surrender and he was sorry he dragged him into it. Sun An turned his head and started yelling at him. Why should he surrender and why should he give in to the devil? But he replied that this move was also futile. The extermination of humanity can't be stopped. So we should act now while there's still time. Before he could listen, Soon An hit Jeju'i with all his might. And then he started yelling about the other guys who had come all this way with him and grabbed him by his clothes and started saying that if he gave up, he'd give up everyone who trusts him and believes in him. But it was hard to change his mind, and Jeju said only that they knew what they were doing and what they were doing. But Sun An didn't like these words and started to swing to hit him again. But Raffaello, who was behind him, started to ask him about surrendering, because that's not what Jeju said and what he really wanted to do to him. But Jeju replied, Or what does it matter now that he's seen the real power of the Lord, he's sure. But the dragon also laughed when he heard this, because he realized that it really did not matter whether he was right or Jeju. They knew what they were getting into from the beginning. But he also decided to ask Sun An what he would choose, whether he would join him or die with the rest of humanity. For if he joined them together, they would welcome the dawn of a new age. But Sun An turned around and started to address Jeju, telling him that he was right and he was a smart guy and no one could blame or condemn him for his choice. But unlike him and everyone else, he's a fool who just came in and everyone was laughing at him. And Jeju couldn't quite understand what he was going to do. But Sun An put his hand on his heart and said he would return to those who cared for him and die with them and he wouldn't kneel before demons and beg them to spare him. Because all his life that he can remember, he's always been alone. And when he had so many problems and so many debts he couldn't pay, he always ate alone, walked and slept alone, and when a man suffers from loneliness, there is no room for dreams in his life. And when everyone called him names about how he was useless and couldn't do even the easiest job, if he looked at himself, he would see how pathetic he was, and he probably didn't have a girlfriend or a best friend. But he realized that even though there were some rays of light in his life, it was still so bleak. But at one point, Zai Jun showed up and asked if he wanted to have lunch with them, because he had enough to do sitting there alone and could always talk to them. But despite everything, one day everything changed. I used to be small as dust and nobody paid any attention to him. But at some point he was given a monstrous power, and with it came things into his life that he never dreamed possible, and some things may disappear if he goes back to normal. But there are some things he won't let disappear for anything in his life. If he wants to get over his friends and become a new man, he has to change him. But he can't let that happen, and he'd rather die with the people closest to him than give in to the devil. And after saying all that, Byman, who was nearby, thought about it. But the dragon just put his hand on his head and said that it was a pity for him because he had made the right choice as a human, but as a result, he had to pay the highest price. And so he must take his part with him and die this very second. Sun An closed his eyes and decided to say his last words of apology to Zai Jun because he can't go back to her as promised. But at that moment, Bai Men appeared in front of him as if to defend him. But Sun An didn't understand why she was trying to protect him. The dragon couldn't understand either and started to ask Bai Men what was going on and why she was protecting him. But she turned around and said it would be sad to kill him that way. But the dragon didn't understand what she meant. He was a mere mortal, and what was her problem? But Bai Men told him that he was just different and she could feel it somewhere inside her. But she also added that she had some kind of attachment to him. Alaris intervened in the new conversation and started telling Bayman to mind her manners, and she shouldn't forget who it was that awakened her. And the dragon may not be their ancestor, but he has made a great contribution to their return, 
and she also swore to be loyal to him. How can she, a princess of the ancestors, refuse to go back on her word? But she started telling the dragon to let her take him, or else she'd use force. Well, Raffaello also intervened and started yelling at her how dare she treat the master like that and she doesn't care if she's a princess or not. But Bayman went on to say that he just said that he's the creator of everything in this game, so she wants to see if he has the ability to shut off her power. But he smilingly replied that her powers were given to her at birth, and even though he can empower a demon god, her powers are beyond his control. And before he could say anything, she attacked him with her sword. But he raised his hand and with his two fingers stopped her attack. And Alaris, who was standing behind her, began to ask her if she had lost her mind and how dare she point her blade at the dragon. At this point, the dragon started saying that he thought she was using this man as an excuse to attack him and she had never wanted to follow his rules to begin with. To which she replied that he and all his so-called ancestors can go to hell. They don't deserve to come back to this planet. But Raffaello cried out that she wasn't an ancestral princess, and how could she say such a thing? But she just said that all she remembered was being thrown onto the island like a wild animal, and the person closest to her was taken from her. And the one who took that person was none other than the dragon. But the dragon started to tell her that she'd probably lost half her memory. But she said it was true that she didn't remember all the details of her life. She'd been asleep for six years. But when his call woke her up, her first thought was to, to destroy him for all she was worth. And immediately, she started moving towards him with her weapon in her hand. Sun An watched the battle and saw that she had a very strong bloodlust, but he didn't fully understand what was going on and why the Devilus was fighting against her master. But at that moment he felt that he could regain his strength in the meantime, and he must seize this opportunity if he kills this bastard. He can change the course of history. But at that moment the sword that Jeju threw appeared at his feet, and then the ball was followed by himself, who began to tell our hero that he knew what he was thinking, but he was afraid that he had to stop him. Sun An didn't understand what he was saying, because he thought he was just pretending and all this time and he was really on the side of those demons. But Jeju told him that if he was talking about letting him live, it was because he felt sorry for him. His goal from the beginning was to come here and surrender. But Sun An couldn't accept what he said and didn't realize he was saying that. But Jeju said without any hesitation that he was 100% sure of what he said. And at that moment, Sun An thought it meant that he wouldn't have to treat him like a human anymore. Because he was now a member of the demon clan, and from that moment on, he had finally unsealed his sword and he knew he could get the main reward of the storyline. Because he plans to become a demon god and in the future he'll be able to fulfill the plan he's wanted to fulfill since the beginning of the game. And realizing that Jeju was a traitor, Sun An began to prepare for battle without a second thought. Because Jeju was already running straight at him, shouting that he had long wanted to fight him, and that this fight was always destined to come true, and that he must now attack him and fight to the best of his ability. But as soon as the fight started, Sun An pulled out his magic pistol and said that he never wanted them to be enemies. And as soon as he fired it, Jeju started to activate his speed power. And jumping from side to side, he began to quickly approach our hero. But he wasted no time in creating a huge stone wall. And as soon as it appeared, Jeju swung his sword and cut it into several pieces. But Sun An shouted at him that it wasn't the end, and then he started to create a huge water wave. But Jeju started to activate his Odin's power speed skill again. But at that moment our hero was already behind him, and started to use his Black Veil skill. And the notification system showed Jeju that he was blinded. But Jeju closed his eyes and still told him that he knew all his moves and could predict all his attacks. 
So Sun An opened his inventory and realized that his bone blade had been destroyed. So he decided that all he had left was this weapon. And it's a grade A hell sword that only has an attack plus 200 and a skill bonus plus 5. And as soon as he started attacking, Jujuya started making a huge one that looked like one. And after a few attacks, Sun An was surprised that he could even use his statue like that. To which Jeju replied that he said he could calculate his every move. And now he didn't know anything about his new power. And once he was caught in the trap, Sun An realized he couldn't move normally. But Jeju kept saying that with the second awakening of the Holy Ball, he got new powers. And he doesn't even have his weapon and now he doesn't know how he's going to fight him. But Sun An said that he's been surviving all this time, and he's always faced enemies several times more powerful than himself, and he's always shown up in desperate situations with no way out, and he's probably used to it. But Jeju didn't listen to his words and held out his sword, telling him that he was going to say goodbye to him as an old friend. And after saying that, he started flying at full speed towards the hero. But as soon as he hit the purple sphere, his sword bounced off. And just like that, he flew off to the side. But when he got up, he couldn't understand what had just happened or why his attack hadn't worked. But the notification system started to show him that one-on-one -on -one combat was forbidden in the zone, and the damage was canceled, and Sun An also added that it wasn't his sword or any ability that saved him all the time. Jeju couldn't believe it. Couldn't he be using bugs now? But Sun An took a triangle out of his sleeve and told him it was a bug in the game. And he'd come so far because of them, because they were the only ones that hadn't let him down every time, and that his new abilities were still of limited use, but that their job was to imprison the enemy inside. And that's why he made it a safe room where one-on-one -on -one combat is impossible. Jeju remembered that thanks to the gods he had gotten this far, but what now, he asked, in front of his real power they were useless. And with Odin's power of speed and Odin's power of strength, only one of them will leave this place alive, said Jeju. But Sun An didn't think twice and started to create an ice curtain, and asked Jeju if he remembered the war he had dodged earlier. But Jeju couldn't understand what he was saying or what wave he was asking about. And it was a fake attack, and now they're trapped in his realm of ice. And now they're going to get to the most important part of this battle. But Jeju couldn't understand why he'd put so much effort into such a trivial trap, and that he had overestimated his son on, because there was no way he could escape even if he made a few of these rooms. But Sun An smiled and asked what kind of banal speech he was talking about, because he made this creation especially for him, and waved his hand and huge shards of ice started flying towards Jeju. But he started to use his speed power again, and as soon as he started dodging in different directions, he told Sun An that it was all useless. He couldn't even leave a scratch on him with such cheap tricks and moved out with the demonic equipment, he's not even, and he spent all his energy on this ice. If he continues like this, he'll just lose. But Sun An started to clench his fist and tell him that it's okay, he'll fall before he gives up. And at that moment, a huge wall of ice appeared in front of him, which made Jeju get angry and tell our hero that he was a stubborn sheep. But soon Anne remembered that he had specially treated the ice on the ground and he must beware of freezing. But as soon as he lowered his head, he saw that his legs were bound by a shadow and he didn't realize what it was. But at that moment he unleashed all his strength to get rid of the trap. But Sun Anne went on to say that the damage he would do to him physically would also be reflected on his soul. And the temperature of the ice at his feet reached... 273 dig, or absolute zero. And Jeju realized that anything that came into contact with the ice would be frozen. Enraged, Jeju began to accumulate enormous power that began to melt all the ice in the area. So he was free of the ice and was able to jump into the air. 
And right after that he shouted to our hero that he knew that his divine light was immune to mortal injury. But Sun An smilingly replied that it was true that he expected him to use it to avoid the attack. But Jeju didn't realize what he was about to do next. Sun An raised his head and said he didn't have to do anything but wait for him to destroy himself. In the other room, Baymen continued to fight against the dragon using 60 explosions. But the dragon started to raise his hand and order him to create a monster from this level. And as soon as he spoke, a huge thing appeared in front of Baymen. And immediately it began to rush at her with all its speed. But she smashed it into little pieces with a single blow. And as soon as he hit the ground, the dragon couldn't understand how it happened. But Baymen was already at his side and drew her blades. She started to come even closer. But the dragon snapped his fingers and started to cancel the invulnerability order. But Raffaello standing next to him started asking her master why he had removed the invulnerability. Elaris, who was standing next to him, said that it must be her majesty's strike that allows you to see into the future and you can't dodge it. Even his invulnerability won't help. And as her sword approached him, he began to make a new order of space compression and with his space compression he could cause a delay. In space and time her instant strike is useless. But Bai Min asked him what's wrong with you. He still can't block all her attacks. And now with 1,000 illusions she'll destroy her. Raffaello and the other devils noticed this and couldn't understand what would happen now because it looked very bad, and that the master could stop one instantaneous blow with the compression of space but what to do against a thousand such blows, and it looked like Her Majesty was aiming to kill the Master. But she just said it was his punishment for keeping her locked up for six years, and now he must prepare for all the torment he's never felt before, or he'd meet his fate and go straight to hell. The dragon got nervous and realized that it was so elegant the blows from the future he couldn't seem to block them all. And just as Raffaello yelled for the master to be careful, Bayman had already delivered a devastating blow that sent the dragon tumbling to the ground, and also began to feel great pain from her powerful blows. As he fell to the ground, Raffaella began to fly towards him, and she asked him to say something, because she was asking him to wake up. Bayman turned her head and told him that this was the end, and he was getting what he deserved. But Raffaella turned to him and said that she was a traitor, and it was her master who should have died. When Baymen heard that, she said that if she loved her master so much, she could go to hell with him. But no sooner had she attacked than she realized something had gone wrong, and the dragon was alive because it started to rise from where it had fallen. Raffaello couldn't understand how this was possible, but the dragon replied that it was all thanks to her. Bayman also thought it was impossible because he had a human body and how could he recover so quickly after such damage? But the dragon said it was true. Unlike them, he was still human. And when that blade pierced his heart, he couldn't help but think about his past. And he was just a child, but he'd already been through hell on earth. And he'd learned how cruel and mean people could be because of war. And when he was told that they were going to kill that boy, his numbers went up to 1,000. And even then he realized that he was just a little puppet in a big game. But maybe it was his luck that the pitch missed him by a couple millimeters. And he woke up on that nameless island where he met her. Just like her, he met another guy who looked like Sun Ann, and he didn't even know who they were or what the consequences of contact with them would be. But everything that happened after that changed his view of the world and that he could also change beyond recognition. But at that moment there was a woman who asked him if there was a creator in this world, but he couldn't understand what she meant. Did she really ask? But the woman said no, he didn't, and he should let her rephrase her words so he could understand, because she's talking about a game master. A game master can change all the rules and restrictions. Since man was born, Certain rules and restrictions have been written into his DNA. For example, no holistic reproduction leads to an increase in hereditary diseases. 
Another example, even after thousands of years of technological development, people are always struggling with unpredictable disasters, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, viruses. But the young dragon couldn't understand what she was trying to tell him. But she went on to say that humans are limited by special rules and no players. They can't change what they can't control. And the game master who wrote all those rules, or rather a very ancient creature. But the young dragon couldn't understand what ancient creatures she was talking about or who they were. But all she said was that before there were humans in the world, they already existed on planet Earth. And not only that, they also broke the Earth code and took complete control of the planet. And then for some inexplicable reason, the Earth was no longer habitable for the ancient beings and countless of them fell into eternal slumber. And they had no choice but to abandon the planet for a while to find another suitable place to live. But they never gave up and came back here, so they created these creatures as humans. And within the borders, the humans began to flourish, changing the state of the world during this time. They didn't just stand by, watching everything they did, some testing. But the young dragon couldn't understand if his parents' war was also one of their so-called trials. But the woman went on to say that humans were breeding too fast, so they had to get rid of the unwanted part of the population to give birth to even better versions. And they also rewarded some of the highly recognized humans. I give them a chance to become one of the ancient creatures like them. And the dragon, she also gives him this opportunity and whether he wants to give up the boring human form and join them. But he was in tears and didn't fully understand her offer to join them. And then he cried out that he would never agree to it. But to the girl it was surprising, and then she said that he must realize, since he knows the whole truth, she can't let him leave here alive. And after hearing this, the young dragon said he could help her. But she didn't understand how he could help her. She's a teenager, and she's been living for centuries, and how he could help her. But he said that they are really more than that then why do they need to hide from humans on this island and so encrypted and not the ancient creature did not return to earth, not because they don't want to, but because they can't? If the ancient one heard, she started laughing out loud and said that this child is very stubborn. But he's right. Because of certain circumstances, they ancient beings must return to earth now. But human development has gone beyond their rules and returning here is now impossible. But the young dragon said he could help her. He could correct course even if it meant destroying all humans. But the ancient couldn't understand why he wanted to do that and why she should trust him. But he said she had no choice. Otherwise, she'd have solved the problem long ago, and he had no choice either. Because he was barely in hell and his only reason for living now was revenge. At that time, a boy who was playing on the beach started asking his sister how long she thought their mom would stay this time and why she wanted to talk to the dragon alone. But Bayman, she just wants her to take them back to their real home. But the boy kept asking her if she thought she'd take the dragon with her. They're friends now, after all, it's true. Bayman replied that he's only human and she doesn't know what their mom's intentions are. And at that moment, she started to come up and call the boys, telling them to forgive her for taking so long, and that they should guess what present she had in store for them this time. But the boy immediately moved from his seat and started running toward her. And as soon as he got near her, he hugged her and told her that he missed her. She also said that she missed him. And the Ancient One also asked Bayman what was wrong and what happened and why she wasn't happy to see her mom. But Bayman said she was happy to see her and she was just thinking. But the Ancient stroked her head and said they were two of hers, not spoons, and Mommy is very happy when they're around. And she held out her hand to the boy and told him it was his present. It's a stark triangle, and that thing was used by ancient beings to collect the bugs of this world, and he always wanted to try to play the games that normal people play, and with this he can create his own game. When the boy saw this thing, he said it was amazing and thanked his mom. And for Bayman, she said she knows that being on this island is very hard for her, 
but she promises her that it's only a short time before they can go home together. But the boy started yelling at his sister to look at him, because he started bragging about his triangle start, and it was amazing to him. And the young dragon started asking the ancient one who they were, and she said that Bayman was the princess of the ancient beings. But one of the main reasons they wanted to get back to Earth as soon as possible. But the young dragon didn't realize that they were facing something out there, even the most precious thing they have must find refuge on Earth. But she replied that he was a very clever child, and even her return to Earth would be top secret if he met anyone other than her, he would probably be destroyed by now. But the young dragon asked, what about that guy and what his status was? But she got angry and said he looked like he was just a stray someone had tamed. And the first thing the dragon has to do after he gets the right to write commands for the land is to destroy him. And now in the present, the dragon started talking about Raphael, that he's still alive because of her, and that's great. But Bayman thought it was impossible that his body was human, and how could he be reborn after such serious damage? But he replied that unlike the powerful princess of ancient beings, he's still a strangled human, and the only reason he lived was because of Raphaela. But Bayman couldn't understand what he meant by that. And isn't she just a character he created? But the dragon started laughing loudly and said that she thought he'd stolen her memories and put her to sleep for six years and woke her up without taking the necessary precautions. And at that moment, Bayman said she understood what was going on here, that Raffaella is his clone, which is why he's still alive. But the dragon said that she carries some correction where her words and she's part of Bayman. Ever since her mother gave him the ability to write commands for Earth, one question has been on his mind. What exactly did the ancient creature do to take over Earth? And later he realized that this so-called key was just the DNA of the original life on Earth. By changing it, you can change the environment, create new life, control the sun and the moon, and in essence he could become a god. If he could control the earth with this tactic, then using the same method, he can control ancient beings. And Raphael not only has her DNA, she also has the DNA of all the ancient beings he has collected. And in other words, she is the key to controlling the ancient beings. And after hearing this, Bayman and Alarus were shocked. They didn't expect to hear such words from the Lord. But he went on to say that with her he could control their people as he controls the land. But Bayman said that she had underestimated his dragon, who was a very dangerous man, and she should get rid of him right here and now. But as soon as she started attacking him, this notification system, that Bayman couldn't understand what had just happened, but he kept smiling and said that as long as Raphael was around, he could rewrite her attributes at will, and he could make all her attacks useless. And he raised his hand and said he could even do something else that would make her destroy herself. And as soon as he held out his hand, Bayman started falling to the ground, attacking herself. And she couldn't understand how that was possible because he was only human. But he came closer and closer to her, and he said it was true. That's how a human being can control powerful ancient beings. And as he got closer to her, he grabbed her. He said that she was her mother. Wrong from the start, he hated not only humans, but Bayman didn't understand the dragon's purpose now and what he wanted to accomplish. But he said he wanted to destroy everything and then create a new world. But Alara standing on the landing couldn't believe what he'd just heard. And if his master really meant what he said and that he wanted to destroy everything. But the dragon smiled and said that, of course not, because in his new world there would be room for demon gods. And he immediately fell to his knees, saying to his master that he was ready to obey his orders and he should let him accompany her to the new world. But the dragon kept holding Bayman and asking her what her last words would be. But all she said was that he'd never make it and there was a guy who would stop him. But the dragon couldn't understand who she meant because there was no one who could stand up to him. But Bayman didn't know what had happened in the last six years. 
but she knew one thing for sure. That guy's not dead and he's back and he's fighting for his life. And in the meantime, our hero continued to fight against his old friend, who started telling him that he better use all his tricks. But Sun An replied that he had nothing else to do but wait until he destroyed himself. After all this, Jeju moved from his seat and started telling Sun An that he had a very high arrogance and was no match for him when he was just a player. And now he has demonic attributes. But at that moment, a huge ice net appeared in front of him. And Jeju couldn't understand what happened because he didn't even do anything. But the hero said that because of his demonic powers, that's why he has a chance to defeat it. Because now he has to look back. Because this is no ordinary ice. It's a fortified stone of the highest rank. And before they destroyed the meteorite mines in the city, it preserved the rare materials involved. And even if the bone blade is broken, he can take what's left and combine it with the fortified stone to create a one-of-a-kind blade. And the special attributes of the bone blade will also transfer. And if you combine the demon senses and the demon slayer, this place he's in is truly hell for all demons. And as soon as the target was marked, the notification system showed that the demon slayer had been activated and would now do ten times the damage. And our hero went on to say that, after being marked by the bone blade, he couldn't get out of this death trap. And now he'll say goodbye to him and tell the raider that he died fighting like a hero. But Jeju didn't expect this from Sunan. And immediately he started activating Odin's space barrier skill. And all the blades that came at him broke because of that barrier. But the hero started to activate the collector. And as soon as the activation was complete, he started to squeeze it very quickly. Jeju couldn't understand why it was so hard to breathe. But Sunan said that he'd said before that Odin's domain was like a compartmentalization of his stark triangle that allowed him to change its attributes at will. And he's turned it into a vacuum that even air can't penetrate. And now he's got to think hard about how he's going to get out of it. If he removes the Okina realm, the ice blades will cut him to pieces. But if he doesn't, he'll suffocate. The demon needs oxygen. And now he's set a very naive trap, and Jeju should just give up. But Jeju said he was right that any normal demon would have been defeated by now. But this man promised him that he would take him to the new world he created. And he can't die here because he's going to the new world. And at that moment, Jeju took a brave step, and Sun and saw it and saw that he had destroyed his own eye. And Jeju began to say that the Mighty One sacrificed his eye and received the gift of wisdom. And wisdom in this game means changing the rules. And as soon as the action was applied, he began to abolish Odin's kingdom. But right after that, our hero started to activate the demon skill of premonition. And the demon slayer was also activated. But Jeju started to activate data analysis and root calculation. And as soon as the calculation was successful, then the analysis and observation started. And the route was successful, and the notification system showed him that it was 99% successful. And our hero kept yelling at him that there was no point because the bone blades had caught up with his jump into the icy water and would kill him. But he decided it was better to trust the reviews than his judgment. But once in the water... The notification system kept showing him that his life was dropping and wouldn't let him use his gear. But also the bone blades our hero was wielding began to break through the ice very quickly. And under the ice, Jeju finally realized why he'd taken him out to jump in the water. Because according to the rules of the game, everyone has a range limit in extreme conditions, which means he can get out of the attack zone and escape the bone blades. But our hero continued to stand on top and told his opponent that five minutes had passed and the bone blade had disappeared. But at that moment, Jeju appeared and started attacking Sun An, who couldn't understand how he had survived and why he had escaped from such a terrible trap. But Jeju began to say that the path the game element had planned for him showed that he would be too shocked to dodge the attack. Sun An immediately began to activate his black smoke, 
but Jeju kept laughing and said that he would then use the black smoke to blind him to his true intention of using teleportation to get some distance and analyze the situation. And at the same moment, our hero started doing all the same things that Jeju said earlier. And behind him, Jeju started swinging his sword saying that he had already predicted all this. And according to the rules of the game, a human can't defeat a demon because the demon's stats are much higher than the player's. Our hero started to remember the past. The stadium was holding feathers in his hand. His sister started to ask him what it was, but all he said was that he'd had a very strange dream. And there was a guy with the head of a dog carrying a golden staff and calling him God Anubis, but she didn't understand what happened. And did he take his heart too? And he put it on a scale and weighed it with a feather. He said if his heart was heavier, the demons would eat it. But Byman said that this is a very strange God how a heart can be lighter than a feather, and doesn't that mean that everyone will be destroyed by demons? But Sun An replied that maybe he said he was the only one in the world with a heart lighter than a feather. And he said that his fate would break every unjust rule in the world.